Alrighty then. Um. Yeah, I'll just make sure everything's going. But um, yeah, it seems uh, this sh this will probably be set anyway. But uh, people should be using efap.me if they need any information about um anything relating to efap. But as we've done episodes, it's like we we often find ourselves saying like, "Oh, this was the stupidest thing," or "This was the stupidest video," and then we're just like, "Oh, we we got we got to start cataloging this shit." You know, you can't you can't just keep saying everyone's the stupidest. <laughs> Everyone is the stupidest. That's, uh, it gets hard. Well, so yeah, and this is the thing. Like the easier one to explain would be, um, uh, so so hello Greedo. You guys know him, right? Yes. He's uh, he's Good wonderful. <laughs> he's uh, he he has a video where um, he he basically tries to argue like the the Holdo maneuver and and other nitpicks don't matter compared to how the film makes you feel. Like um, well, that's the, the the obvious counter would be oh so stuff like the holder maneuver fucking pisses me off though like that's how it makes me feel <laughs> it's like oh no it's all backfiring <laughs> oh there we go I feel that my childhood's dying in front of me yeah it's um every once in a while I would just feel like repeating the words of Hello Greta being like how does it make you feel how does it make you feel expecting better results when you ask a question like that um but the other Hall of Famer, before we get to the main one, is um, Cinema Wins on Rise of Skywalker saying, in regards to Palpatine being resurrected, so you guys might think there's no way you could see that as being a good thing. What about the argument, pretend that's what you wanted and then see how you feel? <laughs> that one was just, that was sad. <laughs> oh, wow. You, it's one of those ones where you're just like, how do you, uh, how did you... <laughs> <laughs> it just seems contradictive. It's like pretend it's what you wanted. Like, how do you even do that? Just, just pretend you liked it. It'll work. I'm not saying you didn't like, like yeah. you actually did like. And how does it make you feel? Yeah, I, I, let me guess. You liked it when you pretended you. Listen, yeah, nothing. To, but the thing is, that one I think would have been number one if not for this one. And it's funny because this one's so hyper specific. You wouldn't have thought it could make it into like a Hall of Fame of bad arguments, but uh, do you remember, you guys probably will, when uh, Gimli says, let him stay there, let him rot, what are we here, after the, the Battle of Pelennor Fields is ended? Yes. So what what is Gimli talking about in that scene? What do you, what do you think, Gary? Talking about uh, Sauron? No, he was talking about Frodo and Sam. <laughs> oh, I completely missed the point of the movies I've seen. Yeah, yeah. I'd idiot. say I'd say Sorry. subtext, but apparently he's just talking about Frodo. Yeah. The uh, the the best part oh, of that man. video was the, the the video was him shitting all over Lord of the Rings. It's uh cinematic venom. That was that was an EFAP and a half that one. But uh yeah, he says that he checked the scene. And he was, he's made sure that Gimli indeed wanted Sam and Frodo to die, and this is out of character for Gimli, and no one seems to care about it. <laughs> <clears throat> Have you heard of a more insane argument, like, anywhere, for anything? No. <laughs> I know you no. can't see his faces, but I'm just, I'm just shaking my head. <laughs> I mean, aside from, like, you're talking about in cinema, right? Like, not in real life, what I've witnessed in 2020. I, I, I don't know, but... Yeah, um, as arguments go in YouTube videos, uh, we were we were taken aback. So that might be the number one Hall of Fame quote from uh, for EFAP for now. Okay, well, the next time I get dumped, I'm just going to say, just imagine you're still in love with me. How does that make you feel? <laughs> Pretend yeah. you're in love with me. <laughs> Pretend you want my penis. Yeah. Yeah, my work, you never know. I wasn't shit in bed. How does that make you <laughs> pretend I didn't hit you and uh, we're still in love? I like as well that um you you got to read that one, the Lord of the Rings one with no context, because when no one has any context to it, I feel like you read Gimli wanted Sam Frodo to die and you'd just be like, I don't see how that could possibly like there's just no context. <laughs> We thought there was no context to. Oh, he wanted Summon Frodo to die? <laughs> yeah, he obviously what? hated him so much. <laughs> or didn't care. <laughs> was all like, really happy to see him later. And, yeah. 
Well, yeah, you know when he's, like, tearing up when he thinks that Frodo's died, and when he's really happy to see them at the end? Like, all of that is just, that's just the face that's that bad. Gimli wears. That's just yep. that famous dwarven acting you hear so much about. Yep. <laughs> that's, that, that's that Morian theater. <laughs> a piece of shit lying He's to like, all oh, of them. He's like, oh, hey, Frodo, you made it. Oh, oh my god, I was rooting for you, wow. buddy. And Legolas is looking at him like, dude. Oh, <laughs> oh cool. You, you, you did it. Wow. So glad. Oh, you're alive. You're all right. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, right. That's oh. cute. That's nice. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we yeah, seem to too. be All right. uh, thousands of people who died for you and everything. Yeah. I know you had the ring and everything, and it was the most important thing. But you know, f you guys. It's fine, you know. Yeah. I would um, I would recommend you check out that EFAP's ninety three, Gary. But I don't know if you want to blow up Earth at that point. Like, it's a person who goes through all three movies and just complains about absolute nonsense. He says that the entire set of characters have no character; they're all like blank slates. I'm gonna have to watch this now. <laughs> it, it'll hurt you, I swear. <laughs> so be careful, you know. Um, it was uh, it was a surprise. Good, you know, one day someone will release that killer video for Lord of the Rings, and it'll it'll change everyone's minds on it. That might that might be it, though. You know, I might have watch it and go, I was wrong the whole time. <laughs> it is shit. It is actually kind of shit. <laughs> What if I pretend it's a shit? What if you pretend it's shit? Yeah. How does that make that's, you feel? That's what we do all the time. That's what we get accused of all the time. We just want things to be shit. We want things to be horrible. Max, we can't why just do you, like things. Why do you go into the sequel trilogy looking to hate it? Why? Why'd you do that? You can't just enjoy stuff, can you? Well. When there's you, uh, the Emperor returning? I mean, come on. This, this, oh. How exciting. Why can't you just lay back and enjoy it? You know, I think I heard. I remember heard, heard the argument. I can't. I can't remember who made it. It was just like, well, what choice did JJ have? Like, make Kylo the main villain? No, you have to have the Emperor. And it's just like, why not just have another Snoke? Fuck it, you got loads of them. <laughs> They're all in yeah. tubes. <laughs> got a whole tank of Snokes. It's like the lobster tank at the you know at the, at the grocery store. He's like, I went with that Snoke. Yeah, you just plug it out. Have have a go. Maybe have a few of them, like a trio yeah, of Snokes. I'm have a council of snokes. <laughs> they all agree this is kind of pointless, but hey. That would have been even better. And they talk like twins. They finish each other's sentences. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to leave oh, me the gap to say sentences, end, though. I thought you were going to say diarrhea. Off. Finish each oh, other's diarrhea. diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if they were born in a tube and they're just pooping in the tube, and they're all in the tube. Well, and yeah, they, you know. they, they're all pooping in the same tube. They, they, I mean, you're not really brothers with someone until you say, share the same <laughs> tube poop water. What if they're like oh. the twins from the Matrix? The second Matrix with the white The people dress. who made it or the people who were in it? No, the Snooks. I just said people. <laughs> Put the blonde wigs on them and make them <laughs> flippity flip flips everywhere. They, they could go through the cars and stuff. Dude, imagine the Matrix robots plugging into Snoke, and they're just like, "Ew, <laughs> what is this?" Right. <laughs> well, we'll find out in the next Star Wars book. Oh, It'll be do much poop. Yeah, we need that lore, man. I imagine they, they must have found that a bit lame, you know, when trying to simulate the human race in the Matrix. I bet art wasn't as good because it was all simulated. They were just like, "Ah, oh, we're never gonna get such great movies and uh, things anymore." Maybe that explains how shit everything's been. We're all in a simulation. Mm -hmm. They're robots are trying to come up with it, and they're just not that good. No. Who? Probably right. Um, anyway. said a, some scientists say there's a if we're it's a fifty percent chance we're in a simulation. Fifty. Some science. 50%. I don't know what percentage of scientists say fifty percent. Yeah, but they've no. calculated that it's exactly a fifty percent chance. One yeah. out of two. <laughs> you know, or it's one hundred percent true fifty percent of the time. <laughs> right? But what if it's only 2% of scientists, though? See, that's the thing. 2% of scientists say 50% of the time it's 100% true. <laughs> right, yeah. See, at this point, I think it's we gotta unanimously, find out what We gotta find out what percentage two of scientists are out of all of them. <laughs> I imagine it's fairly low. And then we need to run transparencyscientist.org where we can find out exactly what their politics are so we know whether or not we can believe them. Mm. And it should be run by a bot. Yes. And if you don't get put into Twitter jail, then that means you're okay as well, because you're not spreading fake news. 
Well, I'm glad you've been erased from from Twitter. I was I was seeing my feed and I was getting indoctrinated into your uh, into your radical radicalisms. Oh, no. <laughs> now that they banned you, I feel freed. As um, you should. I suppose yeah. If you wanna if you wanna let the uh, the old EFAP audience know about that, uh, what hap what happened to you today? As what's going I, on? I got I, bad thing I got I got banned from Twitter for twelve hours. <laughs> <laughs> I got banned from Twitter for twelve hours because I. Uh, I linked a Mimology 101 video three days ago. You this is a three-day-old tweet as well. And they're just like, uh, you violated the rule against posting misleading information about voting. Please give us your phone number, and we'll let you back in your account. Fuck off. Give him a, give him a burner phone. There you go. <laughs> no, I'll take the 12 hours, thanks. Yeah, well, <laughs> how does it work? Is it like next time it'll be 24, the next time it's permanent or something like that? I don't care. Well, think, so. Twitter. think twice before sharing videos, all right? I know. Well, that's just it. That's the whole point. That's what they want. They just want you to be silent. <laughs> that's the whole point. They just want to uh, do little, little nasty raps on the knuckles until you're silent. And so all the, all the news that comes out is exactly what they want it to be. Mm. Well, yeah, uh, the video was interesting, <laughs> but uh, mm. I guess if we talk about it or promote it, we could uh, we could all get banned off every everything. It is the most controversial video in existence, potentially. Yeah, um, on yes. YouTube, and everyone can view it, and YouTube's fine with it. Well, you, yeah, YouTube's okay. <laughs> That's the funny thing about a lot of these sort of uh, collectives. It's like sometimes they seem to be unified on everything, and then other times Twitter's like, "This is a bannable offense," and YouTube's like, "Huh?" Uh, Not even we understand. <laughs> like, yeah, we're uh, lost on that one. It's hard to rank them in terms of craziness, I think. Is, is Twitter at the Sean top? Rankin. They they didn't exchange emails that day, and they couldn't decide if they were collectively for or against election tampering. <laughs> YouTube is like the one kid in the group who's like, I, I don't know, I don't know. That seems, I don't know, that video's, I don't know. And they're like, what do you mean? He's like, no, nothing, nothing. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's really bad. Twitter then pulled its whole site down to uh, protect uh, Hunter Biden. <laughs> Yeah, I remember people yeah. tweeting about that. It was like weird timing on it, but um, this is the problem. You, there's no transparency. <laughs> You'll never know no. what's going on or why. Yeah. But um, like people have already caught that title. Who the hell is saying Empire is bad? There are people out there who would like to try and approach that argument. And of course, we've uh, we, we've all had the the fortune of seeing the movie. I think all four of us probably like it a little. You know, Misfortune, because that old... it's real action. I kind of love yeah, it a little bit. That little that silly little movie with the glow sticks. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was nice and cute. It came out a while ago. Quaint. Yeah. Not quite as good as what we get these days, obviously, being very old, but it's pretty neat. Um, mm. Pretty neat. <laughs> we are expecting a uh, drinker any moment, so I'll try and we'll try and have a little chat for a bit before we before we jump in. Though I probably should say, uh, Gary, since you haven't been here since we started uh, asking this incredibly important question, we'll have to get your perspective on it. Christmas or Halloween? Which do you think is better? Oh boy. <laughs> oh, that's a hard question for me. Um, I'm gonna have to say uh, Halloween. Yes. Oh. Join my team, mm. brother. My Christmas. anniversary is on Halloween. I was married. Oh, that's not. <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> Nobody totally. at hey. That's the thing. The whole thing is unfair, man. You know, everybody's just it. judging it from how they feel, and that's the way to do it. That's the way to Game's do it. Rigged. Um, Game is rigged. As that you can see is. from my profile, I quite enjoy Halloween. It's a fun time. <laughs> um, we've been we've been fucking popping on Halloween this this month doing all kinds of streams, games, movies, TV yeah. shows. Um I guess yeah, uh it's going to be Monday Rags and I are recording the 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 meme fap and we'll probably discuss Amnesia Rebirth there. So for now, what do you want to say about it Rags because people will probably be curious. <laughs> What's the blurb, you know? The blurb for Amnesia Rebirth, like what do you what do you put into oh, like a is sentence? Is that what is that is is this the time? Is this oh, what well, we're we'll, doing? Like I said, we'll we'll talk about it at length on Monday uh, with metal and stuff. Um, yeah. But for now, wasn't very good. Uh, I mean, yeah, Amnesia Rebirth is kind of not good. Um, <clears throat> it was really, really disappointing. Not gonna lie. Didn't particularly enjoy going through it. Um, I 
I I wanted to just get through it. Um, yeah, I wasn't too interested in a lot of the stuff going on in the second half, especially because the payoff started getting just more and more uninteresting. There's press, not too much good about it, honestly. It's press, a total press X for Baller's baby. It's like, yeah, pre press X to rub tummy. For frictional. Hey, um, as Gary, you ever thought you'd play a game where a mechanic was press X to rub tummy? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. You see, no, but I, I like the idea already. It'll help you deal with being mm -hmm. terrified by crazy monsters, if that makes that make more or less sense. I don't know. <laughs> but... Now it makes less sense. <laughs> um, yeah, we, uh, we'll talk a lot more about it on, uh, on the recording on Monday. We'll try and get that out uh, for you guys before the end of this month. It's, um, it's a game that Rags and I anticipate quite a bit, and we weren't very happy with it. But that's mm. not important. It's fine. Which um, was the um the horror game where you had a a camera and you it was ghosts oh, and you'd end up taking pictures of Japanese schoolgirls. School oh oh is that uh oh, fuck what's the is it a Japanese game? Yeah, I can't remember. Used to know the name of it. I know what you're talking about. Um, someone in chat's gonna be able to get it, I think. But um, someone might have assumed you were talking about Outlast with the with the video camera. But yeah, I know what you mean. One shot, you can do it. Give us the answers. I don't know. I, it's in my head. I'm pretty sure it's two words. Uh, yeah. Uh... Someone, someone knows. See, someone guessed out. Fatal Frame. Fatal no, Frame. Yeah. Then, okay. Kind of sounds right. Yeah. Batwoman. <laughs> <laughs> it could be Batwoman. Yeah. <laughs> Is that still set for early next year? Because good lord, that's uh... Oh, have you seen the Batmobile? Oh my god, dude. Oh. <laughs> they didn't even want to try. They slapped a sticker on oh. a car. That's what they did. <laughs> <laughs> and they put like eyelashes on it and shit. <laughs> over the over the headlights to make it look feminine. Hey, the car will be perfect once it once it's driven by a woman. <laughs> I don't know well, what I the said, line would uh... be. I said... <laughs> This speeding ticket will be perfect when it's <laughs> given to a woman. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, I'm so ready, dude. Uh, I feel like episode one's gonna be a complete dumpster fire with how they try and transfer from season one to two. The big thing, of course, was just um, there's no resolution for, for Kate Kate and her dad then, I guess. Oh, yeah, she, um, and they were setting that up to be the big thing. They're missing. I don't know if the dad's missing as well, but... The, the plot's going to be that Kate Kane's missing and she's been kidnapped <laughs> by the lesbian pirate. How many times has she kidnapped in the season? Like 17? Uh, Something yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> How many episodes were there? 20? 20 times. Good for her, I guess. She's she's pulling it right through. Um, I suppose uh, it would be worth mentioning since we're on TV shows. Uh, what is What was the general consensus from you two on, uh, on The Boys Season 2? Did you both watch it? Uh, yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> that sounds promising. That growth. <laughs> boring. I think for the most part, boring. Um, yeah. Boring. I, well, I I wasn't bored by it. I'll give it that. I, 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 that wasn't really. I was just annoyed by how much nothing made any fucking sense. <laughs> I was just like getting annoyed. But uh, bored by. I, I've heard this going around. Like the um, the 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 amount of padding people felt were in, was in the season. We were when we were yeah. going over it in the stream. We did notice like there's a lot of scenes where, I mean, it looks it's really bad when you think about um everything with the deep is skippable on a rewatch. Yeah, there's just no point. And um, uh, Huey just he's just there's nothing to him this season. That arc was weird. It was it was he needs to stand up for himself, and so at the end he he joins the team. Oh, I thought his arc was. I like a girl. Um, I don't know, to be honest with you. There was a couple of arcs running at the same time, I think, or at least implied ones, but as he's right. very, he's very explicit at the end, he's like, I gotta stand on my two feet. I can't be, I, I can't be clinging to people anymore. And it's just like, oh, those dudes were your friends. That's not, you don't have to, you can be friends with people and not cling to them. And then he just clings to a, to a completely other thing. So... Really weird ending, and um, there's I not. The black guy did nothing. He got to go back to his family at the end. That we haven't really seen anything from at all. 
Oh, they sort of forgot they existed, and now they're back so that he could be happy, so we could have our happy reset ending. Oh, you mean the, one of the very last moments of the whole season? Yes, that <laughs> lasted for about five seconds. Well, um, did you either of you get the impression that like season two is almost a skippable season? Um, uh -huh. if you watch season one and everything goes to shit toward the end, and then someone tells you like, yeah, they're fine. And then you start season three, you'll probably be okay. Because <laughs> the Stormfront comes and goes. Um, the status quo is reformed. We've even... Uh, I think the only thing missing would be getting the deep back in the seven. But again, that makes sense from the end of season one. So yeah, uh, I think it's, it's kind of weird. Um, though, the crazy telekinesis woman has been released. Who knows what kind of crazy antics she might get up to in season three? Yeah, Exciting stuff. who knows? Hey, hey. Yeah. Uh, Maybe she'll a, be an interesting character. Out of curiosity, do you get more entertainment value out of Batwoman or The Boys Season 2? Well, Batwoman, because it, <laughs> at least it could, provoked a reaction from me. The Boys didn't. It was just there. It existed, but it didn't do him. I, I didn't feel anything other than I've just wasted an hour. Well. There was only, I think there was one episode I, I enjoyed. I think episode five. I was actually, that was really, that was good, that one. And that was it. That was all the others were just they just happened. I mean, there was moments. It wasn't the worst television. Of, it's not like uh, I'm reviewing Star Trek Discovery, which I mean, like Batwoman is funny. Like it's uh, oh, yeah. and watching you guys review it is even better. But um, yeah. like Star Trek Discovery is still like uh, offensively bad. But the boys was uh, disappointing because there was a lot. It just it went really CW for me. There was so much feelings and basements and feelings and uh diners and uh little anecdotal stories that don't mean crap to the to the overall thing and um and you know the human being in me i can't it's it's hard for me to especially a property that i loved so much that comic and to see it just uh neutered absolutely neutered uh especially the butcher uh who is just a much better character in the comic books and uh and my beef with it was the agenda uh, quite frankly, in this in this set, what we talked about in the in the penultimate episode was it seventh or eighth? I can't remember seventh, um, where you know the, the freaking the whole memes led to everything, and that was dumb as hell. <laughs> um, we actually um in the last stream we paused for like all of the individual babes. Oh man, there's some uh -huh. there's They're some keepers. Worthless. They can't meme. It's, no. Oh, it's hilarious that they actually like someone made those. I like to think a team of seven people made them. Okay, like a I large think it's amount. like a. I think it's, they seem like an AI One. sort of was programmed yeah. to make memes, and so the AI did its best to just randomly <laughs> put together memes, and that's what it came up with. Well, I think the the AI was a fifty year old dude. That's what the children hey. laugh at these Eric, days. Eric Kripke. <laughs> Children love these pictures with the words on them. Where's I got a, I got a question for you, Moore. Oh my god, go for it. Because because we all seem to get everyone seems to get on nicey nicey. We need we need some more bloods and Montagues and Capulets here. So when is EFAP uh, gonna go mono e mono against Friday Night Tights at Among Us? Bitch. Oh shit! Wait, you can't do that though, because it's all it's all Makes one sense. one on ones. How do you make teams? <laughs> yeah. Well, you would just have would have uh, how many can you have? Eight. We'd have four refappers and would have four Friday night tires on Among Us. That wouldn't really be like two teams of four. Like it wouldn't be a four v four yeah, really. Just, it'd just be us having fun together. But oh, completely agreed. I'd love to play some video games with you. I was just confused at the concept of that being a team game. <laughs> like, how's that work? No, we just pretend it's like EFAP versus Friday Night Ties, but we're just having fun. Um, we're just, yeah, sure. You, you guys you guys been liking Among Us, huh? You guys been liking deceiving people? Is that it? Is that what you got banned from Twitter? Yes. Or deception. Because I said no. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> um, he said no. We don't no, want uh, voting fraud. No never. voting fraud. <laughs> never will I say anything that is even representative of voting fraud. Voter fraud bad, everyone. Let's yes. I think everyone can Unless agree. Unless Twitter, in which case voting fraud good. Voting fraud yeah. questionable when <laughs> it depends on who's in charge and who's judging. Uh can't believe as targeted an innocent minority for yeah. 
doing a civil service. It's it's. Ugh. Yeah, you targeted me, Mology. Doesn't doesn't his icon have yeah. like a sombrero? So you're going after some kind of innocent person there. I yeah, I linked a brown person. Wow. Yeah. I think you can just do that and send your hordes after them on Twitter. Well, I tried, and well, look what happened. I and still um, people Is link he... me like tweets on Discord where they're like, "This person's saying this about you." By the way, and it'll it'll be like a full paragraph how much I'm the worst person ever, and it'll end with, "I'll bet he'll quote tweet this and send his hordes after me." And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, you're being a cunt. Like, can I not? <laughs> well, not that I don't care if hordes come for you or whatever the fuck you're talking about. Like people disagreeing with you, but uh, the idea that I can't respond just because that happens is stupid. Like, do you not get what social media is? <laughs> I have to. I have to. I can respond to them, but it has to be in a DM. <laughs> it's like, hey, don't be mean. Um, don't be open mean. up my mentions, and I have to like sift through it. It takes me like ten whole minutes. <laughs> Terrible. No, out of curiosity, okay. There's no wrong answers here. I'm not going to hurt you, okay. You may have heard that I might, have, uh, but but I won't. I swear. Either either of you guys seen Bly Manor? What do you think of it? Seen who? Bly Manor. The haunting of Bly Manor. Oh, uh, I no. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't finish the first episode. It was moving a little slow. But uh, <laughs> I saw what you said, so I'm like, okay, uh, I'll give it another chance because of Mahler. Uh, um, I, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't even give it a shot. I but, uh, like. I wouldn't promise that anyone would like level anything it, right? It's just that... Uh... It's it does some stuff that really impressed me, and I'm probably gonna make a video on it eventually one day, as I am with everything that exists. It's all in a giant list. Um, but uh, what it had to say about um, memory and mental illness uh, was was incredibly meaningful to me. Um, but but of course it would it may not hit people the same way, and I would just say like yeah, give give it a shot just in case you don't you might not want to miss out. I think um, Critical Drinker has seen just over half of it so far, so. If he were here, I would say, hey, what do you think so far? Tell Gary to watch it. <laughs> like, it'll be great. It is a will, shockingly well-constructed story. Um, really, uh, really, really stellar. We were impressed. I, I, will, I will sit through it. Uh, I, I'm okay with like things having a slow beginning. I just, uh, you know, I had just come off the boys, and I was surly. Uh, Lady. Uh, oh, surly. Dude. Yeah, I just come off all those boys. Yeah, then that's gonna get clipped. Um, so <laughs> whatever. Hey boys. Um, yeah, I I finished with the boys. I was really early with that. Oh, that's another one. God damn it, just walking in the shit all the time. <laughs> I, I wanted to make Joe to be good because uh well, I mean, I'm in the comic book for Christ's sake, and I'm friends with the guy who co-created the damn show. So I, I went right from that to the to Bly Manor, and I was just it was probably wasn't in a very good mood. Yeah, it's um, uh, it? definitely not the same. Like, it's not in the same realm as the boys in terms of uh, an experience, of course. Right. But uh, I, I was, I was expecting, I, like everyone else, something more like the first season too. So the or the the you know haunting a, on Hill House or, and that was that season was that was good. That was so good. Yeah, it uh, seems uh, it was I, much more of a crowd pleaser Hill House than Blind Manor has been, but you know, Blind Manor's better. <laughs> it is okay. I I think it's uh the Hill House unfortunately is world mechanics sort of the ghosts and everything none of it makes any fucking sense but Blind Manor actually um puts in a lot of effort to try and make it make sense not without its problems of course uh but we we were just impressed by how much um it seems it almost seems like Mike Flanagan when making the second season was like oh I should probably shore up the um the way everything works in terms of when people die and when they come back what, what exactly are the 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 limits it is kind of hard to be definitive about ghosts because they're ghosts, but but uh, he does give it a, a harder shot, I would say, in the second season than the first in terms of um, powers, if you will, for lack of a better word. Cool. Um, I'm more excited to know that they've started filming Superman and Lois this week. Oh, the oh, what's that? That's the CW show, right? Yeah. Gosh. Oh, so what's Lois gonna? I guess they'll just be reporters together what if it was just that it was just being reporters like he doesn't actually do any superman stuff for all of season one it's just like yeah really... that's all assumed <laughs> off screen this is the real the real man the down-to-earth shit 
reporting on all of the horrible events of um, Metropolis he, getting destroyed by Luther. That sort of shit. He's in the boys' universe, and he's reporting on all of the superhero shenanigans. Oh, and he hmm. secretly knows he's actually the the biggest, baddest superhero ever. Did from we another do that planet. show in in the late nineties? Or am I imagining that? The, like uh, Lois Clark, and Clark. And Lewis. yeah. yeah. yeah that that was a good uh, show. I, mean, I, loved I remember Clark. watching that. Yeah. I yeah, ask you, okay. like, what's more fictional? A guy who can fly around with you know red pants on, as you guys say. In the UK, or uh, people actually reporting news, because um, I would believe <laughs> the guy flying around. Yeah, it'll be interesting well, to see a show about reporting um, news. How, how, how when Lewis and Clark, the new he adventures just... Superman was on TV, uh, journalism was still a credible yeah. job. <laughs> now, not so much. The good old days. Yes. Um, Back in my day, <laughs> journalism. <laughs> Yeah, you they used to see something people. happen and then tell us about it. How crazy <laughs> is that? And they, wouldn't, they would just tell you the basic facts. They wouldn't try and assert any sort of opinion. I miss those days. I, I miss those days. Those were beautiful times. A little cup of coffee in the morning and some tuna sandwiches in the afternoon with a little cucumber inside. <laughs> like, Dad, you're rambling again. He's like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. I remember Man, those I days when Man, journalism was with a hot water bottle. <laughs> well, journalism wasn't always about politics and opinions and social issues. It was about getting pictures of Spider Man. Exactly. And it, was, it was so much more simple back in those days. It really was. He's a menace. Who a is criminal. the ma menace? Oh yeah. Hey, they got the Lord of the Rings. They're um they're starting up the third Spider Man for the MCU now as well, right? But everything MCU has been pushed super far as far as I know. Yep. So How do you like when are they gonna give up and push uh, Black Widow onto streaming? I'm assuming that's like their only option at this point. Ooh. No, they no. Well, they, they might just sit on it. Spring time, don't they? They're gonna hope, I think. We got a uh, Wonder Woman's coming out, right? At the end of this year, is that still happening? Yeah. Yeah. No. December. You guys excited I for that? <laughs> I'm no. gonna I'm gonna wait for one of you guys to watch it and say, tell me. I'm not gonna. I, I, I like the only way I watch it that is fucking. If if it goes on to streaming, I'll give it a shot. But like that trailer, man, how it ended, I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> over to you. Gary, yep. you have to take the bullet, okay? I'm all over it. Because uh, Fringy was telling me about the plot line, or at least what what we we assume it is from from some leaks, and I was just like, Jesus Christ! Like I was having real real I trouble following it. I haven't really read anything on Wonder Woman. Uh, don't have too much of an interest in it. But if it's crazy bad, I'd be happy to watch a, a, a super <laughs> crazy bad movie. That's it's that's that way, way that's interesting. What you mean if it goes into like Catwoman territory? Well, I mean, with that ending, it's probably going in at least into Cat's territory, right? Cat's <laughs> territory. <laughs> well, I I'll probably want to lick my ass after the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's looking to be a weird one. Um, the, the story does sound terrible <laughs> and, and predictable as well, which is great. Well, because there's nothing worse than that. Like, I don't think this is a spoiler, right? So her boyfriend guy dies in the first film, and in this one, he's already in the trailer. So it's like, huh? Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, she makes like a monkey paw type deal where she wishes for him yeah. to come back to life, and it's gonna it's gonna mm -hmm. cost her some stuff, and that's like the premise. Yeah. yeah, already it's like so you can uh, already work out how it's going to end man, just by that <laughs> ruining everything again. I I just feel like the introduction of like a wish system into the DC universe right now is probably not going to help with people understanding how everything works. But you know why not? Let's let's go crazy. Oh, and uh, Zack Snyder's had um, Jesse Eisenberg back in, isn't he, for some. Uh, Lex Luthor scenes and he's been getting a lot Jared of people back Lito. in, hasn't he? Yeah, Jared Leto set up for some Joker scenes in Justice League, and um, the guy who played Deathstroke, he's he's done some from what I know. Mm, yeah, well, he's um he's doing that coy thing where he has, but he's not saying. Mm. Yeah, who it knows what um the Snyder Cut's gonna look like? His his Deathstroke Dark. costume is fucking amazing at the end, though. That is the best thing about the whole film is his look good. Look good. <laughs> You guys hopeful for uh, the Snyder Cut? Uh, I think it's going to make more sense. I think yeah. it's going to be... <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing he says. Probably yeah. more sense. It's going to make uh, more sense than the Joss Whedon one. 
How is it how is it gonna work continuity wise? Like which one are they going to make sequels for, if you know what I mean? Uh Zack Snyder's. Is that is it like a, um is it dependent on maybe how well it does, or is it just gonna be categorical? They're just like, oh we'll go with that. Well they they have a plan, uh, but of course it will it really will depend on how successful <clears throat> the um Snyder Cut one does. But if it if it does well, then have they said I've already got a plan for future um, content based off of that. Well, the, because there's such a lack of content now because of the shutdown, the, uh, all studios are now going back and taking a look at what they have, uh, what was partially shut down, stuff they shelved that they can maybe retool to save some money and have some content because that's all they need right now. Yeah. I so yeah, that's cool. All kinds of meetings about how everything's just gonna have to change. Everything, the way they do everything, it has to change. They have to evolve and adapt now to everything that's happening. Yep. So yeah, like I said, if it's successful, then we get like this Snyder universe on uh, on HBO Max because then we'll get a universe. Snyder universe. We'll get a um, Suicide Squad. <clears throat> <Talking> <laughs> about that. That, could, that out. could be good, you know. That could be good. Back to back uh, super chats right now. Mm -hmm. Snyder Cut will be amazing. People need to stop simping for the Snyder Cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, it's unknown. Everybody likes, uh, there's a saying here in the States, everybody Perfect. loves a back, backup quarterback. So it's it's the unknown. And But when once you see it, you hear that, well, uh, the Robin that died was Dick Grayson. And uh, Batman's supposed to die in this, supposedly. Really? Uh yeah, there's there's all kinds of uh, twists and turns. Last time I, I saw Batman yeah. die, it wasn't that great. So hopefully it'll be better. Which one are you referring to? I'm talking about Crisis on Infinite Earth. Oh, oh fuck. God. Oh, I completely oh, no. oh, 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 oh. Oh, Do you That's... remember? Yeah, that was a memory you just unlocked. It was kept away. <laughs> <laughs> where, um, where he tells Kate uh, that... <laughs> He spent all his career fighting crime until that one day that he fell down the slippery slope and <laughs> killed the Joker, and, and it was the worst thing that happened to him, and it yeah. would destroy you and kill you. I just started and killing just you. It was like him. fucking Pringles. I couldn't stop. Well, one murder after the next. The stupid thing about it is him. she She's kills. Fine. Yeah, she kills creepy skin man, and and it's just like yeah, it was you know Batman killed people too. It's like what what? <laughs> yeah. Not only did he kill people, no, he that fucking was the, That was the second it. time she murdered. Oh, my, yeah, and that's not including all of the people she's let die thanks to leaving Alice go all the time. She's mm. um, she's incredible. I really feel like, you know, Batwoman, Captain Marvel, they should have their own show together. Crime fighting duo. The amount of people they'd kill. Couple of cunts. Cool yeah, they'd kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Marvel, Batwoman, couple of cunts. <laughs> Coming to a cinema near you. We can add um, Ray and I'll Mulan into their team. It'll make $180,000. <laughs> the thing is, so many people would turn up just to be like, seriously, they put Batwoman and Captain Marvel in a team? Oh my god. Captain Marvel and DC crossover? We've been waiting for years and that's what we get. I would pay to see Jacob shoot them with his gun. I would. I would. That's just the, the dream scene. That was the best scene in the whole series. <laughs> Do you remember when he said, Sir, he's like, look at this round. He's like, Desert Eagle, that can shoot through anything. <laughs> <laughs> I too know nothing about guns. <laughs> you can uh, start the movie, they can both murder John Connor, like during the credits. <laughs> and, oh, man. Uh, yeah. Nobody would be that bold. Whoops. Terminator's going to get another sequel, I guarantee it. And yeah. Nani would be in it again. See, it was yeah. never really about John. That's what people need to understand. When you watch T2, time. they were mainly protecting, like, just some kid. It wasn't really... It was, it's not important. Just well, some orbiter, just some people. grifter. <laughs> the next people, Ar Arnold will just be a full-on interior decorator. <laughs> I mean, you know, I love Arnie, but like, he's gonna be in a wheelchair in the next one. He's gonna be like, let's go get them and slowly moves forward. <laughs> you know, oh my God, we, need a, we need an old man who's in better shape. Quick, call William Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, Bill's looking great. He's doing great for he's 90 next year, for goodness sake. Yeah, he's looking Never fucking thought. stellar, kind yeah. of. Are they, gonna, are they gonna give him a show like Picard? Is that happening? Well, Patrick Stewart looks like he's gonna die any day now. Well, I mean, they're gonna the squeeze him any... Willie Shot is out of like twice body. the size of him and fucking riding around on bikes and going on every show possible and drinking every day. Yeah. Yeah. They will squeeze every season out of him that they can, I'm sure. Yeah, Discovery. No, I saw uh, Gary. You released reviews on Discovery. I was like, Discovery's got another season. Like, how is this happening? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? Stop. Super I think season. they might just be. They just need a show. Yep. Yeah. They they just need content for brand. That's that's the only reason. Yeah, they... because the ratings don't seem to be doing good, and I don't exactly hear people talking about how glowingly amazing that show is. Well, I only ever hear bad locked. things. That's all I ever hear. Is it like how are the ratings doing? Is it is it enough you think no. to get like no, uh, additional seasons or is it something else? It's it's uh it's Netflix. So Netflix helps pay for some of this. Apparently, there's some five year deal that uh, that's been funding it, but it's less and less money every time because they blew it all kind of on the first two seasons. That's amazing. So, After signing a five year deal and then you see the first season and you're like, oh god, four more <laughs> years. Yes. Oh my god. I think, I think the Netflix deal was three. So I think the fourth season's actually had to be funded elsewhere. Really? Mm. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, it looks a lot cheaper. They went and filmed on Planet Iceland for the first two episodes and they were all running around basically the same scenery, but it was like Michael Burnham was on her own on one other side of the planet and then the rest of the crew was by themselves on, on a Pandora Iceland where, I mean, like... You're a little particular, you know, you like things to make sense in your stuff, but well, yeah, explain yeah. how rocks can float in the sky, you know. Well, Dude, I know. I'm more concerned about how does a woman survive getting hit by a fucking spaceship? And then name your daughter, Mike. And live, but, you know, okay. She gets hit by a spaceship by the nicest guy in space, by the way, and then falls down to a planet in a suit and is fine. She just like he has a little hurt shoulder. She shakes it off. Well, I've away. seen a couple of people reviewing, uh, that show and whenever i see the uh like the description of she went did she go like through time and space in like a giant angel suit sending red energy to people i was like uh, i'm not following this anymore i'm getting very confused oh, remember that episode of the next generation where they did that it's they've done this before it's all mm. it's all totally grounded yeah when they can send uh signals that are 150 light uh, 150 thousand light years apart that appear simultaneously somehow uh -oh. light faster JJ. somewhere else it's not as good as Picard's final episode where, hi, this is a device that can do anything. You just have to think it. No, oh, they bring that out in the first <laughs> have a magic oh. bullshit machine. It's called, a, just... it's called a uh, programmable a matter. Bullshit device. Yeah. No, but... the best part, Az, uh, Az will get this. Did you know that the Red Angel suit and the Discovery had uh, both had autopilot? Both had what? autopilot. Yes, <laughs> they both had auto. Okay, so the the premise is they had to get the discovery out of the current timeline because it had information from an artificial. The show was terrible. They had to get it out of this timeline. <laughs> yes, they did. And they were running from an artificial intelligence that didn't know it. Well, that knew enough that it wanted to be an artificial intelligence, but it wasn't quite an artificial intelligence yet. So they defeated the artificial intelligence. You know? It was dead. And they still left the timeline that they didn't need to leave. And they decided to man the ship and man the suit, but they had they had autopilot. They could have just flown them out of there without going. Anyway. <laughs> yes. Now this is why we need to keep the word retard alive. <laughs> <laughs> we have to be able to have words to describe these <laughs> things. <laughs> this the beloved is word. Mentally deficient. Um, oh boy! I just since that one's just come in, I could probably just grab it on for you, Nudrotic. Uh, saw your recent Lord of the Rings video and wondered what do you think of the possibility of Game of Thrones being considered mythology due to people following mythology? Damn it! I didn't catch all of it. <laughs> it just went off screen. <laughs> Give me a sec. I, I just figure if I can catch the ones that are actually come in directed at you, it's probably a, a good way to make it so you don't miss them at the end. Because I doubt you guys are going to be available for twelve hours, right? I am prepared for, for damn near most of it. We'll say that. Well, Depends right. on... Um, 
sorry, I can read it out slowly now, not in, not in crazy format. I saw your recent Lord of the Rings video, and I wondered, what do you think of the possibility of Game of Thrones being considered mythology due to people following mythologies of the author like Lord of the Rings? That would be scary. Uh, well, it would be closer to real mythology, to be honest with you. I mean, mythology, if Greek mythology is crazy. So, uh, it's but nuts, I don't think yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah. It's I don't great. think, you, I mean, incest, <laughs> headings, drapes everywhere. Uh, drapes everywhere. Drape, well, you know, I, mean, uh, I got YouTube speak. Um, and uh, yeah, I, Tolkien's is a very nice mythology. It's a very, you know, he's, he's a hardcore Catholic. Uh, he doesn't want to put sex in his stuff. Uh, yeah, I could see if like, uh, I don't know what you're saying there. Maybe if somebody finds it in the future and it turns into mythology or people would consider it our American mythology. Sure. Why not? I mean, you got to finish the story, though, I would think. Yeah, or maybe mean, not. Let's hope the show doesn't enter mythology status. All right. <laughs> let's, no, let's move no. away from that one. No, I, I predict, I mean. I don't know who's read the books here. I, I know Mahler, you're, I've you've read, read the, the Lord book. of the Rings books. Yes. Um, they're good and they have an they ending. Uh, <laughs> a Song of Ice and Fire. I, I, it, the ending of the books could be just as bad. Could be. Yeah. Uh, it makes a little more sense, but it'll piss just as many people off. If <sighs> not. I think people are already, they, they've already been let down by Game of Thrones. Whereas Lord of the Rings people, even the Hobbit, isn't then like sour the lord of the rings it was like its own thing oh. yeah because being honest like the only thing i remember is that um gandalf probably should have looked into the ring a little sooner if you consider the hobbit films as being prequels to the lord of the rings which obviously they are uh like he yeah, knows they were, they were fine i mean they weren't great but they don't affect how you feel about lord of the rings yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think so. Most people, yeah, we're, we're cool with the Hobbit films existing, I suppose. Yeah, There's nothing like the oh. sequel trilogy. <laughs> they didn't get me He's mad. Like, you know, the Hobbit going mad. Uh, the Legolos thing got me mad. That was it. But I still... Legolos, look I'm, at this fake fan. <laughs> uh, 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 they, that, that whole love triangle thing got me fucking pissed off. Yeah, I don't I don't think anyone liked that. It was, it was weird. She Not even the actors because wanted it. Was it. Real. It was real. Oh, <laughs> real. fuck that. Oh, oh, yeah. Damn. Maybe we shouldn't remind ourselves of the Hobbit films, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to Batwoman quick. Listen, yeah. Lord of the Rings had tons of dead dwarfs in it. What's a few more? Hey, yo. That is fucked up, bro. You can't say that. Not on live television. People oh, sorry, little people. Yeah, that's the way you're supposed to say it. God. <laughs> um, there, yeah. there were minors. I think... Uh, Drinker will be here at, at, at any any time now, but I'm just gonna hmm. I'm just gonna run into our uh, our topic for the day was actually so. Have you guys ever come across a guy called Eighty Eighty Chat? Sound familiar to you? No. Oh wow, really? He's um, I guess he's just uh, he's just not come across you at all. Then he's he's like a mini Hello Greedo. He does the exact same things. He's How do just... you have a little version no of him? Has ever come across yeah. me before? <laughs> well, this is the thing. He's he does the same like, stuff. Think, imagine Hello Greedo, but less grandiose. <laughs> he's, he's less <laughs> successful in his defense. Like he's he's perpetually frustrated that people don't like TLJ. Like it's it's that kind of um, oh, yeah, personality. Shit, so. mm. And the funny thing is, we were we were always at a point of like, yeah, we might might cover him at some point here and there. But like, I think it was a week and a half ago, or um, it's like ten days, something like that. He uh, the, oh yeah, it is ten days. Haha. He so he he said um, so someone responded to him about one of the videos he made being good, and, and someone sent me the screenshot where he was like, uh, oh yeah, uh, well I'll send it to you guys as well. Actually, Rags, do you want to read it out? Yeah, let's uh, let's give this a read. Um, this is uh, at at chat saying, hey, really appreciate it. Those EFAP weirdos loved making fun of it with some sword master guy <laughs> explaining why it's all wrong. It was hilarious to watch. So we've never covered him before. <laughs> like, Wait, is this the video where he says the the throne room fight was good? Well, we've we've covered people saying that before, but we've never covered him. Um, yeah, we've never covered him. So he yeah, clarified later. Uh, it was actually Smudcast who had Shad on, um, and they covered his video about how the throne room fight is like the best fight in Star Wars. Which wow, 
Yeah, it's really bad. <laughs> I'm like the idea of liking the fight is like one thing, but the best in the entire saga, like, jeez. Uh, all right, hey. whatever floats your boat. Um, well, I, I got one for you then. What do you think is the best lightsaber fight in Star Wars? Uh, it would be for me, it would probably be Empire when Luke and Vader fight. That's probably my favorite. But uh, I really like the Darth Maul fight as well, for different reasons. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I would personally say the Darth Maul fight. I'm leaning <clears throat> towards that one, kind of, yeah. What are you, Gary? Oh, uh, Luke and Vader had more impact. I mean, like technically, the 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 Darth Maul fight's better mm. as far as like, sword play, laser sword play. It's uh, it's yeah, it's it's more entertaining. The music's great, but as far as impact for me, I'm just gonna be, I guess, uh. Of course, uh, I want a special mention for Revenge of the Sith's um, Anakin Obi Wan fight. As uh, I don't know if you've seen Shad's video on it, but it's quite amazing how um, how much effort went into that fight on a choreography scale. Of course, yeah, but that's just the problem for me. It just felt too choreographed. Oh, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I'll take that over fumbling and dropping like, weapons and falling over for no reason throughout the whole fight. You know what I mean? Like. The, the, they tried with uh, with TLJ to make it the, the the clear goal with the throne moon fight was to have it be this this enormous like wide shot of just all this chaos happening at once. But um, unfortunately, you end up with stuff like three people getting kicked by one foot, which uh, yeah, force probably... kick. Yeah, force kick increases yeah. the range of your kick by six hundred percent. I've run out of skill points, dude. Oh my goodness, I gotta save up next level because I want this force kick ability. I want to be able to kick five people at once with my one foot. But I mean, yeah, you know, everyone, everyone takes a different one. And uh, Swordmaster Guy is obviously referring to, to Shad. Um, at least, you know, he, he gives him the proper respect. He is a master of swords, that's true. Yeah. And so, yeah, I've, uh, but the thing is, the, the one that was on, like, the backlog, sort of, to cover was uh, this guy made a video, like, pretending to, to use, like, using my format, but going after Empire Strikes Back. Um, when I'd heard that that was a thing, I was like, man, this has got to be, uh, going to be super interesting, I imagine. Um, so, first of all, I just wanted to show you guys, um, why, why is he motivated to go after the Empire? What would, what would be your theory on that? Why would he do that? I've got a theory. My theory is, and we've seen it before, is that the the primary way that people defend the sequels is by trying to tear down the originals. Yes. You see, if my thing is in the mud, and then I put your thing in the mud, then we're all in the mud. <laughs> like, we're okay. all muddy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, I was going to say jealousy. Oh, absolutely, yeah. They're, I'd say it's a big frustration that their um their beloved movies are not reaching the same level of appreciation as something from you know as as early as the seventies. They're just like boo. Yeah, do you wanna do you wanna check this one out, Rags? Someone said, but the blade disappeared. Uh, me. No one cares at all except people trying to earn money on YouTube. When I see a deep dive nine hour diatribe on this frame, I'll take the grifters seriously. Wow, what were grifters? Yep. Well, that's a really that's just thrown everywhere these days. It means nothing anymore. Mm. You you are a grifter if you have an opinion they don't like, <laughs> and yeah. you have an audience. It's as simple as that. Um, so what, I guess he moves on to Nazi. They're trying something different. He moves on to quote something I've literally never heard before ever said. Um, but we can't critique the OT. They started it all. Who's ever said that? I. I have no idea who There's said no this. Source. There's no source that he's quoting from. I've never, I've never heard anyone say this. Like, it's an argument I don't think I've actually ever heard of before. They started it, therefore you can't criticize them? Does anyone no. ever use that for anything ever when it relates to film franchises? That's weird. Jedi had plenty of criticism. Yeah. Well, maybe that doesn't count because A New Hope's... Well, he's saying the OT started it all, so yeah, that must count. And shit tons of people rip into Return of the Jedi. So, weird one. Um, and then, and then, of course, I've never heard that. the classic bullshit. You can critique it in the same way, lol. You'll find out very soon. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh my, my god! god. <laughs> this, um, this is a pretty clean example of destroying a straw man and feeling pretty good about it. You just you just build up this <laughs> argument that no one makes, and then you destroy it. And you're like, yeah, beat your ass. Fuck yeah. Um. Beat your ass about myself. So that was like odd. 
Yeah, that's really odd. Liking The Last Jedi is a mental disorder now. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> it, um, it clearly does things to scramble your brain. And so life goes on, you know, EFAP and everyone else doing their own thing. And then I find out this mud boy, when um, covering AT80 chat, wasn't something that AT80 chat liked. Not at all. So, uh, Rags, you want to read? Want to read this one? All right. Um, I love that this guy's channel is so bad that he needs to do live streams regarding if my opinions on what I enjoy are objective enough. L M A O. Bunch of yolks. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Like he's like eggs. Like <laughs> he's sort of like egg yolks. Correct. Um. I don't know. Uh, I guess they made sure to get some high-profile guy to dismantle my happiness. <laughs> well, you tell us, mate. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no idea on that one. But it's just so you have the context for uh, for this next tweet. Check it out. What's funny is it looks like he primarily streams. So if I dock him, he can't stream for three months. Wow, what an actual, what a fucking oh, piece of whoa. shit person. So he's, he's yeah. uh, oh, that's... Wow. So, uh, yeah, he's saying a, that if I can get a it hit with a... Reached YouTube terms and conditions right there. Well, yeah, no, that's no, definitely because a... it's totally fair. Smudboy's saying mean things to him and saying his video's not uh, up to a certain standard, so of course he can just destroy his channel if he wants to. But this guy is a disgusting YouTube piece of shit. Target and a... Mm, what are you... Wow. So, um, and you'd think like, oh, is it a joke, baby? It's like, um, what do you, what do you think? Read that one out, right? <laughs> All right. He's got a new one today. Can't wait to flag it in what the shit show unfold. Oh. Mm. He's not even interested in watching wow. it. He'll just flag him. Yeah, he's piling up. But like, wow. wow. What a yeah. horrible person. Mom and never call her back. Smud Boy's, um, Last of Us 2 stuff was good. I watched it. Well, he's 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 uh, doing something similar to to what we do. He, he checks out videos, talks about them, has different guests on, and the idea that if he covers your video, you should flag him. It's like, wow, that's Man. really Why? toxic. But okay, the worst kind of a YouTuber, like Jesus. Well, so what? If you, I mean, no, I mean, not so what that you uh, target somebody. I mean, so what if somebody rips your video? So what? I mean, chill. Well, I'm 12, and I can't handle people saying <laughs> mean things about me on the internet, so I have to do underhanded shit like flagging their videos so that mommy and daddy YouTube will protect me. Well, of course, as you guys probably know, a strike is pretty bad uh, for your channel. It can do a lot of damage. A claim can be really annoying, and uh, when either of them are done in like a false way, it's bad. Eckhart's ladder had a bunch uh, fired at his channel um, all over overnight. It's the kind of thing that happens every once in a while to different channels where like something updates and then it's just like, oh, seven of your videos are no longer cool. And you're like, oh, shit, okay. Rule change. And of course, some, some people are like, oh, yeah, that sucks. Oh, that's, 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 that's the worst. And uh, look, who's, look who's saying, oh, man, it sucks to have that happen to you, dude. Uh, oh, yeah. Eight, <laughs> uh, at at uh, chat. Uh, says absolute madness. I'm so sorry for my dude. Yeah, it's insane when people, you know, come after yeah. your shit like that. Terrible. Yeah, what a incredibly unprincipled little child. <laughs> so like, yeah, quite quite a little adventure there. Uh, we we just haven't covered him, and since he said that the other week, like he's he's already operated as though we have. It's like, well, maybe it's time to check out his his video saying that um, yeah. It's it's called the Empire Strikes Back killed Star Wars and then and then a bridal really? rage review. The the joke is that it's it's me doing it like and he's oh. parodying me or satirizing uh. me, but of course uh. we'll we'll give it the treatment we give um, Cinema Sins right. So if everything is either a joke or or we can we can um you can have to take them case by case. But you know if say for example. He he has like an, a, a reference like he did in that tweet where he's like, "Oh, see, the lightsaber probably should have I don't know cut Vader's arm, but it doesn't. Therefore, these movies are fine. The the sequel movies are fine. Get over it, sort of thing. It'll just be interesting to see what kind of uh, ding comparisons he, he'll he'll bring up. We who did we do that with recently, Rags? It was, it was um somebody who's trying uh, to argue that, like there there are silly moments bad jokes and all this other stuff in the original trilogy as well as if to imply like it's just it's all on a level playing field you see in terms of craft yeah, they're all day like this thing we get that 
we kind of get that a lot because that's 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 the thing people defend the sequels by trying to tear down the originals <laughs> and they do that all the time they go for the prequels a lot as well though it's easier to go after the prequels well you guys so remember, that's what they um, do what, what do they say like oh if empire came out today everyone would have hated it it's like y y no <laughs> just yeah no i mean we love it wasn't forbes also some some buddy did an article like that on forbes or some shit if empire came out today people would hate it yeah, it's, it's... I think uh, uh, Ryan Johnson said that. Oh, <laughs> of course. Was that? I feel like it was one of the earlier interviews. Yeah, because yeah, well, he said something like he said that it it, uh, it was it was BS what he said, but he said there was a lot of people who were upset with it. And that is just flat out untrue. Uh, we were kind of blown away at the you know the cliffhanger, but you know, I don't remember pe people being mad. Just wanting to see the next one really quick. Oh, and I, yeah. That's the EFAP with Empire with you guys. And, you know, watching it again after any, it'd been a while, been a little while since I've watched Empire. And it was just like fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Rags and I watched it about two months ago. Yeah. We watched it. So it's it a was quite good. Film. Really enjoyed it. <laughs> pretty and good I've been shit. watching, we've been watching a lot of the OT recently myself for this Mando video, going through clips and getting references. And I just sort of find myself starting to, just sort of watch it. Uh, really, really good stuff. A lot of really good stuff in there. Um, for those of you who haven't watched the OT in a while and are operating from memory, really does owe itself to a, a good rewatch. There's a lot of good stuff in there, and it has mm. aged really well. Mm -hmm. um, so are we able to... Like, like, Gary, do you need to do any kind of switch out in any kind to... Um... Yeah, let if sorry about that i should have thought about it before but if you want to vamp for like a couple minutes i can just switch out mics so we don't oh, get it we back. can we, we can, can have a talk. chat i bet you can oh, yes. <laughs> as explains the audience why did you hate empire strikes back <laughs> because i didn't like the way that the because had a black guy in it oh my god <laughs> terrible no. he had a cape what are they trying to say i know Oh, I'm fine with the black guy. I just hated when they made him the good one. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. 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 Bad. Makes no sense. A city on clouds. Really? Good job. Wow. Like, what? come on. How was it, like, quiet there? What, you, the engines keeping it up in the air would be so noisy. Wow. I, I think just, of the, uh, the environment, the pollution. Giant space penis monster. Like, really? Okay. My mm. suspension of disbelief out the window. Not How even did Darth Vader really, like absorb the phaser shots from his light pistol? Yeah, and and Han should have should have shot him in the head. He's supposed to be good at shooting, and he went for his hand. Idiot. Yeah. Vamp like Halloween vampire. Hell yeah. Plus, I mean, all that food was probably cold by then. That's, so that's probably the biggest good. fuck up. Like Vader's like, "Oh yeah, join us for dinner." And it's like it's not even hot. Oh, yeah, it's all cold <laughs> now. And uh. maybe it's a cutlery. You know, it's just help yourself. I think we've talked about this before, but it's always just like if <laughs> I think even <laughs> Robot Chicken did the joke, but it's like imagine they all do go on that table, but then there is one stormtrooper. Like everyone's a main character, and there's just one trooper there who's like, "Hey, this feels. <laughs> I feel out of my depth here, like, honestly." <laughs> It's like, wow, Darth Vader. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, and Boba Fett. Oh, my God. Ah. <laughs> you you had Solo. You, like, blew up the Death Star. Like, you're, you're kind of the guy who helped it happen. It's so nice to meet you, dude. Can I have your autograph? <laughs> oh, I mean, like, oh, I, ter bad dude. He looks over at Vader. He's like, oh, yeah, this is a bad <laughs> oh, guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, this this guy. Watch, watch out for this one. He's, uh, hmm. He's a scoundrel. I could, I could, I could pop him in jail yeah. you, if you need. I could do that. I, I will do that. Hey, Chewie. <laughs> like, you're so cool. Nah. <laughs> so, what are we eating? And it's like, oh, and remember in Solo when he that? spoke to Chewie in... <laughs> language. I, yeah, that was... I remember in the cinema, I was just like, what? <laughs> what? Oh, what? no. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Monster. Wouldn't it be funny if Han knew how to speak the goofy shit? Be like, oh, I, I, okay. No. <laughs> Would you like it explained why his surname's Solo? No, we're well, gonna. No. See, it wouldn't have made sense if that was just a surname, would it? You have to explain that. 
Like, how the hell does the name Solo come about? Han on your own, on your own Han, person. Um, on your own, no. Yeah. Way better. Han gay. Oh Han Cinco. <laughs> Han Oh, <Baca>. God. <laughs> Han. Yeah. Make How come tough. when he got married, he didn't become a Han duet? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I thought These are the big asking... questions we got to be asking. I saw uh, a tweet that said, like, oh, we got uh, the Taika Waititi Star Wars is, is already beginning, like, production. It's like, where's, uh, where's the Ryan Johnson trilogy? What's going on? <laughs> what? Is, still, is that still happening? It's like they they refuse to deny it, but uh, I guess it's it's always going to be a possibility. I don't know. What's going on uh, with Lucasfilm deciding that one? Maybe something they still I... to commit to constantly baffles me that that would be the person who gets a trilogy after everything that happened as a result. Yeah, I feel like, like maybe yeah. we'll just toss a, toss ten trilogies out to all kinds of directors at this point. Fuck it. Just not him, though. He he, he, he did enough, you know? He did enough. Oh, he did plenty. Well, He's they're already talking plenty. about Witcher spin-offs. Oh my god. Witcher spin-offs, damn. Yeah. Every, everything is franchise, isn't it? Yeah. How can we it's all, milk this before they've actually established a franchise? Yeah, I think that's the, uh, the sad part with a lot of it. On I have no people. That'd be a long surname, but I I think it makes more sense. Sure. Yeah, that's how I have no people. Han, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Who's <laughs> the, the excitement? Oh, yeah, that's a good. I like Han squared. Han squared. <laughs> Good. Well, and at the end of the Empire Strikes Back, he became Han Cubed. So. Hey -o. Oh, nice. Oh, shit. I remember oh, oh. how people would refer to Alien Three as Alien Cubed because of the way they did the the titling on it. Little tree. Little three, yeah. But um. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Brian had some like cheese cubes at the um at Darth Vader's little dinner thing. Imagine there was no food at all, picks. and the trooper is just like. Is, is, are we, is it happening? How, we... is, how is Vader eating? <laughs> well, I was about to say, maybe it was all like Vader food, where it's all just like this soupy kind of... <laughs> it's a straw. Uh, it's like a nutrient. Real back sustenance. to tanks. Yeah. And everyone else is just like, well, I mean, I, don't, I mean, this is okay. <laughs> what if it was like pork pies and Vader's like trying to push them through his he just like he, he's falls down and he just slams his face into the plate. <laughs> the it's all, it's all dripping and disgusting, and then just like <laughs> sucking it all up. He, see, he sees Han look to the door. And he's like, "You will not escape. <laughs> Don't try." <laughs> <laughs> no, please go on with your story. Don't mind me. <laughs> the, prison, the prison cells won't be ready for an hour, so we gotta just we gotta kill time. <laughs> Tell your story. You think it'd be really quick to get an empty room ready, but I suppose they're still working on it. Is it working, Gary? I don't know. <laughs> yes, yes oh. we can hear you. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. That guys. So now you're able to see video and audio and listen to audio? Yes, without my echoing. God. See, that's the kind of technology that just baffles me, you know, and it's just so cool we have it. We can watch videos together over the internet. Cavemen would be in awe. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the channel I'm... you want to jump in. Yes. Oh yeah, a lot of people are referencing loud soup. That would make sense. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. It was that's loud soup all along. You want this loud soup? All right, where are we then? So yeah, I think the meme was you can take the format of of what I do and, and apply it to anything and make it look bad. So, and he's even got objective review in the thumbnail. So are you guys excited to to hear about how Empire Strikes Back killed Star Wars? Mm, also, not gonna lie, so uh, 
shocking revelation that the guy who has apparently got his name and his icon all based around Star Wars is desperate to defend Star Wars. He has to <laughs> defend the brand that he's made his channel about. So you do wonder oh, if right. like, is it possible to release a movie in the Star Wars saga that you don't like or, or think is poorly made? Is it possible? I don't know. I guess we'll never know. All good. It's my brand. It might be. All good. Oh my god. Thanks so for telling me. Accurate well, or not? Well, so this is the thing. Uh, the awkward part of covering anything that's satire or parody is that it it, it slithers out of any kind of criticism. But um, you, you have to do it the J X C Cinema Sins route, where you judge everything he says on like funny factor and then accuracy factor. Um, so so we'll, we'll just take so it piece by piece. It won't be funny. Yeah. I'll I'll. Guess that right, right now. Whoa! I don't spoilers, think rags. Fun. Jeez, how did you know? No, I, I'm not spoiling. I'm I'm guessing. I know that my guesses are basically like spoilers because mm -hmm. I'm such a good guesser. But uh, I I don't know. I, Nostra I, I Ragsmus like... over here. <laughs> I guess be... I have to talk about this movie. You know, is it too much to ask for the second film in a series to not suck? I am bewildered by what I just watched, and to be frank, I'm not sure that I'm ever going to watch it again because of how depressed you're this film is made. You're out in the rain because your friends don't let you go into their parties <laughs> or their rooms or people just want you to leave. So this, this is how he watches... Rain and poke your head through the window and feel sad. That's how he watches movies. He walks through the street. He's looking for different houses <laughs> that have films going on. He's like, oh man, I, I like movies. I, I watch movies with my friends. That's probably why his viewing pleasure was slightly... You know, Paul. Yeah, you could argue it might have affected his experience. I mean, I'm not know. sure what's more impressive. Making the best blockbuster of all time, or making the most boring f***ing sequel to a movie I have ever seen since The Exorcist 2. That's right, folks. Are, are we gonna are we gonna do the thing where, um, are we, is he gonna be consistent about bleeping out his swears? Or is he gonna... Uh, I mean, everyone we cover tends to not, so we'll keep an eye out, but, uh... No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, I can't you know, judge anybody started, on that one. He started doing it like five minutes in, and he's like, I just can't be fucked to keep doing it. This is. <laughs> but hey, at least always, in this universe. Every time I, say, I always bleep it out. At least he, yeah. he kind of like, you know, he likes the original in this, in this, in this with his character that he's playing. You know, that's something. Yeah. I'd, I'd be interested how um, the A New Hope is uh, good, but Empire is bad. I'd be curious to see the differences between the two. Oh, yeah. The other lens you have to keep running right now is like d have you gotten the impression so far as like ah oh, he's he's doing a mauler like so far it's just like uh hmm. no this isn't anything like you at all <laughs> all right Wait, well i don't like think it's it at the moment Please, he just sounds really angry, but uh, that's what, if you remember, when yeah. I did my five-hour series where I was very calmly going through the scenes and being like, this isn't working because blah blah, Patrick Willems and many others were like, why would I watch a five-hour angry rant? It was like, oh. I'm like, oh, you didn't watch it. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can call me bitter, sure, but like, angry. It's like, all right. We are going to judge through the ultimate zero sum of a movie. The Empire Strikes Back. Zero sum. I don't even need to explain the original Star Wars film that came out, you know? We all I'll get it. It was already perfect. Oh. <laughs> Just so it's more things we never say. More things most people yeah, never I, say. That's the thing. I've never heard anyone say the OT is perfect. Especially not New Hope. It's not perfect. It's really good. Wait, do you mean especially mm. not Return of the Jedi or? No. You said especially not a new hope. Why especially out of the three of them would it be a new hope? Because this the, the words on the screen right now that he's saying are original was already perfect. Yeah, but you said out of the OT especially a new hope. Because he's he's talking about a new hope. Like he's he's talking about it right now. He's especially talking about it right now. He's he's specifically designating that one out of the trilogy as the one that's being referenced as the perfect one. Yeah, but that doesn't make sense, because you said out of the OT, and then you said especially A New Hope. Why would it be especially yeah, out of the three of them? Yeah, because he's talking about it. it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it does. It no. really does. I, I yeah. condemn you to the depths of English hell. No, it makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. <laughs> Y'all know that that film essentially perfect, and honestly, it didn't even really need a sequel, but here we are. So, let me begin. First, the f***ing opening text thing that these movies do, I guess now it's a thing? How is it a dark- I don't get it. What's this what? parody? <laughs> like, what? Who, what? 
Like whenever I He's watch so a, clever. Whenever I watch a parody of something, I'm like, ah, oh, that's what they're doing. When I watch a cabin in the woods or something like that, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, this is the they're they're doing the thing where they parody the thing. I don't know what this is parodying. Who who doesn't like the text crawl? Well, I don't, I, again, I'm arguments you've never heard. Know. Like, ah, oh, they did the text crawl oh. again. Like, does anyone? Because the other thing you have to try and do with this is is what is what is that argument similar to? What is something that some of us have ever said about the sequels that is about as stupid as that? I'm just like, I don't even know what you're referencing. Yeah, hmm. I, mean, I would. Like I, I think there are repetitious aspects of particularly the sequels and a lot of Disney stuff that make me roll my eyes and say, "Oh, they're doing this again." But it's never something like it, it's in universe stuff. Well, it's like, not like oh, having a cantina wrong. again in 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 uh, episode seven. It, it, you know, and that's the whole reason JJ put it there. Like he, he's explicit about that. If, if someone's like, "Oh, I guess we're just it's just cantinas everywhere, and that's where every important thing happens." That would be probably the closest I could imagine, but again, still confused. I feel like that's based on something, as opposed to this, where it's like, ugh, text crawls. <laughs> Nobody says this. No. And this guy did, obviously doesn't know what he stepped in well, trying to uh, parody you, so well, it would be pretty... I mean, there, you can. there's things you can pick apart about that. Like, why are the words so far apart? Why is The Empire Strikes Back look a little crooked there? Yeah, and, and uh, if you like, all you got to do is, is just take the flaws of Empire Strikes Back and just, I don't know, talk at length about them and make it sound like it's the worst thing in the world. That's probably the way to parody me. Time for the rebellion. You mean the people who just destroyed the ultimate power in the galaxy, the Death they Star. Didn't. They are again no. now hi hiding well, no, from the Sith. Empire. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, like, I. So here's the thing you, you can destroy one spaceship. But the Empire, the Galactic Empire, is still around. They existed before the Death Star was completed. So now yeah. that it's gone, they're back to that square. Uh, using that logic, if you blew up our, what, our biggest aircraft carrier, then you won the war against America. America's defeated. We lost defeated. our aircraft carrier. Yep. That would be quite an accomplishment, granted. However, like, there's still others. And then if yeah. you want to try and, like, what could he possibly be referencing? It's like, is it that people, did anyone make the argument that it's weird that the First Order show up at the beginning of TLJ so strong when we've destroyed the Starkiller base? Because I don't think, it's not hard to imagine that they had a fleet. I think the weirdest part of that was just it didn't, they didn't seem to be, um, it, it, it happened like, what, the previous night or day or whatever, but it, it feels yeah. like it, it, it just didn't happen at all. Um, because the, the the films are so disconnected. That's the only thing I remember people saying. But yeah, all right, that was something. Yeah, ever fluctuating power level of the first order is always and ever confusing. Mm -hmm. Same people that they defeated. What? How on earth did anyone think that that was a good idea to undo the victory from the last film they and then didn't. play? That's still yeah. still gone. <laughs> yeah, it's still yeah. Gone. They, they built on it. Hmm. They, they even, yeah, I mean, they reference the, the Empire references the fact that the Death Star got destroyed. The Emperor talks about how we, we're going to have to build a new one. But hey, at least we know what he's referencing with this one. And it's the, they took away the victory at the end of episode six with the sequel trilogy, which I don't even know how uh, you could yeah. argue that that's not the case. They literally destroyed all of them like, and they took I, away the victory. Yeah. These people need to understand that arguably the rebels made the galaxy a worse place. Um... Consider when you, if you skip to episode nine, like the opening of it where, where Palpatine's back, like the OT doesn't even fucking matter anymore. Like every, the, the, the Emperor's mm -hmm. back, the, the Empire has more power by like a thousand fold than they ever did. It's like, wow, what was even the point? <laughs> like, yeah, they undid the everything. It's been destroyed, so. There's a billion like, ships thanks, under ice. Thanks, Rebels or New Republic. Um, they did great. He did a great job. Mm. Mm. our characters back in the same exact predicament. Honestly, sometimes when I think about this movie, you know, I have to wonder, did everybody involved in this take LSD? Hell, we know that Carrie right. Fisher was taking LSD, so I don't okay. know. And anyways, that's not even the worst thing in this text intro. The Empire apparently had enough military forces to force the rebels into a pursuit across the galaxy. Wow. Yeah, okay. they're a galactic ha empire, you twit. Yeah. 
don't, I don't understand. It's in the title. <laughs> What I'm part sorry. of this is difficult? It, it a galactic empire that rules the galaxy. They probably have resources. But I'm I'm, I'm See, confused by the parody part. Well, so yeah, yeah, so on the surface doesn't make sense. But what is he even referencing? I don't know. Like, what? Ooh. Who's making these arguments about the sequels? So, like, what are you talking about? I'm to, yeah, I'm trying to figure out. So I guess the argument is, how did the first order get all these resources? But that's not a direct parody, and, and that's not an equal situation, because the Galactic Empire, though especially as we figured out how they started from the end of the Clone Wars, they already had a lot of power to begin with. There wasn't anybody left to challenge them. But when and... we see the First Order, we understand that at the events at the end of the OT, you have the Rebellion winning. They're victorious. The Empire was destroyed. And apparently in that 30-year span, they didn't do anything to stop this from happening again. Um, the the understanding that the Empire have power as status quo and we enter a universe is very different from we come back to a universe after time has passed and for some reason the First Order, the most powerful thing in, in, all across the universe, it, it is a wonder how they got all their resources. It's like, well, you got to read the book. you got to read some weird thing that's yeah. released by Disney that gets contradicted a year later by another book and you're just like, okay. So, and, and just judging from the movies alone, they may, you know, they wanted to deify Leia, you know, through the Disney trilogy. And she was an utter failure for allowing the, the first order to rise and get all that money somehow to, to you know, or the emperor oh, yeah. was there the whole time. And yeah, complete and utter failure. It gets even better because she called for help. They all ignored her. Lando called for help and it worked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> some good, mom he's, too. Just, he's just better at it than she is, apparently, you know, that's how it works. So, um, at least I could, this is what I mean, I'm just looking for where he's drawing the crazy arguments from, and then, uh, because you have to attack it twice with everything he says, because it's satire, like, quote-unquote. Having all that military power defeats the f***ing purpose of the hero saving the day in Star they Wars. They did save the day. Yeah, they you did. could the save day. the day, and there still have an overarching conflict happening. Battles he versus wars, I suppose? Yeah. The whole point of the end of A New Hope is that they destroyed the Death Star, which meant that the Rebellion didn't get blowed up on Yavin 4. Like, they saved the day for a lot of people. Yeah, like a planet-deleting weapon getting destroyed, it's like, that's a big plus. Yeah. Obviously, and it's... A New Hope, it's essentially them winning their survival. Yeah. Uh, of course, Not it doesn't matter in... The Empire. It's, 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 that's why it's a New, it's a new Hope, because Luke's rising, the... Um, the rebels on the verge of absolute annihilation. Uh, Alderaan, which is their political base of power, is annihilated, and it's essentially them staying alive. It's not them going after the whole empire and winning the day. Well, maybe it's like a matter of just his expectations have been a bit altered because in the sequel trilogy, you blow up one planet-destroying weapon and you've got a thousand more to deal with, you know. But in this, back back in the OT, there was just the one. Oh and yeah, they, and this they, just has like actual impact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then they try and build another one, not a thousand. This cause... is about the rebels being hunted down by the Death Star. This is why the whole part of the plan's getting stolen to give themselves a ch a hope of survival. I mean, the does, title he, does, he does he ever does he ever fucking watch Star yep. Wars? Dude, did you watch Star Wars? Well. That's probably the question you'd have for you. You'd be like, why are you complaining about stuff in the sequel trilogy when, you know, the OT is doing all of it too? So, yeah. Maybe we'll get to the point where he demonstrates that the OT did it too. Because I'm sure the OT has flaws, undoubtedly, but um, I would like them to be pointed out. Curious oh, to see. You got know, a whole that... video full of them. Look, we're only, what, oh, like 10% in? Really yeah. um, let's have a, let's have a look see. <laughs> Pressing on. Luke Skywalker, who is arguably my favorite character from Star Wars, is now the leader of Freedom Fighters, aka the Rebellion. Not sure why they didn't just say the Rebellion. We all know it's the f***ing Rebellion, and it ends up being the Rebellion. And he I don't even know if this is parodying. No, um, this would just be classification nitpick. Not even really accurate. You can call them Freedom Fighters yeah. or the Rebels. Yeah, it's not inaccurate. Mm. They're fighting for freedom from a tyrannical galactic regime, so... They literally are. I we're fine with the show calling things the stuff that they are. 
Yeah. I don't recall ever arguing against that. Maybe, no, maybe dang these, you they, right. these people just want lies. <laughs> That's all they want. They don't want the truth. But I get cool because like I I finally spent a while on the the text crawl of episode seven right so that's absolutely what he's gunning for here but like the text but crawl it's not that there was a text crawl yeah the text crawl in episode seven obliterates Star Wars it it's it just like it's just like hey by the way all of this is true now anyway let's see the film you're like whoa <laughs> like what's yeah, that? yeah. Like yeah. okay good. And I like that they pretend that it's like, it's just a text crawl. It's like, you can do whatever you want with a text crawl. You could say everyone is dead, lol, in the text crawl. Don't you think that would be significant? <laughs> is, he, is he trying to say, because in the original trilogy, there were the rebels, and in the uh, sequel trilogy, they were the uh, resistance. Is that what he's trying to parody would, by nitpicking that? That would be against the I sequel. I think so. We can't do that. Um, because the only thing that comes to mind is the fact that most people, when talking about the resistance, will accidentally say rebels because there's no meaningful difference. And of course, the the, the funny part is that yeah. the funny part is that the resistance were created before the republic was destroyed. You know, it's just this really weird like, why, what, why are you guys like, how are you guys the underdogs when you have all of the power? Um, they just that, wanted to have rebels again. They just wanted to do Star Wars again. Yeah, it's it's just because they wanted to redo the status quo. And I think that criticism is very different compared to someone being like, oh my god, freedom fighters? We call them rebels. <laughs> okay. Established another space on another world. Okay, so we are literally back to secret rebel bases on planets, and then we just switched. What do you mean back? That, How are we yeah. Ready? That never changed. I, mean, I, guess, <laughs> so I guess he's saying that in the uh, in a new hope, the rebels had a secret base, and in this one, their base is still also a secret, which makes sense because they are the rebels, and they don't want the location of their base to be public information. This isn't Section Thirty One in Star Trek where they wear uniforms and have ships and shit and badges We're the for their secret, secret organization? Secret service. Look, my uniform says so. It says my badge. Here's our GPS coordinates for our secret base. <laughs> and in line with parody, right? The idea there is that we would have said, "How is it that like everything is exactly the same uh, after if, when you start up episode seven? They they reverted back because obviously it's a hollow clone of episode four. And so he's like, "Oh, I could say that about episode five. It's like all you've pointed out is that they still have bases on planets. That's it. Yeah, just because you say something doesn't mean you've made a point." Uh, everything. When I was ten, I understood that everything was different about this movie, uh, including the title that says "The Empire Strikes Back." Yeah, that's a big clue uh, as to the yeah. events of the film. I would say, um, and yeah, you, you know, just uh, a lot of these just seem like attempts and then fails. But we'll absolutely be hiding behind the idea. It's like uh, it was a joke. I don't think you get it. It's the joke is to make fun of people doing stuff like this. And it's like, yeah, but you're not land. It's just not landing. Like you also, jokes have generally some of the best jokes have that little grain of truth in there. Mm -hmm. You know, like that can, that can make a joke really funny. Like, Oh, what's the deal? With the old airline food. Uh, and everyone's like, Oh yeah. Airline food is not great. I, oh, uh, isn't that like the point of satire to, to try and, um, make a point about the thing while also making fun of it or making a joke about it you're trying to like be like hey by the way this is because obviously the overall point is that we as a as a if you call it subgenre of youtube anti-sequels or whatever the hell it's just like oh you guys nitpick that's gonna be the again he's, he's from the the school of hello greedo where the holdo maneuver is considered absolutely a nitpick but all, all i can get out of this so far is people nitpick Right. Yeah, if you're gonna, that's not yeah. funny. That's not. That's not parody. Yeah. It's not funny. Yeah, the key to a good parody is Make that amusing. If you want to parody it, Mola getting mad at someone for making the exact kind of criticism he does. I would like to see an example <laughs> where I say yeah. you can't refer if to the rebels as freedom fighters. That's fucked up. Yeah. Luke into Leia's res, the leader of a little secret cell of heroes, right? At this point in my first watch, I actually sighed audio? audibly. I mean, they named a planet Hoth. Lucas took the word hot, and then he added an H to it, and now people think he's a fucking genius. Who, who, who calls him a genius for naming it Hoth? <laughs> I, family Guy made fun of that. 
I think I think you're right. Yeah, I think they were the ones who yeah, actually said they that. Should be called Colts. Um, Which is like okay. Uh, yeah. So, it, so this even is... when they made that joke, they didn't take it like seriously. The person making the joke was like it was one of those eye rolling sorts of things that. So even they they were self aware enough that it wasn't like that big of a deal. Have we made fun of like, any of the oh, the names of planets in the sequels? Has that ever happened? Um. Um. Canto bike crate. Not not. It doesn't really come up. Because I'm. In fact, I think I've gone as far as saying Exegol was a cool name for a planet. Exegol is a cool name for a planet. Yeah. Um. Yeah, what? Don't, don't have no idea yeah. where this one's coming from or where it's connected to. Got nothing for this one. Naboo sounds like it could be a lot of different things. <laughs> I feel like you could use the word Naboo for all kinds of different stuff, like uh, uh some some injury or some disease. Would you give someone like, a Naboo? I have to take. Oh, I have to take like my, my it Naboo. Under <laughs> it's getting into the mindset of this guy. Sorry, it uh, like. So obviously, I'm going to state the obvious here. It's what we, that's what I do on YouTube anyway. So right. this guy is coming from a place where the Disney trilogy is good. This is oh, his cool. opinion. It's not a copy of something else. So I'm going to make a parody of Mauler by going after the best Star Wars movie and try. I mean, that's listen. I like his. That's a high it's aspiration. Gutsy. It's gutsy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let, let's see where he goes with this. I'm rooting for the kid. Really. Love an underdog. In case you think I'm done talking shit about this text crawl thing, I'm not. The most absurd thing in this entire crawl is in the third paragraph, revealing that somehow Darth Vader is back. What? That's right, Mr. Bad Guy Why who would he not was be back? murked out yeah. of the Death Star Trench at the- He, he was... wasn't murked, he, he <laughs> he's... flew away. He's what? Right, you can see him right there, he's okay. <laughs> he's, he's like, oh yeah, man, I was, I was hit, now I'm flying through space. And this guy, he's going to get his bearings. He's going to be like, oh, shit, the Death Star is destroyed. Well, I guess I'm going to go rejoin my team. Could this be um, still going on? Could this be Phasma? This the this the reference here, like people saying, like, how is she back? Because she would have fallen down the trash compactor and then exploded. So how is she back? I <laughs> guess she escaped the trash compactor. Yeah, the only I don't even think many people brought that up we as never a problem. Her go into the trash compactor. <laughs> Maybe yeah. she didn't even it go in. Implied. Yeah. Maybe the trash compactor was maybe the food on Starkiller Base is so shit that they call the cafeteria the trash compactor. Well, mm. Maybe the trash compactor was just another reference so people could go, remember the trash compactor in Star Wars? Because that's the only reason it was put in. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. You, that camera yeah. gets tight on Han as he says it. It's a, that's the thing that happened. It's good shit. Um, Remember that thing that happened? The plot, the plot is a big yeah. trash computer. So again, for, for anybody watching right now who's like, wow, they really don't get the joke. I'd be like, so the joke doesn't work. He needs to find an example that works in order to, to do it. Vader doesn't yeah. get killed. If he did and came back, this could work. But he didn't. <laughs> I don't know what else and to say. And they clearly show you he didn't. So yeah, and like I said, it I, maybe it's to do with Phasma, I, but like, I don't... Lew up at the end of A New Hope, and then he suddenly appeared in Empire. Oh! How did he get... Yes, then there'd be some cause, but no, we, we see him survive. It was very obvious that they wanted you to see him yes. survive. Very, it's, very it's, deliberate. It's also funny to me as well, because like nobody cared that Phasma was back, really. Everyone was just like, oh, there she is, I guess. All right, well, whatever. Her, her, what she get? A one minute nineteen seconds <laughs> screen time. Well, she dies again. It's just like, okay, bye. <laughs> All right. Well, I remember you. That's that. That's cap. That's the ultimate. I remember you. Character. It's like, oh. Meanwhile, fucking Vader is like the face of the franchise. So that yeah. they desperately are clinging on to apples mm -hmm. and oranges. You know the end of the previous film into unending space for all of eternity somehow made his way back no, to he's in a the spaceship <laughs> they this, this is what it was supposed to be like wait a minute like he, it's not like he spun away forever and was stuck you know, oh, dude, you know you no one talks no one talks about that tie fire that took the shot for vader that tie fighter who who, who tried to ram to save his life Whoever was in there, man, what a legend! He probably has a he probably got a plaque on the new Death Star. I was that saying, there's going to be a film about this now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, you've just heard this gone. 
We need to make a whole film about that TIE fighter yes. pilot that sacrificed their life for Vader. He was like yeah. a huge yeah. fan of Vader. Yeah. Yeah. Vader He'll be the first non-binary stormtrooper. Yes. <laughs> yeah, person of color, woman, uh, non-binary, bisexual. Uh, dude, if they, no, if they did all that, they wouldn't be able to kill him. He, he would have survived. Like it, it would have. He falls out. The thing explodes. He gets blasted into Vader's uh, Tie Fighter, and he's like, "Oh, thank God." And then you know, that's just, that's that just the new history. Friend. That was actually Darth Vader's best friend, Herbert, <laughs> uh, the stormtrooper. <laughs> Herbert was his best friend. They'd been through so much. They've been killing rebels together for years and years. That was Vader's right hand man. Do you know and, what he uh, should have said? He should have said, "Why didn't Vader try spinning?" That's a good trick. Yeah. I want an edit of A New Hope where when Herbert dies, Vader goes, "No, <laughs> Herbert." And you dub it so that he's like, "Herbert, is there anything behind us?" And he's like, "No, sir, I don't." Oh, look out! And then, and then they have the same yeah, shot, so that we get that gut punch. He was more than a stormtrooper. He was my friend. You know, Vader, it's two days till I retire. I'm going to miss hanging out with you. <laughs> yep. But, sir, we're too old for this shit. Expendable, not to me. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get some Fs in the chat for that time? Right? That Fs for, for Herbert. Herbert. Yep. Uh, Fs for Herbert. Fucking Fs Han Herbert. Solo wiped him out. You know, and a lot of people are like, oh, Han Solo, my favorite character. It's like, why? Why? He shot first as well. Yeah. yeah. Didn't even, Murderer. didn't even, shot him in the back. How fucked up is that? I'm so glad he died the way he did in Force Awakens. Yeah, he deserved it. Yeah. Herbert. I'm glad he got stabbed by his son. Had it coming. As, <laughs> as Han Solo <laughs> falls, the Force ghost of Herbert is watching him like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How's Vader that feel, Herbert bitch? <laughs> fist bump, fist pumping. Yep. I remember those afternoons in Vader's pod where he would teach me about the Force. <laughs> uh, Weird Force choke me. Force choke me. <laughs> <laughs> Force choke me, Daddy. It's like, oh no. <laughs> Empire stores all Empire things. I guess that's where all the fleet was too, or whatever. Okay. The opening crawl basically no, doomed he's got a this ship. movie. He could, fly. From he could traverse it's space with his spaceship. He could go to his fleet. He said, um, yes. He said the opening. Spaceship. It went from point A to point B. No, that's ridiculous. That's insane. Um. I like that he says the, the the opening crawl basically doomed this movie. Obviously, now the the reference is clear. The the it would have been to episode seven's crawl, but again, there are significant reasons they've destroyed like all of the world building in their opening crawl. While this one basically just says everything you'd assume, the Empire want to crush the rebels after what they did. You're like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. that wouldn't change. The Empire is not going to be like, oh, well, I guess we've got to be friends now. I'm like, no. Like, yeah, <laughs> they blew up our Death Star. They blew That's up our it. ship. Yeah, let's uh, fuck him up. Yeah. From the start for me. Any ounce of logic, I figured that this movie... Let's get the Hill to go after them. Oh my god, he said the logic word. Uh, he was doesn't know. Zest no. instantly vanished like my desire to live after finishing watching The Empire Strikes Back. So when the actual movie begins, we get another tilt down, you know, just like the previous movie, and we venture to the planet Hoth. And instead of it being a sand desert, now it's a snow desert. But I will say... The no, they're both deserts. So a yeah. desert is yeah. based on the amount of precipitation that it gets. Mm. So both of, these, both of these are deserts. Like Antarctica is a desert. The more you know. You're just, this Wait, is just what's um? When is it called a glacier? Then is it just when it's all frozen? A glacier. A yeah. glacier uh, is a glacier. Like they're they're totally different things. Um, like when does when does a like what's the difference between a glacier and a like, are you asking for what the definition of a glacier is? Oh, just when, you, when it you categorizes differently, right? Because, like, a glacier could be huge, and thus, when walking on it, you'd be like, how do you know you're not on just, I don't know. Isn't a glacier like a it's frozen undue? lake? Yeah. Okay. Like, what? I, I wonder where the lines are drawn on how you categorize them, I guess. I don't know. The line must but be drawn here. When it we becomes need a, to know. like a big giant piece of ice i guess yeah, one yeah. singular oh, piece that's as big as a mountain was another word i was well, looking for i think as well yeah i because a glacier is not really a land tundra's mass. not ice it's it's it's, yeah. it's more it's a slowly moving mass or river of ice formed mm -hmm. by the 
accumulation and compaction of snow on mountains or near the poles. What about so, yeah, tundra? tundra was permafrost. Probably what you were thinking of, man. So I money only won't get enough on this. Vast, so. flat, treeless <laughs> Arctic region of yes. Europe, Asia, and North America, in which the subsoil is permanently frozen. Hey, cool. So, yeah, a tundra Earth. isn't quite a desert. Looks like but... Earth is neat. Earth is neat. There's stuff on it that's neat. I, I'm glad that this at at chat gentleman got us into a discussion about a geography. <laughs> mm -hmm. Earth. This is so is bad. That bad. I feel better educated now. Yeah, everyone. You learned something today. I didn't even have to bust out my book of facts. Well, I could, though. There's a lot mm. of facts to go through. We could start oh, sifting yeah. through some of those. Any facts trip. about glaciers? I don't know. Let me see. Um... <laughs> Is it glacier well, there was once or a, glacier? There was once a, uh, well, I guess it depends on where you're from. But there mm -hmm. was a two glaciers uh, above North America. I, they had names. I forgot them. Uh, uh -huh. That were at some point two miles thick over. Um, it, it went from coast to coast over Canada didn't exist. It was under two miles of ice. Neither did New York. I think Seattle was under ice too. Uh, yeah. And then it all melted thought, within a couple of weeks. For a second there, I thought you went, like, there is ice, and then there is ice 2, the sequel to ice. Uh, ice 2, <laughs> the sequel. Ice two. Very bit disappointing. Very disappointing. It wasn't Walk as good as the first. The glacier strikes back. The yeah. glacier. The they, glacier they strikes they... back very slowly. They had to bump up <laughs> <Yeah>. the uh, <laughs> categories. They couldn't just call everything ice, cool. ice 2, ice 3, ice 4, ice 5. It's like, no, nah, we got to have a better way of doing this. It's prey. Um, but uh, ice, I guess, then he could have had baby. ice ice, then he could have had an ice ice baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, our fact is that the man who commissioned the Mona Lisa refused it. Oh, really? Hmm, yeah. So, that guy's uh, but he's, uh, but he's a little upset right now. A little, uh, I said I wanted a fucking smile. Everybody <laughs> I want yeah, bigger tits. A smile. I want an actual smile. <laughs> I'll make it so you never work again. <laughs> oh, Where's the fucking tits? Where's the fucking cleavage? <laughs> oh, no. hey? Fuck's sake. Do it Fuck. again. Do it again. Different <laughs> <laughs> thing. That did look pretty cool when it popped out of the snow. Unfortunately, anything that seems like it's actually going to be cool turns out to be anything but. And that goes on for basically the entire runtime. The minute I just, we see I just saw that robot as part of the 40th yeah, anniversary like the robot. So can you guys think of a time where we've sort of highlighted like, oh, this thing could be cool, but then it doesn't show up ever again. Have we ever said that about anything? Yeah. Well, I mean, sure in relation have. to the sequel trilogy, I'm just trying to think of like what... Oh, you know, in the relation to the sequel... Finn? Um, <laughs> Finn's character. <laughs> yeah, that could have been cool. Finn's arc. Uh, this is this is the first time we've ever had to do this, by the way. Like decipher wrong, a video. Wrong, cam wrong camera turned on. Hold on. Look. Oh my goodness. Oh no. I make bought... blocks go away. I, I bought... There you go. This is the robot as part of the 40th anniversary of. Oh. Oh. Of uh, Empire. Efab chat can vaguely see it in the. You can just see the top <laughs> of the Mandalorian. <laughs> Still giving money to Disney, are you? Wow. I, 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 I think that the sound effect that is used on the um, spy droid here is uh, reused as a sound effect when uh, Mando is walking through Navarro. One of the robot critters, aliens, makes that exact same noise. I think that's just a little, little Easter egg in there. It was created by strangling a camel. I don't know if you knew that. What? That's that's the thing they make. <laughs> yeah, it's because they have those really long throats. So the it's like they go. Yeah. That's how they kind of sound. Yeah. Maybe you're trying to say something. And I'm gonna like, buy a camel just to strangle. <laughs> I want to get them noises from the source. I do I want? I want to know. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I I can't think of anything. Oh, Knights of Ren, maybe. Um. Yeah, sure. I guess. Yeah. They, I mean, are they cool? No. Um. Mm. But like you know, in the in the most superficial of senses, they are the dressed all in black, have these mysterious weapons. They're a team, oh, and they work they for the dark side. You're like, ooh, yeah, definitely like Shadow the Hedgehog. Absolutely. They're, yeah. Yeah. Same. Same <laughs> thing. They're they're like edgy, edgy the Hedgy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. In the most Jar Jar Abrams way. Mm-hmm. Jar Jar was really cool we could have gotten some more of him right 
But again, I don't know that the comparison works because these things are set up ahead of time. They're shown being fired out. One of them shows landing, moving around, and then it's destroyed, but it's too late. It's already discovered them. It's, uh, you'd be like, it's, that's everything that it does. It's a drone. Yeah, it's a spy droid. That's what it, yeah. Don't know what to say about that one, you know? It's just like, they, they, they just don't quite work, the comparison. Luke, in the beginning of this film, he's taken out by a 10-foot-tall snow monkey. Let me say that again. Luke Skywalker is taken out in the beginning of this movie by a 10-foot-tall snow still monkey. still good. Look like a monkey yeah. at all. Well, no. Yeah, I would go with gorilla before monkey, but I probably wouldn't go with either. I'd just say fucking well, abominable Yeti. snowman. <laughs> it's clearly Yeti. what it is. Yeah. You got you got yetied. Um, maybe I, I'm trying to again think of like what what could what could this be for? Is it like why would why would anyone complain about him getting hit by a, an enormous monster? I don't know. Yeah, yeah and I would compare it to the, yeah the snowman from like Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. He looks more like that. Mm -hmm. The Bumble, Bumble's oh. bounce. I mean, yeah. if it was Ray, she would have just killed him. I was gonna say like, what could he even yeah. be referencing here? Like, what does Ray get taken out by in the sequel trilogy that we all complain about? It's like she doesn't get she gets taken a out cut by in her arm. <laughs> <laughs> she makes weapons disappear when they're gonna kill her. She, she had a mild headache. In, uh... <laughs> she did. It would have reached back to swipe at her and instantly just disappeared. Yeah. She wouldn't have even have noticed. She would have turned around like she heard something and there'd be nothing. <laughs> Got CGI'd out. <laughs> yeah, there'd be a, a pair of footprints leading straight to her and then it end. Oh, that's creepy mm -hmm. imagery. Oh, they should have done that. Darn. <laughs> this man's video is confusing me regularly. What the f- And the worst part about this is the reasoning- Also, when you say what the fuck, you have to show him drinking the milk. You gotta. Like, showing other things. That's just disrespectful, <laughs> man. Why? No, any he doesn't think that Luke drinking the milk was like there's not there's not an issue with that. Oh, I guess no. you'd have to do the equivalent for the OT, which there isn't. So, <laughs> oh well, <laughs> you could just have a hard look and confused. Oh, I guess. Had, um, the f um, sure, there's something. Is something equally had... as cringeworthy? I don't know. It's hard yeah, to find. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. How about it's the uh, in the Return of the Jedi the the CGI. Um, oh, the, the, oh. the guy going ah, ah, ah in the band. <laughs> yeah, he just pops could... up on the screen. Ah, and his little, his, he's he's spitting. It's his little tonsils. Oh. Yeah, there you go. We needed that. And the worst part about this is the reasoning why any of this even happens. It's outrageously convoluted. So Luke gets taken out to the monkey's lair How where it's, it's doing monkey things, I guess. And somehow the monkey I'm finding Luke's this inherently and... racist. I am too. I was thinking yeah. the same thing. <clears throat> um, to the ceiling. Okay. And all of this was... So that might be the first thing he said that could actually be something that could be discussed. Why, yeah. why slash how did the monster get him stuck into the ceiling? Um, and all, all you can assume is that that's an ability it has, because it's a space yeah. monster. Ice sculptor. That's what, obviously. Well, I mean, if like... I on that planet alone, I mean, ice sculpting seems like a hobby that would, you <laughs> yeah. know. Be, yeah. Could just be that it vomits up, you know, really cold gooey shit and it just it just forms around it, you who knows uh, just rammed his fucking legs in the fucking sand and wedged him oh, it would hurt but he gets the back to treatment so he'll be all right well, so the, that yeah, we there's... could watch luke apparently miraculously discover the power of telekinesis to escape Where the situation yeah this is a criticism a lot of people try to bring up um as, as like haha empire introduced brand new powers too um the thing I, I wish we had more with the uh, newer Star Wars content is people discovering force powers in a natural way that already exist, as in the, the powers don't have to be brand new where they just invent like shit. Like if you're in a cave and there's an, a creepy space worm and you put your hand on it and heal its wounds? <laughs> Not, you mean naturally like that? Yeah, because that's something that we all figured you could we just do. Been there. There. Don't lie and say you haven't. But based off the prequel trilogy where we have Master Jedi who have been jedi for hundreds of years, in some cases, these powers do not exist. Weird. Well, in A New Hope, Darth Vader chokes somebody. So, well, so the, the I guess you could assume if he can specifically choke somebody, is he can Luke, probably grab something. How does Luke know about this? Like, well, I mean, if, if you're desperately reaching for something and you already know you have access to... D didn't he use the Force to help guide the, the missiles into the, the Death Star? 
Yeah, use the force at the so end of the last. If you've got you access to that it. knowledge and you're trying to reach for something that's just out of out of out of out of reach, um, then then yeah, that seems like a natural sort of result. Yeah, seems pretty simple. A little, just a little nudge, a little little pull. Also, I don't know what it feels like to have the force, right? I, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't. But if you reach I for do. something and you, you like, it's just out of reach, you start you start to feel something weird. Like, wait. I feel like it's moving. I feel like I have the ability to actually be able to pull it toward me. I don't know what that would feel I like. Really, but... I really bad electric shock once, and that felt like I had the force. There you go. And see, that's what Luke would have had, and he would have been like, oh my god, I'm pretty sure this is working. I just gotta try harder. And then he does the thing where he concentrates, and then he does it. Um, but yeah, people... Someone needs to write, like, a, a PSA for these these people, including, like, Hello Greedo and whoever else. It's like, force telekinesis. It wasn't a new thing in Empire, okay? Stop. Stop saying that. Stop it. Yep. But he also just make he makes a lightsaber go about two foot. He didn't. Well, heal Jesus. In fairness, yeah, he didn't. That's as incredible as moving more weight than Yoda ever could. Um, when yeah. when and when smiling and being casual about it. You see, <laughs> that, that's why when people complain about Ray doing things and they don't complain about Luke, it's pretty clear it's a sexism thing. It's it's got nothing wow. to do with the actual Obviously. events themselves. Only men are allowed to use the force. Exactly. Situation. Some people weren't really bugged by this and actually people cheered. Some people were like, yeah, that's really cool. But I was like, it's just adding powers to already established rules in the universe from- Nope. No. <laughs> yeah, Again. I'm sorry to watch New Hope, but the you should have probably. So the goal he had was people make this argument in the sequels while it already happened in the OT and they just don't see it. And that's what this video is trying to do. But it's just like, you got to use a better example. This isn't one. Just, just not working. In the previous film, it comes off as, well, we need him to escape somehow, so just allow the lightsaber that his mentor gave him to fly into his hand. And if well, someone no, wants pulls to... pulls it with the force. Yeah, well... He uses his established force powers I don't think to he... do something he already did, but on a much smaller scale. I don't think he tripled down on this very wrong point, but all right. Yeah. Odd strategy. Re... He didn't even say dick sex machina. That's true. It's yeah, not continuity Luke just hands on himself and healed every one of his wounds. <clears throat> Reasonable explanation? If they ask us, we can just say, well, that's how the Force works. Kind of sounds to me like a way to get around bad storytelling. No, I mean, oh. That's how the Force has been established to work. But see, isn't this video scathing? Can't you see yourself now? Is it all becoming clear, lads? This is what you do to the sequels. Do you get it? That's accurate. Back it up, Mahler. <laughs> Well, that's You're the thing. It's just like, but my references are accurate. Yours are autism-y. Two rags. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. So, yeah. I don't know. The moment just didn't work for me. I think it was super weird. And then even when Luke escapes his situation, he again it ends sounds up Sounds like Major Lee. Out. He does kind of, yeah. There's a bit of Major Lee mm -hmm. in there. Which is probably not doing good for him. It's you know? also terrible, so... Maybe it's the same person. Out in the snow, almost dead. And out of nowhere, Obi-Wan Kenobi appears as a ghost. Yes, he appears as a ghost oh. to tell Luke that he needs to go train some more on another planet by somebody else, another Jedi Master. So initially, okay. that but, was intriguing. But we're in an you know? original trilogy where we're establishing rules. I mean, Obi-Wan had already contacted him post-death, so... Yeah, yeah, he'd already spoke well, to him at the end of... Uh, well, he spoke to him multiple times in when he died, when he told Luke um, to get on the Falcon. And then when he was trying to stick the, um, you know, his dick in the hole at the end on the <laughs> Death Star, I just went, use the Force. And it's well, like, out of time, Luke. It's not worth it. So it's it's already been established that Ben Kenobi is <laughs> in contact with Luke in a mm -hmm. spiritual way. And again, it's an original trilogy set sent its rules. And, um, and what he should be doing is he, he needs to be uh, attacking the, the prequel trilogy. Because that's the one that didn't build upon the rules. That's the one that literally took the rules of the original trilogy and just kept it in the prequels. So now that the sequel trilogy comes along and wants to create new rules, that's not the original trilogy's fault. It's the prequel trilogy's fault for not building. You, it, it's all very strange as well, because he's not even picking, like... The example I think most people would go with is... Um... The like force communication between people, like with Luke and Leia at the end of Empire. Maybe he'll bring that one up, but 
Uh, gun in for telekinesis oh, and contact with Obi-Wan. It's like, yeah, both these things happened in the first one. And the idea that's like, well, we couldn't see Obi-Wan's ghost in the first one. It's like, what difference does that make? Like, at all. It literally has no effect. And there's no reason to assume it wasn't possible. Like, it's, I don't know. Him, him being a, a blue light doesn't do anything. We're going to see another Jedi Master potentially, but again, whatever was yeah. going to be cool about that was instantly destroyed the second it happens. And we'll get to that. Wait, so why did all... He's I, I, I just, I, look, I am lost. I have no <laughs> yeah. fucking clue what this moron is on about. He's, I'm why not even sure. Like, it's not funny. It's not parody. It's not satire. It's just stupid. Dude, make a fucking point or something, for Christ's sake. Well, you're not getting it. It's the Empire, like, it has all of its own problems, too. So maybe, maybe, maybe the attitude you have against sure the sequels, we'll get around maybe... to some of them. Yeah, any second now. All of that need to even happen in order to get to the moment where Obi-Wan decides to tell Luke, hey, since you are dying right now and stuff, it's probably a good idea that you get some more training. Why the hell didn't the ghost of Obi-Wan show up at any other time between these two films, right? And just tell Luke, hey, go get some more training by somebody, you know? I mean, there could be any mm -hmm. kind of rationalization for that. It, there's no reason to do it or to not do it at any po possible time. How do you know when it's supposed to happen? How do you know that it's not worthwhile for Luke to stay with the Rebellion for a while mm. first? and start getting experience in combat and leadership before moving on to being trained. Yeah, you can't actually, like, you can't go like, he should have gone for training before. It's like, based on what? How, how, do, how do you determine when he should have gone to where he should have gone? I don't know. Not quite. You know, it's been years, apparently, between the first and second installment. Yeah, and also if he, if he would have told Luke to go to this place earlier, it means that he wouldn't have been here with the Rebellion during this time. Exactly. So... All right. Yep. Here. In the very least, it could explain how he used that new force power thing it's out of his new. ass to oh, escape. It's not new. It's not new. It's not the new. space monkey. Christ. It would probably that... be the kind of force power that you would first discover you have on accident. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. he's, he's reaching for it. You'd probably feel something's up. You'd be like, whoa, I feel like, I feel like if I really push on that, stuff happens. Especially well, like, because like what he did concentrated Yoda's... at the end of the New Hope to get the fucking dick in the hole. Exactly. And you've got in this movie, in Empire, right after Yoda lifts the X-Wing out of the swamp, Luke says, like, wow, I didn't think it was possible. And Yoda says, that is why you fail. Hmm. Could have even been in the title scrolling thing saying Luke had learned more about the Force. I don't know. Nobody's thinking when making these movies. <laughs> even if he didn't learn anything else about the Force, this makes sense. Well, this just... is a most a very rudimentary sort of power that you would probably pick up by accident. The, the, the consistent through line is he'll highlight a thing and then he'll have like a crazy exaggerated conclusion that comes right after. Like, oh my god, this is the worst thing ever. And also, this guy at the end of TLJ, does he not remember Broom Boy, who just pulls a broom to him casually with the mm -hmm. Force? Well, that's <laughs> so... the joke, though, isn't it? That he thinks that's okay, while we're the ones that, uh, that he's making fun of that would complain about stuff like that. I'm fine with Broom Boy well, pulling a broom to him. I'm not even. I'm trying to think of what would it be. The um, the Force Skype calls would be the one that most people were just like, "How the fuck is this a thing?" Oh, duh. Yep. So, yeah, and, and the only explanation they had for that was that Snoke is, like, the most powerful Force user ever, but he, also he got killed by Kylo Lol. But he's a clone of Darth Sidious. And... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you can right transfer right. your Force through a clone? or oh, yeah. How does that even work? I mean, I don't know. Uh, I guess, I mean, Baby Yoda's probably a fucking clone of Yoda. Spoilers. Yeah. And so he could do insane, crazy shit that Yoda couldn't do in his infancy, so fuck it. Let's just fucking pile the problems on. I don't care. Maybe, maybe if you clone a Force user, they just get to be more powerful in the Force than you, which is weird, but I don't know why, why the Force just clone to, you know, Darth Vader. Can... Oh, God. Oh, Rex, if you apply all that criticism to the OT, it falls apart, too, just so you know. Oh, oh. I can't baby Luke, just Luke is actually a clone of someone else who's never mentioned. <laughs> right. Don't give him ideas. What are you doing? Ray, yes anymore. A, it's just hey, he looks a pretty sometimes, and I can sell a toy. Now, when we talk about the base on Hoth, it... so the the toy reference I assume would be to the the Porgs again, but the, they literally only the exist Porgs to sell were... toys. They don't do anything else. Yeah. yeah, I mean, at least the Ewoks do stuff. And then yeah, like that's that's the common just easy. 
This is what I mean. You have to actually pick things. Like you have to find something in the OT that only exists to be made into a toy. Which there probably there's got to be some things you could pick out for that. But uh, not Luke fucking Skywalker. You're gonna have to try again with that one. Or the, yeah, he's sort of like the, the protagonist. So uh, and the, and the they just want a protagonist so they can make toys of him. God, shameless. It it's literally the snow version of Yavin Four, except it's Yavin Four and Tatooine combined. How different do you want this hangar to look? So <laughs> Christmas well, fucking light. It's a lot better than going to another desert planet and then just renaming the desert planet. Well, see, that's what he's making fun of. It, I'm guessing. So he, he's like, this is just Yavin Hot and Tatooine, planet. but with snow, and he's 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 making fun so of someone saying. Different. Exactly. That's what I mean. It doesn't work. When you say, like, oh god, another desert planet with someone who's uh, like having to work hard every day to be able to make some kind of living and dreams of escaping the planet, it's like, damn, that's really fucking similar. Meanwhile, you have a snow base, and he's like, yeah, you know, the base looks kind of similar to other bases. See, I can do it with the OT as well. Yeah, this is just like that base in the jungle planet from last, uh, uh, from the, the last movie. You're like, ah, oh, so they're completely different? And then of course, Does this guy drive around outside, and he's like, "Oh, look, that parking lot that's black with the yellow lines on it. Oh, yep. how original!" And then if if he's referring to the fact that a lot of people were like, "Crate is just Hoth 2.0," I'm pretty sure it's the whole point of Crate is to fully reference Hoth. Like, it's pretty shameless about it. They're just like, I mean, they have a scene where they have to say, <laughs> "Definitely isn't snow, guys. This is not snow. It's not Hoth." Yep. Shut up. <laughs> I, it's what, why are you calling it Hoth, though? Is that is that a joke that I'm missing? Uh, he's mispronouncing it, it on purpose. I guess, I guess. He's just, yeah, he's just doing it on which, purpose. Which is a parody of what? Why um, didn't he capitalize "killed"? By the way, in the title, that's kind of bothering me. That is odd. I don't. Maybe sorry. It's because low effort. It's the only non-proper noun in there, it's but that would. But that it'd still be still... the title, and it's not an in the or. Yeah. Okay. Should have capitalized the whole word. Empire. Yeah. Kill. Yeah. Yeah, capitalize the whole thing. You're right. Yeah, it'd be very dramatic. We're just nitpicking. This is exactly we're proving his point yeah, I'm, I'm with our nitpickery. <laughs> but I'm still trying to work out the the host. Yeah, um, the host. I suppose well, it makes you... making fun of people who do not know the pronunciations of certain words in in IPs that they claim to be fans of. Is that maybe the idea there? Like no idea. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. In reference to what? It's actually because... pronounced Yaven Iv. Uh when you do the parody, bite. you're parodying the obvious. You're not you're not parodying the subtle because you won't get the reference. Well, like, the funny thing is, if, if they're like, oh you know, Muller, I'll pay you a million dollars, make an unbridled rage about Empire Strikes Back, I'd be like, I I can't though. There's no there's not enough material to make a video yeah. with. There's not enough problems that I can actually talk about that I mean, ruin the structure of the film. There isn't. There's just an, not enough. An unbridled observation of potential yes. things that might not be perfect. And that's why if you try and make one, you'll end up with this. Where you're like, fucking snow base. <laughs> what? <laughs> In a ridiculously hilarious thing to me, once we get inside and see everybody, and I, I didn't notice what? this initially with Luke, is that everybody is wearing ski goggles. Did George really think that no yeah. one in the theater? Yeah. So here's the thing. Um, so when you're out in the Arctic, where the, te <laughs> de the temperatures are dangerously low, what this does, it actually does two things. Notice that all those goggles are tinted, right? Mm -hmm. So... You can get snow blindness, yeah. which mm -hmm. is because the snow is white, which is a very, it's white and reflective. And when the sun hits that, it can get very, very, very bright. Um, so you want to cover your eyes with something so that you're, you don't get exposed to that brightness for too long. And also because it keeps the insanely cold wind from getting in your eyes, um, which will make them tear up, which is not something you want on your face. You don't want moisture on your face. I mean, surely, it's really, really cold. Surely that's not the point he's making right he's not actually saying there's no use to have goggles what is well, what is he saying <laughs> what? i don't I guess know this is just it i don't know what what he's trying to parody yeah because now i'm thinking like what have we made fun of clothing wise in the sequel trilogy the ray's costume basically is the same from start to finish which is just true yeah, that's not like a woman at all <laughs> Which is true, yeah, which is true. Yeah, women love to wear the most extravagant of things, not just the same thing, but a different color. That's that's just there, lame. 
they're trying to compensate for Queen Amidala's wardrobe. Yeah, they're not quite. Maybe. They didn't quite get there, did they? <laughs> they they tried. Um, yeah. What? Or maybe raise like a college girl who always wears sweats. I don't know. Sure. Looking at gigantic projections of images, wouldn't see that he's just using regular ass ski goggles as part All of his you costume need. design. I don't know. Why? What's wrong? With you, all you need is regular ass ski goggles. Why would yeah. a universe can't create goggles? Well, of course, it wouldn't make sense for the Star Wars universe that have humanoids to generate <laughs> something that would match something we use as humanoids. It's that would be weird. It's extremely mm -hmm. effective and cheap. They wouldn't use that. How dumb is it that they have rifles? Yeah, they fire lasers and shit, but they're rifles. Oh, we have rifles. rifles. What a bizarre. What I don't even know what that's. Oh, parody. maybe what, that makes me think <laughs> about the, 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 the stupid. That makes me think about the laser axe criticism I had. Maybe maybe that's the reference in some vague laser way. Laser axe. I just thought it was dumb that they, like you know, you bring down a piece of metal on someone. If it's just a thin laser, I just feel like that's awkward compared. Um, that was that scene is so bizarre. They just like they have executioner stormtroopers that just walk into the room and then they just put them on the floor and they're like, cut their heads off now. You're like, wow, that's how it works? You guys just... Like right here? <laughs> like we have to clean this up? Yeah. Also, th this axe is two blades, so there's going to be like a little disc of neck that'll just be yeah. flopping around on its own. What a weird... Who came up with this? I didn't sign up to be the executioner stormtrooper. And that's the thing. Like, it's a really quick comment in my in my series because I just remember being like, oh, you got to just have laser everything, don't you? You're like, you have to... Oh, I remember... Fucking, you know, they wear the hood in, in in medieval times, so we gotta have a black stripe on the stormtroopers that are executioners. And I'm just sitting here like, what the fuck is this? Like, why have you done this? You try to like, shoot him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> With your guns. Do you remember when he executes Hux in, in episode 9? He just fucking shoots it. It was like, yeah, do that. That's way better. It's, it's actually cleaner, too. Yeah, no muss, no fuss. Let's get on with our day. And so this yeah, is the, like the, the irony, I would say. Point. When I say something like that and move on straight away, and then people like Quinton did it, and plenty of others, where they'll just be like, look at the kind of shit Mola says. And they'll just be like, yeah, five hours of that. It's like, this, no, you're nitpicking me now. You have become the thing you saw to destroy. Exactly. <laughs> just looking back and thinking about it, it just seems so weird and lazy to me. The only good part of this intro is, well, I would is in ask the base. Suggestion. When, when wait, Chewie... wait, why is he not taking a piss out of Chewie's fucking goggles for welding? Yeah. <laughs> no, those are... Welding? Right. He's welding oh, with oh, welding Oh, so in the future, goggles. they don't want sparks and, scra you know, and shrapnel while you're welding and doing engineering work to get in your eyes and blind you. Ooh. Yeah, that's a little too close to our universe. Uh, Pretty lazy. Why, why, why isn't the gag that Chewie is welding when he's made out of fur? How, how interesting is it? Because yesterday I had to do some uh, I, Dremel work, um, actually, uh, to repair something at my, uh, my grandparents' place. How odd that the first time I ever use one of those tools um, and have to wear the goggles and everything. <laughs> You're covered it, in the fur. next day... Oh. We, we're talking about this stuff on EFAP when it's never come up before, ever. What well, an interesting coinky dinky That's the bad writing of Planet Earth for you. Yeah. Yep. Cat, it's a contrivance. God, what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> He's like writing down. Uh, like my, my life is very poorly written. Mm -hmm. yeah. 2020 written by Bad Robot. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's going to make a sequel. <laughs> Don't yes. do it. He was basically box. telling Han to go f off because he wasn't helping fix the Millennium Falcon. I like Chewie, you know? He, he doesn't want to waste any time. At least he doesn't want to waste my time. Now, when Han walks into, like, okay. these main headquarters for the base, he said, No sign of life out there. And at that moment, I remember checking my pulse to make sure I had signs of life. Because, like I said earlier, a whole lot... Okay. Hmm. Trying to, to Nothing happened for, like, the first 25 minutes. Of this video, I mean, hasn't he already like gone over several things? Nothing happens in, in the Empire Strikes Back. So again, to to do the two types of response, first surface level. So he's already gone over the things that have happened in the first twenty five minutes, uh, partially. So it's like this stance doesn't even make sense on its own. In in the form of this is making fun of people who say it. The only thing I can think of would be referenced here would be Canto Bite saying that all of Canto Bite was pointless, but it was. It was pointless. Mm -hmm. So everything that is achieved through the plotline of Canto Bite is undone by the end of Canto Bite. That's why people consider it a waste of time. Nothing happens. Like, what's the argument for, for Empire, exactly? I don't know. Yeah. 
Again, just they don't quite work. Gotta try harder than this. A lot of nothing is happening for a whole lot of this movie. Also, this rebel base sequence uses the same shot twice, but they flip it horizontally as if we weren't gonna notice. Yeah, we noticed, and it feels f cheap. Oh, I never now, noticed that. If that's the case, that. then yeah. If, <laughs> if that's the case, then uh, never yeah, I'd say that's uh... never knew that. <laughs> Interesting. But you know, I'll allow it because you know I will admit. Compared to some other things, that didn't quite destroy the entire movie. But it, you know, he's right. Yeah. yeah, I yeah, good. We finally, I mean, we're a third of the way over a third of the way through. But he pointed out something that yeah is a legitimate criticism. Absolutely has no bear. It is it is a nitpick. However, it is it correct. So, bravo, we did one correct thing in seven minutes. They repeated Very a shot impressive. and flipped it. All right. Yeah. Also, he needs to scoot, man. <laughs> run out of time like, yeah he's yeah you, you're running out of time my dude we're still we haven't even gotten to the hoth battle yet oh. yeah yeah see what he's gonna pull out of his ass who knows we got, we got an hour and a half left <laughs> Now, a bunch of dumb shit occurs between Han and Leia because this film wants to push the idea of a love triangle. But to be honest, it's super clear from the previous film that Leia ultimately is going to end up with the hero of the series. No, it isn't. No. No, it isn't at all. No. I would, I would, what uh, Han and <laughs> what I mean, this do you do you realize how this movie ends? Well, with Han saying that and Leia saying that they love each other. So again, go in. I love you. No, she, he he says I love you. She says I know. Just go he in surface level. But um, yeah, they, you have. You know, in Jedi, she flips it in Jedi. I, I would actually argue that A New Hope makes it pretty clear that it's gonna be Han. Just just from a strictly about the movies where um, he's like, do you ever think a, a girl like that would fall for a guy like me? And then it looks like no. No. And he just smiles. <laughs> and I feel like that's a signal to the audience, like, hmm, I wonder what will happen there. Hmm. And then, um, he has I would, forced matchmaking. I would call this scene a red herring for relationship tisms. Um, the relationship building on in on Hoth, sorry Hoth, um, with uh, Leia and, and uh, Han Solo is absolutely fantastic. Oh yeah, they don't waste a line of yep. dialogue between those two. It, it, yeah, it's yeah, so great. it's so kind of intriguing, and she try she's trying so hard. Um, not to give anything away and he's being extra pushy because he knows it and it just makes for a great dynamic and it's brilliant so it's basically rape <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> the funny thing time. is what i was thinking in my head I was, uh, like as you said just the reason why it was funny <laughs> to me because I was, I was thinking of saying back to as like yeah they don't just they just don't write characters like that anymore and then he's like it's basically rape <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's probably why, because he is pushy in um in the OT. Yeah, he's he's pushy. Yeah, he chases after her. He's he's trying mm -hmm. to court her, and it it makes for what I I think most well, would agree are passionate scenes between them. Yes, a lot of people uh, do. don't like to acknowledge the fact that women like uh they they like it when a man shows interest and pursues them. Yes, it's gonna be uh yeah, it's kind of a. Well, normal women do. It's just the yeah, people normal on women. Twitter, Twitter that keep complaining. Me too, me too, you. Well, I mean, Han would have been me too'd for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, C three PO interrupting their kissing yeah. would have taken a photo, posted it to Twitter, and been like, "This, this was unacceptable. I will not <laughs> work on this." Yeah, would be colored rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't have just been a red arm. It would have been a pink leg and a <laughs> blue torso. And a green head. Yellow, <laughs> yellow, this. And all the colors in the You'd have an afro. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, what? Give him a tail. Human Give him cycle all kinds relations of stuff. Uh, supports trans rights. Uh, <laughs> okay. We must free the drawing. Oh no, I've been blown up. Oh god, I laughed so much. I'm not sure why it was cut, but even the trailer for The Empire Strikes Back hinted at their secret romance. My guess is that secret. this whole Han and Leia thing throughout this film is more or less just a misdirect to us. So when Luke what it's like the plot line for them what do you mean yeah you can't make that <laughs> claim also how they feel i got no clue is this going to be referencing then uh ray not falling for finn when everyone expected her to there was a couple of confusions about that a lot of people wanted um poe and finn to end up together if you remember well i don't know if they wanted it was just it, i think it was more of a you know another another virtue signal out on Twitch, while it's just like, why mm -hmm. can't we have Finn and Poe together? Well, of course, because they only spent 
a grand total of what, like two minutes together, something like that. Um, it's just that they and got they along looked well. at each other. I mean, it immediately means Wrong the England. gay. You know, yeah, I don't, I don't know why Ray didn't fall for the guy who's most famous for constantly screaming her name. <laughs> right. <laughs> why would you love me, Ray? Well, so the the great it's thing is. And I want to mention this one, if ever we have Major Lee back on, on EFAB. When, when he came on before Rise of Skywalker came out, he told us he couldn't wait for the romance between Kylo and Rey to continue in Rise of Skywalker. And, and Rags and I were just like, what? Continue? What are you talking about? Like, what romance? And they kissed! <laughs> like, wait a minute. What's... So I guess um, maybe there was some people were upset that Kylo and Rey got a moment where Finn and Rey did not. Is that what this is possibly referencing? I don't know. She's into homicidal maniacs. What can I say? Yeah. Genocidal maniacs. Yeah. Never mind homicide. Yeah, patricidal. Patricidal. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Who's your hero, them. Darth Vader? You're like, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, I really want. Oh. I really want you to erupt inside of me. Wait, are we talking about her? Speaking of erupt that's inside so of me. <laughs> it's it's an analogy to the alcohol in critical drinker's liver. I was actually talking to critical drinker. I wasn't that wasn't an Eva moment. Just being oh critical drinker. How are you are doing? We still live. Well, hey. hello, hello. How is everyone? Oh, we're, we're doing okay. Good. We're all Just right, swell. despite. We're watching a video that's talking about the flaws of Empire Strikes Back, isn't that? Yeah, Ooh. this is an amazing <laughs> parody. Should, should be a short video then, I would imagine. Unfortunately not. It, it feels very long, though, well, it's 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 really, you know, it's hard to give you all the context. It's been a ride. Um, but it's a parody. It's not. How, how, how far into it have you gotten? Oh, we are seven minutes out of 18. Um, oh, okay. And it's, uh, yeah, it's simultaneously a parody of me, by the way. Yeah. Right, Supposedly. Okay. Allegedly. Supposedly. <laughs> I mean, um, in theory, this is a parody of Mahler and EFAP and the stuff that we say, but um, if you didn't tell us that at the beginning, we might have not even have noticed. If you want to um, hit the link, jump in. You can, you can ride this wonderful adventure along with us. I'm excited <laughs> about this. I don't want this to end, so uh, let's see. <clears throat> All right, cool. Just give me a second to jump in. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I can use the loo while you do that. Wow, weak bladder. Yeah. I know. I piss myself here at the desk. So. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, you gotta have your uh, your like your just bottles, empty bottles, ready to go. Yeah. Fill them up, and they can act as yeah. fuel cells for your pea-powered cars and stuff. <laughs> you know, man yeah. of the future. That's the nice only thing we're going to be able to drive here in California. So <clears throat> we'll be able to use fuel past, uh, what, 2035. No internal combustion engines Damn. allowed. Yeah. Uh, California will be, you know, Mad Max by the, by that time anyway. Well, yeah, it's pretty nuts because so. I, I, I didn't realize like the, so many people were leaving California. I didn't, I didn't actually know that that was like a huge thing because it's, it's getting a lot of coverage now. It's just like, yeah, it's a huge problem. People are just like, we're out. And New York as well. Yeah. Well, it's crazy when you got a guy running your state who, uh, you know, it's falling apart, but, you know, uh, he comes out with, a, oh, well, I'll just tell uh, companies who can be in their boardroom. I mean, I won't address homeless, all the fires, people leaving, you know, a third of our business is being gone. Well, virtue signal instead. It works. Pretty nuts. Um, it is nuts. <clears throat> Uh, while Rags is peeing, I guess, uh, 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 Drinker, did you manage to check out uh, Invisible Man? Oh, I saw that. You did? While oh, you're in the bathroom? Damn. <laughs> uh, yeah. There was an Invisible Man Good. in the bathroom. He watches me when I pee. Mm. Did you get <laughs> stage fright, or are you okay? Taps for you. Me? Stage fright when I pee? Well, if you've got the Invisible Man watching you, so he's still <laughs> give you... Get a little bit of he's stage critiquing fright. you. He gives you a grade at the end. <laughs> no, I could tell he was embarrassed. Oh, yeah. makes sense. Like you need to drink a little more he's, water. He's he's um no, I I drink water all the time. When I pee, it's basically it's just it is water essentially. It's just in and out with me. That's why I take so many bathroom breaks during EFAP because I'm just just chugging through. I'm like a fish, <laughs> just what in and out that water. That's good with my yeah, Patton I mean... Oswalt gills. <laughs> oh man. Such a highlight of that season. Mm. Drink, are you there? 
Wow. Wow. Useless. <laughs> Worthless. He's already <laughs> drunk. He's already <laughs> conked out. He's already yeah. slumped over on the floor, passed out. <laughs> Hope he fell on his side. I don't want anything bad to happen. Mm, yeah. Don't John Bonham. <laughs> So Rags does piss with David the door Carradine. open. What? That's what that's what James Moore just said. I'm assuming the Invisible Man was in the room and the door was closed. Yeah, or he followed very closely behind me. Mm -hmm. Or he stepped over me while I was going inside. We could just be in there all the time waiting. That's my um, uh, Call of Duty Warzone thumbnail I use for me <laughs> drinker. I guess his bottle. <laughs> That's actually pretty good, yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot of effort to clasp a, a bottle of Jack with just your lips. You use your jaw, you see. You Gills. Keep it, keep it out, yeah, and, yeah. It up, and then you retract you, it. You, you've, it got to, you've got to go... You've got to go the cigar approach and really clamp down on that with your teeth. <laughs> yeah. That's a muscle you've been working on, you know, over the years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> lip muscles. I'm not going to ask how you got your lip muscles so strong, but... <laughs> well... Well, well being, you're not the only that. invisible man that hangs out in bathrooms. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh <my> but <laughs> 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 you're there going, oh no, there's another invisible man. And the guy's like, no, I come here every Saturday for a bloke. <laughs> Someone walks in on you and they're like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, trust me, you're just a fucking invisible man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you manage to see it, by the way, afterward? Or... Uh, invisible man. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I haven't seen it yet. I've been watching Bly Manor, so I'm going to watch it tomorrow night or something. We're, we're supposed to be doing it, what, like the 28th or something? We're going to be doing a stream on it? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll All right, see cool, you man. I'll, I'll for sure get it watched before then. No problem. How are you, you finding Bly? It's good, yeah. Like, episode 5 kind of redeemed it for me, because it was getting a, a little bit slow and a little bit mired in the, co the sort of romance aspect of it that I didn't give a shit about, so... Uh, yeah, 5 was like a nice welcome change of pace, and I like the, the sort of non-linear structure of it. It was well written, so... Oh. Good well, stuff. Yeah. Um, we might be able to talk about that on the uh, Invisible Man stream, I guess, because... Uh... Rags and I are yeah. quite fond of that show, so uh, if you get them both watched up by then, we'll have plenty to talk yeah. about. We should just fucking talk about Bly Manor, it'd be easier. <laughs> well, we could do both, uh, if you want. I mean, I didn't expect, like, the casual sort of, uh, it's up to you. We could do both, we could do more the Invisible on one. Manor. Yeah. I'm... Well, yeah, I mean, we, we can touch upon Bly Manor. Yeah, so I'm sure we'll, we'll find a way to work around it. Um, meanwhile, <laughs> so... I don't even know how to get you into into gear for this. This video is yeah. he's created what he believes would be a video like in my style, but on Empire Strikes Back while simultaneously trying to prove the point that Empire suffers in the same ways that the sequel trilogy do if you were to apply your criticism equally. It does. Oh, it's that old argument of like, well, the the original trilogy has some flaws, so that makes it just as bad as the sequel trilogy. Yeah, just it's either perfect or shit. Yeah, nothing in between. Okay, cool. That that pretty much sets the tone for this video, then. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, let me know if it's not playing for you. Can Leia finally do fall in love, and whatever next entry comes out, it will feel earned. I mean, let's be honest. Leia ending up with Han is a ridiculous scenario and very problematic. No matter what happens in this movie, you know, Han's. He's not. I don't think he's gonna su support. Again, he might mm. try, which could be funny, but I, you know, we'll see. Don't they have quite a well-developed, like, romantic tension that builds throughout the movie? And I, so just, I just said that, yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. But again, when no, this no, guy... No, the, just, this guy... Just, no, they did have this thing build up, and he's trying to pretend that there's... No, it, oh, this whole fucking video show. Well, so, yeah. if, if it doesn't make sense on a surface-level way, then it has to just be referencing something that someone has said about the sequel trilogy, and I just don't, I don't know what this one would be. Like, oh, why, these two shouldn't be ending up together. It's like, are you, well, you're referencing right. Kylo and Rey? Because... I think he's trying to say that Hans, she's the princess and Han Solo's the smuggler, the vagabond, the naughty guy. <gasps> so how can they get together? Well, you know, he didn't blow up three fucking <laughs> planets and... <laughs> yeah, what what woman yeah. would ever find a charming, handsome bad yeah. boy uh, attractive? <laughs> like, that? that's yeah, crazy, women man. Never, oh, women, also, like, uh, extremely safe very nervous, soft-spoken, passive beta types. That's what women really like. Yep. They kill their dads and blow up planets. 
<laughs> you said blow up three planets. I was like, uh, it is five. I will have you know. Five. Sorry, my mistake. Which is the Chad five. I'm you know? He just blew them all up. He's so cool. Also, the he killed his dad. Finger shuffle as he likes oh, yeah. to call. He's off the hook for Kajimi because he had his change of heart. And yeah, are there even is there another relationship in the sequel trilogy other than those two? The, the, the... R2D2 and C3PO. Yeah. <laughs> the most be believable connection, I would say. Yeah. Oh my, R2. Fin, uh, <laughs> R2 yeah, Finn's R2. relationship with Rose is is more oh shit intense yeah, that was... than that. Maybe oh, that's what God. he's referencing. Like when everyone was like, "Where the fuck did this come from?" Maybe he feels as though it's like, "Oh, it was very clearly set up." Where Rose sexually assaults Finn. Um, yeah, all of it, man. All of it's so weird. I don't even, like, nobody understands it. Not even Finn did. Where, um, Han Solo hits uh, Luke's X-Wing out the way to stop him from blowing up the Death Star because we have to save what we love. His altar end gets blown up in the background. Oh. <laughs> Just like, gave oh, somebody an idea for fan fiction. Saving the ones we love, Luke. Fucking hell! It's gonna blow the fucking thing up. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know, um, you should just just picture him being like, "Oh my god, see if 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 more made it about this, or if any of you guys have made it about this, this is the kind of stuff you'd be saying." It's like, but there's just no so references. Wrong. There's nothing. There's just why would anyone say this about Empire? I don't understand. Make an argument so you sound kind of close to it. Help us. He's the cool guy, but also the bad boy that sometimes does the right thing. And that's really it. Moving on. One of the wackiest oh, scenes oh, in the first it, yeah. when oh. did When did Kylo do the right thing? Right at the end? When he, when he killed his dad. Well, he went, after he'd killed his dad, he, blown he, up my He blood. hesitated to kill his mom because he loved yeah. her so much. He, yeah, he, yeah, her he, on the ship. he slightly hesitated before murdering his parents, so... Yeah. yeah, that's the sign of a good man. He shed a tear. Yeah. Redeemable. A real just, man would have just fucking done it. I do like yeah. the idea of comparing the potential there, like, because it's just like, hard is like a bad boy because he, he killed Greedo before Greedo shot him compared to a guy who blew up a whole system of plants. <laughs> like, <laughs> mm. Very equal. <laughs> Was this guy's summary of Han Solo basically that he's a bad boy who occasionally does the right thing? Okay, move on. Well, like, he's basically ben of Solo. Who's... Yeah, I, I assume what he's trying to say with that comment is like that's how people summarize a lot of the characters in the sequel trilogy. But I should be like, yeah, but again, the sequel. So Kylo Ren's really hard to sum up precisely because you, you can't actually you, you don't know what he's gonna do every single scene. He could do anything. You're just like I don't know, <laughs> mood swings the character. But uh, you know the rest of them are so he hard to angst. even sort of support i mean the fact that you have john boyega saying they fucking completely wasted his character at this point it's just like yeah there's barely any illusions anymore about how shit the characters are in the sequel trilogy like yeah they didn't have a plan meanwhile they really came out yeah the the ot characters People... like why do you think the ot is so popular it's the the characters at the core everyone fucking loves han solo luke skywalker and leia like it's just how it goes and vader yeah and vader yeah big time Act is Han going out searching for Luke, who was taken by the weird tall snow monkey thing, right? Remember? Han is literally told that his horse goat thing will die if he's out in the blizzard for too long by other rebels, right? Of course, somehow this blizzard doesn't kill people, it only kills horse goats. The people have like clothing and technology <laughs> so, and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> but, yeah, this one doesn't, yeah. like, Han has a camp to set up. He says that. You can see it when they get the rescue in that shot. He's got he a camp. And he has to put Luke inside the Tauntaun in order to keep that... him alive long enough to set the camp up. Yep. And Luke was at the, on the verge of death from hypothermia and when Han, Han found him. It's, yeah. a, it's a really big important moment because it's showing you how much Han cares about him. He's willing to actually yeah. potentially die just to save him. Yeah, he so... said, we're not leaving without uh, Luke. Uh, the thing so... is that uh, you'll get stranded out there and he's like... Yeah. <laughs> Again, my question is, what's his point and yeah. what's the parody? Oh, well, again, you have to do so much crazy, like, guesswork for that one, but, um, I, I suppose this one could just be categorized under potential plot hole that isn't actually one, if that's what he's, his goal is. It's, like, successful, I guess, but, um, again, we, we, we always try to be accurate when we talk about the sequel plot holes, because there's a shit ton. So, he didn't yeah, get that far, know. obviously. <laughs> he, he just wanted to nitpick the movie and didn't really think about the 
aspect of what parody is. Uh, probably going over, well, he would have had to watch your videos a lot and then try to figure what to compare. Cause I, yeah, cause we're definitely, I mean, well, this guy didn't get that far with this. He's I know just, he's going to nitpick it just like Mahler does. He's going to hate me. Just if you remember, uh, rags way back when, when we were first doing EFAB, like Quinton said, like he fucking hated me before he'd even seen my videos because, uh, he, he kept getting people saying he should watch them. You were like, oh, you should watch Mahler's videos because they'll go through all the problems. And you're just like, fuck off. Like, I don't, I don't have to watch someone's five-hour video to tell me my opinion is wrong. That sort of attitude. And so they kind yeah. of just, like, go nuts. They're just like, okay, you know what? Empire sucks. Because if, if harm was in the snow, oh, I can kill the animals, but I can't kill the humans? That's a plot hole. See, I can do it, too. And you're just sitting there like, okay, calm down. You're okay. To be fair, um, Quentin probably had a five-hour Garfield video to make, so I'm sure like he had bigger, bigger fish to fry. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, he um, he originally was going to do a big response to me, but he said he like he just couldn't be asked eventually. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> well, of it's course, like he, I could absolutely destroy your arguments, but you know, phew, I just well, I've got better it. things to do. Well, he he sneaked it into um, IHE's video, didn't he? Uh, which I always assumed, like, the, the idea there is just like, I don't want to snipe you directly, I'll snipe you from the side. Through yeah. someone else's video yeah. that I won't, that I'll go off script for. Um, Quentin's a bit of a snake. He's, he's, a, a, he's an interesting a very, one, that Quentin. Person. Okay, <laughs> Luke, who escaped the monkey, the has passed out after seeing the hallucination Dang. of Obi-Wan Kenobi, and then he's saved by Han in the most ridiculous way ever. Han cuts open the dead horse goat's belly with a lightsaber yes i guess yeah. anyone can switch on lightsabers now why wouldn't they be able yeah. to yeah. It's, a it's, not, it's, not a it's a button device. it's a button it's you a press button. the button if you can if you can if you can use a blaster you can switch on a lightsaber i would imagine mm -hmm. han couldn't create a lightsaber no but he can press the button and turn the thing on yeah, yeah. I mean, I and i i could quite easily buy that you could use it as a tool to use to do simple yep. things like that without it's any difficulty. Probably, but look at the way he's holding it. He's even holding it in a clumsy manner because hmm. he doesn't know how to, you know, wield a sword. So he's even holding it like you know, two hands or let's just and again, it across. I'm trying to think about like what he could be referencing. So is it the where like how the fuck is Ray so good with a lightsaber and? <laughs> <laughs> is, is that is that like what he's angry at in this moment? If Han could mm -hmm. turn this one on. That's that's what I mean. Every time you try and find an equivalent in the OT, you have to stretch it to unbelievable limits. You're like, so how can you press a button? Guys, guys, honestly, Finn, guys, guys, not honestly offended. Yeah. Being able to turn on a lightsaber is just the same as beating Luke Skywalker in hand to hand <laughs> combat with a lightsaber. Yep. It's just the same level of skill required. Oh, okay. well, that's I, what I honestly think that's what they see when they see us doing that. They're like, oh my god, this is like saying, oh, how does Han press a button? Like, you guys are being stupid. I don't think we had a, we never had a problem with <laughs> Finn turning on the lightsaber yeah, and no. using it. I don't think anyone did. Yeah, no. She, no. That, um, Nobody had a problem with that at all. Because it's not he like you have to. It's not like an RPG where oh you have to have Force level two unlocked to use this weapon, or you this weapon can't be used by your class or something like that. No, it's an object that you could use your fingers and you can press the button and it turns on. Yeah, and the thing with Finn, yeah, yeah, like people, use, people have good. like people have gone over to blasters because they're easier to use and they're ranged weapons and that they're more like practical in most senses, but. Force users are able to wield lightsabers to such a level that they can deflect blaster bolts. Yeah, that's why they become yeah. useful. Like the, a normal person couldn't do that. So the, yeah, like, it would just be a tool. Yeah, for a normal person, so very useful. useful. Like if like if you needed to cut open an animal, it would be a pretty useful tool. I think. Yeah. I'd yeah. Say so yeah. Yeah. And well, and when Finn fired it up and fought Kylo Ren, he had. I mean, even though he was a janitor, he had military training. You would expect him to fight, and that established that uh, Kylo Ren was powerful. And then Ray promptly kicked his ass afterwards. Of course she did. Why would she not? So remember, he yeah, was shot. That's, that's perfectly okay. Yeah. Remember that the, he's like literally dancing around with her with his sword. It's like he was shot. That's why she won. That yeah, it wasn't that yep. she got some kind of weird. She downloaded the force from him, and you know. <laughs> Really, it depends who you speak to. Uh, you'll find out the reason she won because it's all different yeah, accounts. She practiced with it's, her stick before. The way it's shot, 
she's actually in the position that the antagonist would normally be in during that fight. There is literally that point where she knocks him to the ground after injuring him, mm-hmm. and she's like, the camera's on her, and she's like pacing around him. Yeah, like while he's the, while he's struggling to get back up. It's like yeah, and I'm like, this this is so ass backwards. Like, what the fuck mm-hmm. is this trying to be? No, we're rooting for her. Where do we go from here? You know, it's like she's mm. better than him. Like, all right, um. Yeah, mm. tension yeah. minus one. It's quite the adventure yeah. <laughs> the sequel trilogy. Quite the adventure. Now, it has nothing to do with the Force anymore. I feel like at some point, there will be like a Star Wars film filled when with hundreds of with people force? with lightsabers. Just all swinging them around like batons, because who the f*** cares anymore? But back- like Luke, when Luke first turned on ah. the Jedi and uh, f- turned on the Jedi. <laughs> when Luke first turned on the lightsaber in A New Hope, he just pressed the button and the blade came out? Yeah. And yeah, he was just he's a Luke. Jedi rags in the future, but still. Nobody says this. Who <laughs> also this back to my like a... point. He shoves what Luke point? into the goat horse's belly. And then he constructs a tent somehow so that they can sleep. His... And I sh- what do you mean constructs a tent somehow? <laughs> he has a tent stuff with like him. He, he constructs he constructs a tent the same way we all fucking construct a tent like yeah, it's there like in his pack and, and he unfolds it and... he has survival gear with him yeah, if he didn't have sense. survival gear with him i would be like wait they sent him out there without like any oh that maybe this guy thinks dicks. uh constructing a tent is something difficult to do and once again you're like Probably. what could he possibly it. be it must he's just be militant the it's general yeah. Sort of concept of nitpicking, like that must be what he's aiming for with this. I don't know. Shit, you not? Everything else out there in the blizzard dies on Hoth, but not these two guys. I mean, what are you, what are you referencing to, when you, know, you say everything else dies? Like, what are you, what are you talking about? He knows like humans go to Antarctica, right? Well, doesn't. <laughs> like, I don't just think everything else will die if it doesn't have a technology but to not help it survive. Humans, but sure. their technology and equipment and engineering and. <laughs> Their thermally insulated tents and their portable heaters. Gah. Oh, they don't freeze to death. Mm. I mean, Han just makes a snow fort. Maybe NASA made it. Regardless, the t- what? Uh, he, what? No. Uh, this, uh, this, this is a this is a this is a culture. This is a society where intergalactic space travel is possible. <laughs> right. I, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure they can construct tents that will keep you warm. Yeah, they're they're a little more advanced than NASA. Gear. I don't, I don't... Tiger. And, and he's losing me on, like, like what is the point you're making anymore, overall? I don't know. Two of them are saved and brought back to the Rebel base. But to be fair, the sequence with these new ships in the intro, searching for Han and Luke, felt like a ride to me at certain moments. Nit- While this movie is it. a vapid shell of what the first film was, it is visually impressive. And I will also say that the score is very exciting to listen to. But unfortunately, this film relies on how powerful the score sounds to give these astoundingly dull scenes emotion. Up next, Luke's in a diaper. I keep saying it. Everyone took LSD while making this this movie. Whoever envisioned this diaper tank of horrors should be removed from Hollywood. It, um, okay. I don't, I don't, I'm, so we're doing the thing where we try to figure out what's wrong with it in the movie and what it's parodying. Both is coming he, up with zeros. Is, oh, is this the, the Holdo dress? Maybe? Or is, Maybe. is this the, is this the Finn, like, wetsuit thing in... Last Jedi, the suit that where he's just like, in. yeah, he's walking around. It's just, it's just leaking everywhere, and it's like, how funny is that? Luke's like, not uh, walking around with a back to tank spewing all over the place like a fish tank. The the and acid doesn't make you want to put grown men in diapers. By the way, that was that was like feeling that. thin. <laughs> People were criticizing the fact that he was fucking walking around like a dickhead for cheap laughs with the fucking pipe. Suddenly, Finn. Who we wanted to be a badass by the end of um, the Force Awakens was immediately shown off to be fucking comic relief guy Your for the role. next film. Well, relief. Remember how it begins? He he wakes up saying, "Sorry, to- sorry, I'll I'll rephrase that. Not comic relief. Token fucking black. Yes, that's what he became in a fucking sequel. You're the token black. However, we're not going to have you on the poster. Well, they they also they had him be. He was bumbling. <laughs> that was his main thing." And uh, like I said, do you remember when he, he wakes up in TLJ? He wakes up well, shouting Ray. While he was Ray. being led around by his Chinese master. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. just, that's your metaphor for Disney right there. Yes, right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he also, uh, 
Like, he hits his head on the cover, he opens it up, and then he slips off his bed, and then he's, he's just, yeah, it's all very, yeah. like, isn't it so funny that this is what Finn... It's like, oh, damn, we were concerned that he was even alive, but, yeah, I guess this is funny now. Because this guy, this guy essentially sacrificed himself to protect Ray and could have suffered major spinal injuries based on that lightsaber swipe nah. that, that floored him. <laughs> but now it's just like, <laughs> look at the funny man in the wetsuit thing. That was so cheap. Yep. He's like, look at that. Sliced him on his spinal cord. You're like, oh, and it's like, he's fine though. And that was the death of Finn's character right there at the start of fucking that film. TLJ, I think yeah. uh, I think that word pretty much sums <laughs> up most of the writing in TLJ. It's just cheap. Cheap mm. laughs, cheap drama, cheap cheap beats. You don't like your mama yeah. jokes? I do, <laughs> I do. I do in like early 90s sitcoms maybe, but no, mm -hmm. not so much in my mainstream Star Wars movies. Yeah, it's a bit weird when they did that, yeah. It's just a bit flat. For the okay. remain of human existence. I also laughed out loud in my theater when Luke got sucked up out of it. It made me think of Augustus Bloom going through the chocolate river. Augustus Bloom? Isn't it Glump? Gloop. Gloop. No, oh, I thought he said Gloom. Why did he say Bloom? Oh, fuck. I'm just confused now. Too many words. He can't even get this... All the movies he reviewed, he, he mentions he's wrong with. Maybe he's doing oh. it on purpose? I don't know. You got sucked up out of it? It made me think of Augustus Bloom going through the chocolate river tubes in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now, we got all three of the heroes from the previous film back in one room, and we're back to the love triangle bullshit. I hate it. But hey, at least Luke got a kiss and he looks pretty happy about it. Maybe one day you'll know what that's like. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just got no commentary for this. <laughs> yeah, is, he just, is he just jealous that a woman kissed somebody? Oh, fucking Could be. Man. I also did laugh at Chewie just staring around at everyone, you know, watching everything unfold around him. It's like he's looking at them all like, wow, humans are kind of stupid. So after this, the film actually sort of starts to pick up and the pace is pretty good for a while, which was nice because feeling alive is something that I enjoy. Those probe droids from earlier finally displayed their true purpose, which to be frank, I thought was pretty smart. The probe, if interfaced with, would self-destruct, sending a signal back to wherever the Empire is. So far, I think that was the what? smart thing no it's no. not the, it doesn't send the signal no. back to the empire if it explodes <laughs> if it explodes, <laughs> yeah. if it explodes like, well i found something interesting i have to explode this in my yeah like on the side i gotta to explode to tell the fucking empire i've left it <laughs> yeah Exploded well, I think he's almost suggesting that, like, I guess it just wanted to say hi to the empire at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Um, so, again, on the surface, no. And then, what does he try to parody, maybe? Like, people who <laughs> point out good writing where they've just misunderstood something? I don't know. If that's the goal. Uh, I, I'm coming to the I'm, rapid conclusion the guy doesn't understand the word parody. Oh, well, for sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, of course. He's, I, mean, this, I mean, in this case, is he... Is he having to go at uh, the criticisms of the First Order for being monumentally dumb in, in their military strategy. And it's yeah. like, well, this is this is just the same example of it. I mean, it's also weird that he's like, this is the scene where he's discovering <laughs> the purpose of the probe drivers. It's like, it's like, wasn't it clear what it was doing from the second you saw it launch from a Star Destroyer down to the down to Hoth? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so. Pretty clear. Thing in the film, in three people to write it. Next up, we finally actually see the extent of the Empire's random ass fleet of doom that's pursuing the rebellion. Maybe it's just me, but I thought the fact that the ships were all facing random directions was hilarious, and perhaps sending the wrong message that these people all have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> <sighs> so, God. He's trying to get. So the idea that they're all facing different directions. Therefore, accidentally sending the message that they don't even know what they're doing. And you pointed out it had to be written by three people. Uh, I don't know. Is that from the criticism that Ryan Johnson wrote The Last Jedi know. and it was his first draft and we were complaining about that? I, I, it seems pretty tactically logical that if you have a Star Destroyer that is, uh, we've only seen them move forwards you know, because their engines are behind them, that you would want them all to be facing all directions, especially if you're there to make sure that a, a, an enemy force doesn't escape. So no matter what direction they go, you could follow them. 
It's space. Really? There's lots of directions. Plus, yeah, ships have to maneuver around each other, especially during fleet maneuvers, and they may have to go in different and, directions. Like, they don't all just point in exactly the same one. Yeah. God forbid that this is supposed to be a reference to when we, we would all complain about the space chase in TLJ. You know, yeah. the fact that you could just send a Star Destroyer ahead. Like, please don't tell me he's like, see, that's on the level of saying this stuff. I'd just be like, oh. Is it is it a reference to, like, the the Sith not knowing which way is up on Exegol? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> see, like, but that, just, that was dumb, though. But do you, do you see what I mean? We're just like, ah, oh, find similar criticism in Empire. It's like, uh, those ships aren't facing Something the same direction. Like, damn, you got him. You ruined it. You, you've you nailed it. The Empire would never recover from these criticisms. I don't know. And rather than the dar, there's just a really, 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 really big Star Destroyer. And in this one, that's where our main man Vader resides. He's just watching a fleet move around in space in utter what chaos. What does he want to do? Be it's not chaos. The, the scene right before this, they were in formation, traveling yep. in the same direction together. I mean, and they've or... sent probes out. They've sent probes out to various parts of the galaxy anyway, so they might just be facing whichever direction the probe was sent in. Or that's the way they were saying, okay, it doesn't fucking mean shit. I just say, if ever you needed proof that Empire is hard to criticize. <laughs> Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. there we go. This yep. is the clutchiest of straws I've ever fucking seen. Behold, the Empire. I'm super curious as to what all those TIE Fighters are but also doing zipping around. they're not in the wrong direction, between... so what do you say about those three? Because oh, those no, three roll facing dumb. the same direction. Well, again, he, there's the constant defense of, ah, you're falling for it, Anas. The, the point he's trying to make is, is that it is a stupid criticism, and that people make the same shit about the sequel trilogies, that you're like, well, you lost me at the end there. Yep. Between all the different destroyers, my guess, they're all delivering mail. Anyway, Vader and his team of misfits find the secret rebel base because of that Imperial droid's transmission. And there's one mm -hmm. dude that talks out of line to Vader, and immediately I thought to myself, eh, that, that guy's probably gonna die. I was right. If anything, I like that Vader is a petty asshole that kills people for doing Ooh. things that he doesn't like, and he does that pretty much throughout the whole film. Doing things this he is, doesn't this like. Is such... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's not subtle. That's wrong. So, yeah, I, I can only assume this is commentary on the comparison between Kylo killing subordinates and Vader killing subordinates, yeah. which yep. is a very clear difference. Vader knocks out incredibly incompetent people to prevent the, the overall system. You're only as strong as your weakest link, right? He's just yeah. taking it to an extreme degree. While Kylo... Ky I'll never forget that moment in Rise of Skywalker where he's, that guy is like, Hey, uh... <laughs> You know, the, what, what's, what's the Emperor yeah, doing, huh? Totally... He's like, fucking die for asking that question. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Like, a, a totally legitimate question that they should be concerned about, and he's like, ah, oh, fuck off. To the ceiling with you. <laughs> it's, it's such a, it wasn't said in anger, and it was completely reasonable, and he's looking out for yep. you. He says that, you just kill him. Like, what, hey, what buddy, are you, you know, you hey, Kylo, um, I'm gonna be your Herbert, um, <laughs> so like, what do they want from you? Are they are we gonna be in super space debt? He's like, or he's got his like glasses what? on. He's got all the papers in front of him, and he's mocking it. Kylo, like, you got a little booger hanging off your nose. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I've been crunching some numbers here, Kylo. We can't afford this. <laughs> like, <God. laughs> like, wow. I've seen our our stocks and of everything. It's everything's going up. It's everything's great. We got this huge army. What did he ask from you? And Kylo's like, what did you just ask me? He's like, oh no, I was just curious about the deal. Like, what kind of deal was this? He's like, what the fuck did you just say? He's like, no, I'm just not going to ask you questions. I don't know why they I'm here. He just gave <laughs> us an army of planet-destroying ships just like that. What do you mean it's suspicious? Does, you needed the moment where they just go, why are we here? What is the point? Like, what What do we do? We just... He's do like, we just sit. approve of you cutting heads off people? I guess so. Because, I mean, that last one was a banger. Vade, yeah, Vade sure, I guess. Vade wasn't petty, though. He killed the first... Um... General, because he jumped the gun and mm -hmm. gave rebels chance to uh, muster an escape. He's Whether it, if he would immediately he have reported back to Vader, like then they would have all arrived at the same time and taken rebels by surprise. Yeah, the and, second and... time when they got away, this guy here said that I will take responsibility for this. Which, by the way, if look, you picture that he scene, thought would, um, yeah. The idea being that, like, so all Vader knows is that we're currently chasing the Millennium Falcon with three Star Destroyers and a bunch of TIE Fighters. Like, okay. And then he comes mm -hmm. in and says, we lost it. 
like, what do you mean you lost it? He's like, we lost it. I'm sorry. <laughs> he's just like, he said, I'll take full, you know, I'll take full responsibility and then Vader kills him and says, yeah, you will. Apology accepted. accepted. Apology accepted. Yeah. yeah didn't they also have a collision between two Star Destroyers, which probably caused serious damage? So it's like, not only have you lost the craft that you were pursuing, but you've damaged two of our valuable so ships. Down you go. And, and the, the guy at the end, who uh, Vader doesn't kill, the general at the end who he doesn't kill, even though he looks at him and then carries on, is because he actually did the right thing earlier. So Vader gives him a chance. Admiral Piet. So yeah, yeah. it's like uh, quid pro quo with that guy. Dude, fucking watch a film. Well, this is, I mean, the, the criticisms just aren't even remotely the same, but they like to pretend that they are. It's, like, it's just not. Well, honestly, it's like the only tension. Well, we haven't even gotten to the Hoth battle yet. The fuck? No. <laughs> what's, 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 it's how video does this... be over in a minute. Yeah, how does this video work? Because if it's you get a parody, parody of you, me, you think it'd be part, part one. one. Yeah, yeah. But parodying me, you have to actually go through the whole film. I know that's crazy, but just saying that exists in the movie. Whenever Vader's talking to his subordinate, you're like, I don't know, man, this guy might die. Plus, in one of those moments, we get to see a little bit of Vader's creepy skull. I thought that was weird, but in a good what is way. This noise? No. Yeah. It's not it's, like scary. You're just no, like, oh, okay, there's probably a reason why he wears this suit. Yeah, it's to show that, oh, that, that behind all of the fucking metal, all the black, all the scares, all the fucking lightsabers, there is a fucking broken man inside. It's to show that there is humanity in Vader. That's what Luke is looking for, and that's what Luke uh, attacks to, to bring Vader back to the light. But again... Again, has this guy watched <laughs> fucking Star Wars? Well, no. But, like, he... There's this, this notion that he thinks that's what we do with the sequels. It's like, what do you... No. Well, and the biggest difference was what, what that scene is people were actually interested what was under the mask. I mean, that blew us, blew me away when I was a kid and I watched that. Oh, we got to see a piece of Vader right there, you know? Yeah, uh, and because we, it was an interesting character. It was something we were invested in. Nothing, uh, nothing that the Disney trilogy gave us, unfortunately. And uh, I hate to use the saying, but the, his whole baseline is wrong because they're obviously not on equal ground. No. Uh, so, no. I just keep thinking back actually to how disappointing it was when Kylo Ren takes off. And it's just Adam Driver's face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, that's what you call Vader. Look better there. <laughs> the, 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 the face reveal with that, just to be Adam Driver's face, would have worked uh, when he was with Han Solo at the end. Yeah, that's when it would have meant something because we would have had this guy in a mask all the way through, and then Han says, "Let you know, I want to see your face, Ben." You know, I don't want to look in the eyes of a mask when look in your eyes. And then he takes the, the helmet off and you realize that it's just a guy underneath, not, you know, malformed. It's not there keeping him alive or anything. It's a little it's malformed. Just... <laughs> little bit. Yeah. You know, you know, leave him alone with that. You know, oh, come on. Just, just, he's but, you know, it's it just, just to say, you know, he's, it's, it's all intimidation. It's all to, <laughs> to boost him. That's, that's where it would have worked. Not just taking it off for the sake of showing... Ray for a, you know, a snog two films later. I think the only alternative to that that would have been pretty great would have been uh, Jar Jar Binks under the mask. <laughs> and, and, How did you fit underneath that? Mista, don't know. And, and it, they, play it out, <laughs> they play it all out the same way. Like, like Hard treats it really seriously. Every character does. Nobody, nobody addresses the... <laughs> his, his ears just unravel when he takes the helmet off. <laughs> He's a your humble servant. Finally, we get to the <laughs> battle. He's not on the... Naboo no more. Oh my god, he's about to cover the battle when we're in the, the last battle, third sweet. movie, which is in the beginning. And it wasn't actually what? too bad so to watch. My only this issue is with the battle. Oh, yeah. What's wrong with the battle in the beginning? I don't know. A this lot of movies start off with a battle sequence or a fight or action piece at the <laughs> beginning. Did anyone ever say that about TLJ? It's like, why does the battle happen at the first part? Did anyone, anyone here say that ever? I don't know. I didn't, that wouldn't have even occurred to me as something to say. Nope. I'm doing a big confuse right now. Yeah, that's, oh, that's good. a strange one. Yeah, obviously with the, with Empire, you know, you get the, the big, um, 
battle of armies and, and equipment and all that sort of thing at the beginning and then the, the battle at the end is like more of an emotional character driven one so you get it's front loaded with action but then there's much bigger emotional payoffs at the end so it works both ways well um yeah like also I said, this I... isn't much of about this is a route as well so battle yeah. of hoth was the fact that the empire used these like animalistic machines which sure they look cool but why on earth would this be a vehicle that a military would use for a ground battle sorry an like, iconic piece of uh, machinery which uh still today is uh revered is that talking about the in universe this channel's name um, again sorry because i'm kind oh, of AT in the chats. same boat to a degree um okay so is what, this a yeah, criticism like, of the bombers yeah, so what he's referencing here would obviously be the, the bombers. Like, everyone's being so critical of the bombers when, look at the um, uh, the OT, you could be critical of the designs and that. So the pros of the AT-ATs are that they're heavily armored and the goal is to destroy the shield generator, and you can't do that from above. You have to do it from the ground. But and of course... The well, they can, well. they're, they're all terrain, obviously, yeah. from the name. So right, like, but the legs allow them to go across really difficult you know, but so, yeah, well, the, qu the question is something like, you know, it, it is a little confusing exactly like what are the, what are the limits here? Like, could you, if the shield generator prevents any air shit from getting into to Hoth, so you have to send these guys in, it's like, so there is a place where sort of enemy vehicles can get into this area. So what if you had a TIE fighter, I don't know, fly really low? Could it, could it then get in? And if it couldn't, like, why can they not, but the AT-80s can? And if you can, um, surely the Empire probably would have possibly had better better things to use than the AT-80s, maybe? I don't know. Um, I think there's room to discuss something there. The AT-80s are a little bit strange to me in terms of the Empire's resources versus what they use. I mean, they work really well, so it's not like... But we, we don't know how how we don't know the the radius really do with the shield generator. No, it's it's not entirely clear. I mean, I think do they say something like they um they land on the other side of the planet? Or something like that, because that's how far the shields go. I'd have to watch it again. Um, so, you know, they, they could have landed them out of range. You know, there's no point in putting a um, ship down there. What's that going to do? Nothing. So you put you put the AT-ATs down there, and then they come through. It's mostly a design of why... Of all the designs of a land... Um, you, like a land vehicle, <clears throat> why this? It it is we're, we're missing the big point. The big, the problem with the bombers and the big criticism of the bombers is Gravity. they're dropping bombs in space. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah, want to like imply the, for like a second that well, these there's, make there's, as much sense as the bombers. The bombers are way stupider. Slow. They're just there getting picked off left, right, and center. They are actually useless. at yeah, are work. not designed like, to be useless. And these, why are they? I don't think this space? is a good design, but it's functional. The yeah, bombers yeah. are are shockingly poorly designed in many mm, ways yeah. meanwhile the AT-ATs are just there's just a couple of questions out. i have about them only a few and and the, the fact is the AT-ATs get the job done <laughs> like pretty well yes. yeah yep so um, and we see the AT-AT later uh in um return of the jedi on um endor <clears throat> we do we do uh I can see th there's plenty of pros to the AT-80. -AT. I just wonder if there was any other things the Empire could have done in this scenario. I, like I said, I'd have to rewatch it and find out exactly what the limits are of the shield and how it works. But I just wonder, could they have flown a TIE fighter down, put it on a platform, pass it through whatever the shield is that the AT-80s do as well, and then just fly it over to the... I mean, it could have been shot down. I don't know. It's an interesting thing to just, just have a chat about. But the idea that this is on the same level as the fucking bombers in TLJ, like really... They're like super slow. They, they, one half a Tie Fighter destroys three of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think if you're gonna have a slow moving fight, uh, bomber like that, then it has to be heavily armored, like the AT-ATs are. And well, the last when they're not, then because it needs to have it for the plot. Yeah, <laughs> and it still wouldn't move slow Ugh. unless they just. Yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah, there's no, no reason I mean, to as much move sense slowly. as bombs drop. Yeah. Do you know, um, I don't even know how many of you guys know about this, I know Rags does about it, but, uh, the obvious suggestion is, like, we're the Y-Wings, why aren't they using Y-Wings? And, um, Just Right's counter-argument to that is most people don't even know what a Y-Wing is. A Y-Wing's a bomber. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to know what a Y-Wing is. <laughs> that's the, that's the important part. You don't need to mm -hmm. know what it is. That's not even... Oh. 
<laughs> they don't know what this old thing we've established is, so we're just going to create a new thing that's worse oh, in every way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I know. Oh no. But um, and yeah, I, I'm not denying mental ATAT's disorder. Cool... It's Ugh. liking the Last Jedi is a mental disorder. It is. It puts it people is. in fits. It's like TDS. Well, it it's, gets some yeah. making some really weird arguments. Like, I guess it forces you to. You have to find some really roundabout I mean, ways. Yeah, of... it forces you to. You have to rely on nonsense to try and defend these movies. But I think that's the, that's the key. Yeah. You have to force yourself to like. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. there. Definitely. It seems kind of insane. But then again, I'm sure that this would look awesome under a Christmas tree if I was six years old. An old tree! It's invaded hot! From Kenner's Star Wars, the Empire Strikes Back collection. I have one downstairs in my front room. I mean, man child. <laughs> you can't say this about the shit in I'm the sequel trilogy, though, can you? Yeah, no one buys. No one bought the toys. Who bought? No. Who would want to buy the bomber? It's like, oh, it's this. The, oh, the bomber. It's slow oh. and useless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I play with it next? <laughs> uh, yeah, you can have it. It's just got all, useless all it can, action. All it can do so is crash and fall and apart. All got destroyed. <laughs> like yeah. the guide on it says, like, here's how to build it, and here's how to destroy like it. the director of the film. <laughs> Off ice planet that you put together, you can make the elevator go up or down. And so the other thing, how that that Earth did figure. they even get onto Hoth? You know, the rebels find out that the Empire is there, and boom, these things are out there walking around ready to kill. Now, for sure, I thought it was neat when they took them down, but there's also a huge logic error there. They say that the shields are too strong for blasters. One goes down, they take it out with blasters. That armor's too strong for blasters. I agree. This um, does not make sense. The only way you can make sense of it is if somehow they they weakened by the fall or something. But there's no. There's a shield around it, maybe. But they didn't mention. Yeah, like they, they just need a throwaway line to be able to shore that up. Is like if we can if we can down the machines, the the armor will be weak or some shit. I don't know, but they don't really say that. Um. Though, uh, you, you know, they don't win this fight. Um. But they they were setting up a cooler way to take down an Atta, other other than. Yeah, it was, it was nifty. It was yeah, inventive. That's what um, it was there but... to do. It was like, yeah, now we're going to come. You know, we can't shoot them to destroy them. How can we take them down? Well, we've got these harpoons on the back. Let's uh, stick them on the legs. Go around, loot the loot. And it created a great set piece. So it actually created uh, something which was more iconic. And it's still rem you know, remembered as a really cool way uh, of taking down the AT-ATs. A lot of people are saying... Um... <laughs> Clearly, like, it's a positive rather than a negative. Those are too strong for blasters. A lot of people saying he, he shot it in the neck. I just want blasters. to see the clip again. One goes yeah. down, they take it out with blasters. That armor's too strong for blasters. Oh, yeah. ooh, There's actually. The second shot. And the second so, one does. But what, you yeah, don't need so to take them down it, to the ground to do that. Yeah, well, so is it you're like right. they're, they're less armored on top or something yeah. that you can get them from that angle? It's, yeah, I don't know if they're trying to imply that like we can't get the neck shot without them being downed, but... Um, Which isn't true, but... Of course not. Um, um, in fact, I think you mm, might have a better shot of it when it's up uh, rather probably. than down, maybe. Um, yeah, because when it folds in, it sort of protects itself a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I think that there's a lot in terms of how the battle mechanics work with these that doesn't make sense, like how it blows up when it's down instead of standing up. How come the AT, AT stop? Why don't they just stop moving once they've been harpooned? And there's some, yeah, there's some yeah. tism there. There is. Um, well, and why do they, but, why do they, why do they attack them head on instead of moving around first? Cause they just get shot down as a result. Yeah. Why um, do the snow speeders just go straight forwards towards them? Because clearly well, these AT-ATs and one of their big weaknesses... One of them out when he does that, though. Uh, one of huh? the snow speeder gets absolutely wiped out when he goes... Well, no, we're saying, right why do that? You should be going around. Yeah, you have planes. You could fly around, attack them from above and other angles. Because yep. these AT-ATs, one of the big weaknesses is that they can only attack in front of them. Yeah. And not in a very wide radius. Which is actually what I would call a pretty significant design flaw. You'd think you'd have a back gunner or something. Yeah, especially if you're that high over the battlefield, one of the huge advantages you have is that you could shoot at all kinds of different targets without the terrain getting in the way, and you could shoot over barricades and stuff like that. So you would want to have the ability to shoot from all directions. They should have put a little tail on them. 
They should have, yeah. or a turret yeah. on top, or something. They do that with the 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 Clone Wars ships, don't they? The um, I can't remember what they're called. The LAATs, I think they are. They have like a little gunner in the back and on the sides. Um, uh, let me double check. Yeah, I uh, suppose the, you could the uh, bombs. Make, oh, like assault transport. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they you could maybe all over them. do it like um, like this is an attempt at fix rather than what it is, but it's just like they they have some kind of shielding, and then when you down them, the shielding's broken. You can hit the neck at that point. That could be like a cool way to have to take them out, is what I'm saying. But yeah, um, you know, the, the... they could have like minor shielding around them, and then when it was like you know harpoon hit the ground, that was enough to knock out the electrics, electronics, yeah, whatever, and then there yeah, they could finish it off. Yeah, there's there's definitely fixes for this. Um, is it a huge issue? No, it's not. No, the battle would if mm -hmm. the battle would have ended the exact same way. Yeah, I mean, um, it's it's literally, the whole point of so. this is to d delay them as long as you can, because there's no way they're staying here. Yeah. Also, aren't, aren't snow speeders more ground? Uh, you know, they're not, like, massive aerial. Uh, the snow speeder? Well, yeah, yeah, they're, they're kind of more, you know, not hover, but they're more ground I, level. Um, well, I think as long as you could fly, you could... Uh, pretty much fly in atmosphere um, obviously there's going to be a limit depending on if they on the engines that they use i mean there is a maximum altitude for aircraft um based on the density of the atmosphere mm -hmm. however um i think snow speeders they they would be able to fly high enough to where they could get a tactical advantage yeah um, i know i never i never got the impression that they were uh space yeah i don't yeah, think so i, I don't space think space based, um, yeah vehicles Okay. Now, basically after this entire battle, which is, as I said, pretty fun, but still kind of ridiculous if you think way too yeah, that, hard about it. That was Luke it. taking out the uh, shield generator for the AT&T. 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 Yeah, you should definitely try and take them down. Um, doesn't he just... <laughs> I think he just cuts a hole. He, he cuts a hole or he to opens up a hatch into, and throws yeah. the grenade in. Uh, <laughs> because I, <laughs> I doubt it would be the shield show, generator. It? Yeah, it's, it's, that, shield... Like, it's, it's that kind of cliche in movies where like you can just hit a control panel and it'll cause the door to open. Like if you just shoot it yeah. out or whatever, <laughs> instead I think of just jamming the whole thing up. No, you just, yeah, you cut a hole Well, yeah, but it's the out same concept. Like... I, I thought because you see the hatch then slide back, like as if he's damaged the the electronics oh, of it maybe you're right, yeah. Um, maybe, if that's the case. I figured he just hit it yeah. with his lightsaber and made a hole. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, now we know that as one Luke Skywalker to destroy AT&T. Yeah, he, he <laughs> sure hope that at and <laughs> doesn't get me. <laughs> we finally enter into the zero-sum story of nothingness. And as you can probably guess, I'm oh. not going to have much to say about it beyond the broad strokes of what does... How could you parody me and say that. you don't have much to say? How could this yeah, be a parody? Be yeah. Yeah. Come on. This parody is weak. Weak. <laughs> mm. Even if even if a character said hello, I'd be like, right, seven pages written already. Let's go mm -hmm. down from here because I've already bitched about the Empire Strikes Out for like fifteen minutes. Oh, Empire Strikes Out. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. It's, it's <laughs> clever boy. But it damn no, they didn't know. Well, yeah, it's, it's commonly accepted as like the greatest <laughs> in the saga. It's, yeah. <laughs> so Luke splits up from Han and Leia to go find the Jedi Master that Ghost Obi-Wan told him to find. And rather than find someone kind, open and gentle, just like Obi-Wan was for Luke in the previous film, we literally got a green goblin looking thing that lives wow, in a Wow, it subverted swamp. your expectations. <gasps> well, maybe that's, that's the point he's making, Rex. Maybe that's the point he's making. You couldn't <gasps> accept getting your subverted expectations uh, sense subverted. of structure. So... I don't even know what my expectations are for this video. No, I mean, for TLJ. It's like you couldn't handle Mine, mine are very low, I'd just like to say that. Yeah. Because, of course, I'm assuming that's the point he's making here, is like, I wasn't ready for a Green Goblin teacher in the same way that TLJ people couldn't accept that it wasn't the story that they wanted, it was the story they needed. That, yeah, the, 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 the difference alike. here being that not all subversions of expectations are the same. Like this yeah. one makes total sense. There's nothing wrong with it or logically inconsistent about yeah. it. And it doesn't make the story any worse. Utterly destroying your main character is just like a green <laughs> puppet. This one is really clever and actually teaches Luke a lesson. The, the Ryan Johnson school of subversion expectations was done purely to subvert your expectations. 
It was There's opposite a day. Difference. Yeah. Oh, you what you is? you have theories about Snoke? No, I'm I'm gonna just change it because. Oh, you have theories about Ray's parentage and lineage? No, I'm just gonna change it because re you reasons. There's no there was no logic behind it. There was a huge amount of logic with Yoda being this this manical little being. Luke thought of the Jedi Knight as Obi-Wan Kenobi, as this noble sort of being who you could see in his youth would be, you know, a handsome knight with his sword wielding away. So that's which, what he Luke, was. which he was. <laughs> he which he was. He absolutely was. And so he thought that's what the Jedi was. But no, you know, you could be this little, small uh, bundle and still have unbelievable control of the Force. It was about understanding how the Force works, not brute strength or brute force. Well, I mean, wars not make one great. A lot of the lines he has just make you go, Hmm. It's, it wasn't a gotcha. Ryan Johnson's were gotchas. Yeah. This wasn't a gotcha. Well, this this yeah. was a this was a lesson. I, again, it goes back to what we were saying earlier. Ryan Johnson's subversions were all cheap. Yeah. They were just take whatever you were expecting and do the opposite. That's yeah. not smart. That's hey, smart. He was keeping Star Wars alive. Antagonistic. <laughs> take a very nimble, well-made bomber. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Actually, wow, you guys slow. are nitpicking. <laughs> Up <laughs> and is an absolute menace to Luke now for his own amusement. Was it for his own amusement? I mean, I guess I understand the motivation to subvert my expectations of what a uh, master could be, but it was way too silly and wacky for me. To but it was an act. Yoda, he was putting on. This isn't mm -hmm. real Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> also, what? the whole. It wasn't real. I don't feel like anybody <laughs> said that about TLJ, where they were like, I appreciate severing my expectations, but I just don't like the way that you... It was always like, it just didn't make any fucking sense, was usually the criticism. Mm. Like, try and point to where this doesn't make sense. Just, just, just you know, give me a, give me a hand here, 8080. To take anything seriously throughout most of what we see on this swamp I was going to say, I, w I would say that... Doing something like Ray's lineage, for example. Yeah, people are like, could she be a Skywalker? Could she be a Kenobi? And sure, there were very obvious things that she could be. Um, so if there was a clever idea, brilliant, introduce it. But saying that her, her parents were drunk traders makes her uninteresting and boring. Mm -hmm. It doesn't enhance the character it doesn't make the character likable or more relatable. It actually takes away from the character because suddenly her parents being zero is worse than her parents being a Kenobi or a Skywalker. So that subversion of the expectation is, is, is a poor one because it, it it's doesn't... All... It's gone, gone. No, sorry, I was, I was just going to say, it's almost like it was a Star Wars movie written by somebody who doesn't like Star Wars and doesn't like fandom and wanted yes. to be antagonistic <laughs> with every fucking decision he made. Excuse my language. but You can say antagonistic. <laughs> yeah, antagonistic is fine. That's fine. We, right. we say that, yeah, you know, not often. It doesn't come up much, but, you know. Right, not the cuss. We're fine with you, the A It's, it's got to yeah. benefit the story somehow. Either being a, a great twist that you didn't see coming uh, that actually enhances, or uh, you know, somebody turning traitor who you'd never expect. Ho was was always part of the empire all along. You know, just just it, something that would have been different. But but the the Snoke. Oh, you you know who's Snoke? Is he um you know Darth Sid? Not Darth Sidious. Darth Plagueis. Is he Darth Plagueis? Oh, people like that idea. Cut him in half. What? <laughs> His but subversion see? just took away and took away and took away. This subversion enhanced the story. Mm -hmm. But you, that's the story you needed. <laughs> you gained so much. The I'm, only part I'm glad that you're really educating me. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you know, you just didn't understand it, and I'm helping you. I know. I'm from this entire. I'm ignorant. I'm very ignorant. ATAT is helping us 
right now. Like, <laughs> but it was been like, see, people who complained about the Yo Mama joke, they're like people saying Yoda sucks too. I, I don't even know. It, it's hard to connect exactly what what's being connected. You know, it's, it's a tough one. A too silly and wacky for me to take anything seriously throughout most of what we see on this swamp planet. The only most. part that I really enjoy from this entire sequence was when both Yoda and Obi Wan tried to stop Luke from leaving because he wasn't ready to face Vader. It made me wonder if maybe Luke was going to go to the dark side by the end of the film and potentially what? at least that would have been intriguing to me uh, so was he, he was doing gonna... the whole it would have been interesting for ray to go to the dark side and he's mocking that how is that worthy uh, of mockery though I... well to be to be honest to be fair uh it would have been it would have been really interesting story for the for the sequel trilogy if they did actually set up ray at the first film to be, look as if she was going to become the jedi hero and then by the third film, she was actually the villain. Yep. And Finn, oh, and Finn like, who, who, women sorry, can't but like, women can't be bad guys. <laughs> you know that. That's not well, allowed. They can, but it's all it's got to be because of a man. So if you uh, can a work woman that can in only there. be the bad guy if the hero is also. Uh, or, sorry, the woman can't be bad unless the hero is also a woman. This is yeah, true. I think that's how it works. Actually, honestly, yeah. But they made they made two well. It would have been, I think that would have been more interesting to, to what we got. I'm not saying that's, you know, how I would have planned yeah. the film. You know, you get that nonsensical sequence where Ray goes into the, the, the pit um, that she's yeah. not supposed to go to. And Luke makes this comment like, oh, you didn't even hold back. You went straight there. And what does that even mean? Don't know. It's just something nope. that they put in. And she saw a bunch of reflections of herself. Yeah. Because, she's a because they, they, could have, they could have done <laughs> the... the redemption of ben solo and the uh descent of ray palpatine um but whatever way they did it that would have been a more Ray-Pateen? more interesting oh, thing than we got. <laughs> sorry sorry oh Sorry, my <laughs> Ray-Pateen. Jesus, it's, the, it's the latest drug on the market for this kind that's of thing. how we that's how we had a granddaughter oh my goodness <laughs> you need some <laughs> rapatine <laughs> we have seen that. Well, we ironically seen adds what you're discussing what, what you're describing mm-hmm. sorry go on. yeah what no i was gonna say what you're describing is kind of what happens like kylo does get redeemed um by saving ray and she then falls to the dark side by killing palpatine which is exactly what he wanted her to do so he's now <laughs> taking over her body and is ruling the galaxy in her place yeah, so, but not, like jj's a clever editing a heroic kissed, lovely ending isn't that and the he last kissed kylo film? Ew. Also, Drinker, so, where's your Halloween avatar, you fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? I know, I, I I thought I had it on. Do you want me to sign out and change it and then come back You don't back have to sign out, you can do it on the fly. No, that, that kind of drinking should be scary to normal people, mm-hmm. but we're used to it. <laughs> so it's not really scary yeah, what, to what people don't know is that that's a live feed of Critical Drinker, you see? That's just... The, <laughs> there's a tube just that fits... Constantly drinking. <laughs> it's a tube that fits to the back of the bottle, it's just filling it up perpetually. Nice. Uh, how the fuck do you change it on the fly? Uh, the settings, settings? cog. Um, I would uh, I would right. press it because I'm gonna fuck up my screen. Rags guide him. All right. So at the bottom left, you've got the little <laughs> the little user settings wheel by your name and your uh, mute and deafen button. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got it. Oh, they they changed it with the last uh, little update. But yeah, oh you God. just uh, they, hit, they love click your it. avatar and it lets you change your avatar, and we can. We could change our. Also, avatars. if you can see the stream, Gary, we have cobwebs. Where are yours for Halloween? Hmm. Where are your cobwebs on the stream? What's what that about? Get into the spirit. Oh, I, I'm lagging behind. I'll fix that <laughs> with one week to go. <laughs> yeah, you, you you can make it for Halloween. You got it. Yeah. Um. So I guess I guess we'll continue something new and i don't know fun plus yoda mentions that there is another force user out there who might be able to help them so i thought that was pretty cool hopefully it's not another muppet so han and leia along with chewie and 3po are in a slow speed chase from the empire because their hyperdrive doesn't work the entire empire no. is unable to the entire no. empire oh, no 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 <laughs> No, nope. it's not even remotely comparable to fucking Admiral Holcunt's "I'm gonna kill all the rebels" plan. She Gosh. did a fucking Empire's job for them. 
What's your plan? Not going to tell you. All the ships are going to get blown up. Not going to tell you. The ships are getting blown up. I'm not going to tell you. We're the last fucking ship. I'm going to commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> that is an accurate summary of her leadership <laughs> skills. <laughs> that into the Empire was because if she'd survived, they would have fucking hung her for treason. I want the dark, dramatic vision of this. They keep coming to her quarters to ask her, and then, like, the final time they go, uh, Admiral Holdo, what are we? And then gunshot sound, and they're like, oh my god, oh no! <laughs> oh, thank god! <laughs> swinging in her quarters, they're just hanging up in her quarters, swinging back and forth. <laughs> it's, like, really comically swinging really far back and forth. <laughs> yeah, yeah from one side of the room to the other. <laughs> the stupidest uh, she was a great character. A history of fucking anything. I'm just, uh, we made jokes before about C3PO being like a secret hitman. He could like strangle her when everyone's alone. He's just like, I'm sorry, it's for the best. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> have to save my friends. Yes. I must save the rebellion. I can't stand to have one last look at my friends. Um, Actually, I don't really even know I these people. Know you? I don't even know you, you yellow shit. So. This scene, right, what you've got is three destroyers trying to circle in on the Millennium Falcon being flown by what we're supposed to know as the best pilot out of all the people, um, at least for the Millennium Falcon, with Chewie. That's why there's, uh, there's confusion and difficulty in capturing them. I think they may go a little too far when they have the destroyers crash into each other. I feel like that's something they'd be able to avoid pretty handily, even if they are trying to desperately chase the Millennium Falcon. Um, but it is supposed to be indicative of just how much Han is fucking them over with all the, the things he's doing. Um, I also like to think of the, the pressure of Darth Vader. Sure, they yeah. They make them shit themselves. We gotta get this, we gotta get this, and uh, causing the confusion. And then you compare that to the idiocy that is all of TLJ's space chase. Like, I don't even know how you could compare the two in, in some kind of like, see, they're both dumb. I'd be like, no. 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 Oh. Um, but yeah, of course, I feel like this is a pretty blatant reference to people making fun of the space chase. They capture chase one really small ship for like half of this movie's runtime. And honestly, I think that is ridiculous. That is, I don't know half how that time. made it. Hmm. I mean, uh, I, 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 through uh, asteroid belts and. Yeah, it does lots of. <laughs> Yeah, the Millennium Falcon does lots of fairly clever maneuvering to, say, you, to evade them again and again. If you break up the scenes, we're not constantly cutting back to Poe being like, tell us the plan, please. <laughs> Instead, we have Hud flirting with, with Leia. We, then we'll cut over to Luke with Yoda. Then we'll cut over to Vader being like, what the fuck, where are they? How do we, like, you guys suck. Just, everything's progressing. There's no, um, you wouldn't tie all of those Herbert scenes together and just go there's a beat to it the chase was boring it was going nowhere we had fucking some purple head cow doing nothing it was dumb this wasn't oh, fucking watch star wars <laughs> It's into the screen that i was watching it's insane hold on, hold on. The Falcon Sorry, even... just pause it for a second what's he called hmm? 18 at and t chat dude <laughs> Give me your address. Send me your address. DM me. Email me. I'll send you the fucking original trilogy on Blu-ray for Christmas. You can Aww. watch it. You'll enjoy it. You made a gift sound so threatening. And if he watches them, it will be a Christmas <laughs> miracle. <laughs> oh, there we got our Halloween avatars. Nice. Still waiting for, for Az and Gary to roll theirs out. I'm Don't working worry. on it. We'll, yeah. I'm actually huh? working on it. Yep. <laughs> I've got, it's almost ready. As, just add fangs to your baby face. I'm going to put a pumpkin. What's that, the end of the sentence? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put a yes. pumpkin. <laughs> Where? Yeah, well, I'm going to put a pumpkin. This going to make for a very interesting avatar. I want to yeah. say that to people. <laughs> when they expect you to continue, said, I'm going to put a pumpkin. 
Uh, well, hides it. inside of an asteroid at one point in wild space and the empire sends out tie fighters to drop bombs in space onto asteroids i guess when you were high on lsd you forget that bombs can't be dropped in space but whatever they, they don't look uh, like yeah, they're they dropped can. they look like they're fired down they fired they're not dropped with gravity Plus, the, or magnets the, the asteroid the asteroid has got gravity it's big you know they, they get out of the millennium falcon they're able to walk around inside it yeah i guess that's a good point actually there, yeah. there is enough gravity i presume it's a lot less than we'd get here on a normal planet but it's, it's enough for them to move around without floating away um but yeah so, it's just it's so funny because that was that was blatant you're like oh i know what you're referencing you did it i also. see the bombs come out of the, those bombers pretty quick I guess it's fine. And on top of that, the Falcon was actually inside of just a big giant space worm all of a sudden that lived mm -hmm. inside of the asteroid that they were dropping bombs on in space. <laughs> All right. I don't know, guys. It's just all of this is just so stupid to me. Now, I will say that the okay, city. Well, uh, all right. It, it's not stupid to uh, the vast majority of people. Well, so I, I, I was waiting oh, for oh, qualification. Oh, oh. I guess that's yeah, the joke is that sometimes we, we say something stupid and we don't qualify why, which is a weird one because we no, have I, famously long podcasts where we like no, explain I every think point. That he's, I think he's trying to say that it's self evidently ridiculous and stupid, the premise. Mm hmm. When I'm not sold on that in no, the I'm Star Wars either. universe at all, um, you need to do better than that. It's a it's a fantasy creature that lives in the in the asteroid. So yeah, this is a space fantasy. Yeah, like you're gonna tell not? me like that creature can't live there? I'll be like, why? I, I, yeah. so was he trying to say something about dropping bombs in space? Well, he, on, he was on earlier. The asteroid but, um... that has gravity. Mm, this is the thing. If if he doesn't qualify, we can't find out. But if that's yeah. the point, if he's making jokes about people who don't qualify this shit, I just be like, okay, well, you don't like like people who don't qualify the statements, but you can figure them out. At least they've got that going for them. Mm. In the clouds portion, that was pretty beautiful. I think it looked really nice, and I thought the character of Lando was actually really good. Good job, Billy D. You know, he betrays his friends, and that kind of proves my point about Han that I said way earlier in the video. You can't really trust these smuggler types of people, even if they flip It wasn't up. because he was a smuggler. It had nothing to do with the fact he was a smuggler. It's because he specifically was Han Solo. Um, is this mm -hmm. a reference to how people, again, people trying to make, like, positive claims that are based on faulty info? Is that what, he, that's what he's doing? Or is he just know. doing it by accident? I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I ain't got a clue. I no, agree, yeah. This is a, again, because this is the funny thing. Every time he's wrong, which is 95% of the time, you don't know if it was on purpose <laughs> or not. Yeah. If he, he's like, no, you don't get it. I was wrong. And then, like, he points something out that he thinks is an actual issue. And we say, like, no, you got that wrong. He's like, uh, hmm. Okay. Dirty. <laughs> uh, but Mola, he would have had to establish the rules for that. And he hasn't. So we just gotta assume he's shit and wrong. Hides. But as this all just turns into the Empire already having sent a trap to catch them. So in the end, we watch our heroes escape the Empire for the entire film, only for them to just get captured in the end again. And I'm pretty positive that this is the last okay. that we're gonna see of Han. There yeah, I don't I don't know what it is. So the issue would so is he trying to say this is like Canto Bite? They were they were fleeing the Empire and they were eventually caught. Um so unless, so I guess it's only acceptable to have a chase if the, if the runners escape. Otherwise, it's pointless for them to try attempt to evade capture. Dude, I don't, don't look understand. Me. I got to fucking yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because, so you know, if <laughs> no, someone no. said like in earnest, like, "Oh, what was the point of all the asteroid shit if they were only going to get caught eventually anyway? Why not just have them get captured?" I'd be like, "Well." It shows you just how skilled Han Solo is. We get to develop Han and Leia. We get to have them exploring like a crazy new environment. Just, you know, we're getting benefits in all kinds of different ways, as well as like padding the timeline so that it can line up with Luke's instead of just instantly happening, which would fuck everything up. Um, like how there's like lots of things are being achieved. Meanwhile, if you said like, "Well, what's the benefit oh. in Canto Bite?" I'd be like, "Um, spooky baby." Uh, also, yeah, that's neat. Thank you, baby. 
There is no way your brain will be normal after being frozen in whatever the hell that chamber is. Why? How do you know? Tell me the technology <laughs> yeah. that this uses. Yeah. Tell me how yeah. this works. Tell me how this carbon <laughs> freezing chamber works. Yeah, please go down to the like on the chemistry for us. Like, tell us exactly blue, how. Blue <laughs> no also, way. this was the first time they tested it on a person. Yeah, they didn't even know this doesn't work, but then they're yeah. like, "Oh, looks yeah, like they it were does." Te they were testing it to see if it would work safely on Luke Skywalker. I don't want the Emperor's prize damaged or something like that, right? Basically, yeah. yeah for even a day. Hence why Luke and Leia are probably going to end up together in the final film. Right. I will say, I did laugh you, you though. You think that after this? Why would after you say that? Scene, after the scene where she is... says, I love you, why would you say that? She's like, JK, lol, Luke is my daddy. Like, why, why? I love you, what? lol, JK, <laughs> gonna fuck my bro. <laughs> People Maybe she's keeping her I options the worst open. thing to say to him. I'm just about to die. I love <laughs> you. Want to commit? Someone's Long asking, JK. like, is it a parody of people that criticize Bola? <laughs> like, <laughs> <What? laughs> <laughs> like, oh, hmm. you. Then that's like that's like forty chassing us right there. When Vader said that he would be honored if they would join him at the dinner table, you know, before he started torturing everybody, I guarantee that'll turn into a meme. So Luke does finally turn okay. up and try Is to help it? his friends on the Cloud City, what? just like the Green Goblin in oh, Obi yeah, Ghost yeah. Kenobi told him not to. And he falls into Vader's spooky Freddy Krueger room. And yeah, I actually did like how creepy Vader was towards Luke. And for a moment, I actually felt like mildly afraid of Darth Vader, who was more or less just some henchman in the first Star Wars film. But when he right. was calling some shots, and he he, <laughs> he he was fucking choking people to death if they fucked up. That ain't henchman shit. That's like I'm in charge level shit. Well, it's like Indiana Jones, even though like you always get the um the boss of the henchman almost, and you'd be like, he gets a special Vader gets special mention regardless of the fact that he might not be at the top of the chain. Fucking, he's 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 technically never at the top of the chain, like in terms of the Emperor existing, and yet he's the most iconic villain in cinematic history. So it's just like, uh... Uh, he he's referencing Red Letter Media. He's uh, he's he's referencing Red Letter Media because that's what they called Darth Vader when they were talking about uh, when they're doing their prequel. You know, the Mister Plinkett Plink, uh, Mister Plinkett prequel uh, reviews. Uh, they're trying to say, you know, that it wasn't meant to be, Vader wasn't meant to have this sort of like, he wasn't space Jesus, he was just a henchman, really a henchman for uh, the Emperor. So he's just kind of fallen into red letter media territory. Um, I would concede he's not as significant in A New Hope as he is in the other two films, but he's certainly more significant than henchman. Like, I'm sure he's both would agree. He's scary as fuck in A New Hope. Yeah. Plus he doesn't get his ass and beat in people. A New Hope. And he's mm -hmm. got, he's got an interesting history with Obi-Wan, like, there's no way, he's not just, uh, he's not Phasma, you know? He doesn't get his ass beat in New Hope, he doesn't get his ass beat in Return of the Jedi, uh, in Empire Strikes Back either. Nope. Quite the opposite, it kicks the shit out of Luke. <laughs> yep. When they face each other, I think maybe the thing that really solidified that this movie was trash happens. This movie entirely retcons what Obi-Wan Kenobi told Luke about his father being a Jedi and how no, Vader had killed him. No. <laughs> no. Vader is Luke's father. I <laughs> retcon. So, okay, so just just to be so you're saying that Kylo Ren and um Ben Solo how, so how does that work then? If this doesn't work for that, how does that work for the... Mm, well, I'm assuming... As a sequel defender. This is referencing uh, Ray's Ray, parents. Ray, Ray Palpatine. Yeah. Yeah. Being like, that's a that's a complete retcon, therefore bad. And he's saying, well, they retconned this. I just be like, you can retcon whatever you want if it still makes sense. Mm -hmm. And when I say retcon, I just mean you retroactively change something that wasn't the way it was. And, and we know this from meta-knowledge. Like, they say, like, yep, we changed that. It wasn't always that way. However, there's no reason it couldn't have been that way. Yep, still makes sense in universe that Darth Vader and, you know, Anakin Skywalker are like different parts of a person and one can kill the other. Yeah, yeah and a lot of people tend to say that, like once once the Emperor dubs it's him... is a, a metaphorical death. It was the death of Anakin because Anakin became Darth Vader. It was the death of the light side and the rise of the dark side. Yeah. And it, it made sense that Obi-Wan wouldn't have told Luke the full story about him initially because he wasn't ready for that level of yeah. knowledge. 
From a he, didn't, he didn't know what a Darth Vader was. He's, he's still a farm boy. Well, that's what I'm saying. T textually, I know that he knows this isn't accurate, but then in relation to the, the complaints of the sequel trilogy, they don't work. It's like, it, they literally tried to do the same thing, but failed miserably. So when he's like, I was mm -hmm. right from a certain point of view, Obi-Wan's being sneaky. He's like, I don't want to tell you he's your dad. You're not going to kill him if I do that. Which, which yeah, is but true. he needs to die because he's an evil, yeah. horrible blight on the galaxy. Meanwhile, Kylo's like, I didn't lie. Your parents are nobody. It's like, what are you... They have, one of them was the kid was your, of the Emperor. It was your grandparents who were really important. <laughs> that's what I mean. It's just like, that's just categorically <laughs> wrong. There was no benefit to you doing that. You just said it because, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth later, but for now I'm going to fuck with you. No, but was it... Is she a Palpatine or is she a Palpatine clone? And, oh, oh. It's just a fucking mess. She is the daughter of a clone of a Palpatine. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. Where's grand where's grandma Palpatine? She's a, she's is she dead? Is she alive? Did he electrocute her when, in when a fit he's... of rage? Like where what's wrong with her? Where's she? Naughty boy. She's was on she evil or was she good? She's, she's sitting on exit tanks. goal with a reverse mortgage. She'll be floating in one of the tanks next to like spare snow. <laughs> she's yeah. A little recliner in the tube. <laughs> Uh, oh, what if it's like, um, what if it's like, uh, who's, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger from Batman and Robin, where his Mr. wife's Freeze. like frozen or something and he has to try. Oh, yeah, 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 he's got her in Yeah, like yeah, tank. so he's trying, Palpatine is trying to take over the world, uh, something to save his wife <laughs> who's cryogenically frozen in carbon. My wife has McGregor syndrome. Ah, we must it discover a cure. I just, I just like the idea. He's like, you will pay the price for your life. And you're just like, shave. What are you doing? Where's the time? Where's the time? You... Paper. Are you Come using on, that force lightning again? Stop playing space with your friends. Come on now. It ruins I mean, I'll the be right there. Stop I'm it. doing some work. <laughs> you're so Come loud, on. Palpy. So loud. Going to Chick Fil A. Do you want anything? <laughs> And take your shoes off before you come in. I don't want you traipsing all that space crap inside the house. I want the deluxe chicken sandwich. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense. It's not a retcon. It all lines up. I'm your father. And now Star Wars is a soap opera and no That's longer not. a space adventure series. Yep. And while it was pretty insane to see the lightsaber sequences having better choreography than the first film, it again all results in a zero sum for our heroes. Oh my and God, let's just point out one. What do you mean when you say that? When you say that, yeah. what do you mean when you say that? Mm -hmm. Hilarious bit about... Um, I don't think he knows what he's going on about. So, so this screenshot, right? Am I crazy, or is it possible that the lightsaber is above his shoulder and below his mask? Yes, it very. Really looks like it. Because <laughs> he's saying it's most like durable neck in space. Like this, the, his shoulder isn't his neck. Because he's trying to imply that this, the lightsaber's gone through his shoulder. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, it's weird. Cause... Also, doesn't, he's wearing armor of a kind, yeah. so I don't know if it has resistance to the lightsaber, I don't well, know. Well, yeah, any fucking description of his armor is that, like, it's... It's good shit. <laughs> I, I, the, the, camera's coming, the camera's coming back on again. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is, oh. this is Darth Vader. <laughs> Look at the armor around the whole neck and top of the chest. It goes I'm all the way this through. this man has these toys of Darth <laughs> Vader. <laughs> <laughs> all these yeah. horrible, horrible all these characters. toys. Nerd. Oh. Which all goes through man, the baby. head, which is also heavily armored. Also, the, in the element. Royal Guard in TLJ, their armor didn't do fucking anything. Um, isn't... Correct me if I'm wrong, isn't there one part where they, like, jam a sword up to the shoulders of, of one of... I can't remember if they ever deflect shit with the armor in that scene. I'd have to watch it again. That scene's so bad. It wasn't made out of voodoo hide like this one. Uh. Voodoo hide. <laughs> voodoo hide is some strong shit. There, there ain't a lot of voodoos left, all right? They're like family. the dodos. <laughs> About this duel. Apparently, lightsabers can cut through metal and everything else, but not Darth Vader's neck. Okay. I mean, he tags him with it. Yeah, so yeah. bullets can go through metal, but not everything. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, this doesn't, this doesn't quite work for me. I need him to be more specific, but I think yeah. he feels also, like this is a big if, own. Did this also deflect off the shoulder before he even Yeah, got... it does. 
Yeah, makes this, also, is, this is what makes Veda decide to Darth end Sidious, the fight. You're Darth Sidious, and you've got your smoldering Anakin, and you're going to give him a spacesuit, and you're like, all right, I'm going to have him go around the Jedi killing, uh, go around the galaxy killing Jedi. So um, maybe if I could find a way to give him some armor that was a little protective against lightsabers, that, that'd probably be really helpful for him. Mm -hmm. I'll probably see if I can do that. It, this is clearly a very specialized suit meant only for uh, Anakin, so it does make sense that it would be specialized for, you know, other utilities as well. Was it uwu hide? Uwu hide. <laughs> like, ew. Sure, do, why not? do hide. Ooh. Why not just say that lightsabers will cut through things here and not here? Who gives a shit? Because they don't you cut know, through now... everything. Wait, is he suggesting that a Tauntaun's belly has the same consistency as Darth Vader's uh, armor? As Wudu Hyde? <laughs> I think not, good sir. That's, that's Tauntaun Hyde, not Wudu Yeah, Tauntaun Hyde is shit. Wudu Hyde is yeah, Wudu the Hyde, shit. Oof. That shit, yeah. When you play the, the RPG, it's like the final unlock is Wudu Hyde. That's, that shit's <laughs> top tier. <laughs> your, your, your armor piece. It's like, what's your lightsaber made from? Uh, Wudu Hyde. <laughs> Wudu Hyde. <laughs> Obi-Wan just looks like an asshole for lying to Luke Skywalker, if you think about it. And then lie. Luke tries to commit suicide because of what he's just Point learned. He's not going to join his evil dad and the Empire. And, you know, th that's just crazy. And then Vader that's actually seems crazy. pretty crazy. I mean, I bet a lot of people would be like, oh, so if I say yes, I get to live and have a bunch of power. Uh, OK. Yeah, I mean, well, I, you get to live, but you'd be corrupted you changed well, there's, there's a lot of choices to be made and, and it's just luke ch makes his choice like you the other reason is like i don't know if vader's on the level he might just torture me i don't fucking know like this is... also he he is my he says he's my father like mm. is it true mm -hmm. is it true do i need more answers yeah Opie about his son commit suicide, and honestly, the movie just kind of ends with a bunch of people force he's skyping each other for lack of a better term because oh there it is there oh, it is. Skype, mm -hmm. but they're yeah, close yeah. Well, uh, so there is some precedent here, being that you can contact people in the Force. That's something that we've gotten since the episode four. So it's like, is it is it a bit of a stretch that Luke can contact another Force-sensitive person through the Force when they're close? To me, I'm just like, I don't know. It doesn't seem that crazy. No. It's not no like but then a seeing them, back like you're in the room. Conversation either. I don't know what else to call it. You know, even Vader's doing it. Imagine just being able to pop up into somebody's thoughts like, hey, what's up, dude? You want to get a pizza? I don't know. It's just a lot of things happen in this movie that are just insane. So I guess the next film is just going to be Luke going to face Vader again. Okay, to be honest. You can't make this criticism the same way you can make it about TLJ when TLJ ends with zero plot lines to do anything with. It's just like, yep. I like the you. This is the worst way to do it because everyone always talks about how Empire ends, and we're all like, "Oh my god, I'm so ready for the story to carry on." Meanwhile, TLJ, you're like, "Well, that's the end of the trilogy, I guess." We're like, what are they gonna do? Where do they, where where? There's a difference between where do you go and whoa, what's gonna happen next? At the end of the Last Jedi, through sight, like, you've killed everything. You've killed all the fucking leads. Uh, there's ten rebels left. Uh, Luke's dead. Uh, Ray's a fucking god, and and you know Finn's Finn's just a useless bint who's been sexually assaulted by an Asian. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just you just cut everything off. Snoke gone, Luke gone, um, the the uh, resistance crushed. So um, it was yeah, the next film was going to have to be so contrived to set something up. Unfortunately, Jar Jar made it even more contrived than I could possibly imagine. But you'd you'd have to really kind of back up to go forward. So he, he Ryan Johnson completely stalled the trilogy by what he did in in the Last Jedi. And uh, Where this is a very clear, uh, you know, very it's a cliffhanger, but there was a very clear direction. Uh, where things were going, Han's been taken. We need to get Han back. Luke's obviously uh, been picked back up, so we get Luke recovered. So at least, even though we didn't know how things were going to work out, we knew where the direction was going to go. We need to get hand back. We need to stop the Empire. Some people are like, um, you're aware this is a parody, right? It's like, hence why every response we make has to be extrapolated to what kind of point you think he's making. Mm -hmm. versus what the also, point is. Also, lol parody. It's not parody. Uh -huh. Well, that, that's, that's what I mean. The, there is no way to respond to videos made like this without the person being like, you fell for my trap. It's like, 
yeah, I know you think you're clever. <laughs> I think that's fine. Yeah. Well, that we're, sounds just, we're just parody. Yeah, so we, we parodied you. Now what, direct. Now everything we do has to be cloaked in like five layers of irony. Exactly. To, to yeah. be able to function Don't be wrong like then. Kind of boring and obvious. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Lucas ran out of ideas and just makes another super weapon to go along with Luke vs. Vader. Get it? Because there's a second Death Star in the third movie, and that's what everyone says about JJ being bad, is that he makes super weapons. So really, guys, when you say that, you're but criticizing the OT. The answer is it makes uh, sense in the OT, though. It Genius. makes so much sense in the OT. Like, I they don't want to get that back. I used to... I, I used to be someone who kind of parroted that, being like, yeah, it's kind of, it's not too cool that that ended up, but, but, like, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I don't know, I feel like that had to happen. Like, I don't know what else the Empire would want to do. They would be like, we've got to build this thing back. It's the thing we threatened the galaxy with. Yeah, we know if we build one, they're going to come and try and destroy it. Let's make a trap out of it. And it's, uh, it's really uh, effective. Uh, <laughs> up until the Ewoks ruin everything. <laughs> yep. <laughs> In more ways than one. <laughs> will be avenged. It's not the My same. Apprentice. I don't know. You know. Meanwhile, JJ pulls a thousand Death Star destroyers out of his ass. You're just like, where the what? Yep. Are you? Are you sorry? Are you missing Star Killer Base? By <laughs> hello. It's well that yeah that too right. This is the funny thing. Everyone like criticized JJ for that when TFA came out. Most people people were mostly positive about the movie, but they were like, eh, not not cool with the Star Star Killer thing. And then what does he do with Rise of Skywalker? <laughs> a thousand of those. It's, it's like a cartoon. All oh, the quick with Star Killer weapon. Like I said, the, the the meme now is the next film he'll have a galaxy sized Death Star little yeah. little mm -hmm. shoot out galaxies. Yep. Oh, I guess I'll give them of the, of the doubt because the original Star Wars was so good, and who knows, the next one could be just brilliant. So that's really it. I don't know what else to talk about. The movie just didn't do it for me. These are my opinions, and if you disagree with any single one of them, you are objectively wrong. Add there it, it is. You are, there you you're, go. Uh, you're objectively wrong in a lot of them. You're, no, your your no references right do not match up, or they don't make sense. Right, you fall for his trap. That's just what he was saying about you. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh man, oh, You've been defeated. I should have realized it was parody. This guy has. Approach. This guy is playing like five-dimensional chess with us right now. Yep. Straight <laughs> up, He's, he is planned for every contingency. That we have been exceptioned. <laughs> wow. There we go. That was terrible. Uh. Yeah. I'm kind of well, glad I but, missed the first eight minutes of this, by the way. You are. The thing oh, it is, was though, a slog. how much of a nightmare you would consider me if this is what you experience whenever you see my videos? I'd be like, damn, I do kind of feel bad for you if this is what you're getting from what I say. No, this is this. That was nothing like a mole video. That's what they seem to think it is, though. He feels like this is on point. This <laughs> is like, I don't know. Oh. Uh, hmm. Might want to run that by someone else before you put it up on YouTube, maybe. Well, he's mm -hmm. not. There's like. Two other, maybe even three other people who've who've done this. Like they're like, oh, I'll just just well, you could do it to anything. And another person's done. Um... I mean, you can, but that doesn't mean that it's gonna give you the same results. No, that's the thing. Yeah. That's that. That's the key thing that they're missing. Like you could apply the same standard to everything. Your results will vary. That's the point of using it as a test. It, it, let's say Mola, Mola. Let's say you took. Um, a beloved film, and you try to do the same thing that you do, you know, you let's say did with the Rise of Skywalker, in as much as uh, you took it from a negative, well, I'm not going to say negative sound for you, you like tore it apart. People would have plenty of at least retorts, legitimate retorts, uh, to why it still worked. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a beloved film. Oh yeah, there would definitely be uh, responses. So you, I mean, well, dude, I got responses for all of the, the sequel trilogy, right? Like, there's people out there who love those. Yeah, they're retards. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, they don't count, you know. Uh, so, so you know, the, the, you can't take something as as divisive as this and go, hoo, hoo, let's play the same fucking game," because the thing was put together terribly, objectively terribly. It legitimately had no plan. So you... <sighs> no, wow. Empire would have been hated just as much if it came out sure. today. Sure. Um, like, do they think every film is actually terrible once you comb through it to the equal degree? Because they might say that, but there's no—they don't believe it. 
right so when so when critical drinker gets someone on his channel and they pick a film and they just spend four hours talking about how great it is how does that work if we if it's just if we're just critical about everything oh yeah, yeah. they don't like to like they don't like that that's a thing they, they always like to be like you guys just all you do is hate it's like oh well I did do how long was that stream, Draco? Was it was it three or four hours we were talking about two and one and two? Yeah, yeah, easily four hours. <laughs> Just, that's that's what happens. And then you had Gary, and then you had Bowls Trek, and you've had me, and you've had many, many other people picking their films that they love, and you discuss why you love them. Breaking it down, same sort of way that you do your videos, but uh in, in a bantery way and in a positive way about why they're so beloved. We just did a fucking four hour stream on commando for christ's sake <laughs> the film that's like 90 minutes long and it was just a four hour fucking Whoa. love fair you talked and about we... it for longer than it is are you yeah, like, yeah imagine that yeah. Hey. i know insane. <laughs> that's crazy huh? why would i why would i watch that instead of just watching the film idiot i know well we must just be fools that's such a but common yeah. criticism it's so nuts to me it's like what do you mean it's, yeah, it, it's just insane because it's like, it, to construct a properly formed argument about uh, why certain elements of a film work or don't work, and especially if you're going to go through scene by scene, it's unavoidable that it's going to take a long time and it's going to take longer than the length of the film because you have to bring in other sources, you have to explain things. You know, if you're covering a scene that might last a minute, it could take you 10, 15, 20 minutes to talk about it. For obvious reasons, you have to explain what's going on in that scene and how it works. Well, if you think about the the hyperdrive kamikaze, the like that moment, the couple of seconds, it's like how long could you talk about that when you saw it for the first time? It's like, oh man, yeah. you're gonna need to sit down. It's like, well, you've already got a couple of seconds. You better be quick. <laughs> yeah, but you'd be like, it was an I, it was an interesting visual shot. You know, it looked cool. Nope, too long. Time's up. Yep. And then you've, yep. got to, you've got to actually Wait, talk about whether it's practical or not. No, she destroyed the whole fleet and she committed suicide. No, Thank if God you remember, canonically, it's a one in a million thing. She was trying to escape. She got unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> that's canon. That's JJ said that's canon, okay? Imagine, like, all you had to do was leave, but you hit the ship on the way out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Women drivers. You need that moment. All the escape pods, watch your flyway. She's like, bye. You need that moment when she crashes for her to have the realization of seriously, and then she dies. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Had to wreck on it because uh, fucking Ryan Johnson had uh, screwed up hyperdrive and how how Balland! that little odious shite with a round head. So yeah, just just a reminder, this is the same guy who's like gonna be. Some people have said uh, careful covering him because he might try and like take the streams down just because not yeah. not a fan of criticism. And uh, I was gonna say like it's only nine minutes this follow up one, but the video that that got him upset that the Swordmaster covered. Do you, do you guys want to see him explain the Swordmaster? Why... Yeah, I know, right? The I love it. Why is the throne room battle amazing? We, we, yeah. we, no, no, this we, one's we, real. We, like, no, so... we're, we're doing parodies, so you can't take us down. Oh. Yeah, that's a good defense. Like, if you try and you yeah. can't strike us with parody. Yeah, it's parody. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here, here goes. You know what's fantastic? The Praetorian Guard battle, an eight-on-two uh. fight between elite warriors. Man, we've already got the. Uh... The, the, the like video essay music, the words that came up on screen as he said them, and the animations for... So everyone has animations to subscribe now? I don't know when this happened, but I've been seeing it everywhere. I can't even, like, remember asking people to subscribe verbally. Well, I, at least I've always known that was a thing. I just never... I don't know when this started, this craze of, like, loads of people have, like, the bell and it rings, the little animation. I was like, is there a place everyone's getting these from? Or <laughs> why wasn't I told about this? Do you guys have any animations for when you ask to subscribe? I don't. I, I'm. I'm out of the loop. I'm old. I th yeah, I think you know my stance on asking people to subscribe. <laughs> I want. People oh, I get to on my news and beg. Like, yeah. Fuck y'all. Yeah. <laughs> unsub. I'm fine with it. I tell them to unsubscribe. Yeah. Extremely powerful force users. 
Beyond the outstanding set design for this sequence, the came Outstanding set, set design? design? It looks like oh. a gray floor. Yes. <laughs> I always felt it was a Elite little warriors. odd uh, when I it's it's like I can understand why you consider it aesthetically pleasing the red and and uh well just all all of how it bounced off show but I, just, I always felt like it's very impractical it was a, it's this enormous room like the 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 guys all the way back and you have to get it just it was just like god this is all for the look right but that was what Ryan was doing with uh with Snoke he was like put him in his his gold bathrobe and. Um, making him appear like the, the, the idea is like, oh, Snoke is so obsessed with with the look, and that's why he was able to be killed, which was weird because in the first one he was obsessed with hiding in the shadows. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's so dumb as well. Like, because the, the entire throne room is surrounded by like the red drapes that eventually catch fire and burn down. And when they burn down, they've you've just got this enormous vista of the stars behind them. Like, I guess it's just huge why would you want to cover up that? Yeah, that's yeah. way yeah. fucking better. You guys that's are nitpicking. Cooler. He clearly had a little button that when he pressed it, it would move them aside. He would close them at night time when he wants to sleep. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's like, oh, it's a little night, clap you, wanna... yeah. <laughs> you don't want that bright space to keep you up. <laughs> like, as the space chase is happening, he's got a little nap. It's like, a bright black. How's it going? Camera movement, music, time. the way it all ebbs and flows is worth talking about. Which brings us to today's video. All the right. most best fight scene of all time by every objective metric. Uh, oh, <laughs> I don't get it. Is this, so is this parody? I can't tell. So yeah, that, I think so. That would be, no. that's a joke. Yeah, he's, he's like, yeah, he, he. But does this mean the whole video is a parody? Yeah. <sighs> Because his arguments are so shit, they're indistinguishable from parody, well, generally. It wouldn't be the first time we've come across someone saying, like, this is all entirely subjective, and then they make a statement that is just absolutely Obviously. an objective one, and you're like, but that was wrong. It's like, but it's my opinion. You're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Just be clear. <laughs> That's all my opinion. The throne room battle. Joking aside, it's a sequence that has been on my mind since The Last Jedi came out. Man, this scene impress. is climbing the ladder Whoa. of favorite lightsaber battles in the entire saga. Yeah, I think it's that good. Oh, oh wait. What about oh, the blade, with Oh, hold on. We have to talk about this blade thing, because if I'm not mistaken, this was actually the first time Star Wars has ever had any form of visual inconsistency um, no, this isn't inconsistency. Well, this is a weapon disappearing. Well, I, I I don't mind him classifying it as a visual inconsistency. I would just say, like, you do get that there's a difference, but there's a scale for this. Like, visual inconsistency. Yeah. We're, we're not looking at something small with this one. Uh, so many people try to argue it's like, it doesn't matter. It's like, it saves her life. Why do you think they rubbed it out of the screen? Like, it's like, you gotta get rid of it, otherwise she's dead. That's not significant, though. Ever. No. There is a scene where the blade of a Praetorian guard disappears because the take that was used has a blade still in the left hand of the guard. It probably was supposed to have fallen away in the take no, used. No, he's still he's, when the, he's still holding his hand around it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like why would he be? Why would it have been thrown away if he was holding it? Like that. And it's right. Yeah, and it would have been right at her back. So like you've got. Yeah, you gotta get rid of it. You're like, oh fuck, shit, God. Uh. Yeah, I I am curious what it, what was supposed to be happening. Unless he means that the the guy in the scene fucked up, like he was supposed to throw it away, but he just kept holding it. In which case, just like so, yeah. I mean, whoever whoever the fault's on, it's on somebody because we all know, we, probably would have been like, stupid. like throw it away. Well, uh, some people have argued that's like that's what happened. He he drops it when he hits her back. They'd have a prop which would get changed in post to be a bit more grandiose. So you would know if they dropped the prop or not. It just, it just surprises me that the best take was the one with the, the Praetorian Guard actor fucked up, you know? You'd think... I think they'd do multiple takes because this yeah. is kind of like yeah. a big production. It's <laughs> no, a Star it's just, Wars movie. Everything worked in this one take. Like, they did something in this take that just really worked. They were like, you know what? It's worth the fuck up. We have to keep... Because this is just such a good take. That, was, that must have been it. The guard and Ray's blade made contact. But I guess as an editor myself, that this was the overall best performance. You will give videos. them the benefit of the doubt and assume that this was just the best thing they could do. 
That's kind of fucking sad. Like, they, let's pretend <laughs> they had ten takes to work with, and they checked all the other nine, and they were like, I'm sorry, other nine? You're just, overall, you're just not as good as, even with the flaw of keeping the knife, this one's just better. Rather... Well, yeah. is, is there not a couple of times when when Daisy, I think, had missed her cue, and she has, she's supposed to duck or whatever, oh, and she has to do it? The amount of cues missed throughout the whole battle are crazy. Um, yeah. But several people now have broken down this fight scene. And it's funny because just as time went on, more and more was spotted. And then you had the, um... Wasn't it like a professional stunt team or something did a reaction to it? And they were just like shitting all over it? <laughs> it's, uh... it's just like, yeah, if, you're, if your actors are not capable of doing this kind of level of fight choreography, then just get stuntmen to do it and CGI mm -hmm. their faces over it or something. Like... Mm -hmm. Oh, and I want to, uh, George's Rex just said, even if he did drop it, he would still have a free hand behind her, which, yeah, that's huge in a fight. Yeah, you'd grab her hair, yank her head back, you'd, I don't know, something. Hit her, yeah. and punch her, smack her. Yeah. Stick her in a stew. Oh, grab her, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stick her in a stew. Um, grab also, her, huh? to address what he's put on screen, performance over continuity always. Uh, this feels eerily close to uh, emotion over logic. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah like the, the advantage of shooting a movie is you can you can do it again and again until you get continuity and performance. That's, that's where the point. Yeah. That's where the, what we call talent comes in. <laughs> and this is or what we call a false dichotomy. Why do we have to choose one over the other? Hmm. I mean, because I'm, ass I'm assuming he's saying that that was the choice, and they made their choice. They had, they were, their oh. hands were tied. They had to go with continuity or performance. Oh, so they're bad at making movies. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, they fucked up. That, <laughs> yes. They? Like you've, you've, you've got a mistake, unfortunately. And I don't know why they're so afraid of just categorizing it that way. Be like, yeah, so the knife. Just say it's a fuck up. It's a fuck up. Yeah. It, it's fine. There are there are little fuck ups in all movies, basically. You'll survive. Yep. Of Daisy, and that the team decided to use this performance and send the shot off for rotoscoping so that way the blade could disappear for the remainder of this shot. Which, if I was on set and they said that, I'd be like, guys, I don't know. Like, yeah, we could do it again. Like, we got all the actors and I got this outfit on, and we've been practicing. I well, maybe we've been practicing, I don't know, but like, theoretically, we've practiced this before. Like, we could just do another take. Also, like this is a big part of the film. We could just do it again if you want. In his good. approximation of it, we've got other takes where the knife is like pushed out of his hand or whatever, and it makes more sense. Um, I would just be like, is is her acting so much worse in those takes that we can't use it really? Like, all, all she has she, to do is yells. just hold her mouth slightly agape and stare. Uh, <laughs> she did the whole absolute series. Absolute realism is not what is important. Absolute realism. Because that's believability no, is. Well, then just have Ray fly away. Well, just we're doing the thing again, right? So we we point out issue underneath this category, and then they push your category to max, and they're like, "Why do you why do you argue for absolute realism?" You're like, "I don't remember saying you have to have absolute realism." Since when do object permanence now means I'm advocating for absolute realism in my sci-fi fantasy movie? Like, I'm surprised. Listen. If you think that you want to have like basic laws of logic and universal laws of non-contradiction, if you want those in your fiction, you just want absolute reality. Like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> of course, he's expecting you to agree with that or something. They'd be like, haha, so how do you have lightsabers, idiot? In regard to Star Wars, and especially their laser sword fights. Oh, he's bringing it back. He said the laser sword fight. No, he's, he's got, what about this, though? Vader should be headless? Like, well, no, I don't, I'm not even sure that's hit his neck at that point. Also, Vader's got armor. Well, but... That actually seems to work. Like, what seems to be happening in this shot is, it, like, if, if Vader's neck is, is... It's like he thinks that if it's gone past the rim of Vader's helmet, it must be in his flesh. But that's not quite... Like, that's not necessarily where Vader's neck is. It would be further to the left. I don't know. Do you see what I mean by like logistically? Yeah. Like, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. It's really hard to it's spot too because it's one frame. <laughs> we like desperately try to yep. figure out if it's even accurate. If it were, then these all wouldn't have passed the true fan test of. Well, but I do. Okay. I, I, I so, they did. Uh, 
That why part did the is other, weird, Why did they not cut the ropes? Because you have to be concerned with what the other person's lightsaber is doing. Yeah, they clash sabers. They don't... Yeah. They don't if one let... of them went for the rope, then sure, the yeah, other but... person would fall, but you'd be dead. Yeah, you get cut And I up. agree with the balcony thing. Yeah, so this this thing I've always past. found weird. The... Even as a kid, I found this weird. I was like, what is happening here? He like, he like pushes him up with this? True fan test. And luckily it's not hurt him in any significant way. It's only resting on him. Red yeah. wedged his legs, yeah. It, it's yeah, just an odd moment. It's like... with I'm not even sure there's enough space for Obi-Wan's legs to like not be I'm just... hurt there, pretty much. <laughs> mm. It's a weird one. He, he, he's kind of, the way he shifts position is really strange as well. It looks like it's done in mm -hmm. post, where he's being moved yeah, by yeah. CGI. <clears throat> of 20. Anyway, let's talk- Also, what about him? Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> about yeah. the cinematography and the camera movement, which is directly related to how this scene is all stitched together. And okay. just to be absurd, let's go through each edit in this sequence, and I'm ending it where Kylo tosses the vibroblade staff on the ground at the end. Okay, let's go. Close-up of Rey. Close-up of Kylo. <clears throat> Close-up of Rey. Why shot- Why are we doing this? Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are more cuts good? I... Is he- Is he just describing the type of- of frame? Is that it? A dolly of the throne room. This shot lasts for 12 seconds. just describing what's going on. Medium close-up of Kylo fighting. Medium shot of Kylo fighting. Medium shot I of Rey that. being- I don't know, why are we doing this? Yeah, yeah. I, what are you trying to say? He's saying things that are on screen. That's yeah. it, just to fill time. That's being it. Choked. Medium shot of the guards choking Rey from opposite angle. Medium shot of Rey escaping the choke, and then it dollies back out to widen- You can, you can do this with, like, any scene. I don't understand. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, you you know what a medium shot is. Are. I just get this feeling that he thinks by doing this, it makes him appear clever. Yep. Up the shot, and then it but follows Ray throwing a fiber blade the that hits the other side of the throne room. Catching Whoa, the camera followed where she threw the thing. I didn't catch that until he said it. I mean, I... This is... Just groundbreaking. I don't know what to say. He's fire. Gonna, medium yeah, shot of Ray. Medium shot next. of the guard who breaks his <laughs> staff in two sections. Medium shot. Why of do you say that? Well, like it was so impressive. <laughs> this is weird. Um, what is he doing? Like these are the shots. I yes. understand what I'm seeing on the film, and I'm going to repeat it to you, because I'm smart and you're not. I'm just like yes. These are the shots. What is your point? It of Ray and her medium shot of the guard approaching Ray and then their blades make contact. Match cut to Kylo Ren. B-roll shot of the guard being thrown into an energy well. Medium shot of Kylo Ren pointing his blade. Okay. Close up of Kylo Ren's face. Medium shot of guard. I, I would Wait, honestly, is, I would skip the this last part if I knew. Now? This is obnoxious. If I knew where he ended okay. this section, I would just skip to it. Guards with camera tracking yeah. movement. This is, Close this up is of Kylo's face. Wide shot of Kylo and the guards in the foreground, and then it pans and zooms over to Ray's battle. Hey, wasn't he resting that laser sword on his arm like it's armor that can deflect? I like. I, I was like almost that. certain this scene has like weird. They, they use their armor for like defense, but then sometimes it just doesn't do anything at all. I don't know. Mm. Someone said this might be comedy. I'm pretty sure this is real. No, comedy's <laughs> funny. Like, I'm pretty sure yeah. he's, he's saying this as, like, a compliment to the scene. We just have to wait for his qualification. Close-up of his face. Wide shot of Kylo flourishing around the guards as he takes one of them out. Wide shot tracking with Rafe. Like, wait, are we... So, do you think he's doing this because with each of these shots, there's, like, a million things to comment on in terms of failed choreography, which a lot of people have done? And he's, he's, <laughs> he's like, yeah, but you're not appreciating the cinematography. Like, I'm assuming that's the direction we're going I mean, right now. Correct, I'm not. <laughs> well, yeah, because we're, we're like, oh, I mean, I, 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 I just, I really care that the fight makes some sense. That's, that's where I'm at. Fighting the guard. Match cut to medium shot of Rey being kicked down. Medium shot of Rey getting off the ground. Wide shot of Kylo Ren fighting the two remaining. He's still going. Remaining guards. A 15 second medium wide shot of Kylo Ren taking on the guards. A medium wide shot of Rey swinging at the remaining guard. Then the camera is also revolving around Rey. Close up of Kylo with the blade near his face. Close up with Rey with the blade near her face. There's a low angle. You guys doing alright today? Yeah, I'm doing alright. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. What's going on with you? Uh, watching a video, I think. I'm not sure anymore. Yeah, what's it, what's it, uh, what's it about? EFAP. So it's... it's about a wide-angle shot going into a medium tracking shot, which goes to a close-up of Kylo's face, and then goes into a. Wow. What's up? 
<laughs> angle medium shot dropping the saber. Then there's a medium wide shot reverse angle. So I'm saying times two guy? speed. Whenever I apparently I don't know what happened to watch together, but if you change the the speed, it resets the video, and I'd have to go back to where we were, and then I have to do the same thing to slow back down. So we'll only do that right. for special circumstances. Of Ray slicing at the Praetorian Guard. Medium shot You're of Ray turning to see Kylo. Close up of Kylo Nearly struggling. There, guys. Close up of Ray throwing the saber to Ben. <laughs> this Wide is gonna shot be 90% of, of the Ray throwing the saber. He feels like a girl. Pans to follow the saber. Close up of Ben catching the saber. He, he keeps saying Kylo out. and then Ben. He he keeps swapping. <laughs> Kyle Ben, right? Yeah. <laughs> It totally makes sense. And then alt close-up angle of Ben as the guard falls to the floor dead. Finally, we have a wide shot of Kylo Ren standing up, and he I tosses fuck. the guard's and blade. They fuck now, if you're keeping track, that is about 39 edits. Okay, you, you but the number of people screen. point to more edits is worse. You had the number worse. Screen. Editors are, it's an unsung job, oh, and not a lot of people get, you don't get a lot of attaboys what? and stuff, so he is just dying to show. We didn't that have to do any of that. You had the number nope. on screen. What was the point? Yeah. Like, did you just do unnecessary work to say, look at all the work I did? Well, yes. 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 That's <laughs> exactly you, yes, it. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. What right. Ryan did with he's, this he's entire so idea and the sequence was to create it, a sense of so space. Good. Yeah, this, I guess this is it. Like, we're about to finally find out why he said all of this. Why wasted our that time? That is about 39 edits. I'm so excited. What Ryan Johnson did with this entire idea and the sequence was to create a sense of space or lack thereof with the camera moving a in and out. A sense of space around. or the lack thereof. I guess he's referring to all of the sequence, like, the pieces. I, Either they have a sense of space or they don't. <laughs> like, but here's the thing those are the only two options. It either has a sense of space or it doesn't. <laughs> it has like, a there, sense of space else. or a sense of the lack of space? Is that what he meant uh, to say? No. I don't and think, also, I honestly don't think he knows what he's trying to say. Well, he's just trying to be a pretentious twat. I think this is desperate defense, <laughs> like all the TLJ defenders. I have to desperately try and come up with something to say to defend this scene. That is the theme of this 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 stream, as it has been desperate before. Desperate defense. The what happens to you when you have to defend stuff like this? You're just like, uh, uh, it's about it's about the sense of family. space or the lack of it. You're like, <laughs> yeah, uh. Kylo and Ray in various ways. Now, of course, there are a wide array of shot types to tell the story of this particular types. sequence. Tell but it's one story. of the most elegant and restrained lightsaber battles that restrained? has been Restrained? What? <laughs> what? What? How is this restrained? It's a joke right it's there. It's the... We have, <laughs> we the have opposite sparks, of restrain. fires, people getting shredded, We're different attacks in different directions. How would you call it restrained? <laughs> That's an interesting way to categorize that. Ever. While at the same time, can't take this guy so seriously. relentless I can't. in its energy I can't. that we essentially basic. My favorite detail of this fight is Kylo Ren's lightsaber leaving marks all over the ground. <laughs> Why? It, man, is he shit? Is that what you're trying to say? He's not good at fighting? So his, his blade's constantly scraping against the ground? Well, well, no, I mean, no, no in, in all fairness, in, in, in its defense, that doesn't necessarily need mean to be the case. You know, you could have could have been a necessary for you to drag to to do whatever you needed to do. But wow, you got a couple of fires on the floor, dude. Well, I, 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 the, the, the part that I find funny is just like that's your favorite detail. Yeah, after this, after the restrained fight, I like the scuff marks on the ground. I just, uh, yeah, that's not what I would have picked, but all right, fair enough. Well, then again, like I don't know what doing, I would pick in this Someone fight. doing long jump, and then they go, yeah, my favorite part of the long jump was the, the foot in the sand. <laughs> Lightsaber go brrr. Well, you, you didn't like the way he went 8.6 meters in the air, the way that moved from leap into tuck into legs coming foot. Nah, I like the, when his foot went in the sand, and he came up, there was like a footprint. I like it that he's one. He's scraping his sword against the ground like a sword master. Well, he, he'd love General Grievous then, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, he fucked that floor mm -hmm. up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With four lightsabers, he was, yeah. Oh, my God. That, that we are watching up. people fully perform what's happening in front of our eyeballs. <laughs> Nothing is being saved by the edit. Ryan John. What well, you, you literally Ray went over how oh, they had to edit the fucking knife out. <laughs> <laughs> what?
Ray literally Palpatine Ray's life was saved, saved by, the by the edit. Yeah, like, that's... <laughs> you couldn't have written that stupider. Like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Nothing was saved by the edit, guys. <laughs> Is this an elaborate anti-throne room video? That's... Oh, that's... Oh, I don't know even what what trophy award that one is. It's like the the most the severe lack of self awareness. You explicitly explain that they had to save her in the edit at the beginning. And then you the the, the irony is right. The irony is that if you said to me, "This is uh, this is actually somebody who doesn't like uh, a fucking stupid Jedi movie," uh, and he did a satire on this fucking fight scene, I think it would be hilarious. He goes off about a restrained fight. You got people getting fucking minced all over the place, cutting off, heads going off the left, right, and center. My favorite part, the scuff marks on the fucking floor. That's tire. That's where it's not. It's, it, but it's comedy. It's still more comedic than fucking the shite that he's coming out with. No, nothing was saved in edit apart from Ray Palpatine's life. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Skywalker. I'm a Skywalker. Fantastic. I love it. I just stole the name. Johnson isn't trying to hide anything with tricky, fast paced cuts. He wants us, me and you, to watch the whole frame. I mean, yeah. so, first of all, not even true, because the amount of cuts and tight shots there are, but secondly, if it were true, if it were all one big shot, uh, that would you, you'd be like you don't just you don't get an automatic win now it's all down to choreography like you have to get them all getting it right and they I'm yeah, sorry what they didn't you're filming is important like why do you think they do cuts it's probably because it's easier so if if I need to do six specific moves right and I can do them all uh, one at a time or do them all six in a row which do you think is harder for me like well one at a time like, yep, but it won't look as impressive uh, oftentimes compared to a single shot. And so, you're like, well, check out my long shot. How cool is this? It's like, yeah, but if everybody's clowning around, I don't know why that's impressive. Um, the fight the fight scene in Kingsman is ten fucking times better than this. Yep. Oh, the church fight is fucking glorious, yes. dude. Yeah. The church yeah. fight is... And that uses very subtle cuts. This doesn't use subtle cuts. This uses hard cuts, and that's fine. Yeah. Well, that's the way they put together. But the, the soft cuts that they do in, in Kingsman gave it such a sense of flow that it looked like one good fellow's take. That's I mean, if you what take this a, thing should have been. If you take a movie like The Raid, where you've clearly got yes. all of your performers are trained to an extremely high standard and they're capable of doing this stuff, yeah. great. You know, it looks fantastic. These people, like... This entire sequence was clearly way beyond what the actors were capable of delivering, even with the cuts that they did. And so yeah. you've got people missing their marks, the stuntmen desperately having to improvise to try and work around it, knives disappearing because people are in the wrong positions or they're holding on to the wrong weapons. All of this stuff that you've you've brought about because you've tried to do something that your your performers can't do. Yeah. So you've in essence you've compromised. You've had to compromise yeah. your scene. To, to get something that's going to look flashy and, and visually impressive in theory, you know, you've got all the lightsabers swinging around, you've got all the guards, you know, you've got two people taking on eight Praetorian guards, you've got things mm. burning. It, it should be great in theory, but then it, it, the reality is when you start to like look at it in a bit more detail, all the flaws become so obvious that it just falls apart. Mm. And you couldn't even hide it in the edit. Yeah. You couldn't save it, though. Nothing was saved. <laughs> Nothing, was, Nothing was saved. <laughs> you know, I kind of like that. It's like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> Nothing was saved in the edit, unfortunately. <laughs> While the actors carry out the performance. Now, one little drawback to this way of putting a fight sequence together is that the long shot takes are rehearsed over and over and over again to avoid inconsistencies. And that this can result in a fight that has a bit of dancing for well, a no, This is what the skill is. This is fucking up. This is the guy fucking up. Yeah, you gotta wait for your cue. Some... Huh? Yeah, you gotta wait for your cue. Uh, like what yeah. you were saying. Because you can't... It would, be, it would be interesting to me to, like, try and posit that, like, okay, it gets difficult, and some people are gonna be off cue. I'd be like, that is the whole thing. That's, like, the whole hard part. That's it. That's this what you're trying to do. practice. Like the idea that's like, oh, you can fuck up a, a you know a bunch of the cues. That's fine. It's like, isn't that what our whole job is right now to get the cues right? 
Like, why not do it until we get it right? That's the scene, mm -hmm. yeah. So you do it till you get it spot. I would concede that it's like, well, what are you saying? Get every single mark right? I'd be like, well, can we get at least 90%? Like, can we get that? Yeah. I think ideally, yeah, you want to do this all perfect because you have all this money and time and expertise and that you've is... compiled together so that you could get it as good as possible. And once you Doesn't publish, it's done Kubrick forever. Kubrick wasn't directing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'd still be making it now, yeah, man. Yeah, yep. exactly. <laughs> and it'll all be one shot. No edit. Also, I like this freeze frame where the the guard the left is like being I guess pushed I'll along be by Kylo. <laughs> I guess I'll do nothing like, with I, my I weapon then. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to swing at him or anything like that. I have a better. You know, war. looking at their armor that they're wearing, you can see the problem. Like their helmets are probably blocking ninety five percent of their, their <laughs> yeah. Area. Oh yeah. Yeah, but they you can't, can't see, see their the face, which is scary. Well, it's like, you know, like you're obviously having to react to your cue when you're you're meant to be kicked. And you probably can't even see his foot coming. You probably just have to guess when it's going to hit you. Or I don't, just I don't even have like Kylo actually kick you because you're wearing armor. The Emperor's like, Royal Guard, but, but they had a much better outfit. These are, these, this, these, these outfits, silly, I don't yeah. think of. These guys look silly. Yeah. yeah. They're yep. trying to make them like samurai warriors, and they don't look like samurai warriors. And people often bring up, it's like, why are you attacking your new boss? Yeah. <laughs> right? That's the point. Yeah, the, why be loyal to the guy who's just been yeah. cut in half and killed? They're like, yeah. sweet, that last dude, he was an asshole. We didn't get dental or anything. Hey, yeah, boss, no, we and... killed him. We killed both of the jet. Oh. What, were they in on the Snoke as a clone? I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, you have it's to apparent. imagine, as they're striking Kylo, he's like, I'm paying your checks. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, Stop. <laughs> I'm giving you two extra days holiday a year for God's yeah. sake, paid. Oh, give me a dental. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> Just give us dental, goddammit. It. it is a dance because you automatically begin moving into the next position without even thinking about it. It's I call it. Dance. The Whoa! You go into the next position without thinking about it. Like that's not ideal at all. Yeah, that's bad. That's 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 a fuck up. That's the thing, I, I'm, I'd i have to, because I'm not a fucking choreographer or a person, like a stuntman or anything, but I have to imagine that's something you want to avoid. It's like, you don't want to fall into autopilot, because then you might you, you need to keep track of your uh, co- well, your actors around you. Yeah, you, you have to remember that you are currently being filmed. And I understand the idea that you learn all of your spots, and you learn the timing of when you need to get to them, but you can't, like, all of these people rely on everyone else doing their job too. Otherwise, you end up with what we got. Yep. Half second ahead issue? I definitely notice it in every prequel film, and I notice it in this film as well. But mm, fucking everyone noticed it in this one, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. to tell you. Like, I guess uh, it's sometimes Park more obvious than others. And Ray Park is just an absolute genius when it comes to this sort of thing as well. So. Mm -hmm. But where this movie blows the rest out of the water is when it comes to how the shots are composed and how Steve Yedlin and Ryan chose to follow the action. Every individual frame is almost perfectly composed throughout the None fight. None of these seem perfect. A lot of those seem off. Yeah. Rule of thirds, like, yeah. intersections, point of high, interest, draw the eye down. out of Space the center. Space on top, yep. I, so, uh, perfect by the standard of the point of interest being in the intersection. Um, I don't know why... I'm pretty sure this probably applies to a shit ton of fights. I don't know why, like, the idea that the center is going to be where the main action is happening. It's like, that's more than likely going to be in most stuff. But he says, draw the eye out of the center. Um, th at the same time, if you were to nail uh, the rule of thirds regardless, I don't see how that would pass you from having, like, absolute garbage cinematography. Uh, sorry, uh, choreography. Uh, I wonder what the limit is. If they were all falling over and flailing around, but the the shots were still, you know, of yeah, of this quality, this I wonder if he'd let it go. Something we need to talk about what is being filmed. Also, his face there is funny. Also, Glib is unhappy yeah. in chat. He's saying this is some <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> it's like the uh, it's, a, it's a good chance he he'd be able to do a stronger response to this than I can, but um. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't be surprised. He's obviously drawing as much attention away from the choreography as possible. That's insane. I think what Ryan and Steve were trying oh, to achieve amazing. with this shot and entire sequence is to make the audience feel the ebb and flow of the fight. <laughs> I mean, it was... I mean... 
Like I feel ebb and flow sometimes, but it ain't good. I mean, what what, what fight doesn't like when when filming or creating a fight scene? Can you tell me which one was made with the goal of not having the audience feel anything? I don't, I don't know, I'm coming up with blanks. Because I wasn't feeling much when I was watching this film. Well, that's the, they're the two counters. I had a headache. On one hand, what? who makes stuff with the goal of the audience not feeling anything? And secondly, what do you say to people mm -hmm. who feel nothing? Exactly how the characters would. Start on on wide shots to establish space and a sense of movement. Begin tracking with our heroes as they dominate the fight. Heroes? But then Dolly okay. and Interesting. Why did that guy charge into a fight without a weapon? Um, yeah. how, come, how, come his, how come his arms seem to protect him from the lightsaber, but the rest of his armor but not doesn't? The chest. Yeah, you'd think that the chest would be really important to protect because it's got important bits beneath it. Yeah. I, uh, it's if like I had, to, if thing, I had one to preserve thing... one aspect of me, it would probably be my my chest and yeah. my vital organs. Yeah, it's but that's the thing. Once Crash. you actually stop and look at what's happening, it all falls apart. These are supposed to be super elite warriors trained in melee combat, fighting against Kylo and whatever the fuck Ray is. So you'd think that there'd be a whole lot more going on here in terms of the little stuff and how they react and how they act to things and what they do and what their coordination would be like, and it's all just a bunch of amateur nonsense. And this, being... this would have been so much better if there was two of them, or even four at the most, instead yeah. of eight. Well, so this is another problem with this fight. Uh, he, Kylo could kill this guy right now, and then he could turn around, there's two more, and then he fights them, and then he turns around, there's another three. I'd be like, that's how it felt with the fight. I was like, I have no idea how many there are and where they are. You remember the one who disconnects his, his, his thing into two things to fight Rey. The, the question everyone had was, where the hell were you this whole time? Like, why were you just standing over yep. there? Like, what the fuck? I'm reminded of the, the big fight scene from Kill Bill Volume 1, when she's fighting the crazy 88s. Oh, yeah. In that fight, she is fighting a lot of people, but there is a very clear and established progression of mm. how the fight begins and how it goes to its ending. Damn good fight as well. I love yeah. Kill Bill. <laughs> it's not yeah. so yep. Much better fight scene than this. Hell oh, yeah. Just get, the numbers get whittled down and whittled, gra whittled down just the way it, it's so well done. And then the ends up with uh, Chixa from um, Battle Royale. Mm-hmm. Right, as things are more troublesome for our characters until we are right up in their faces at their most vulnerable. Oh, he it even let go of it with it, one hand and Kylo didn't push off of it. That's weird. Do you yeah. see what, like, see that's what I mean saying, about... everything yeah, in I this know. fight is bad. Um, yeah. Do you know what I mean, though, about like, the whole... He's like, what can I say to compliment this moment where a character is in trouble? The camera focuses on him. You're like, yeah. I don't understand why that's something to celebrate. Like, it tightens up on him when he's in trouble. Like, yep. I think, yeah, it's like yeah. the we've set our bar pretty low here. That's so what I mean. The like, camera it, is able to focus on points of interest. No kidding. <laughs> that's that's how <laughs> movies are done. When Luke says, no, the camera is right up to him because this is an important personal moment <laughs> for Luke. It's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd love if that was just like you saw the back of Luke's head while he was doing yeah. it. <laughs> 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 You could barely hear it. No. Yeah. No. What? what did he say? Yeah. <laughs> did he say go? No. <laughs> so are you so so you're not so? bothered that I'm your dad? <laughs> yeah. <Okay>. So <laughs> feel vulnerable as we watch it happen, and it works. So many variables are at play in the filming of this scene that honestly, I find it exhausting to think about. Timing is so key when long takes are priority. If you watch the documentary on The Last Jedi called The Director and the Jedi, there are some really interesting bits about how much effort it took to make just this sequence. I wow, don't, and they still I, fucked it up. That's what I, I mean. Care. I would never yeah. deny the obvious effort from so many people that went into it. It's unfortunate that you didn't take advantage of their effort. You instead yeah, just went like, eh, all this is good enough. Wasted. You spent all that effort to make a really bad fight. That's unfortunate. You know, if we were on set and they performed the scene as a practice and they, they did what we saw in the movie, I'd be like, this is, we, we're getting there, guys. We're really getting there. Like, we just yeah. need to tighten all this shit up. And I'd yeah. say that in a positive way. I'd be like, we're, we're really doing a really good job. I could see how you're all really on point. We just got to, so like you guys right here, 
the three of you fall back when Ray kicks the middle one. Uh, what's that about? <laughs> like, can you, yeah. can you help me out? And if they're all like, oh, oh, we, I don't know. We, we've established that we put two points into force kick. Mm -hmm. So now got extended mm. force kick range. Your kicks now have an area instead of, of effect. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Instead of kicking just the first person in front of her, she now kicks in a conal uh, direction so she can pick up anything in the cone. And yeah, like, I, I understand that people worked really hard, but people often worked really hard on lots of things, and I just don't, I don't know that we have that as a consistent standard that we just excuse anything going wrong as long as somebody worked hard on it. No, it's not an excuse, and I, I don't deny that they, they worked hard. You can tell they worked hard. You, you see the training videos that these actors do, regardless of what film, you know, the, the physical routines they go through are absolutely grueling, they're absolutely horrendous. Uh, so they can get into, you know, peak physical fitness to, to do what they do. The sad fact is, the fight's a mess. Yeah. And it doesn't yeah, change just... that. And, and that's, that's the, ultimately the, the major issue. Because that's what's going to get printed and put on the screen. They thought there throwing was... a bunch of money and people at something would solve it. Uh, you know, if they would have worked <laughs> this hard on, I don't know, the script, hiring the right director, maybe having a plan for the trilogy, things might have turned out better. Yeah. yeah like, you know, I, a lot I, of people throw a lot of wasted work at stuff. You know, that's the, the one thing I had to learn through my working career is like, do I need to be doing this right now? Is this the most important thing? It looks like I made a really good file or whatever, uh, but did it help anything? No, no. Oh, you gotta, you're from where I am. We got a saying all pants, all, pa <laughs> all <laughs> pants and no trousers. Oh, yes. And, by the way, people sometimes people it happened a while back, and and someone just asked now. Apparently, you sound like Sargon to a lot of people in chat. They get confused. Uh, I get that a lot. You don't, really? It, you it, don't it, sound anywhere. No, yeah. we had Sargon and me on the same stream together talking, and people still could make the mistake. I just don't get it. I just don't get no, it. No, and I tweeted out. I was like, now you've heard his talk. You can tell that we speak very differently. <laughs> people are like, yeah, and now they're back to. Ah, oh, no, you sound like Sargon again. Guys, pay hmm. attention to the avatars at least, you know? They're very yeah. different. <laughs> this guy, yeah, well, this guy sounds like Major Lee, so who knows? And that's true. It's, uh, people are just morphing into each other. Months of re for this fight. Ryan Johnson said that he loved the idea of shooting this, like the oh, fight sorry. scenes that he grew well, up can you just do... hmm? but if you, if you, For people who aren't British, <laughs> who don't know what all pants and no trousers means, it, it basically means your old mouth. You know, you, you can talk the talk, but you can't walk the walk. And this is what this is. You know, they can do as much I guess, training. They uh, can do as much, you know, work. But when it comes to the execution, the execution isn't there. Yeah, there's a couple of things that kind of match up with that. Like, like <laughs> all bark, no bite sort of thing. Yeah. Um, that one makes more sense than all pants and no trousers. I, I thought it was all mouth and no trousers. <laughs> all pants. All pants. All pants and no trousers, yeah. I've genuinely never heard that one. I thought it was all mouth and no trousers. Yeah, because here, pants and trousers are the same. Maybe it's British. Uh, no, English, not Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> That's That's over, over here, we have a saying that goes, you suck. It doesn't yeah. get over the border. This is shit. Yeah, this is shit. Keep it simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crap. <laughs> Like a Jackie Chan movie where you can throw on a wide angle lens and just follow the character around. Yeah, but Jackie Ch Chan Jackie Chan's, works. <laughs> Jackie Chan's choreography is fucking mind blowing. Yeah, genius. And he's actually talented. Yeah. yeah. Fucking genius. That's not what we were dealing with here, unfortunately. And this is no. the thing, I don't know who exactly is at fault, but if Ryan Johnson said, you guys are doing so good that I can just record and it can work, and then they're missing all of their cues and he's not saying anything, I'd be like, Ryan. Ryan. Ryan, direct. Help him out. He wants well, as George to Lucas really said, do you know, if I, if I forget to say cut, <laughs> say cut. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> oh, leave him alone. <laughs> keep filming. Keep filming. Keep filming. Doing the performance over some stunt double, and thankfully, it paid off as far as I'm concerned. This I'm, I'm glad you said as far yeah, as I'm so concerned. It didn't <laughs> yeah, because your we uh, subjective opinion. What was the thing? By the category of catching or missing cues, even eighty eighty chat would have to concede. He'd be like, "Yeah, they fuck it up." 
and but then you, shots. And then you catch him saying, "But they they fuck it up in, in other fights in Star Wars, though. So it doesn't it doesn't matter really." This mindset, awesome. Get it done in front of the camera with the real actors. Now, I understand that this isn't something which every film will be capable of. So we can't just say, yeah, do everything in front of the camera because it's cool. But it would be nice to why hear more Why did he show that clip? I don't understand. I don't know. Why, why did he have the nerdy, annoying character with Do It and then from Palpatine? That was weird. I... By the way, it is all mouth and no trousers, crit, but... In Yorkshire, we call it, we say all, all pants are no trousers, so maybe it's a Yorkshire thing. You guys in Yorkshire are fucking bonkers, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> it's all pants and no trousers. In fairness, aren't like a lot of sayings are just insane if you're not from the place that they started. You're just like, what the fuck does that mean? He's like, ah, oh, well, you yeah. Must be just as Yorkshire, man. All fish, no chips. <laughs> 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 I've heard that one. Oh, oh, so no rutabaga. We always had all pants and no trousers, man. Just a harder it's rest path. Of the country. Any more You're all weird. Wait, everyone's <laughs> weird, all right? Which means nobody's weird. It's yeah, like Star Wars films. Freak. They're all bad, right? Yeah. yeah. No! <laughs> it was a harder path than a more familiar and perhaps easier route of using doubles, clever editing, CGI, to make a sequel. Clever editing. We already know he did. I, we already know he did. I don't know did. if I'd call that clever. Mm -mm. Yeah, remove the word clever. We already know that we he fuck he he saved Ray in the edit with CGI. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like you see, he went the hard way. He he didn't use body doubles. He didn't use CGI. It's like first of all, you don't even the, know that the former is true. And secondly, he definitely thing. did the second one. Oh, the easy thing would have been to just redo it again and practice and practice and get it to be really good. That would have been the easy thing. Yeah, and the way the you keep morale up. The difficult thing is to CGI it out of the film. The way you keep morale up is saying, guys, we're doing something here that's going to be incredible. Like, this is once in a life. Like, as soon as we get it, we get it forever. So just, mm. yeah, we can do this. You know how they still talk about those old Star Wars movies and it's been a kajillion years? You know how they still talk about Citizen Kane? Well, the guess rings. what? That's gonna be us. <laughs> they'll never talk about this film. In oh, they'll they'll talk about this movie, Ryan. I just like oh, the idea they'll that talk that about. He it. gave that speech, and then an hour later, he looked at his watch. And he was like, "Hmm." Mm. <laughs> you would think I do have lunch in an hour. <laughs> yeah. I would say you're all making insane money pretending for a living. Fucking suck it up and get it right. Yeah. People died on the beaches of Normandy so you could pretend for a living. That'd be bad. I don't even know that it was their fault. Right. <laughs> rather than like the people in charge being like, "Do it again," but instead they were just like, "Ah, fuck it, this will be good enough." Like, I don't know. Yeah, look at how many people are watching this. I mean, there's a lot of people staring at screens, going, "Yeah, whoa." Which, which is why it does kind of baffle me that we ended up with what we got. It's just like, damn. Well, does that say Gary on the screen? You see that? Gary, come home. It says Gary. Oh yeah, Gary. It yeah, does. All right, oh, right yeah. there. Yeah. There you go. So All you right, were part of this the whole time. And you didn't you tell anyone. You made this happen, Gary. <laughs> I did. I did. I was the guy who tried to stab Ray. <laughs> took the damn thing away from this me. I was trying to end it right guy. there. Yeah, but you tried to do it in reality, and that's when you got dragged off to it. <laughs> yep. Work. Had my shit. Now, plenty of videos exist which rip this sequence to shreds. Naturally. <laughs> of course, yeah. why, why is it they would do that, I wonder. Ever. Hey, we're, we're ripping your sequence to shreds. Like, what do you <laughs> It's very common. It's kind of like he's just got to the point of the video where he goes, but. <laughs> <laughs> there are some crazies out there who have chosen to, to go the path of anger. <laughs> and for various reasons and most of them are dumb there is so much most to learn all. from watching this battle sequence why didn't oh. you tell us any of them yeah, I, like, no, I, yeah. I agree with him <laughs> there is so much to learn by watching the battle sequence i completely agree. oh yeah we could all profit from a bad example that is absolutely. true absolutely yep i mean that's what the film's about right <laughs> you, yeah it's you... about learning from failure <laughs> Which Ryan, Ryan did not embrace the, the theme of his movie. No, he did not. <laughs> he embraced the first portion. Like... He embraced the failure without the learning. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, don't be like me. <laughs> don't be he, went, he, he went all the way. 
Beyond the detriment of a disappearing blade or the sentiments of some random stuntman. This scene is a demonstration of some on how to make some man. sentiments. Oh, also, well, why should we believe your sentiments anymore? Like, why should we take more from your sentiments than a stuntman's sentiments on a stunt-related scene? Who's it's where the presentation in the of evidence and information, you know, pro it convinces us to trust you and not someone else. <sighs> Ism, like what the fuck? Something feel large in life, while at the same time keeping things as simple and elegant as possible. If you want I to be that a... simple, that wasn't what was simple, simple and about elegant? this fight by your account? This, this, this is the opposite of simple. This is overly complicated, but, but and as a result, it doesn't yeah, work. He's full of contradictions. He's taught. He, he spent the whole first five minutes talking about how complicated. The cuts were, and the edits were, and everything, and then so at the end to make it as simple as possible. No, no. So restrained and simple. Yeah, it was restrained, but yeah, it was chaotic. You know, the whole thing's Winter. all over the place. Uh, I think it's full of shit. I think it's full of shit. An editor, study this scene, figure out why they didn't it cut, fails. and then figure out why they <laughs> cut. If you want to be a cinematographer, study this scene. <laughs> no, if you want to be a cinematographer, no, you no, shouldn't no, be watching it. clowns videos for starters. Mm. Yeah. If you want to be a cinematographer, fear this scene. <laughs> this, <laughs> this scene will keep you up in your nightmares. It will never release you from its icy grasp. Ugh. I mean... Like, why would anyone be compelled by what he said in this video? I don't understand. Like, what? Yeah, what's the... There was never the convincing part. Figure out why they did the shots they did, and why they moved and ended up in areas they did as the fight went on. If you want to learn how us? music cues and bits of action it are supposed know. to line up, study this scene. You keep saying that. What's important <laughs> is that this... What's important is this scene creates a sense of space or not. Oh. Case, oh yeah, it's simple and very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> Chat, how much have you learned today? I'm just gonna rab. I'm just gonna ramble on for a bit to wrap this up. I learned that there's 39 yeah. cuts in this scene. Yeah, that, that was that was the most instructive part of it. So if your scene doesn't have 39 cuts, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, at least we'll remember that now from now on. So if ever you're on the streets and someone's like, hey, how many cuts were there in that in that throne room fight? You'd be like, oh, about 39. You mean like slices? It's like, no, 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 like cuts, editing-wise. Could be know. a yeah, pop quiz question, you know? You could be in some pub and just like, in the you know, fucking that Jedi shite film, how many cuts were there in the fight scene? It's, yeah, yeah, it's like a bro. trivia thing. Yeah. Generally, though, fight scenes are normally praised because they don't have a lot of cuts and they're mm -hmm. single takes where you can follow the action. So if I was if I was this clown and I was going to try and convince people that this fight was really good because of all the fucking cuts, you're kind of going against the grain of general, you know, generally accepted knowledge on these fights. So you need to really convince me that more cuts are better and not the opposite is true. If there are more cuts, you should be nailing those parts. Yeah, nailing. You can restart all the exactly. you know, from so many earlier checkpoints, essentially. So there's no there's no actual excuse for missing your marks. And there's no uh, and more to the point, I because I don't really want to blame like Daisy Ridley and stuff. It's Ryan Johnson's fault. Because he's he is the, the director that accepted it. Well, yeah, he would have told them they'd done the job. And they'd yep. be like, cool. Cut, great, print, move on. Bad. Singing lunch. I'll end this video with my own little nitpick for the entire <laughs> sequence, because after all, I do have one like criticism that I would have definitely brought up in the, the editing kick? room had I been an editor Ooh. for The Last Jedi. I would have increased the speed of the fight ever so slightly to get around the visual danciness of a very rehearsed fight sequence. I have a little example prepared right here, kind of which I sped up in an extremely cheap way, and this is- That's- Whoa! That's you've got this- this feels about right for me. <laughs> this is subjective, as if to imply there are such arguments that are not subjective. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Just to get-
But that's really it. This entire- Also, what a- what a crazy change. He's gonna turn up the speed of the fight. <laughs> Alright. Uh, well, calm down. Throne room scene is Ryan Johnson and Steve Yedlin's little masterpiece. But it wouldn't have been as no. good as it was had Adam <laughs> Driver and Daisy Ridley not performed everything we saw in front of the camera. And that about does it for today's well, nothing video. nothing would have been as good in the movie if it wasn't in front of the camera. <laughs> no, <laughs> Craig, you can have stuff happen off screen, idiot. In the movie, mm -hmm. their right. acting off screen was stellar. You could hear <laughs> it. Yeah, actually, Daisy's was. There might have been some improvement. And suddenly, cue the distant. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can still hear him acting off screen. And, and if you can, leave your comments below on how this you scene know, this video would have been better. We've left sped you up. a whole video of comments, Mr. ATAT chat. <laughs> sure, you're happy about that. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be thrilled to see all the Feel. comments. What did you like about it? You can finally tweet about how we've covered you. <laughs> you yeah, and not lie this time. Yeah. <laughs> now you could truthfully tweet. Um, Hooray. Yeah, that's that's two videos from ATAT chat. One trying to own those sequel haters, and the other trying to prop up a, a very unfortunate and damaged scene from TLJ. And I know I shouldn't say it like that. It's like, which one are you talking about, Muller? It's like, yeah, I know, I know. All of them, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's that's that. Uh, good job, ATAT. Yeah, yeah, that was shit. Good job. Thanks for the quite material. Quite for the fodder. I feel, I that was that was a great. Looking. Um, True, truly, he was all pants and no trousers. Yes. Yep. <laughs> An old mouth and no chips. <laughs> um, what do you? All think? cabbages, no. It's good uh, to see embracing Yorkshire though. Uh, Very cool. What do you think of the crazy idea rags are doing? Like with with this lot we got here, maybe doing doing one round of one of those games. I'm fine with that. I feel, I feel like they could get a lot of fun out of it. This little this little crew, and I don't think because we're not gonna be able to hang out with you guys for um. Uh, Halloween, so you got, you're going to be doing your. Um, we're going to be doing a game night on the night you're doing Friday Night Tights. So, we'll. Uh, I would I would have dragged you onto there, but I don't want to interrupt you. But yeah, um, you know, I, the the game we, we we had a look at last week, I think it is. It's um, it it, it it's rather amusing, and I I wouldn't mind seeing uh seeing you guys jump into it. You don't have to buy it. It's literally in your browser. You don't have to do anything. Um, and you probably haven't heard of it because it's quite new. But, uh, how do you feel about that? Sure. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, whatever. Oh my god. Rags, which one do you reckon? The the drawing one or the talking one? 39 cups. <laughs> I kind of like the drawing one. Alright, and I'm going to grab a sixth player just so that we got a full full set. Um, but yeah, we'll, 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 we'll uh, as normal, go to uh, uh, Super Chats after, after we just do a round of this. Oh no, there's an update. <laughs> oh, please don't be large. 50 megabytes. All right, I'm going to drop a frame or two when downloading this, but don't don't worry, guys. We'll be here. But yeah. Uh, no. Hi, Metal. Hey, Dawn. What, what do I need to download? Do I need to download? Nothing at all. Go to uh, jackbox.tv. <clears throat> I'll write it out for you guys. And then write out your name, and then I'll give you a room code, and uh, we'll have a look-see. I'm going to have to no. figure out... Um, usually in the EFAB gaming format. Also, Mel, I said hi and you didn't say hi back. I am offended. Well, someone was talking. I'm not a rude cunt like you. Wait, <laughs> that, you, that, that sounded contradictive. No. No, I'm doing alright. Oh, no. I mean, I was about to go to bed, it actually. It was satire. And then once again, EFAB grabs me back into its death, into its right, left, up, down wings. Right, left, up, down wings. There yeah. go, take Yes. Put up the code, baby. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll get you folks it a sec. I've never actually had gaming set up on my normal EFAP format, you see, so I'm all very, I'm very confused right now. I'm scared. There we go, I'll pop that there for a second. Go on, have a chat about something while I figure this out. It'll take me a minute. Oh, oh right. Um, <laughs> yeah, that video was shit. I, I would have been... If that, if I would have made that video, if that video was a product of my work, I'd be like, I would be, show, I would be so ashamed. Oh my goodness. What a terrible video that did nothing to convince anybody of anything, that asserted things without any level of evidence, that made contradictory statements, that didn't even understand what a good proper parody or satire was, and mm. didn't even understand what they were parodying. I it's think... just big L's all around. Yeah. This this guy needs to stop taking a confrontational <laughs> position with these sort of things, because it doesn't work. He can't support 
his arguments at all. So if he wants to talk about this scene, if he likes this scene, that's his prerogative. He's fine to do so. Make a video on why you like it. Explain why you like it. You know, it doesn't, doesn't need to be anything more than that. But to try and say, oh, it's a great scene because it's so simple, even though it's got 39 cuts, and yet it's so serene, yet it's fucking chaotic, yet it's so distant, and contributes <laughs> himself all over the place because he thinks he's in constant um, war or debate with people who don't like it. Just, just focus on the positive aspects for yourself. <clears throat> Yeah, he's the last person who cares about Star Wars, or at least the Disney version of it. I, I, I don't know why people are still defending the movie. So many fans of it out there. They can't wait for the next installment. What's going to happen to Ray? <laughs> I can. Yeah. I, I, I really can. Dude, a trailer with with like Ray. Her adventure is only just beginning. We were like, oh man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. So here is your room code. I don't want it. That's a German word. Um, once you're all in, I will then... Uh, uh, well, we can start it. I'll, I'll let the chat see the code. Can it even be funny without being drunk? I don't know how that works. Uh, it's not too late to be drunk. I I, I, I was very drunk yesterday. Um, I don't want to drink. <laughs> being hungover is like being drunk, right? Uh, I mean, I'm not hungover anymore. I just don't want to drink again. So I'm the... Drunk. The crash course of what you do in this game is that uh, you will be told to draw something in the browser with your mouse, and it'll have to like sort of kind of match up with a category. You'll finish your drawing, and then the next sort of thing will be you'll be shown someone's drawing to represent their category, and you have to draw something that would beat it in a fight. What? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? what? I'm, I'm, okay. Uh... So I was too busy picking out my avatar. I... <laughs> Well, my, my drawings are going to be the height of shittiness, by the way, because I'm just using the touchpad on my on my laptop. Oh, all oh, right. <laughs> so you know it's going to be good. So, yeah, while it's it's doing its thing, Welcome so you gotta explain as we go through the first one. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. you'll get a timer of about one minute twenty seconds, and you just have to draw a champion, and that means just something that can fight against something else, and other players will be drawing theirs. And then the second round will be you'll see what someone has drawn and you have to design like a champion to beat them in a fight. In this first step, the trainers I'll, uh, will skip be prompted us to, it. to draw and name a particular we're drawing with a mouse. Oh yeah, I mean, we're all drawing with m mouse at best probably. All right, here you go, two minutes. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Also, chat, if you're new to this shit, it's gonna be two minutes of listening to us concentrate while we make incredible drawings for you. Yeah. <laughs> you were raised up. Yeah. This is the this is the the fartistry. The fartistry. Oh yes. Noise. You got one minute, fifteen seconds. Oh my god! Pressure. Change your color, uh, how big you want the brush, and you can undo if you make a mistake. 40 seconds. Oh shit, I'm not gonna be able to color anything. Oh, oh don't worry about it. Oh, no. You've got to name can't. your champion as well. Oh yeah, it'll force you to name your champion in the last 10 seconds if you don't do it oh, yourself. Oh yeah. Alright, this is gonna look like shit. I don't care. Alright, 20 <laughs> seconds. No. 20 seconds remain. Players need oh. to name their character. <clears throat> Loud concentration. 10 seconds. <laughs> 9, 8. Make sure you hit submit before the time runs out. 6, uh, 5, 4, oh, shit. 3, 2, yeah. 1. 
It's the thing. <laughs> Alright, so next round, you're gonna be shown on your browser someone's champion, and you're gonna have to draw something that can beat it. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, do I really have to do this? Okay. <laughs> this is going to be bad. Got one minute twenty six seconds. One ball. I mean, if someone looks like a cock, you're probably on your way to something good. <laughs> Welcome to the Jackbox games. <laughs> Isn't there no, like, paint where you can just fill in everything with color? Not really, there's a weird one. It doesn't work quite like that. If you choose the big brush, it sort of, kind of does that. Also, you got 35 seconds. You can't erase. Shit. Yeah, yeah, back. Top, top left, Gary. Top left. Oh. Well, you can undo, yeah. Ah, uh, that's gonna fuck me up, but oh well. Don't worry, it's your first it's time. It's time to name those characters! Oh. <laughs> that's uh, not gonna can That's not gonna do anything. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, oh, wow. 9, this is gonna... 8, yes. 7, <laughs> 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, something else. <laughs> Damn, you've got a 30 second delay almost today. It's crazy. It's time for the main event. Oh yeah, you're gonna have to get the stream up to be able to see the... Oh well, I think you actually see them on your browser anyway. I already forgot. <laughs> fish fish Twat versus Submonator. Fish Twat. Oh my god. Fish Twat. <laughs> fish Twat. <laughs> fish Twat. Submantor. <laughs> 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 And then everyone votes for who you think wins this fight. Oh my goodness. I can't help but love Fish Twat. <laughs> fish Twat seems to have won. Fish Twat. That was a pretty good he's, rocket device. What? He's got a rocket. <laughs> I assume that's a rocket. Oh yeah, that's chat. A torpedo. All right. If you want to vote, chat, you go to jackbox.tv and then use the code underneath it on the screen to get in. I can't see anything, so maybe... I'll... Oh, there it is. Okay, I gotta watch it out there. Yeah, boop! <laughs> you got hand blade versus hand shield. I want the horrible abomination hand blade to win. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I like the face on Hand Shield. He's, he's so into it, look at him. <laughs> yeah, he's like... Mm. <laughs> Hand Blade has also two brush feet feet. <laughs> oh no, who wins? <laughs> the farty boy versus the plug. The plug. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> when you threw a plug, you had so long to draw a plug. <laughs> I know, I had to start over. I drew that plug in like five seconds, okay? <laughs> Give me a break. Break. Carrick, no. <laughs> <laughs> if you the other way, that would have been great. Oh my god, Gary, you, oh, you, your, your plug I won. <laughs> Oh, oh no. shit, it would go the other way. <laughs> it's, because I, it's because I flipped a character in the fight. So I exposed my anus. <laughs> Party boys only weakness. She's got very big feet. Jimmy Gunhead Bobbington versus I am John. Obviously, <laughs> out of practice. Jimmy Gunhead Bobbington. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
I love Jimmy Gunhead bobbing. <laughs> <laughs> Man, John is the crowd favorite. I mean, John is pretty great. <laughs> I feel like I could I could get a beer with John. <laughs> I mean, he John looks is the best. <laughs> Jimmy Gunhead Bobbington oh looks gosh. like a duck. <laughs> Anti robot water bucket dude. Oh fucking hell. Oh man, Duke was defeated. Yes. <laughs> oh, fatality. <laughs> fatality. Duke was uh, born with a club foot. <laughs> <laughs> he was assembled with a club foot. <laughs> yeah, by a blind man. Uh, we need another foot. We get we go to the spare parts bin. <laughs> Skulls of the dead versus immortal Ian. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> when an unstoppable like force meets an immovable object. I could watch a bucket for him. I could watch a bucket dude was the champion of horror. <laughs> Immortal Ian. <laughs> it's got a cross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is tight. This is tight. Now uh, we'll be doing it again, but uh, on the next fight, you'll be able to tag in somebody if you think they can beat the champion better than the one you have. Oh my god! So when do we start the next? Oh, uh, start drawing now. Oh shit! Oh, shit. shit. One minute and twenty six seconds. I want more time. We all do. You see, we're all artists at heart. One minute. Forty seconds. Oh my god. Brush is getting to me! So unfair, I've not made me masterpiece. Thirty Where's seconds. Twenty, 20 seconds. Warning. Name those characters! <laughs> I'm so retarded. <laughs> Uh, Ten seconds. Five seconds. Four, oh my three, God. two, one. Oh, oh are we good? What <laughs> 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 are those legs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. I love this game. One minute and ten seconds.
55 seconds. And yeah, this one's good, because um, one person buying this game means everyone can play it. Yeah. That was fucking amazing. That's the thing, not only we've got a whole set of new champions, we can bring in our old ones if we have a chance to. <laughs> is there a link? So the way to get in is to go to jackbox.tv and then type your name in and use the um, the code underneath it, S-A-L-Z, and uh, you'll be able to vote on the fight. Twenty second one. <coughs> I'm in. I'm done. Seventeen right. seconds. Fifteen. Thirteen. Ten. Eight. Right. Seven. Oh, there you go. All right, here we go. It's the second half, which means it's time for the tag teams. Each matchup will include. Yeah. Um. So when it's your champion, you can sub fighters. in your old dude. <coughs> Am I supposed to be seeing something in my browser other than tips no, and tricks? I see it before you guys uh, end up seeing okay, it. it. <laughs> 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 oh man, these are good drawings. Yeah, this is great. It's not over yet. Here's the next title up for grabs. A champion of hoodwinking. Will the traders keep their characters? Or do I keep in Stankulon? I feel like I do. <laughs> My goodness! Ah, the art of war. It was a close battle of rags, but you won fair and square. Deodorizer. They did the work of two fighters. Two new fighters enter the ring. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, bad. It's gonna be close. <laughs> he turned to paper. He turned to paper. He's so happy to be paper. <laughs> extremely rough. Are you extremely rough? The trainers have a decision to make. <laughs> This is getting drawn out. Come on, Peter, buddy, on the you can do it. <laughs> I feel like Peter the paper would also apply to the Dying on the toilet. Good job, Peter. Thanks. Peter. Here's our next matchup. You will decide who is... Champion of freaking out! You... you know horny? <laughs> you know horny. How many jail diving? <laughs> Man, I don't know who wins this. I don't even... oh, I don't even know. The horny jail duck versus the horny corn. Yeah, we're gonna horny. Will the players tag out? The Let's champion of K-pop fans. <laughs> That's definitely Holy unihorny. Smokes. They're slaying in character. Unihorny comes out on top. <sighs> oh, fatality too. Fatality. What a feat! Fatality, you. <laughs> I like in chat, Benjamin. Go, Unihorny! It's time for our <laughs> <Unihorny>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Unihorny's oh, biggest yeah. fan! <laughs> Flick! <laughs> Who drew Flick? <laughs> the regular sized meal man! <laughs> They've <laughs> 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 even got the Diabito helmet on him. Slurk. 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 I love that. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> 
It's <laughs> 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 <His> perfectly <laughs> spherical body. <laughs> <laughs> He's got no arms, it just hands. <laughs> his arms are in there somewhere, whether they got swallowed up by his body. <laughs> like, there's a skeleton in there somewhere. <laughs> God, no, the believe. champion of living under a bridge. <laughs> I feel like AT80 -AT chat's just gonna dominate oh, this fight if, we, kill. if they're running for that championship. I don't believe what I'm seeing. Now they'll be battling for this title. We haven't seen anybody swapping them out. I can't. <clears throat> you can't? It just says champed up on my browser. Oh well. Oh, wait, once... I gotta click on it, that's why I'm not that's fucking not doing it. it. AT AT versus AT and T. <laughs> <laughs> that is an important distinction. AT and T wins. Oh. Did I fight back? He's in battle of the logo. Wins the logo. <laughs> Champion of Tinseltown. What the fuck? I, I don't know who does actually win this. Ryan's head versus Ryan's god. <laughs> oh no. Dude, the guy just said talk about character assassination. Like, oh, perfect timing, dude. <laughs> oh, there you go. Ryan's head one. He's just more powerful. <laughs> too too much roundness. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about his body. Okay, folks, that was the final match. Right. The judges it's time are for results. Who won? Who came up with the funniest drawings? We have a it was as. Oh, oh. nice job. Well wow. done, dude. <laughs> Metal okay, second, mutually third, Rags fourth, Gary fifth, Drinker sixth. Oh. Damn, oh. as tripled your points, Drinker. I know, I'll have to bring my mouse next time so I can draw properly. <laughs> um, do you guys want to go again? Which one was the uh, the, the winning shirt? Uh, shirt? Champion? Winning oh, champion. Just the whole, uh, this is real money, I just won $33,000. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Champion of yesterday's news. <sighs> Undercover bosses. I need that money to pay my bill. Regular. I feel like the regular size meal man would win the G1 climax. <laughs> <laughs> I like the um the hand shield versus knife hands dude or whatever. Welcome <laughs> to the Take out Kota Ibushi. These talented <laughs> Easy. To to see who's the best yeah, Drinker, go get a mouse, God. You, you'd think, <laughs> Mr. Successful YouTuber, you'd have a mouse, you know? But never mind. I have a mouse. Mm. Well, no, I mean, I, I'm away from... Yeah, he's German yeah. and he has a mouse. Yeah, yeah. I'm away from the office. So or as he calls like, it, a moss. A moss. A moss. A moss. A moss. A moss. Sure, let's go with that. All right, let's, let, we'll do a round two. I I, I didn't hear any any pushback oh, oh, on Jesus. it, so let's go. Uh, no, yeah, let's do a round two. <laughs> Everyone able to draw? I, I hope we're all good. Yep. Yeah, I'm um, just yeah. not sure I understand what it's asking me for here. Um, right. Well, it probably yeah. says the champion of something, right? Yeah. Kids so table. Yeah. As is. Okay. 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 Don't worry about. You don't actually have to follow the title if you can. You know. It's all good. Of 90 seconds. I'm glad I got this beat in the background so chat don't fall asleep. I guess yeah, it's a, it's a decent one.
shit, I did a dum dum. Ah, no. Forty four seconds. Thirty seconds. on my browser and I deleted everything so I had to draw something really bad really quickly. <laughs> Me too. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Out of time. The trainers are now moving on to creating <clears throat> a challenger. These characters will be the underdogs because their creators... All right. Wow. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety seconds. Five seconds. Twenty seconds. Twenty seconds remain. Players need to name their character. Twelve seconds. Six, five, four, three, two, one. No idea why I'm drawn or anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I lost it. God. <laughs> the mojo's gone. I suck, at I suck at all games, dude. I really do. <laughs> I suck at all, suck at all games. games. I can't even play board games. <laughs> Oh my god, my, my ultimate enemy. <laughs> it's funny, that's what they think you are. <laughs> Basically, you're this evil demon. <laughs> is, that black, is that blackface? That's not cool, dude. Oh no. <laughs> it's only half blackface. I defeated the time limiter. That's, that's allegorical right there. Time cannot stop the long. Here's our next competitor. Uh. Versus... <laughs> one of them will wow, I am curious how chat will go on this one. Oh no! <laughs> God's <Whoa>! mistake. <laughs> 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 Movies. I love the hand that just comes out of the head. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that's the hand. <laughs> just some weird hair. Like Sonic. <laughs> this is really weird Sonic. 
Gonna go fast. Old mouth, no trousers, man. This is tooth brick. <laughs> Dude, tooth brick's gonna fuck him up. <laughs> it's gonna win every time. That's not even fair. <laughs> Oh man, tooth toothbrick lost. <laughs> no. No, how's this guy you think? I was so proud of the name. Why would you fight to be my guardian angel? Dude, these two. Poopy boy. <laughs> I love that drawing of the toilet. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Poseidon's kiss is dominated. Poseidon's kiss wins. <laughs> Get on your knees. <laughs> my bowl of love. I'm an angry toilet. I, 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 I like that, but my, my two <laughs> seconds. That too, if people were shitting in your mouth. The whole time. <laughs> 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 Does that because when you use all your time and poopy boy is when you use like two seconds? Older boy, gunman, good. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Why does one of his feet go oh, one of the colors? Because <laughs> I couldn't finish the shoe. Maybe he's black. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's only got one shoe on, that's what that represents. Yeah. <laughs> Chad Ch Chadlington looks sexy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just some sad fact. <laughs> It's fucking DSP. That's it. The sad fact I won. Oh, did he? He is the champion of the midlife crisis. He midlife crisis, crisis, and I was like, I don't know. He's definitely DSP. He does look sort of like him. Alrighty. <clears throat> you got 155. One thirteen. Sixty seconds. Forty five seconds. Twenty seconds. Name those characters. Fifteen seconds. <coughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, 
And draw your combatants. <laughs> oh my god. Wait. Oh, I really don't want to get your channel pulled down. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you'll be <laughs> fine. <laughs> One minute forty. Seventy seconds. <clears throat> Fifty five seconds. Thirty seconds. <clears throat> Name those characters. Eighteen. Fifteen. Ten. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. <laughs> four. Three. Two. One. I like how some of you guys really do just leave it to the last second to get that <laughs> quality in there. I got the countdown. Which means it's I need to yeah, totally froze. My, my stomach needs to recover from the laughing. What does this have to do with heists? Chad McBrain the same. <laughs> I bet I guess Chad McBrain would have a better height. <laughs> oh, now they're running for politicians. It's like political race. Oh shit, here he comes, diabetes in the fight. Oh no! Oh champion of politicians. Oh I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Chad has a son. <laughs> I dare you to name a more iconic duo. Cool. Nice job. Moving on. One of them will be the champion <laughs> of the tea man. party. He is dominating. <laughs> the Billman versus Tea Way Too Much Pot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think the Pillman is the underdog. I'm gonna vote for him. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> just like a smash move there. <laughs> I don't know. I like him short and stout. What can I say? <laughs> I feel like the Pillman's seen a lot of things. You know, he knows what's up. Uh, it was, looks like he yeah. doesn't have any eyes anymore. Yeah, he, he saw so much. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Like champion of plotting your demise. Oh, oh, oh. Why would they, why would they make a category of nudist club? anyone's <laughs> fight. <laughs> Opinion money too hot for YouTube. <laughs> oh my god, is the censorship winning? Oh no. Oh, no. oh my god. <laughs> what does this mean for the YouTube? The champion of the Zoom Is it over? Champion of the Zoom Oh god, fish twats back. Oh no. The pen is fightier. Was not fish twat from the first game? 
Yeah. Yeah. They keep you like full yeah, of them. Yeah, get, I'm getting all my options as well. Mm -hmm. oh, that's cool. Boo, censorship. <laughs> no, for the first time in your life, vote for censorship. <laughs> Come on, China, do your work. <laughs> An anti pickle man. How did I win that? I don't know. How did I win that? You don't know it, chat. They'll vote for anything. Don't make me bring out pizza the paper. <laughs> 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 fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> pickle man, and a pickle so Oh my god. <laughs> Do you have any popular toys of pickles? <laughs> 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 sock, by the way. <laughs> You find, you know, like, the champion of popular toys, the pickled sock. <laughs> <laughs> I am the pickled sock. <laughs> Children love to play with your pickled socks. The guy holding it up doesn't seem happy, but, you know. <laughs> Finally, an actual fight. Ooh, fatality. All right, I feel oh. like the chat's gonna decide this one. This As per usual, but I'm still curious. I don't even know what I'm fighting against. I haven't seen it yet. I'm still waiting too. Champion of Thanksgiving uh. dinner. <laughs> one oh. the Will the players tag out? <laughs> Let's find out. Some <laughs> <laughs> rage. Oh my god. <laughs> Golf <Go> neck. <laughs> Out he goes. Oh boy. No Wombo, you can't lose. Victory. What a feat. Champion of Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> well, that's why he's so upset he didn't get Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> oh. No, this is a tough fight. Hmm. Oh god, this is too good. This is too good. This is terrible. God would Gertrude fuck her up. Oh god. <laughs> 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 Oh no, oh, the Bree bot has won. The champion! Yeah. I should have known better. Getting pelted with rotten tomatoes. That's. I don't want to be the champion of that. The true thing! Shoot the shit out of that Bree bot! The judges are tallying the final scores and. Oh, Rags, you're the winner! Oh my god! 36% of the audience predicted it. How does that work? Did you guys oh, well, I mean, it's only natural. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, this is a fun. This is a fun one. Yeah. Do you want to do one round of that other game, Rags? What do you reckon? Uh, fine with me. The other one is um, you basically have to run a fake sort of PowerPoint presentation. <clears throat> it lasts about like four, three, four minutes, but the idea is that you have to talk about whatever someone puts on screen for you, and you have to try and make okay. it make sense. You have an assistant that puts up pictures and text, and then you need to tell your presentation. Hopefully it puts, like, me or Rags or Metal first so that you guys can see what actually happens, but the idea is your prompts on your screen, and you'll, uh, you just have to talk as if you're trying to make a point, no matter what prompt you get. Well, so uh, now you need to refresh your uh, your thing so that a room code option comes up again. <laughs> and I'll get yep. you writing. Um... What I might need to do is probably drop out um, before we go into the next round. Unless you need... Do we need a certain number of players to make it work? Well, um, this won't, it, it won't take long. You, you only need your voice for this. You don't actually need uh, anything else. Ah, like uh, okay. It literally lasts like... It, each round is like 10 minutes or 15 sort of thing. 
Ah, oh, uh, okay, cool. It'll be nice and quick. Is it just the same room code, yeah? Uh, it's a new one, and it is that. Jump in, people. That is not a word. The room code is oh, not a word. T W A T. I see that you're all in. <clears throat> yeah, pick whoever you want to look like. It's yeah. up to you. So, like I said, you'll uh, you'll you'll have a talk. It, it might be like you need to talk about um, why people should point? buy electric cars or something like that. And then you'll start here. talking about it, Didn't and you'll see prompts on your screen. You have to involve it in your talk this. at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> and then the audience will judge whether or not you did a good job. <laughs> so, audience, uh, go to jackbox.com and then type in HHFY in the room code. And weird stuff. The weird ones are the most So fun. now uh, you're going to write an example sort of talk, and this could end up with someone else having to do this talk. What have I? What have I? What I've just done? Have I just <laughs> fucked somebody up by doing what I've done? Maybe potentially. Okay. Okay. <laughs> also, some things they say like, "Oh, you can't say this," but then some things you put in there, you're like, "Wow, that worked." Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, might have. Might, yeah, might have actually. It uh, might be too logical. Fuck. What if I told you that not all slurs are created equal? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Twenty more seconds to write your uh, answers. You nearly there, Drinker and Gary? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Four, three, two, <gasps> one. There you go. All right. Like I said, I hope yeah. it puts one of the people who've done this before now, first. Pick one of the titles that has been sent to your device. This will be the oh, you got to pick a title now. Presentation. <laughs> 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 They're all pretty funny. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm, I'm gonna have to go with that one. <clears throat> God damn! All right, and uh, you can like upvote people as they talk or downvote them. I've got. I'm doing. I'm doing the first talk, and Drinker's gonna be my assistant. So Drinker, you'll get prompts to choose from to change my talk. Okay. And again, if you have the stream up, you'll you'll be sure to see how everything goes. Oh, then here we go. Hello, my name is Mutually, and my talk is about. The hidden life of Shlomglom. So, when he was young, Shlomglom would collect lots of different dolls, but the scary sort of thing about it was that he would not torture them, because they're not alive, but break them apart, do all kinds of things. This was disturbing to Shlomglom's parents. But here's the positive thing about this. He, he, he was a, like a farmer. So yes, he would break apart dolls and fuck with all kinds of things in the house, but ultimately he was growing food, plants, all kinds of things. Aesthetically, a gorgeous place to live, and he provided food to the locals, which I think is invaluable. And um, as much as people don't know about this, and they may be shocked by the whole doll thing, I'd say the, the, the food aspect really does raise him above others. So how can I make this about me? Well... Potatoes, as I said, would be one of the main things he grew. Staving off death would be, like, the ultimate goal of Shlomglom, and I think that inspired myself and many others. Keep well fed. Make sure you, uh, you make it through life. You know, you don't want to be looking around every corner of that reaper coming for you. And one of the main ways to do that is to stay nourished. Count your calories. Stay on a well, well-based diet. You know, do some running around a bit. And, uh, yeah, I'd say that's, that's the answer to that, so thank you. Okay, so half of your score is <laughs> how many times people hit the button. Oh, hey, God, that down. was good. I feel like I've gotten yeah. to know Shlorm Glorm very well. Yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, it's Skullzor, the Lord of Death. Yeah. 
You know how a graph works. <laughs> all right. So that's a good that's example. You'll all have to do this. <laughs> good luck. I'm so nervous. Now this is ridiculous. To fill out a comment card. Talking live in front of a bunch of people. Oh. I know, a right? Comment about the speech. Or maybe a quote you think you remember. Who's, who's up next? Oh, yeah. You can write just something about the, the talk I did, I guess. It comes up if uh, at the end, I think. Alright, as you're up, and Gary will oh, be assisting no. you. So Gary, make sure you choose from your uh, your options you get on your, your browser thing. <laughs> oh, I'm so nervous! Okay. I'm gonna, <laughs> click, I'm gonna click begin speech, okay? Hello, my name is Az, and my talk is... It's not easy being half human and half Brie Larson. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I find that maths is very difficult because when I start to concentrate, I start to go into like this voice because the brain side takes like over and stuff. And she's not exactly like, you know, interested in maths and things because it's like maybe some stuff. And this is where I would have to live, which is in a farm uh, because I believe the animalistic side of Brie uh, just make me want to go and feed the cowsies and then maybe let the cowsies take the milk and then maybe some people can take the milk to these animesies because I got the boobies because I'm the breezy. <laughs> <clears throat> Going back to the half-human side, in many ways, I'm just like everyone else. For instance, <laughs> I do a regular job. I go to school. I'm also into dinosaur dressing up and i teach the little children what it means to be a reptile from billions of years ago and then brie's just like oh my god see something like extinct wingsies and stuff because they think they like these and things thank you very much indeed. <laughs> what a difficult life you lead <clears throat> yeah it must be annoying it's tough it's not easy <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, I think you'll, you'll be able to rate Gary as an assistant. Oh boy. Like a Mexican rapist, man. <laughs> Why is it gonna be Mexican, man? Why is it gonna be Mexican? <laughs> is that... Was that a target today? <clears throat> man, my bros are really lagging behind on this one. You're on. All right, Rags is up, and he's assisted by Az. Oh, boy. Oh, my um, goodness. Here we go. All righty. Here we go. All right. Hello. My name is Rags, and my talk is the subtle art of pubic hair. That's right. As many of us know, some of us uh, more than others, uh, seduction comes in many stages. Um... Oh, am I doing both here? Oh, uh, I guess I'm 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 both typing and sliding and speaking. Oh, you can if you want to. The typing's optional. Oh, okay. All right, all right, gotcha. So this is my slide. All right. As many of you know, um, getting people into the bedroom is often considered the difficult part. However, when they get home and see that you're not just a Wookiee in the streets, but also a Wookiee in the sheets, they'll want to fly away to a galaxy far, far away. So ask yourself one question. <laughs> Much like a gnome maintains his garden and watches over all of the growing things, so too should you make sure that your uh, vile jungle down below can instead be a pleasurable Garden of Eden. Knowing that, I want you to picture this. <laughs> It's very important that Robin Hood and his merry men are well situated down in Sherwood Forest, much like an office desk, to desk toy um, would be structured and organized. People like order. P 
people enjoy structure. And if you don't organize and structure your pubic hair, you'll look like a mess. You'll look disorganized and irresponsible. So thank you for coming to my TED Talk on the subtle art of pubic hair and what it can do for you. Thank you. <laughs> Once you brought Let's the gnome in, I was convinced. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Well done, Rex. That's some good imagery there. <laughs> Don't forget the comment card. <clears throat> the other? Once you um, finish your comment, just hit enter, and then we're all uh, moving on. Who's next? Oh, it's Moodle, right. helped by me. Uh -oh. uh, oh, I have to click a thing. All right, uh, begin speech. Hello, my name is Mutal, and my talk is I never knew love until I found crack. <laughs> <laughs> Most people say crack is deadly, but you know, that's just a, it's just your opinion, and that's subjective because death is subjective, obviously. So, every story has a villain. In this tale, it's this. <laughs> chairs. Flying chairs. This. First time I took her, uh, I took Craig, flying chairs everywhere. I don't... It, it's like, uh, I'll make it a uh, note. Flying chairs. So everybody understands. Uh, or maybe even versatile verbs. Or whatever oh the God. word. I just said red verbs because it's I'm tired. <laughs> Uh, yeah, flying chairs, they're everywhere, they're trying to hit you, you're dodging left and right, uh, hitting your head on the door. Uh, but in an ideal world, we could have this. <laughs> a mask to disguise our addiction, because this is really... It's a, it's a, it's, it's a difficult topic. Uh, Craig is addicting, and all you want to do is hide. With your mask, your weird nose, and kind of <clears throat> Hitler mustache, but, you know... In the end, you're still addicted to crack. Thank you. <laughs> trying to get people Talk on crack now, really. <laughs> trying to crack, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> you can't believe this anti-crack paradigm, all right? <laughs> Come here, let's comment. Have you ever seen someone taking crack? It was sad. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> someone chat wrote, "Sitting down gives you hemorrhoids. Crack helps you always stand." <laughs> what would the chair stop flying though? I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. And our next performer to the Gary stage. assisted by metal. Oh boy. Okay. So, uh, all right, I'll just go. If I screw it up, I screw it up. Here we go. Hello, my name is Gary and my talk is, uh, Hey nerds. Here's how to survive a cyber rape attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> So when you're hanging out with your buddies uh, on Twitter, attacking SJWs, you are always in danger of getting your pooper uh, raped by uh, somebody on the internet. Uh, so what you need to do, do I need to type in this picture? You don't, or, have, you don't have to. Okay, sorry. So uh, what do you need to do? Uh, to, now here's an unpopular opinion on uh, how to protect your pooper. pooper. Uh, you, <laughs> you set a dumpster on fire. And while the dumpster's on fire, you put, um, uh, you decide, you put on your pants, by the way, that's the best way to protect your pooper. Uh, am I a better person now because my pooper has been protected? Uh, yes. Um, and uh, that, oh shit, I just went right by that. Uh, by the way, if you don't, uh, what you can also do is anybody who's trying to cyber rape you, you can just cut off their uh, wieners and roast them. There you go. There you go. You, you, you pulled it right out of the end. 
<laughs> I pulled it right Sorry. out of my ass. I, I love the idea that someone skipping through their own presentation just flashes up a bunch of hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh shit. Uh... <laughs> oh shit. Oh, I, my assistant was great. I fucked that up. <laughs> I want another shot. Damn it. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure who's who's not been an assistant. <gasps> yeah, I've been yeah. Um I think I'm the last one actually. Next in line. Drinker with rags as assistant. Ooh, oh boy. Alright. Wait for. I got a good feeling about this rags. <laughs> Cyber rape. Well that too. Hello, my name is Drinker, and my talk is... Seriously, let's all move to Titty Island. <laughs> we can all use a few more titties in our lives. And if you've got an entire island that's populated by them, well, what more can you ask for, really? The other thing that I'm really passionate about, and that I believe exists in large quantities on this island, is sushi. Because sushi is important. <laughs> When you're, t when you're partaking of the titty, you've got to balance it out with a good bit of protein intake. And what better way is there than sushi? Also, the next thing that blew my mind was a graph <laughs> depicting the shocking decline in global <laughs> banana numbers. <laughs> now, this is something that the island can also help out with, because not only is it heavily populated with titties, and that there's large quantities of sushi there, but there's hidden stores of the bananas in huge amounts, which I believe can redress the global imbalance of banana numbers and teddy numbers. So, what can be done about this? Well, when life gives you lemons, you tell life to fuck right off. And I think that's something we've learned, both from Teddy Island and from this presentation. I have been the drinker, and I thank you. Dude, I'm going to Titty Island. Very good. Yeah. I'm convinced. I'm moving there right. tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I, I, I tried to I tried to find the most suggestive picture of sushi <laughs> I possibly could. <laughs> <laughs> say what? Say what? Say what? You were an excellent assistant, Rex. I'm going to oh, give hooray. you good marks. <sighs> yeah, I really Ooh. think you've sold a lot of people oh, on Titty Island. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> turns, out there, turns out there's actually a lot of fruits on Titty Island. <laughs> Who knew? Lemon titties. Oh, four seconds to finish your comment. Oh. <coughs> Titty Island. One last bit Rags of is the winner. The oh my god, Ooh. I came last. I'm so sorry. Give the award you're going to give out a funny and unique name, or just name it after yourself. I don't care. Oh. Quotes and notes. Quotes. I, I was I was going for the idea that like the banana was like a phallus, and eventually over time the I amount of bananas on Titty Island would decrease. <laughs> <laughs> you had more time to think that through than I did, clearly. <laughs> yeah, <I did> <laughs> yeah, it's just, just displaying a catch up on our, on our chat, our talk. Pubic hair is important. Very potato. I love. I never knew love until I found crack in the image as a graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> it made me so glad to never go here. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, let's all move to Titty Island. <laughs> Oh, dude. 
coffee out of my <laughs> Give party. me bananas. <laughs> oh my god, it's the award ceremony! How oh, very exciting. You can all choose to give out your award. Oh, apparently I clicked by accident while I was looking at the stream. So someone is getting an award. <laughs> <laughs> Truly the fairest now, finally, way. The big, big awards. Holy shit, these games are amazing. Yeah. Which uh, which do you prefer out of the two? Uh, I, I like them both. Uh, yeah, I like them both. A little bit They're more. They're pretty good. They're um, pretty good. Surprising how, uh, <laughs> how much fun they are for how simple they are. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I think that's often the key. Yeah. I mean, it's no <laughs> Last of Us Part 2, but... No, of course. <laughs> no. Though no, I think we could agree the AI in the game is better than The Last of Us 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> game of the year. Drinker got the Funk Award. Funk award. Mm. Oh, I got an award. Someone here talked their way to the top. We <laughs> did it. Um... Uh, Drinker, you wanna you wanna hop out, right? <laughs> the banana oh, award and the things are uh, Yeah, um, I'm glad I got to go out um, on a high of experience in that, that <laughs> glorious game. Oh yeah, man. And uh, no. this is the thing: those two games, oh, yeah, we're probably yeah, yeah. gonna be checking them out on EFAB Gaming semi regularly. So we will totally invite you guys uh, <laughs> if you want. Oh, no. nice one. No, it'd be good to come in again for that. That was that was good. Uh, yeah. But no. um, before you go, if you wanna you wanna plug your channel, sir. Oh, go on then. So, I'm the critical drinker and I review movies and TV shows, and I usually get drunk and rant about stuff. But occasionally I try to be positive and fly off to Teddy Island. Mm. Yeah, boy. Never uh, sober. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Titties are more fun when you're drunk as well. As with mm -hmm. most things in life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that's what I do. And, uh, yeah, I guess um, we'll catch up next week um, if we're doing a stream. Yeah, for sure, man. We'll see you there. Talk about the Invisible Man <gasps> who hangs out in Rags's bathroom. <laughs> I'll get him one of these days. One That's of these days, fun. I'll make sure. It's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool guys. Well, I'm, I'm gonna drop right now. I start pissing. I just spin around in a circle. Bye. Bye. All right, later. All right. Anyone here want to leave? I mean, what's 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 next? Well, I mean, I, I mean, we could do one more of that game before I go to super chats out of the fact that we're gonna run out of time eventually. Otherwise, <laughs> but I don't know. Is, is ever would everyone be interested? In maybe do another round of that, or we could if you'd like. Play. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my god! All right. Well, I'm not gonna be a party pooper. I'm gonna just try to. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We already started a round, I know. I no, I'll try. Let's get things going. Yeah, all right, chat. This is the last round, okay? On your device, Can't just play games all day. Gosh. You've been given. All right, write, write your things. Still in this round. Uh... Oh, did he not exit? Uh oh. Oh no. Uh, I don't know if it's don't worth restarting. We might title. do. It depends on what it does. I mean, he has to do <laughs> a presentation at some point. True. We probably will just re re remake it once Rags is back. Actually, so save your ideas, folks. We're gonna have to remake it. Yeah, I got, I got some juice. Yeah. I am so sorry. But yeah. It's okay. Um, we we play a, a different Jackbox game every once in a while, and when this one came out, we were just like, please have at least one good game in it. And then we were like, oh my god, several of them are good. All right. Oh, I got... It says disconnected. Yeah, we... Uh, I thought Drinker would sort of cross off the browser and leave, but um, I guess he's, it, it was keeping him in, so... Uh, oh, no. Gonna have to remake the lobby. No. There's your ring code, lads. Don't worry, chat. We'll get you la lads in as well. 
Well, I want to be <laughs> the very best. I'm gonna be that sucker. Wombol man. Wombology. All right, it is five minutes. Uh, everybody's ready. <clears throat> All righty. Welcome to Talking Point. Now you can join chat. So you can get your votes in. Go to jackbox.tv and then use the room started. code on screen. First, you're going to craft some memes you time, for each time to craft your funny <laughs> memes, guys. Go on. On your devices, finish the three speech titles you've been given. Fill in the blanks with something interesting. The weirder, the better. Seconds more to write your funnies. I already oh. did it. Wow, look at you, overachiever. stuff, and I. You're so very rude. Whatever. And yes, the room code is WXJP. Wonderful. Get in, cast your vote. Now, pick one of the titles that has been sent to your device. This yeah, the, the, the games I'm having the most fun with at the moment are the simplistic ones, like <laughs> Fall Guys and uh, Among Us and these two tonight. They've been these are the most fun I've had in years with video games. It's, it's, it's like the the fun comes from the players rather than the game almost. Yes. The game is a simple. Ooh, three, three seconds. Say, two, one. Hurry. Okay. Good. Boom. Oh. Rags speaker. is up. Wait, you who's your assistant? Be their assistant. Oh, Gary I don't know. Is. I might. Right. What oh, okay. I guess one of us might have to double up. Get ready. All righty. Fucking do this. Let's do this. Fuck Hello. God. My name is Rags, and my talk is a healthy relationship gives you the secret ability to cheat. <gasps> That's right. So. Navigating a relationship is like playing chess, where obviously you might think that the king is the most important piece, but really we all know it's the queen. And once you lose the queen, things can go to shit really quickly. But how was I supposed to know this whole time I was falling in love with? <laughs> a lot of the times relationships are not quite as cut and dry as signage that you might find wandering around with very clear rules and clear boundaries that are established. Please keep off the grass seems simple enough, but a relationship isn't like that. Sometimes you know that you're being prodded to do uh, some unorthodox things, like maybe see some of those other queens. Everybody must do their part. So here's something you can do. <laughs> Buns. <laughs> Fun <laughs> everywhere. Some of them are presented to you like a gift. And sometimes she doesn't need to know that. After all, what your queen doesn't know won't hurt your queen. But there's a lot of other queens out, uh, out there with their buns, and they need some tending to. Don't deny your natural urges. Thank you. Wasn't that just a loaf of bread? How is that buns? You know what? That's not really important. It's more metaphorical. <laughs> <laughs> It's shaped like a bun. Okay, so half you know of your what? score comes You're from right. engagements. You know, it's bread like. Times people hit yeah. And the other half. Bread just like be a big bun. I was, I was, I was lost for a second when that fucking like bread came up. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Those were tough ones to to, to, to yeah. integrate into the story. 
It's time to fill out the comic. Yeah, that was great. Though. I like that. That was nifty. Yeah, that was good. That was very what good. Is something you remember from I the liked, speech? Uh, I like some of these pictures. Said, <laughs> just having to go with it. Said, or just a general impression. Let's do it again. Metal Ooh, is speaking with Az as assistant. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, okay. Here we go. Hello, my name is Mutal, and my talk is how to find love while you. <laughs> Forgot I choose this. How to find love while up to your neck in Movie Bob. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're trying to find love, but uh, you're up to your neck with Movie Bob. He's like right next to you. He's just yelling into your ears, like, get some fucking McDonald's! I need a regular sized meal, for fuck's sake. That's so much better with that accent. <laughs> <laughs> but the following is a commonly believed myth. He actually doesn't like ice. Uh, that's why he puts snowmen out there in the sun to die. Because he's a horrible person. Oh, Bad. <laughs> you see he's shriveling up. It's like, it's like, oh, stupid ice. I want McDonald's. <laughs> But finally, here's the thing that connects it all together. <laughs> he desperately wants someone with a monkey mask and monkey paws. Weird. But I mean, to each his own. Uh, if you want McDonald's and have a monkey mask on, be my guest. I'm just trying to find love. <laughs> Aww. It was a love I story. Think I, I think I, 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 I see myself laughing. Fucking <laughs> monkey face. Like, <laughs> 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 uh. Oh god, no! Jot down Can your four comments. Oh man! Oh boy! <laughs> oh. I think you deserve a fucking medal after that. <laughs> it was a tough one. That's absolutely fucking tough. Now it's your turn. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna turn with... to a game of sabotage at this point. <laughs> I'm speaking. That's that's honestly what it is. I'm speaking with Rags' assistant. <laughs> good luck, Rags. <laughs> Hello. Good luck to me. Well, I mean, you got to provide me the right slides, you know. Hello, my name is Mutually, and my talk is. Where have all the testicles gone? The answer may surprise you. You see, there's a simple answer to this question. You've all been thinking it. What takes out a testicle faster than any device made by humanity? And the answer is the scissors. One snip, both balls flopping right off. But really, I would say the bigger question is why is this happening? Who is behind the scissors? Look, here's something you probably haven't thought of. Animals, right? Not humans. Animals. They're the ones who are really influencing the world. Have you seen The Happening? I know you have. It's a film that presents the idea that nature is fighting back. And what's the best way to kill humans? Cut off those balls. Right off. They're all gone. Down the shredder. And as you can see, this carefully selected photo, this animal is enjoying the concept. Once we're gone, guess who prospers? What the data is telling us is obvious. <laughs> Animals cannot be trusted. However, they will trick you. Look at their cute little eyes. Oh, I'm so defenseless. Put me in a sack. Don't believe their lies. The more you cuddle up to these disgusting creatures, the more balls we lose, the more snips take place. This is just a warning. Think about it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, fucking cow! Fucking cow, dude. <laughs> You're right. I, spayed and neutered today. What? When, I, when I saw the image, I was like, yeah, I guess without balls, it'll be hard to get pussy in the sack. But yeah, I guess that worked. I guess that worked too. Uh, oh, shit. I'm scared. Comment like you mean it. I figured that first one. I, I wanted the first image to set the tone for the rest of this <laughs> talk. I mean, you made it easy for me, Rex. You just lied me right up. 
Yep, line that, right that up. one fits the story. <laughs> you are next. Oh, boy. My blood is oh. ready to go. Just, the next time. Gonna Sometimes go. you just can't get the cat out of the bag. <laughs> right. <laughs> Gary is speaking with metal assisting. All right. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Gary, and my talk is better than him. Albert Einstein was smart, but I'm a better fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so don't tell anybody. Uh, you know, like, like I said, I'm a big prankster. I like to put little kick me signs behind everybody, but deep down inside, I am an amazing fuck. Now, I might be dumb as a bag of hammers, but, uh, you know, uh, when I when I get down to business, like, I am so amazing, I have made love to two women in the last 30 years. <laughs> so, you know, like, I've really narrowed it down. Um, but, you know, sometimes that woman could be wearing a mask, and you don't know who she is underneath, and that's why you call her a first wife. So then you get another wife, uh, and there is only one thing we can do to perceive our future, and that is. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell I'm looking at. Have what is that a badger? What the hell is it? Um, make sweet love like an animal on the prairie, vigorously, vigorously having sex over and over again, never having a conversation, uh, so she doesn't realize how stupid I am. Thank you. Um. <laughs> like you said, there's only one way we can perceive it. <laughs> it's two animals. What? Here's the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I have no regrets. Oh. I am so far behind. I'm getting these way late. Yeah. Um, yeah. I am. Witty comments uh, yeah. time. He just makes it even funny when he eventually see the picture that the time. Uh yeah. Good job. Nothing wrong with a pair of queer cats. <laughs> nope. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know the whole notes and quotes thing, we just skip it. Like it, it the game part is way better than the weird awards part. I don't, I don't know why they spent so long on it. I don't know why there's not two rounds for this. You think there would be? I don't know. I feel like given I feel like given Brie Larson the Dusty yeah. Ovary Award is worth it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as a speaker, and I will be assisting. Oh, oh no! Fuck. Here we go. Hello, my name is Az, and my talk is Frank is trying to kill you. Oh no! I would like to err on the side of caution. Recently, of course, with the coof hitting the world, it's been a pretty bleak place and no more bleak than in your local nursing home where we lock them up to die. However, there is one person in there that constantly is alive and that is Frank. But I was unprepared for this shocking twist. You see, Frank liked to dress up as Little Red Riding Hood. And he would go out of a night and skip down the street, hoping some wolf would come along and prey on him. Alas, it was the other way around as this little red riding hood in wolf's clothing was preying on the sheep. And who can you call to fix this issue? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's anyone that we can call apart from your local veterinarian because that person can sniff an ass a mile away <laughs> has had so much cock in his rectum right now the local sniffer dogs are on the case to try and bring this person to justice. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Jack Fox put this on? Jesus. They did? Wow. I mean, I've been there, but geez. <laughs> I'm not sure who you are. What's your name again? Wow. They, that's, oh, but don't say the N-word. Come in. Hold on. <laughs> 
Oh my god. That picture was the least helpful picture <laughs> you could possibly have. <sighs> One last bit of prep before the award ceremony. It's the mediocre. It's time to come up with a name for that big award you're going um, to give out. But yeah, they're gonna do the awards thing now. Uh, how do you guys feel? Do you wanna <laughs> do you wanna end it there or? I'm tired. Like, I, I have to give someone the Pooch Cooch Award. <laughs> yeah, I wanna <laughs> see who gets the awards. Yeah, who gets the awards? It's gonna take 20 minutes until I find out. But... <laughs> <laughs> wow! Remember uh, these incredible. <laughs> rock bottom with my Frank. <laughs> I feel like my diabetes story did not get enough love. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Maybe if I were coming out with the post too, I'd have scored a little higher. You know, it could be it can be a tough game. I think it's eight players max, so uh, if we ever get that many, it could be interesting. Mm -hmm. Competing that many stories. Ah, these stories. Pet relationship gives you the secret ability to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> Frank is trying to kill you, and the picture is the dollars. <laughs> and now, the moment of truth. <laughs> I have all the testicles. Each of you has one last I know award love cows. to give out. And that includes the audience. Better than him. <laughs> Better fuck. <laughs> Choose your your awards. It's a big decision, I guess. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> uh, Where have all the testicles gone? <laughs> and now, at last, the very serious. One of these days, we'll have a nice, clean cost. game, but that day is not today. <laughs> Diabeto Award. That goes to to Frank is trying to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! The Anal Award. That's got to go to Az, right? Oh, that went to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's an Anal Award and an Anus Award. Wow. These are importantly separate. And Gary got the the I Chat Award, the I think. Especially the winner. As you are the winner. Cheer. What? No. It, um, the the trophies give you like a certain amount of points. I think seventy five thousand points. Oh yeah. wow! Oh my god! I mean, mate, you got you got the anus award. I think so. You know, that's just top tier. Oh my god! <laughs> I am no Gary got the anus award. Oh, anal maybe? Anus I don't know. So there was two. Okay, it's hard to keep track. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I. Uh, I'm assuming if Metal wants wow. to drop out, then uh, we'll probably stop there, because I don't know how well these games work with full players. But fun as hell, you know? Yeah, really good. Yes. That was was very funny. Um, I'm really glad they made it. It's good shit. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a good one. And I think that, you know, from now on, they probably they used to make games that only worked when you were uh, locally together sometimes, and then one of the ones that would like work online. But nowadays, I think all of them have to be ones that can work online. It makes more sense, right? And so, uh, yeah. I'm glad they're doing that. Bring on Party Pack 8. Make more good shit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if any... Well, Metal, do you want to drop out? Uh, like in a couple of minutes. I'll just uh, chill out for a couple of minutes, I guess. All right, then. Well, I'm going to start reading the old Super Chats. Um, obviously, yeah. this is a, a natural break. If anybody would like to jump out, is uh, your prerogative, of course. I'll I'll stick around for a while. Um, I'll just go for a quick wee though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna hold on I'll to be... my wee wee as long as I can. I mean, <laughs> ERB. I've had some of those days, man. Well, that's a if they're coming for the testicles, it's probably a good good shout to just hold on to all of it. You know, make sure no one's coming after it. Especially if you own an animal. Who knows? Oh no. Yeah. Um. I think if ever we. You know, close out an EFAP 
in terms of like the video we're covering. If we've got enough people, I feel like we should just jump into those games. They're so good. And it would be interesting to play it with uh, different people. And they don't have to have the game, you know? It just ticks all the boxes. I'm going to assume the silence is approval. I was just getting some water. I approve. <laughs> I, I was just about to take off to go uh, leave a deposit. Uh, do, do, do. Just loading them up. Of course, chat, uh, we've got EFAPs 105 and 103 to catch up with. Rags and I were going to stream uh, Resident Evil 5 yesterday to try and catch up on them, but we're thinking maybe to do that tomorrow. Uh... It would provide it with free, but what we'll do is obviously play the game and then try and run through them, and I'll um, I'll oh, pop shit. it in the title to make sure we get them done. But I'm today, a, I'm free as far as I know. I've been, we, I've... we had a lightning fast drawing of a, of oh, a champion my here. God. oh my goodness! God's mistake. Let's let's get this on screen. Oh my goodness! Oh wait! Oh right! Uh, screen, where are you? Also, I have this one been sent right after I joined as well. God's mistake. I like these wearing socks, though. Yeah. It's cursed. I love it. When some German uses a mouse to draw flissoms. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Good stuff. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. Like I said, w w the next thing he was going to be playing a spooky game on GameCube, which is obviously Luigi's Mansion. Luke is While I catch what's up on really it. spooky is the property taxes. Oh, oh my oh. god. <laughs> One of one of my suggested talks was like talk about the the oil industry crisis in Czechoslovakistan or something, and nobody chose it. <laughs> Czechoslovakistan. <laughs> I was did hoping somebody, someone would. Sorry, to, sorry to, uh, like, did somebody make that God's mistake walk? Well, holy shit, that is yeah. so good. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that is... Who uh, who drew God's mistake? Who was that? I did. Oh, beautiful, <laughs> dude. Beautiful. <laughs> that is brilliant. <laughs> Oh, I'm putting Yeah, we have, to, we have some uh, very talented, lightning fast people in the crowd here. It's uh, kind of insane. I'm, I'll never be not amazed by this. Yep. I'm back, by the way. Just in case. Oh, hey. Hello there. Do we know who made that? Is uh, <laughs> is it up there on the top there? Um, oh, I said, uh, yeah, you should be able to find the account name. Oh, wait, that's a weird account. Oh, my name. God. Who drew God's mistake? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> fucking amazing. I want to give uh, them credit for it. Fuck! <laughs> oh, Mel, can you find nightmare. um? Can you find Son of Peen? So, oh, let him, let him uh, see probably, Son of Peen. Uh, that that shit on. was legendary. I'll, I'll find it. Oh, did I save it onto my hard drive? I'm not sure. I'll find it on there, Twitter. I got. I found. That is so fucking good. Oh yeah, and I saw someone mentioning it. So, Amnesia Rebirth, uh, Metal, Rags, and I have all completed it. We're going to be recording yeah. uh, Meme Fab on Monday, and at the beginning, probably hour of it, we're going to we're going to talk about it extensively about mm -hmm. what we loved about it, and then the longer portion. <laughs> yeah, what we loved about it, and uh, after a few minutes, we'll go into the real <laughs> issue. Whoops! I do like that it ended. Yeah, oh, the yeah, ending was there, a yeah. real, real, real big relief. Oh, I think that's what I said was my favorite part about The Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, when it... yeah uh, Son of Penis uh, by the same person as well. Mm -hmm. I've never been so happy to skip credits. There you go. Oh yeah, let's. God, I'll, oh my god. Wow. <laughs> let's get this Son of Peen on the screen, shall we? Son of Peen. <laughs> <laughs> son of Peen, right there. <laughs> This is uh, legendary, <laughs> legendary stuff. It's so yeah, it's nightmarish. Good. I love it. It really is terrifying. <gasps> but in a good way. Yeah. Really. Um. Oh, yeah. So someone I actually I'm going to mention here and I'm going to mention on Monday as well because we'll have to talk about it. But I just find it amazing. So um, I'll explain the mechanic first just so that uh, As and, and Nidrotic understand what it is. The, as you play, you, you, you guys know about Amnesia the Dark Descent to some degree, do you? 
Uh, I know of the game. So it's a 2010 horror game, first person. Yeah. Um, and the idea is you have no way to defend yourself against the monsters. You have to avoid them and stay in secret from them and stuff like that. Mm. Um, Amnesia was lauded as like one of the best horror games ever and reinventing the genre. And frictional games were celebrated for not doing the thing with horror games, which is to um, essentially have jump scares a lot. Um, I don't yeah. know if you've played Outlast, but it's like it grabs you a lot, has things screaming at you a lot suddenly. And it's, you know, it can be a very scary experience, but at the same time, as a, as a critical reviewer, you might be like, well, you didn't try very hard to get the scares. While Amnesia, The Dark Descent, was uh, working its ass off to get you in a position where mm. you're just like, oh, Jesus Christ, it's so terrifying. And so, uh, to the horror, Yes, the horror of Rags, myself, and, and, and Metal. When you play the new one, um, you have, let's call it a sanity meter, and if it drops below about 50%, you start getting random flashing images of monsters and a scream sound, and it happens once per about <laughs> three or four seconds. So, fr Frictional called these things, they're not jump scares, they're fear flashes. <sighs> Fuck off. So, Definitely very, very different than a jump scare, these fear flashes. I was see. already the upset that they had made them. When I heard that they had said that about them, I'm, oh my god, my respect is plummeting. Like, the idea <laughs> that you could try and argue those things aren't jump scares. Are you kidding me? I also they I have been told that they apparently um, lowered the frequency of the scares happening. Which oh, good for matter. them. Good for them. Still, still there, just Which is the there. kind of thing you notice in testing when you're like, oh, <sighs> this is extreme. This is scary the first couple times, and then it's extremely annoying. Well, so annoying. The funny part is, like, we have so many more complaints, but that one being present throughout the 12 hour experience, however long it actually takes uh, on average, I don't mm -hmm. know, is uh, absurd and disappointing. Um, not cool, frictional. Not cool that you put that in there, and the fact that you would actually argue it's not a jump. Like for reference, uh, Gary, as it literally goes, that, yeah. that, that, that's the experience of it. And so when you're yeah. walking around and you have that in your head, you're like, Dip. and you know when maybe the first few times it was scary, but when it keeps happening, guess what the emotion yeah. becomes? Apathy. It's so yeah. Oh, I wish it was apathy. It's fucking anger. You're like, stop yeah. doing yeah. that. It's fucking annoying. <laughs> You, you um, run through like a section of the game and you're like, oh, I don't really want to match here, or need to match here, and I know where I need to go, I've been here before. But I've used one anyways because I can't be fucked with the stupid scare. All the yeah, time. in the last half of the game, because you, we you know we're talking about it a bunch, but I was just like lighting shit wherever I went, not because I needed the light or because I was spookied, but because I just didn't want these annoying flashes to pop up on my screen all the time. And while we're while we're discussing annoying flash, <laughs> are are we gonna get? Are, are we? Is this what we're doing now? We're talking about amnesia. Listen, is whatever this... you say, as long as you're willing to repeat it on Monday, you're good. I'll gladly repeat it because fuck <laughs> this game. So, um, in fact, do you have those images of the um? Y you showed them before. Let let me go ahead and fetch those if I can. Oh, are you talking about the the spook comparison? Uh, the oh here we go excellent I've got them both on screen oh. right now so this was the inventory screen oh, in a God, game yeah. that they made before Penumbra I believe it's called yep this is Penumbra's inventory screen yeah. I'll I'll get never that never played uh, Penumbra myself but I hear it's spookytisms <clears throat> mm -hmm. and this is the inventory screen of Amnesia: The Dark Descent. Hey, Rags, lead them into it. Can you get, can you spot anything good about these right now? Yeah, what 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 can you notice between these two inventory screens, right? Don't worry if you don't answer it correctly. I'm just curious if you yeah, because it the might thing. be. Well, one it might two, be... three coordinated to uh, maybe your you know your key buttons, your mouse buttons. One two three four five six seven eight nine. Well, I but mean, like aesthetically, key, you can hock. Oh, um. When it comes well, to just appearance and design aesthetically, and these what, what using you imagery more. What, um, this might be one of those things where. Well, it's you, obvious, you've... so obvious you might not even think about yeah, yeah. mentioning it. But just show them the I'm third going one. For the idea that, <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to show you the third one. This is the Amnesia Rebirth um, inventory screen. So, can you notice the big difference between aesthetically between the first two and this one? Yes. Okay. Get, so get, the get. first two, as you guys can tell, very obviously are very dark, yes. right? These these inventory screens are very 
easy on the eyes. They're they're very very they're they're dark. You're yeah. playing a game where you're walking around in the dark for most of the game. Not a lot of bright segments at all in the in any of these games. You're going to be spending most of your time staring at a mostly dark if not black screen. And when you open your inventory, the inventory is very dark as well and your eyes like that. Now let's go to Amnesia <laughs> yes. Rebirth. A game where for the most part you're crawling around in very dark areas it's so dark very... i got complaints on my stream that like i wasn't uploading at a good enough bit rate when it's like no when you're in complete darkness it's hard for streams to actually like separate the darkness from itself so it just comes across as blotchy very dark yes. game very dark the game is very very dark lots of darkness in this game and the inventory is basically white <laughs> right so whenever you press tab to check your inventory what you get is a sudden blinding white screen in your eyes after you've been you you've adjusted your eyes to the darkness because the game is quite dark with to the point where you like I was squinting closing my eyes having them be open just a little sliver so that I knew I, when I pressed tab my inventory would blind me with this bright light what a what a well. shockingly Stupid decision to make as a game developer. As someone's pointed out, Penumbra's got battery power and health. Uh, Amnesia's got health and sanity. This game's got mm. neither of those, and both of those played a part in the game. Hmm. I don't understand what happened. I really don't get it. Oh, Mahler, did you ever use your laudanum in the game? No. <laughs> I didn't either. I didn't know what it was for. Well, they told you at one point that people who are pregnant shouldn't use laudanum. And I was like, okay, I guess yeah. I won't. Because yeah. I'm pregnant. And I, I also, I, I, like, mechanically, I don't know what it's for. Also, I'm, I I held out, but I realize now that it was a pointless endeavor. I need to go pee. <laughs> I'll be right okay. back. <laughs> so you need to talk about that. Um, but this, when you're making a game, I've never made a game, so, you know, apply salt where necessary. Never made a game, but I've played one or two in my time. Um... This is something that I see every once in a while in video games, and it's a huge... It, it, it's when an inventory or a menu system is really, really, really bright compared <laughs> to the rest of the game. Mm. Um, to a degree, Minecraft has this issue. Uh, some other games do as well, but I've never seen it this bad, where it is physically uncomfortable on your eyes to open up your inventory because the inventory is white. I get that they want to make it look like a notebook. I get it. That's fucking dumb. But I get it. It's just one of those things that you don't do if you're making games. It, it's just... I don't see how when they were playtesting it, they didn't realize that every time they opened up their inventory, they'd blind themselves to how bright it was compared to the darkness that you're constantly playing in. Really weird. It takes it out of the game, probably. It does. So. Because, like I was saying, when I, before I opened the screen, like I would close my eyes and barely open one of them up so I wouldn't blind myself baffling decision mm. um the game <clears throat> is <throat> the game is mechanically and narratively a big step down from the last two games um graphically it doesn't look very impressive it's fine it looks fine in terms of graphics stuffs um they give you way too many resources to the point where you're just like tripping over them you're constantly finding them and you can't use them so they limit you the, the the lighting mechanic in this is that you can carry matches and you light a match and then you could light, you know, lamps and things around you until the match runs out, uh, which is kind of nifty. The, the, so the match burns for like eight seconds and you can't sprint with it or it goes out. Mm. But the issue is that for no reason, they say that you could only carry 10 matches in your inventory. And this is done. Or the obvious reason is they want to create artificial scarcity of these items that you can carry with you so that you feel as if, oh, I've only got 10 matches, even though you're constantly finding them all around. Yeah, but they, you can't they... with them because you can only take 10. So you're just, oh, I just go a little further and use a couple of matches and get the other ones. But then you get dropped in a new area and you can't go back. So it doesn't even matter. Yeah, I was, so I was using matches because, one, I didn't want the, the fear flashes of being in the darkness. Mm -hmm. And two, because I, there's so many matches, I guess I'll just use them. Um, but if you're gonna, if you're making a game and you want to limit someone to carrying only 10 matches, then have them be the only 10 matches they happen to have at the time, or 
something because matches are very tiny and you could carry a whole lot of them and you know that it's extremely important uh at the beginning of the game they were doing some spoilers by the way um at the beginning of the game you will be spending a lot of time tediously walking through caves and narrow hallways and stuff in caves and you come across very early in the game a a torch that is lit and is constantly giving off light and so like an obvious person you want to take the torch with you i think, the I, torch actually, that, I, think I actually said that uh, during my stream it's like oh I man assume we all did we... yeah i said it out loud to myself i was like why yeah. can't i take this torch it's obviously nice i want to take this with me it's right here in this rock i could clearly just lift it up and take it with me and i know i'm heading into the darkness both in game and out of game i want to take this torch with me and the game's like nope you just you just can't you just can't because it's like you can only carry 10 matches we just want you to be in darkness which means we've provided you with this torch right here but you just can't take it with right. you you know what problem mechanics right a lot of what i've found on the discord from discussing this with people is every time you spot something you don't like about amnesia rebirth it was done better in amnesia or soma and it was almost identical to how it was done in outlast in outlast you have batteries Mm -hmm. Of course, batteries are quite small, if you guys didn't know. You can actually pack a shit ton of batteries for a video camera into your pocket. However, in the game, they're like, no, you can carry a max of, like, ten. And you're like, okay, that's weird. On the hardest difficulty, you can only carry, I think, three. It's one Does of that those sound artificial... familiar to you? As if In a survival game like this where you know you're going to be going through dark places where you know you need to keep your sanity up and the game provides you with things that inexplicably you can't carry with you it's just it's baffling um in uh in da, 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 uh amnesia the dark descent they would be like wall mounted torches that you can't take off the wall they're bolted to the wall and things like that um in, in, oh. in a mirror here to Amnesia, the Dark Descent, is that in this game you have a lantern that uses oil. But the lantern oil, it can it, it's in segments of 10. Um, so it's either like 100%, 90%, 80%, etc. full. And you get three different sizes of oil cans that you can keep with you that will restore the oil in the lamp, either like two units, three units, or four units, something like that. And... I was, I was basically full. I had a full lantern and full of all the sizes of refills that I could get because it limits you to like having did, two, having three, and having two. And did you like find that. a large oil canister after you'd lost the lantern? Because I did. Yes. Yeah, okay. I did. Why? I find, Why can you two. find something you can't use? Why? Oh, I, don't I didn't know. even know I lost the lantern until I tried to use it and it was gone. <laughs> um, do you know I, cringe, where did though? you lose? I couldn't pick up the large one because I had two already. <laughs> oh yeah, most oh, well. of yeah, I, I was most of the large oil refills you won't pick up because you already have the two it lets you carry, mm. and your lantern's full because you don't have to use it that much and it gives you so much oil. Um, this game very <clears throat> clearly and very quickly comes across as a anybody can beat it game. Yeah, there there is basically no fail state. Um, the the game is extremely liberal with its dispensation of materials uh, for illumination um matches everywhere even where it doesn't make sense like you go into the um the the alternate Aww. world the alien world and there are matches lying around dude they have torches to light in the alien world with technology that is so far beyond ours they have literal torches on the walls to light what in the fucking world? It's very unusual. Um, maybe it's you an aesthetic find, thing. You can open up these alien pots and you find matches in them. Like, match why are there boxes. matches? Like <laughs> human matchboxes that, that look identical to the ones in the human world. Just matches. They're like, oh, like, it's a good thing that these aliens had them on their alien planet. I have so much faith in them as a development team, but how can you possibly, like, argue that that's anything but laziness? I don't understand. They didn't even retexture them. Like no. these are alien matches, and they just look like what an alien match would look like. At least you'd be like, okay, it's not like you know, you know, Bobby and Sons Match Company, and it, it they couldn't be fucked to make a second texture for the matches. It's beyond or, or the lamp oil. By the way, the breaking. lamp oil texture is the same for both. Why are the oil canisters in the alien world? Why? <laughs> Why would they be there? What? 
Oh, and the idea that it's like, well, you see, the aliens are using oil canisters. You're like, what? <laughs> Mm. Which is weird. The you'd think that alien. you'd think that all of their power situ how their all their power requirements would be taken care of by the Vitae, but I guess except for matches. Oh, it's so frustrating. Um, also, I just want to read this out because it it hurts my feelings. Frictional Games um, put out a tweet saying, "Please do check out the linked blog post. They were never intended as scares in the first place. Not even jump scares. He's saying it's not scares at all." A flashing screen of a monster face and a loud yell. That's not a scare. <laughs> They're supposed to signal to the player that they are reaching critical fear level. Fuck you. Honestly. Yeah, well, that's fucking stupid, and anyone who agrees with them is a retard. That's... Right? So, in, in Amnesia the Dark Descent, uh, as your fear would increase, as your sanity would decrease, essentially, as you became more and more insane, as your fear went up, essentially, mm -hmm. your, you would get visual distortions, you'd hallucinate, uh, your screen would kind of blurry a little bit, and you'd start to shake a little bit, and you knew what the consequences were of you your it, sanity yeah. meter going to zero. You fall there over. There were consequences, yeah. And when you um, fall over, if there's a monster nearby, you're done. That's it. You need to take care of it. It was, this is the problem, I, th I think we talked about this in a private call before, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They've made a sequel, they have to fix it. It's like, you don't, this isn't, there's no fixing needed for the sanity meter. You've, you've nailed it. The first one's nailed. You just keep it the same. And they're like, nope, we're going to add a jump scare every three seconds. You're like, thanks. Yeah, and they have their own visual distortions where little black, uh, I don't know, tendrily things come in from the sides of the screen and encroach on your vision, like, okay. Yeah. And you get this weird, this, this scuttling sort of noise in the back, and like, okay, we get that. And it gets more difficult to see. Like, well, all right, it was you know, you, all this visual stuff that you got before. Like, as Gary, what do you think sounds better? That, that stuff I was describing that flashes on your screen with loud noises, or the world around you, there starts to be loads of cockroaches that are on the floor, bugs flying around you, lots of noises like creaking and crumbling and stuff in your ear, and uh, general blurriness as a sign that things are getting worse and you're going insane. Which of those two sounds better? I'd say the more, the more subtle, the more ones kind of silent, silent here. It's like Silent Hill, yeah, Silent, silent Hill, Hill yep. cares, but it's very psychological. Yep. Silent Hill as well, and, and it plays on that psychology, and it's always that, which is uh, the more fearful one because you create your own demons essentially then um so yeah you, you knew in silent hill when the walls started bleeding and the siren went off you were just like oh shit, you know yep and there'd be noises and and cranking and well, gonna enough, be they talk about how they were inspired by silent hill when they made amnesia the dark descent um oh, oh, i don't know what they were inspired by when they made yeah. rebirth crap outlast I <laughs> I think that it, it's it's doubly disappointing when their last game was Soma, which yep. was such a masterpiece of a game, yeah, like awesome. magnum opus level stuff here. Rags and, and I, one of our favorite. I think all three of Metal Rags and I's favorite games, like one of one of the favorite games of all time. Oh yeah, yeah. Soma is yeah. always going to be, yeah. if not the top. Um, this is a downgrade in every potential regard. I think maybe only graphically, but it's such a tiny thing that it doesn't even matter. Um, the story is. Pretty shit, actually. Um, I don't think it's good. I think there's. We'll I think talk all about of the stuff that. But like, huh? we'll, we'll we'll talk about all of it when we do the recording and stuff. But like, I don't. I've seen people who are very invested in it, and they can't answer very obvious questions, such as how did you end up in the airplane? People don't have any answers to that question. Yeah. I don't even know. No, I don't either. We we, we, <laughs> we tried to figure it out. How do you yeah, not like, answer I, that question? That's it, literally the main question. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea how a lot of basic stuff happens in this plot. There are no explanations for some other things. Um, the stuff that's interesting in this game is basically all related to what happened on this alien world. Mm -hmm. And pretty much none of it really gets answered or explained in any interesting way. Um, they spent so much time with this worthless, waste of a time love story plot that just doesn't do anything to hit me and it seems so forced and it's just one of those it, if you don't if you aren't totally buying into the love story aspect of this game the plot is going to be totally flat because so much revolves around it mm -hmm. um with what they do with characters with what they try to get you to do 
in terms of you know you being pregnant as a character and with it's it's so it, it's just such a miss um all the answers that i wanted i didn't get yep. there, the, the high point of my game was probably when i went to this alien world and i started getting little bits and pieces of their culture and what happened here and what they're you know what they did with the vitae and all this stuff like that 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 was kind of like the high point i was like oh this is so interesting it looks cool it, it's it's an alien world it's linked to ours with these gates it's like how are they gonna you know how, how are they gonna mention that you know what what the shadow has to do with this and the red flesh and you know what's going on here but they you don't really get any of that it's never really explained at all well um you can say that you do and it's really disappointing Sort of. A lot of it like, is. We know uh, how the red flash was made. It's only made everything confusing now. I want to talk about that, but this is probably not the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, yeah, like I said, we'll do more of it, but as you can tell, we're not very happy. Yeah, no. I, I would not recommend anybody <laughs> play this no. game. I would recommend that you play Amnesia, The Dark Descent, and Soma. Dark Descent's Both way of those better are fantastic. Than this game, yeah. yes, this game is I a waste of your time. I want to play Amnesia, Dark Descent because I never played it. <laughs> Uh, properly before. I don't like the mechanics of this game. I don't like the narrative. I don't like the story. I don't like Tazzy's fucking mouth going on off all the time. <laughs> There's so much in this game that I do not like, hey, um, and it's such a downgrade. As Gary, do you love it in games when you pick up a key to a door, and then your character says, maybe this key fits that door? <laughs> you just get depressed. You're like, thanks. I'm really stupid, yeah. I guess. The spooky thing I'm looking at I is like watching really that video. Yeah. But what if you're Jill, the master of luck? <laughs> well, that's the thing. This wouldn't matter as much if not for Frictional's reputation. They've they've got a loyal fucking fan base, and I honestly, yeah. I don't want to be too hyperbolic here, but they kind of slapped him in the face a little bit with this game. This this game comes across as a a a good first attempt at what like a new studio might put out because they don't know how to make horror games so they just slap stuff together and like oh these this is what's in a spooky game so we're gonna put this in our spooky game honestly the crazy thing is that if dr scent released a year later after this in 2021 i'd be like wow they've really improved despite the fact that dr scent is 10 years older than it right now yeah i think man there's a reason why that game will be remembered forever as changing like video game horror and loads of copycats came out and the fact, part of why I'm annoyed is they just, they said like, you know, we learned a lot with Dark Descent and Soma, Rebirth is going to be another attempt at sort of like changing how we all view what, what horror and video games can do, which really excites me. And then they do all of what they've done before, but worse. It's like, okay, good job, I guess. I'm not happy I'm not... about it. <laughs> no, what, what, did, what did they do? Get, get rid of, I mean... I don't know. All the original I, creators I or something, or they it, just didn't it give a shit. It honestly seems that way. Like yeah. if you told me, oh yeah, frictional, they fired their staff and brought in some new people who don't know anything about stuff. I'd be like, oh yeah, that explains that. <laughs> this game is entertainment then. Yeah. You sack your staff, hire for the same roles a couple of months later for people who are underqualified, but you can pay them less. Well, the, the just funny part was across as a game that was made by people who just want to go through the motions of a horror game. There's <laughs> nothing really memorable at all about this game. There's nothing that really it, it doesn't improve on previous games in any meaningful way. A definite downgrade, total regression for Frictional. And I think it was because a lot of people didn't get Soma. Yeah. So they tried to make a more traditional horror game with with the, with all the, the run of the mill scares. jump scares and crap and so it it just ruined this whole whole experience kind of it's a dull trudge through you an know, uninteresting you, world with uninteresting people in it you know something really sad is when i made the amnesia soma series on my channel i was kind of like in the back of my head like it'd be really cool one day if i was ever able to talk to any of the developers and just gush about how well i think they did everything at this point i'd be like it's probably best they don't know i exist cuz i have so many harsh things to say about their new game I um yeah. someone just told me that the Dark Descent writers were uh Mikhail Hedberg and Thomas Grip and the writer for Rebirth was Ian Thomas. So apparently it's a new person. The thing and is holy not... fuck does it show because the story in this game was trash. I would go as far as saying like I have more of an issue with the mechanics than the story. 
Oh, I, I would say so too. Yeah, like, but and I would say that with probably any game. And Thomas like, Grip is like the he's he's had, he's like all of his talks about game design have always like had me very interested and impressed. And then yeah, I'm pretty sure he's still the frictional leader, like like on this game. So I'm just sad. <laughs> That's someone, all this is. I'm just sad. Someone here said that uh, Mikhail Hedberg, who is the writer for Dark Descent and Soma, he's not with Frictional anymore. So I guess well, this is what happens. This is the thing. Dark Descent, the story was done in a rush, and it was pretty good. Uh, Soma's was done with time ahead of time, and it's fan-fucking-tastic. And then this game had all the time in the world as well, and... Mm. I mean, th this is the problem with me. I I'm trying to say that the story isn't very good, but I'm not even confident about it because I didn't even understand half of it. I was very confused, like, of what the fuck was going on. And uh, I wonder if it'll get cleared up when we talk about it on Monday, but we'll try and go I, through it chronologically. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm not doing a video on it because fuck me, I'm not passionate about this game, like, one way or the other. I'm very sad because I like frictional games a lot. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I just got an, an hour of time back. We had... Um, switcheroos. Oh. To win. Oh yeah, I think oh, yeah, the yeah, same yeah. here Clocks, as well. Clocks, yeah. Clocks, and you've got, you've you've got like the, cause cause I I, I googled Amnesia Rebirth story because I want to try and soak up everything I possibly can to see if it makes any sense, which I don't think it does. <laughs> and the first thing here is Wired.com. Amnesia Rebirth has evolved beyond jump scares. What? And I'm like, fuck <laughs> off. Have you played this game? <laughs> They do the thing, and I've, I've, we mentioned this before, and I will mention it again on Monday. So, when you have an area, and it has a monster in it, and it's dark, and you try to run to your location because you think, if I run, I'll make it there, and I'll be safe. And then you turn yeah. a corner, and the monster is there, and you go, holy shit! If someone said, like, that's a jump scare, I'd be like, that was your fault. You can't call that a jump scare. You ran into the enemy, and it was just lumbering yeah. around. Meanwhile, there's this part of the game where there's this gate that's slamming down over and over again, and you've got to find a way to sort of jam it. And you throw a cage into the gears, and it jams. You move your way to it, you go under it, and then suddenly, a dude grabs you and goes blah 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 in the, in the screen, and you're like, oh my god. And it's like uncanny. It happens all the way throughout uh, Outlast. It doesn't happen in Amnesia. I don't think it happens in Soma as well, I'd have to check, but... Fuck me. It's the cheapest way to get scares. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> Uh, it sounds I, it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was thinking, um, I don't know why the game is called Amnesia Rebirth. Yeah. There's I legit there's don't know what it it's ranks. referring to. There's birthing. People give birth it was in the Rebirth. Game. It says Rebirth. Well, if it says Amnesia birth. Pregnancy, I'd get it. <laughs> she gave birth yeah, to one kid, now she's giving birth to another kid. There you go, Rebirth. I like all these wild theories while playing this game. Oh, maybe I'm giving birth I to my... Elf and do a reaper if, thing. I don't know something. If we're going with a like a, a literal interpretation of rebirth means to birth again, like okay, I get, that's not what that word means when anyone uses it, but okay, like Soma. Tassi was Soma reborn. is probably the the most perfectly named game that yep. exists. It's Soma is the Greek word for body. And once you play the game, you'll understand why that makes so much sense, right? Yep. Amnesia: The Dark Descent. It's dark, you're descending. <laughs> it's just like, it's so... Well, it, in, and, and I'm gonna say in fairness to the game, it's not just, it's also metaphorical in terms of how far Daniel goes to defend yes. himself. Yeah. He descends quite It works quite on multiple far. levels. Yep. I don't know what Rebirth is referring to in this game. No, fuck it, I don't know either. That's almost that Amnesia Afterbirth. It's like, yeah, that's... <laughs> ooh, it, should be, it should be called Amnesia Miscarriage. Oof. Oh. <laughs> Amnesia Ooh. stillborn. Amnesia oh. abortion. Abortion, yeah. 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 Frictional, what the fuck, man? Yeah, uh, what, I, what else can we say? What the fuck? What did you do? We, we went into this game super excited because of how good their last games have been. Mm. The next game Frictional makes, we're just like, it could be anything. Yeah. It could be great. It could All be terrible. All bets are off now. <laughs> Which makes me worry, Rags. Like, the, the next haunting season... I hope it's good. <laughs> I hope it's not the autism. <laughs> because part of my worry, and I'll, again, I'll mention this on Monday, is that this was a reaction to Soma in that like, people like Joseph Anderson saying, you know, Soma's not even a horror game. And then they were like, oh, we need more jump scares, otherwise people don't even think it's a horror game. 
Well, that's why people. That's why so many people said they don't like Bly Manor. It wasn't yeah. spooky enough. It wasn't scary enough because it, it its horror is a lot more existential and subtle. It's not spooky things popping up in front of the camera to make your body jump because that's the human instinct and you can't control it. You can in tell fact, we're very it, passionate about horror at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is it someone said? Is it better or worse than a machine for pigs? Which so is insane to me, by the way, because I I never liked horror. But yeah. Me neither. Was never I've, really I've always loved horror, shown. but it's never been what people usually associate with horror. When I watched Haunting of Hill House, I was like, this is my kind of horror. I love this yeah. shit. I love the subtler horror. I, I'm not I'm not huge into like people getting chainsawed to death or screaming or monsters blaring at the screen. I'm like, yeah, mm, it's not really doing I much for me. Why? You know? I when, like like Soma. When you have a concept that is terrifying, and they explain it very well and have people dealing with it, I'm like, oh my god, this is fucking with my head. And then uh, you, your standard fear, like Amnesia Doctor Sen gets me into the, the experience of actually being chased in real life by something that's trying to end my life. That's, that's pretty creepy. How being chased in the Dark Descent was terrifying, and how being chased in Amnesia Rebirth is like a fucking chore. Annoying as hell, yeah. It's the least scary part of the game because of how exciting they make it. And I mean that in a bad sense. Yeah. Like, so, here's the thing. You, your brain can only do so much at once. And Amnesia Rebirth doesn't understand that if your brain is busy, you, you can't really be scared as much because your brain is focused on a task. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, like, like the, the the chase sequences and imagery, you're, you're running away and the music's playing and all the monsters pop out at all the places to let you know that, oh, you gotta go right, not left, because a monster pops out on the left. It's like, okay, I'll go left. It's not difficult. There's no challenge really involved in any of it. And you're following a predetermined path. Uh, it, it's just, it comes across as busy work for your brain. So even though it's trying to make you feel scary and terrified, you're not gonna be. Here's, um, here's a complicated question, I think, as an neurotic, what do you guys think about this? So, we we are very into the idea that creators should respect and understand and listen to the fans. However, if it was categorically proven that Amnesia the Dark Descent and progresses to Amnesia Rebirth by listening to the fans and it becomes way fucking worse, what do, what do you think in terms of, like, how do, you, how do you solve that problem? What? You're saying that if this game was a direct result of uh, like, like people like Joseph Hansen saying feedback. it's not scary enough we need more jump scares we need more blah 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 we need more this that and other, the other like what, what do you what would you say to creators at that point should they be listening to those fans or should they try and figure out which fans to listen to or they should be trying to figure it out because if it was successful before I mean like I mean there's a lot of factors that go in but if the the interest in the game hadn't gone down then I wouldn't, and especially if you've made kind of a big deal about not doing that, I would continue doing that. And it just sounds like a whole new creative team kind of came in and didn't mm -hmm. care. That's what know. it feels like. Well, yeah, that's this really tragic part is that if they did these changes to help and like like to appease people, I'd be like, oh no. But you, you would have to balance that. You couldn't saturate your game with it. If you saturated it, then you're you're running a huge risk because you're taking a specific portion of feedback and bear in mind most people who are very happy with a product probably 99 percent, don't say shit mm -hmm. don't say shit well yeah i, so I would argue to, to them who are disappointed don't say shit they just don't come back yeah and if your sales are good from the first game to the second game you're still doing very well indeed and if people well, say oh you know could do with getting a little bit scarier how about why I would you why build... would you go for the cheap scares though how when you've I... been a rep for being creative with your uh, if i horror. connect these lines though right so we got amnesia comes out and it literally burst the career of pewdiepie like the most successful youtuber in yeah. history it's also streamed by a shit ton of people and it's fully respected as not only a great horror game but one that like redoes what everyone understands to be great horror in games and it's influential as hell it spawns like a bazillion different copycats so that's the case. They sell, I think, 1.5 million copies. Really, really good. Good job, guys. Excellent. Thumbs up. Then Outlast comes out. It sells 4 million copies. It outdoes it. People are often touting that Outlast is scarier than Amnesia. Just for reference, I hate Outlast primarily because it overshadows Amnesia without working for it. it there's loads of the just standard jump scare stuff. Cutscene after cutscene of a big scary monster grabbing you, yelling at you, and then you get thrown somewhere. 
A lot of it's so much cheaper, the maps and the mechanics, everything is so much cheaper, it bugs the fuck out of me. However, if you're dealing with that, you're like, oh, you, you guys did the best, and yet you're almost like a quarter of, of the success of this other game. Should you adopt what this other game has done? And, like, and I feel like the narrative is like, no, we will continue to innovate. And they make Soma, and then Soma is spat back at them. They're like, what is this? This isn't even scary. This isn't anything like Amnesia. Like, you guys are fucked up. And loads of reviews. This is what started my channel, by the way, was I kept watching reviews that would be like, Soma is shit, Soma's story doesn't make sense, Soma isn't scary, Soma fucked up, they didn't know what they were doing, they were guessing, they tried, Amnesia was a fluke. And so I made my video and very bitterly responded to a lot of different people. I, I remember some people being like, the, the story at times, like, just, it just completely contradicts itself, and you're just like, well, what are you even referencing? You could argue it's a proto to um to what we do at EFAP, which is just checking out other people's opinions and being like, why are you saying these things? <laughs> this is, does not represent the thing you're talking about. Um, and so once you get like two major responses to your development team of like, you need to be making stuff like Outlast, it's like, I guess they made something like Outlast. Like, I'm really kind of just like, is that what happened? And now they're getting responses that are like, what the hell are you doing? Like, the fact that they had to make a tweet accounting for this stupid, shitty jump scares means that they've already known that people are biting back. And I would say this is what they should expect. Their core audience are people who love, like, like detailed and well-crafted horror, and they've literally made, like, one of the cheapest mechanics in history. I said to Rags and Mel before, I don't know that there's a cheaper mechanic than what they've made. And if you had told me, like, just a few months ago, that I would be saying that about frictional games, I'd be like, there's no way. The idea that you've got a jump scare that just happens every three seconds while you're walking around if your fear has dropped below 50% or whatever. It's like, nah, they wouldn't do that. Oh. I assume, I, I had to hop out once you were talking about Outlast's success. Um, I assume what you went on to was how Somo was way, way better, but it didn't sell as much. Not even close. I think that had something like 600 million to Outlast 4 million. Sorry, 600,000 to Outlast is 4 million. Wow. Because I think Soma like, eventually broke even and they made money, but it took a little, took a well, little while. Well, how sad is that? It eventually broke even. It's like, what? Yeah. How did... What? Yeah, it, they finally got to where they were making some money with it, but it's such a tragic tale because of how... Like, guys, like, I... We, we say it all the time. We can't say it enough. Soma is a masterpiece. One and, of the best video games ever made. And you may not like the mechanics, you may not like the pacing, but Jesus Christ does it have some incredible points to make about your perception yeah. of what life is. A uh, very bold game. But that, then you kind of getting into the realms of whether or not you want to create art or whether or not you want to make some money. Well, that's the thing, right? If uh, if finding the balance, if Rebirth, if they want to find the balance. If Rebirth gets them the sales they want, then good for them. It's just that I'm not going to be very invested in whatever they make anymore because no, I mean that's that's just this is this is it with most games though. They will build their reputation off a specific audience, and then they'll. This is not with all game, you know, game companies, of course. Uh, but then they'll go for the money. And when they're going for the money, inevitably, and more often not, it actually pushes away the core audience because they are compromising their game uh, to get the either the masses in or to um, kind of uh, pander to the whatever the flavor of the month um, genre is. Uh, and if you're, you know, sticking within horror, for example, then, you know, the jump scares or the, uh, whether it be... Um, gore or whatever you know whichever mm -hmm. kind of subgenre of, of horror it may adhere to but uh it'd be interesting to see what the sales uh would be for this because if they if they turn around and they've sold two million i can't well, like they're gonna, they're gonna call it a success but if they if they sell poorly then they're in a, um... a, a really tricky spot because you kind of pissed off your core audience and um had this released in hmm. 2011, like right after Amnesia the Dark Descent, I think it may have worked, but um, I feel like this won't make it. It's just a lot of people, I've seen uh, Jim Sterling's review, which I, like, the, he's often someone I can disagree with, but like I watched his Jim impressions of it and pretty much every hmm. single thing he said about it I agreed with and he was like, this game feels like it's from 10 years ago. It doesn't even know what it's doing. Like, so uh, what, are you, have you played like Dear Esther? Yeah, I don't like Dear Esther. <laughs> Okay, and have you played, what was the other one, um, in the village? In the um, village. 
Oh. Uh, it's the Rapture. Welcome to the Rapture. What? Something like that. I didn't play that one. Uh, but that's that's the Chinese room as well, right? Uh, yeah, Chinese room as well. Um, so you know, those are those those aren't technically games. They're artistic experiences. A lot of people would call them walking simulators, right? Well, I mean, you could call them walking simulators. Be derogatory. But but they, you know, there's there's story. You, you kind of sure. You are shifting through a, a specific story. Well, uh, I, I, it, I'll say this: Amnesia Rebirth is definitely not that. Like, it's definitely no, no, like... no, no. What what I'm trying to say is that the Chinese room, they are very specific to what they do, uh, and they will continue to do that sort of you know game. That that is their sort of niche, uh, and so. I think Welcome to the Rapture, or whatever it was called, was actually um, much more successful than Dear Esther. Hmm. Uh, in, in terms of... Everyone's gone to the Rapture, thank you. Uh, everyone's gone to the Rapture. Um, and um, yeah, it was, it's more, it was more successful, but that's what they know, and that's what they stuck to. They took their Dear Esther formula, which was very basic. A very basic walking simulator with some um you know vocal narrative as you progress to x area y area i think um and then de Resta, by the way is the game that made total biscuit make a video about what it means to be a game at this point because that one was really pushing the limits <laughs> it's like wait a minute yeah, is this still a game I, I, but i would defend de Resta in as much as i i thought it was a wonderful little experience i wouldn't call it a game but it was it was very good in as much it was innovative in as much as it, is it, it was using the the gaming uh, utility to create something different. Yeah, so I, would, it, I would never it, argue it's without worth. Um, but I remember being like, I don't understand why it's in why it's a game medium wise. Uh, no, I don't, it's not a game. I, I wouldn't call it a game. But they're right. using the 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 media uh, the medium of uh, you know a game platform. To create it so it's so in essence you know they, they could have written a short story mm. but what would that have, have, have done what sort of experience would that have have brought people nothing really you know some guy talking about death he, you know his death and uh and and you know moving to the afterlife but when you're plodding through the caves and when you're going over the hillsides and climbing up the thing you're sort of it's kind of almost becoming a, a an investment in the experience so so they're, they're, they're taking a couple of genres and mixing them together and making it not necessarily interactive with dear esther for example a little bit more uh interactive with everyone's gone to the rapture uh but but they are creating these these yeah visual novels these visual short stories uh because i think the story for everyone's gone to the rapture is great if you if you go into all the places and, and get all the story and uh, see how everything unfolds, it's actually really really good. And I I would say that would have as much credence as let's say one of those short games you know that PewDiePie plays where he's got you know the guy in the uh, pot and they climb up to the top and that you know you can complete the game in like one minute thirty seconds if you're fucking excellent, but it takes people hours and hours and hours because keep falling back down to the start again. Those little games. When you've got a game like a horror game, for example, and is this is an actually an interactive experience, but when you've got a, a horror game and you have built your horror game on a specific style, so you have purposely said, "We want to scare, but we want to keep people away from jump from the cheap stuff." Uh, you know, everything's everything's quick and, uh, and and gratuitous. If we keep people away from that. And if we try and get into the psychology of, of the horror, uh, then we'll create a, a much more, you know, rounded experience. And Amnesia did that mm -hmm. uh, because people gravitated to, towards that. They respected the fact that um, you had to earn your fear. Uh, and the fact that you weren't, you know, you didn't have those little cheap things, slasher flicks and all that kind of stuff. You didn't have that, that cheapness of it. The moment that you regress, is the moment that you've you've lost because if they if they need to, if they want to turn this around let's say sales are, are poor that or let's say they're just about breaking even you've essentially got to go all the way back to the drawing board 
and and redefine everything that you think is is scary uh that will tap into the psychology of people without being cheap and i could take them years so where do they go the 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 quick answer would be they're gonna start looking elsewhere now and they're no longer gonna become original they're gonna start chasing the market and this is invariably what happens they will start chasing other games that do a horror-esque uh, genre or horror-esque experience and see where did that work? How did that work? <clears throat> Look at Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3 remakes. Resident Evil 2 remake was fantastic. It was wonderful because it took uh, all the sort of uh, scares and jump scares and all the nonsense uh, from Resident Evil 2 from 98, I think it was Resident Evil 2, and they, they made the dialogue tighter. They made the characters more believable. All the load screens had gone. All the scares were there and the horror was there and the intensity was there. And you had modern day graphics. So you, you took everything that was essentially great about your original horror experience and you dialed it up to a modern day audience and it worked. It was an absolute gem. Then they followed it up with Resident Evil 3 Remake and it was a damp squib because all they did was try and copy Resident Evil 2 and they didn't look as to what made Resident Evil 3 Resident Evil 3. Yeah, I see what you mean. So, so that's where they made the mistake. So now they're back into a tricky situation again where they have to say, are we going to remake Resident Evil 4? If we wait Resident Evil 4, are we still going to do it in the... A way that we did Resident Evil 2 or are we going to look at the fact that Resident Evil 4 was the game that redefined the genre of, of Resident Evil and look again to redefine the genre there you, you, you create so many traps for yourself and it looks like they're falling into a trap with this one. yeah I mean funnily enough Resident Evil 4 that'll be another one for Metal Rags and myself in terms of if they fuck it up we will be very angry Oh, mm -hmm. I'll be furious because it's one of my favorite games. Yeah, of Resident Evil 4 Honestly, is one of my favorite games ever. Yeah. If Soul was like, name a typical favorite game, I'd be like, Resident Evil 4? <laughs> like, that seems to be a favorite game for yeah, so they, many it's, people. Yeah, it's in my top five uh, all-time favorite games. Yeah. It's a fucking good one. They gotta be have to be careful with that one. They should spend more time on that one. They yeah, be... I'm very worried yeah. about Just a remake of it. Alone. How about that? Well, how sad is it that now that if they like... We're coming out with a new game from like frictional games. I'm gonna be like, mm. <laughs> when I used to be like, oh fuck yeah. I'm so sad. Oh boy. If they say that their Resident oh. Evil 4 is just gonna be a remaster, I'll be like, oh thank God, it's only a remaster. Yeah. You're not I, gonna it, fuck around with it. <laughs> I'd prefer that than a remake in terms of the gamble. But, you know, what if they nail it? We'd be like, oh that'd be great. We shall see. Um, if you play Resident Evil 4 now, it's got a very clunky control system. Um, well, if you play Resident Evil 2 now, it's got a very smooth uh, control system. I don't the, agree. It's clunk. tank controls. It's like an actual... It is a system that's not used much anymore. But if you're used to the system, if you understand the system, then I don't consider it that clunky. It's just it yeah, works for what it, it is. Clunky either. It does exactly what you want it to and what you tell it to do. You just have to understand what the parameters are. Yeah, unlike... Um, Something like uh, Metroid on GameCube or uh, N64 GoldenEye, where to move your FPS, like it's it's incredibly awkward. While um, in the same way that Resident Evil Five, that Rags and I still need to uh, get to the end of. Um, once you understand how the systems work, um, the game is balanced around them. Like so, it's it, as long as they're consistent, they they function pretty well. I'm totally okay with them keeping the way that Resident Evil 4 works almost entirely and just remastering the graphics as, as Rags just said, but um, who knows? Well, someone, someone in the charts just said it. I would actually prefer that they don't go on to Resident Evil 4 next and go on to Code Veronica. Well, yeah, uh, do, I we, mean, do we know if they're interested in doing that at all? I, I don't know. I don't know, but I, I think Code Veronica is, is a, a really underrated uh, game. Really underrated. So yeah, um, RE4 doesn't need a remaster. 
I think it would benefit immensely from a remaster. Yeah, okay. Why would we like, be cool it, with a remaster? I'm cool it, with a remaster. It, it it stands up pretty well, but the thing that ages the the least, luckily, the thing that ages the least about it is the look. Um, very very inconsistent textures from character to character. Um, you it, mean it's stuff like that? The thing that ages the most about it is the look, or yeah, the the look has yeah. is, is what is impacts it the most because wow. gameplay wise it's still very solid it just um it looks like a game that was made in what when did it come out uh, 2004 uh gaia said gamecube metroid yeah, is very well designed four. around the controls so metroid prime is my uh, favorite game on gamecube yeah, right the way 2004, yeah. the way you move is forward and back on the left analog stick is forward and back but left and right is look left and right yes. and then the other analog is what you would imagine is the You're remaining right. controls. It's very strange. And then, of course, you have yeah. to hold down a uh, right trigger in order to, like, aim, free aim to wherever you want. Metroid as a game, it does not, like, like I've played it where the controls are modded so that they work like a normal FPS, and the game does not, like, suffer in any way, shape, or form. Meanwhile, something like Resident Evil 4, I do believe that if you have full control over Leon compared to normal, then the game will become much easier. Um, yeah, um, mm -hmm. everything from the the Garador fights to uh, you know, that's just what comes to mind first to the bosses. The, the one thing that makes Resident Evil Four so good is that it does force you into: Do you want to move or do you want to shoot? Do you run? Do you want to run away mm -hmm. right now or do you want to fight? Mm -hmm. You have to yeah. choose between the two. You can't have them both um, because if you could do both of those at the same time, it would be backpedal while shooting the game. Uh, there would be. It, it, it kind of bridges the gap between a rail shooter and a more modern game where you can choose where you want to stop and start firing at all the stuff that's on the screen. That does it really, really well, and the game's sort of designed around that whole thing. For instance, the, uh, the Wii version of um, Resident Evil 4 was atrociously easy because you didn't have a laser. You had a reticle on your screen, which means that and you also aimed with the Wiimote. So it mm. was extremely easy to play that game because you could just dominate fights and you could hit things at extremely long ranges in ways that you weren't really supposed to without great difficulty in the original. So things like that can drastically affect the experience. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Um, this is our talk on why Amnesia Rebirth sucks. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is reverse stock style play, play Selma. But yeah, the question would be, he, he just asked the chat, um, people in the chat who played the Final Fantasy VII remake, uh, put Y if you liked it, put N if you didn't like it. And I bet you have a, a, a big split between the two. Also, if you want, put Y or N and then dash and then a reason. Yeah, <laughs> or just, just YN. You you're a non plus. Yeah, player. whatever you want to do, chat. Freedom, right there. That's what we offer on EFAB. Complete freedom. Because that that is a that is a remake. That isn't a light for light remake. That is a remake of Final Fantasy VII. Uh, and so, it's it's. I mean, I loved it. I personally loved it. Um, I I loved the original and I love this. Uh, I love this one. It went extreme. Yeah, it had a. They have gone and diverted from the story slightly, um, but I think it was a great, um, a great use of of taking an established story with established characters, uh, having an in incredible. Uh, I mean, essentially, completely, um, re not redefining the characters, but fleshing out the characters to an incredible degree that we've never had before. Uh, that really made you sort of uh, empathize with with everyone's kind of situation. Looked beautiful, played beautiful, ton of stuff to do, uh, and it was it was a risk, you know, a huge risk of taking a, a beloved kind of isometric, almost esque, I know, esque uh, MMO uh, RPG, MMO RPG, RPG, and just giving it a completely different face. And sometimes you, you got to do that. you got to just shake it up. What's the thing? I'll be, you know, I'll check out whatever Friction will do next. And I, like, the best I can hope for is this was a major hiccup. Like, they, they made a mistake. 
But the problem yeah, is that, um, open. one of the things I found out before playing this game that really saddened me was, like, it was some kind of statement, and I can't remember if it was from Thomas Grip or whoever else, but they were like, we we understand what we fucked up with Soma. And I'm like, no. What did you fuck up with Soma? I was like, no, stop. Nothing. Game is so good. <laughs> Please. This is like so well. I mean, we we know we fucked up with Soma, so we're gonna make Amnesia Rebirth, and it's gonna be kind of shit. <laughs> so if they want to make mediocre horror games for the rest of time, then I guess that's what they want to do. Because like, Amnesia Rebirth is probably the kindest thing I could say about it is that it's mediocre. Yeah, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but there is a frictional game game that that, that I like. Stay away from it. I'm not even saying like all the Penumbra games. They're pretty neat. You can go check them out, especially as a precursor to uh, Amnesia: The Dark Descent. But Rebirth's like Rebirth's annoying. Don't check it out. And I shouldn't be saying that about something frictional games made. Mm. Where? I'm fucked up. So anyway, I guess I'll just <laughs> at, at exactly seven hours and seventeen minutes in, I guess I'll start reading the super chats. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think Dark Sideville really <laughs> liked it, by the way. Just, just, uh, oh, Dark Sideville liked Amnesia Rebirth? I think, I think so, yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, it, it, it probably is the game that would appeal to someone like Dark Sideville. So you're wrong. Right. I'm, I'm going to hop off now for real this though. I'm getting pretty tired. Um, All right. It's been fun, Mr. Mootle. Right. Yes, yes. Uh, thanks for uh, flooping me around again. Whoa. We'll see you for the Halloween stream for EFAP because we'll be doing it on the very day. Can you believe yeah. it? It's, uh, you just uh, boop me tomorrow when we do the thing, I guess. Isn't that the day after tomorrow? D m oh, tomorrow. wait, you're right. It is technically tomorrow. Oh, no, wait. We're yeah. doing another thing. Fuck my schedule. So many <laughs> things. Yeah, I, I will. I will, my good yeah. man. I, will. I, I guess it's like standard time as we always do. I guess, I don't know. Whatever. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, See you, dude. You guys. Bye, bye. bye bye. See you later. See ya. All right fun. then. I, I like, by the way, um, I can see in the past super chats before getting to today's ones. I can see from when I was streaming Amnesia, one of them from a Daft Punk fan is, well, this was a step down, like falling off a cliff. Oh. Yep. That's the experience of rebirth. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Uh, oh. Mola and Nerdrotic, make sure you guys watch Battlefield Earth and release it as an EFAP movies. We absolutely will. Um, we, honestly, we've, we've having some trouble lately trying to organize EFAP movies. We, 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 we just have so many things to do. Right, I still gotta get that Resident Evil 5 stream done. There's no way I'm letting that go, right? We're definitely doing it. Resi 5, hey, wanna, good shit. Do you wanna know something cool? What's cool? Tell me. It's 21.4 degrees Celsius in Tokyo right now, and it's a beautiful day. And I'm I'm watching it live. Why are you watching that live? Gay. Because gay? What? <laughs> I'm... I like, I've, I've got into these. I've got into these. I'm I'm trying to do like more mentally positive things. Like watching um, keeping an eye on the temperature. And I and I just find these these one like there's some great channels where they just have like live feeds from different countries of Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm just I'm just watching this live feed of Tokyo, and it's like trains going past, and oh my god, driving on the freeway, and they're healthy. Well, I mean, I, it's know. just nice relaxing. Thank goodness you know the temperature. I was actually concerned about that. Yeah, it's a healthy uh, 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm. Wind speed is 0 0.83 uh, meters miles per second. Meters per second. Hmm. Pretty cool. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Fucking hell. Fucking hell. Um, that'd be quick. <laughs> doo, doo. Yeah, uh, are... we will organize Battlefield Earth with Nerdrotic. You got it. He just, he just wants to spy on Japanese schoolgirls. Mm -hmm. No. College girls. Japanese college girls, there you go. Gotta be of, gotta be of ripe age, you know, proper age. Not... I don't know how what schoolgirls is in terms of age. I assume it's girls in school. Well, I think uh, Japan has some. Um, try, uh, Japan, yeah, Japan has some very oh, rules on that sort of stuff, which not comfortable with at all. <laughs> I think uh, their age, their age of consent, something ridiculous like fourteen or something. 
Mubshly. Would you please say, I am Mubshly. I am death. In your best draconic voice? What is a draconic voice? Like a dragon? Draconic? Oh, draconic. Yeah. The Japan, sorry, in Japan, the age of consent is low at 13. Damn. Oof. Although some um, municipalities such as Tokyo prohibit activity until sexual activity until 18 oh. in most circumstances. On mainland China, minimum age is 14, and in Hong Kong, it's 16. That is... I was about to say, I just needed more reasons to hate China, so... There you go. Mm. What does it mean to sound enough. like a dragon? You guys know the answer to this? <laughs> why, why does it have to sound like a dragon? Oh, I'll just do it in a draconic voice. Ooh. Maybe, uh, maybe, uh, do the whole, um, what was it? The, do the, um, Sean Connery thing from Dragonheart. What's what's the Sean Connery thing from Dragonheart exactly? Like just his voice or have you seen have you seen Dragonheart? I have, but not since I was a young man. Me too. We should rewatch that and see if it's any good. Totally. Um but yeah, I guess maybe his voice or maybe uh one of the dragons from Skyrim. I'm Parthenax. thinking like, Is it like are they looking for deep or like echoey <laughs> or what too. what does it mean to be draconic? Yeah, what if, it could be like a Dragon Tales dragon. Which is what? What's Dragon Tales? It's, I don't know. I, I I can't remember. I don't know if they sound like. Maybe they sound goofy. Like. <laughs> sound like Benedict Cumberbatch. What Benedict what is what does Smaug sound like? He's like. What is it? What's a line from Smaug? Benedict Cumberbatch. Look at the Benedict size of my dragon penis. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh man, I have it's, so much gold. It's, it's funny watching him play gold. the dragon. It amuses me. Whether you didn't or did like those movies, it was a pretty bitchin' smog. The animated smog was better than the live-action smog. Fight me. Oh my god. It's been so long since I've seen the animated smog. I'd have to check it out Fucking again. Charles Martinet, maybe? The guy who voices Mario? Yeah, that's what I'm probably looking for when they say draconic. <laughs> draconic? Oh, you know, like Mario, because he's Italian. And they're like dragon people. Yeah. With their pizzas on, and more, their linguini. Uh, uh, Maulers, come on, chat. Answer, answer the question. What am I doing here? What's the voice they're looking for? Give me, a, give me tips. Do Why you fear you death? Magic dragon. What's? Oh man, I used to know the lines from Davy Jones. He was so fucking cool. He was so cool in that first movie he was in. Do you feel that endless abyss? I can offer you paradise. I don't even know if those are the words. <laughs> I think they might be Literally close. Literally, this paradise I found on the table over there. You, you know what's great about that? Because Pirates of the Caribbean 3 fucking sucks ass. Uh, the second one, Davy Jones was intimidating as hell, and then we already know Jack, and so having this, like, unstoppable force meet this, like, cartoonish idiot but that always manages to escape. It was great. It was a great fucking dynamic between the both of them. Oh man, if you can, if someone can trigger the scene where they first meet, I could probably like roll off all the dialogue. It's like Shrek. I know it. <laughs> I just need a trick. <laughs> Shrek. We all know the lines in our hearts. I was doing it when I was playing The Last of Us too. Someone said something in a super chat, and I was like, "Oh my god, yeah!" And I like read out the whole sequence with Gingerbread Man getting tortured by Farquaad. <laughs> Dude, I watched Shrek so many times. <laughs> Shrek's great. This is a good movie. Shrek is love. Shrek is life. It's true. It is. That had me in stitches when I was a kid when he's like, Do you know the Muffin Man? He lives on Drury Lane and she's married to the Muffin Man. And Farquaad is like, She's married to the Muffin Man. Like, it's just, it's man. a clue. <laughs> <laughs> she's married to the Muffin Man. My lord, we found it. The, the, the magic mirror. That's his motivation in the whole film is just to have a princess, right? He wants to be a proper king. Yeah. He wants to be a proper royal, you know, or a proper king, like in the fairy tale. So he has to have a princess. Mm -hmm. He's got to be handsome and you know all that sort of stuff. He's got to have a princess and Fiona. Bootstrap, Bill, you are a liar, and you'll spend an eternity on the ship. Oh. And then he's like, 
Will Turner, you're free to go. The next time we make part. Because the joke is they never do. Mm -hmm. Oh man, Pirates 2 is cool. And it's like not even worth seeing because Pirates 3 doesn't follow up at all. Fucking kill, kill the crack Kraken off screen. screen. What the Kraken. hell is that? <laughs> I'm to be fair, the they one. killed the Kraken boss thing. on screen in Solo, a Star Wars story. True. Solo is better than Pirates of the Caribbean 3. Oh my god. <laughs> <Get> <laughs> <fucked> <laughs> is that a hot pirates. take? I don't know. That's a hot take. Is it? Is is it a hot take that Solo is better than the third Pirates of the Caribbean? Well, I, I've not I've not seen the third. I just but so, I've seen Solo. And well, here's the thing: you shite. might have, and you just don't remember it. It's a it's a <laughs> film that often gets a, a pass by a lot of people. They're like, eh, you know, it's Pirates of the Caribbean, though, and it's like, no, seriously, because I, I watched it like I want to say two years ago now. Some ridiculous. And I remember being like reignited of my hatred of that film. It ruined everything. Fucking Davy Jones is a cuck in that film. That's not cool. Yeah, that's all you need. Yeah. He's like, he's, he's a badass in the second one, and then they're just holding his heart hostage, so he has to do everything everyone says. It's like, woohoo. Fucking boss is that, of the uh, underworld. Is, is that Australian guy? He's Scottish. Well, he's Bill Nye, who's English, and he's playing Scottish. Oh, he's Bill Nye. Okay. Oh, sorry, I thought he's the uh, the, the uh, Australian guy. Uh, the guy Nye, with the, uh, the squid face guy. Squid, squid face. <laughs> huh? Bill Nye the squid yeah, face the, guy. the squid face guy. Mm -hmm. Bill Nye the squid face guy. That was, that was a good Nye. joke, Rags. I appreciate it, okay? I think so. I, I liked think, it. You. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> you get five stars. Play on I'm the familiar. You know. Yeah. I see my familiar. Oh, what's the fucking... It's on the tip of my brain. It's, it's when... He looks in the telescope, and Davy Jones like teleports to to Jack because he can move through the sea or whatever. And he's like, he like goes, ah. and then like, if I could just get the beginning of that conversation, I feel like I could read out the whole of it. I used to remember it really well because I just loved it. He's such a fucking cool bad guy. I'm gonna say that this person is is really getting their money's worth out of this super chat. <laughs> <laughs> like wow! This, this all comes from us trying to figure out what it means to have a draconic voice. <laughs> yes. Have you even said the line in a draconic voice? Um, well, it's I am Mubshly. I am death. Is that close? I don't know. Who knows what it means? <laughs> What's well, better mm -hmm. than Dragon Tales, Dragon? They're like, I move I'm death. No, oh no, oh, they're Mexicans, aren't they? In Dragon Tales, oh, no. aren't they? Oh, I think it's. Oh, he's like, I it, am Mubshly. I am he, death. The idea is that, like, kind of like John Wick 2, but not shit, where they're like, oh, Jack Sparrow has a debt to pay to Davy Jones. We weren't aware of it in the first film, but it doesn't really fuck with anything in the second or the first to have that happen. And he's like, um. You've been Jeffrey captain Rush. of the Black Pearl for 13 years. That was our agreement. Technically, I've only been captain of the Black Pearl for two years, and then I was viciously mutinated upon. Then you were a poor captain, but a captain nonetheless. This fucking great. <laughs> he's mm -hmm. it's like shit on him while he's telling him I own your soul. And then he tries to uh, give up Will Turner's soul in exchange for him, because Jack Sparrow's not the nicest of people, all right? When you should have learned by now. Yeah. Pirate. He says so. Pirate. Pirate. And Amber Heard came along. Shot his bed. <laughs> <laughs> Is she getting booed from Aquaman too? Is that happening? No. Uh -uh. I fucking no, should. No. What does a bitch have to do to get fired? I know. I saw that um, Yellow Flash put up a video. I haven't seen it, but he's put up a... Another Amber Heard Johnny Depp video today, saying that Johnny Depp's done a whoopsie or something. And now, now Amber Heard's all over him. Yeah, um, isn't it like he's potentially getting booted from Fantastic Beasts 3, or at least they're filming it in such a way that he can be cut out of it mostly, or something like that? So I've reading... heard something, a diminished role, yeah. yeah. That's lame. <laughs> so they're, wait, they're cutting Johnny Depp's role? Well, from what it was like a tweet, so I don't know how true it is, but it said something like they're filming Fantastic Beast Three with the intention of being able to cut Johnny Depp's role down significantly if need be. Who, who plays a significant? I mean, if you care about the story or not, but he plays a pretty significant character, you, and it's already been kind of his role has been written. 
Mm. Be a little hard to reduce it. Isn't he, but um... They sucked anyway. So. Oh, isn't, he dumb... what, isn't he Dumbledore's? Grindelwald. Uh, Dumbledore's ben, no, ben, no. lover. Oh, his yeah. boyfriend? His his Cumbledore? Yeah. Cumbledore. And, uh, his <laughs> frenemy. <laughs> He's bum he's bumbled, yeah. Someone someone said what's so bad about the third pirates movie. Beckett's death scene is amazing. Beckett's death scene is amazing. That's like the one good part of the movie. Okay. We will do EFAP movies on the Pirates series eventually. We'll do it. <laughs> wow, we're committing. We've got like a million <laughs> things to do. We want to do all the resident oh, yeah, we'll do all if, the mummies. If we say we're gonna do a EFAP movie, that could be like four years. The now. thing is though, Rice, it will happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Are we just putting it off? We take 30, some in, time. Th in 30 years, we don't want to play it. Yeah, it's kind of young. <laughs> 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> in years numbering. It'll be great. This French is like a moment. By the time I we do it, there'll be like six Pirates movies to do it to, so. Yeah. I just remember f watching the fifth one and being like, what the fuck is going on anymore? Like, this whole series is down the tubes. Well, it's going to be saved now by, um,. What's oh, the name? right. All women pirates the Caribbean because yeah. that's how to rescue oh, that series. Oh, yeah, because women were famously always pirates and pirates yeah. were generally, yeah. Well, I just yeah. like the idea that, like, this series isn't working. Let's swap it out all for women. It's like, why do you believe that's going to be, like, what? Generally, when you hear women and pirates, it's about pirates raping them. So. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing with the, we'll the pirates Maybe movies. Maybe that's what they want, and I'm, you know, I'm all for it. But The, the pirates movies always try to get away with being, like, these are pirates. They kill and they pillage and they yeah, they rape. Maybe yeah, who knows what's going yeah, on over there bit. on that part of the screen? That's fine. Unless it's a porn, which they've already done a couple of them, and those so. were probably very successful. Uh, Davy Jones cocker. <laughs> 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 Do you remember the scene where they're throwing swords to each other because they only have two between three people and they have to keep fighting? That was neat. I'd have yeah. to rewatch it to know if it was actually retarded or not, but still. But like, like, when does that even happen in anything else? Like the idea of two, three people having to do fights and only two swords are between them, so they have to keep providing the swords to each other. It's like that's a neat idea. It's an interesting dynamic for sure. They kind of did that in, um, in the court jester with Danny Kay. I've not seen it. It was between two guys and one sword. That's not uh, bad. Two girls, one cup, two guys, one sword. <laughs> yeah. Well, I assume that most people in chat all love Pirates 1. Pirates 2 is probably shifty, Pirates 3 is shifty as well, and then 4 and 5 are just hated as far as I know. I've yeah. only seen the first one and I thought it was fun. First yeah. one's really fun. Everyone liked it. Did a good job. Jeffrey Rush as Barbosa was fucking great. Yes. So anyway, <laughs> next, super chat. <laughs> yeah. next super chat. That's Holy one down. Shit. Yeah, one down. <laughs> we did it. 85,000 to go. Uh, it says, the orcs is ear. We, we got orcs in our audience, which is, you know, that's fine. That's fine. Not anti-orc. Not anti-orc. They can enjoy the content if they wish to. Oh, um, they're allowed to wah. Oh, it's funny. It's, uh, James Moore just said, I think Van Helsing is enjoyable. It's been a long time. You got homework, EFAP audience. You gotta watch Van Helsing and Darkness Falls before Halloween, because we're gonna be talking about them in that stream, okay? EFAP stream is all about those two movies. Is it? You just said don't forget ha Van Helsing. We're gonna watch it. It's gonna happen. We might even It'll just record it, you know? Who knows? That's actually part of what we're supposed to be doing tomorrow, but we're also supposed to be streaming Resident Evil 5, so... So many things. Also, I didn't well, I listen... I we're just gonna have to do those. That's true, yeah. Oh, I got it right by guessing randomly. Sweet. That's the best kind of victory. Yeah, I'll repeat that by the time we get to the end of the stream, but you guys have homework. If you don't do it, I'm going to tell on you. Oh. <laughs> no, they won't like that. Can you believe that? A podcast you listen to gives you homework. Ugh. I, I do. I give my prisoner audience homework. Your prisoner audience? Yes, every Wednesday I do a... Prisoner podcast with uh, Robert Mayer Burnett. Ah. And so, in jail? Um, at is the end, in jail? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at the no. end of the episode, uh, at the end of the podcast, we we say which because we're not doing it in the broadcast order. We're doing it in the order we think it should have been in. Ah. It was completely out of order. Um. So what we say at the end, we say right, the next one is going to be this, and that's your homework. 
Well then, yeah, there you go. You might be used to it already, chat. Go, you have to go watch two movies. If you can watch at least one, we'll we'll give you a, a passing grade, I guess. <laughs> um, Rags, where are the uploads on your main channel? I miss the. Oh, don't worry, they're coming. I'm just leading off with a really, really big project, and then there'll be like normal videos for me. Mm. But don't don't worry, they they are coming. Uh, you must watch Code of Honor, starring Steven Seagal. I recommend Shad, Fringy, CJ, and Internet Historian. I'm, I like how they say this, like we can just summon all of these people. Yeah, let me just, uh, <laughs> give him a ring ring. Um, Code of Honor is actually on the suggestions. It may very well happen. Um, as for who's going to be able to watch it with us, who knows? Availability is complicated. Um, so we shall see. Uh, Heal vs. Babyface. Now we need RBM, too, on EFAP. I'm guessing. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Robert's, a, Robert's the big fan of yours. He is? Why? I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> be, I'm sure he'd be honored to be on EFA. Mm. Yeah. What's the, Does he like responding to bad videos on YouTube? <laughs> is that yeah. Like... Well, yeah, he likes talking about all of it. Yeah, he's oh. such a such a, a movie buff. You know, that's his life. Sweet. Um, hmm. RE 102 handgun or 102 handgun suppressors with subsonic ammo are remarkably quiet to where you don't need ear pro. The only sound is the slide. Rifle's a different deal completely, though, save for 300 BLK. Yeah, that makes sense to you, Rex. It does make sense to me. I guess I, I don't know what this is in relationship to. We would have talked at some point about guns not making the sounds they should do, even with, with silence. I think we, it was the boys' stream. Oh, yeah, the whole... Yeah, when guns are suppressed in movies, they're, like, totally quiet mm -hmm. and very... They make that that um, that um movie noise, you know, bing, sort of sound. And it's not... That's Yeah, it's not... No, loud. suppressors are still loud. Yeah, this is a very distinct, different sound, but it, it sounds more like, Tun! like 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 versus, Pow! and then like an echo. At least that's what I've found. I, I I wouldn't know as well as Rags would. It's like a hammer coming down versus a hammer coming down with loads of echo. <laughs> that makes total sense, and anybody who disagrees is wrong. Oh, wow. you got me. <laughs> Objectively. <laughs> <laughs> dun dun dun. Bum, bum, bum. Um, Leto is back as Joker in Snyder Cut. Give him a chance since Suicide Squad was mostly reshot like Justice League, and the damage tattoo is because Batman knocked his teeth out, and it's why he wears metal teeth. I w the fucking quote wow. about that went around everybody. He was like, "Don't you understand? The damage tattoo is like the Joker telling himself what Batman did to him. It's like a message." And you're like, so why would he put it on his head where he can't see it? Right? <laughs> There's no context that you can generate that justifies the retarded tattoo. I'm sorry. It just isn't. It was so embarrassing. I remember when the, like, the photos for that came out before the film did, and, and everyone was like, why? Why have you done this? Yeah. Like It's like having the, like, the word crazy tattooed <laughs> across the forehead. Well, that's basically what he's done, so yeah. <laughs> That's I'm, cool, a, yeah. I'm a naughty nut person. Thank you, Joker, for telling us that. Crazy, man. What's the, Rags, have you seen this? Look at the, the title of that. Just read it out for the chat. I... <laughs> I, I read this to you already. Oh, did, did, did we read the title out? I read yeah. the title out. Oh, my bad. Okay. I thought you hadn't. But if, uh, I'll read it again, though. Um, this is Wired's review of Amnesia. It's called... Amnesia Rebirth has evolved beyond jump scares. Because <clears throat> I was going to follow up with, what the fuck does that mean? Which is wrong. Yeah. <laughs> By evolved beyond jump scares, you mean they use them excessively? Like, what? what's the... Hmm. That's the confusing These people one. have never played a horror game before. Or any of Frictional's other games? Or games? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, there's a bit of a confusion going on there. Uh, well, we're in the pool. You have to wonder, have these games journalists, like, played games? Oh, well, I mean, as... Uh, did you see the tweet from, uh, I think it was It's a Gundam, where he was pointing out how Dean Takahashi is, like, annoyed that he's not getting the newest console from Sony, but he is getting it from Microsoft. Or vice versa, sorry, yes. I think. 
And he's yeah, just like, the, the dude who was defeated by the Cuphead tutorial, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the guy, the guy's, uh, the guy can't even get past the Cuphead tutorial, and Sony sent him a brand spanking new PlayStation Five. I don't That's get that. Games journalism in current day, folks. And then uh, the blind guy who did, um, who did a lot of um, testing with the Last of Us Part Two, because Last of Us Part Two, one mm. of the things that it did introduce was a lot of uh, aids for people with, you know, impairments to. Um, Oh, the game. I thought you were going somewhere different with that statement. No, 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 I wasn't going to... No, no, no. AIDS! Okay. AIDS! <laughs> People with AIDS! Hearing AIDS! But is this um, game AIDS friendly? If we, if we, yes. <laughs> so he got a PlayStation 5 as well. Uh, and he's going to... He said he's going to be dealing with it from the, you know, from this perspective as somebody who's blind. Um, don't go there, chap, please. And uh, DSP had a go. He was like taking the piss. He was like, oh, I got a, bo a box of rocks that Sodium sent me, uh, which is, I can make a review of it right now. And it's just like mocking everyone who's got a brand new PlayStation 5. Hmm. And apparently, I think, if the uh, DSP law is true, the, the, the blind guy is like a major contributor to DSP or something on his channel. You have to be blind to give money to DSP. Can I just say, so, someone in chat said he couldn't even beat the opening, like, area of Doot Eternal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he was back, wasn't he? He was back with another massive failure, yeah. Yeah, I just I just like the dude, Doot Eternal. <laughs> Jeez. Even Stevie Wonder can see why that's offensive. Yep. Why not? Why? Hey, people, there's a rumor that Stevie Wonder ain't fucking blind at all, you know. It was all lies. Not when he's still alive. <laughs> it is lies. Yeah, it is lies. I'm bad with that. Some celebrities are like, some people are like, they died. And I'm like, yeah, I know. It's like, what do you mean? They died just now. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I thought they were dead. Whoops. <laughs> we had yeah. this with Wilfred Brimley, and uh, that ended badly because he died right after we pointed out that he hadn't died yet. We no longer yeah, predict the deaths of people. Did he die of diabetes? Diabetes. I'd have to imagine. It was something to do with his kidneys, I think? I can't remember what I read. Um, Diabetes, maybe. Sad face. We would have had him on EFAT. We would have talked about The Thing. It would have been great. Everyone should go watch The Thing. It's like one of the greatest horror movies of all time. Yep. Yes. Not a doubt. Um, why aren't you guys covering the Ray is not a Mary Sue, the official guide by the gold man? It's really popular it's like... and the video is pretty convincing. <laughs> pretty convincing. Yeah, we've heard How many times before. have we heard someone describe a TLJ related video as pretty convincing, Rex? Fairly Fuck often. The, 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 when everyone was like, why aren't you covering the Major Lee video back in like EFAP 10? It was like, why? It's like, it's a video that essentially argues that TLJ is actually pretty good. Like, you should probably, you know, give it a shot. And then we did, and it was like, wow, this is really embarrassing. It was crap. Um, so let's have a look. Ray is not a Mary Sue. Let's have a look at, uh, like, what, what everyone's saying about it. How's it doing? 11k views. Yeah. Two hours long. How did it... Okay, like, I'm a longman, but why did it take two hours and 26 minutes to say she's not a Mary Sue when you have control over categorization? And what I mean by that is you can say, to be a Mary Sue means you have to categorize into these things, and then you can be like, she does or does not, moving on. Um, though, then again, I'm sure the video is very extensive. Um... I think we talked about this before. Answer. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. sorry. It's a simple answer. If you have to make a two-hour video about why somebody's not a Mary Sue, they're a Mary Sue. Well, um... Well, actually, the video. As far as I'm concerned, and I, I'm almost certain we've talked about this before, um, I don't actually care whether or not she's a Mary Sue. I care whether right. or not she's a shitty character. Exactly. And, uh, mm. when you qualify as a Mary Sue, you're almost certainly a shitty character, but, um... If you were to, like, say, oh, you have to be this, 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 and she's not the final one, therefore not a Mary Sue, I'd be like, wow. Seems like she's still got quite a few fucking issues, though, doesn't it? <laughs> and, um, the idea that a two and a half hour video is going to convince Rags and I that Ray is not a shitty character, like, yeah, you might be out of luck with that. 
How many EFAPs have we had about this shit? Remember the Neral video? That was the the wolf sort of goodbye video. We covered a video that said yeah, that, that it was, was the oh no, this is the good one. This, this is really the convinces one. people that TLJ's and then we watched it and it was crap, just was, like the rest of them. The, the dude it was like made the exact it. same crap as the rest of them. I remember chat being like, no, Neral makes good videos. This one's this one's okay. This one's eh, you know. And we went through and it was like, yep, this is all of the arguments we've heard like over the past two years. Good job. Like this is all shit. And, uh, yeah, so, don't be surprised if we don't necessarily want to cover another video talking about whether or not Ray is shit. Um, we'll consider it in future, I suppose. No guarantees. Um, Rags, Max Payne 3 on it. We might ahead, be sorry. looking for attention, too. So. Wait, I don't know. I think if you put two hours of, you know, make a yeah. two-hour video, that's more than just wanting attention. I assume I think he. I... It does seem to be fully edited as well. I scrolled through it, so, like... I, I don't know what to say. Like I said, like she's really shit. If she doesn't fit the criteria of what you have defined as Mary Sue, doesn't really bother me. It's just not what yeah, I'm concerned about. It's not like about. that movie lives and dies on her being a Mary Sue. Yeah. No, not at all. No, I would. I would just be suspect from anybody who's from the uh, I hate Jeremy group. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah. Oh. And uh, yeah. Oh partnered with the guy who made like 120 videos on jeremy i don't know i'm probably over exaggerating Ooh, by 10. Wow. he must hate yeah. men <laughs> obviously <laughs> well you see jeremy's a menace to the star wars society okay he really is star wars society <laughs> we <laughs> all the star wars, wars yeah. society yeah. we don't appreciate or if somebody really likes them i don't know we don't prove don't your star wars opinions around right here Mm -hmm. Stop that with your with your Mary Sue's and your hyperspace <laughs> thing. Animal, like animalizing and your 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 your, your thoughtisms. <laughs> Rags, Max Payne three on its on its in his on its in his pretty damn good game. Okay. I agree. But on but as a sequel to two of the best game ever made it's awful play mp2 you'll understand no <laughs> well max Payne 3 is really good but like, i guess he's it... saying as a sequel yeah it's i'm bad, assuming this game is good it's so it's the meme it's it's a good game but it's not a max a good max Payne game i mean so i loved max Payne 3 playing through it it was great i love the story i love the action I love the shooting the mechanics were great and solid and tight um, I I don't care about it enough to delve into why it isn't a proper Max Payne game or it's not as good as the games that came before it. Like, I, I highly doubt that a game could be so good that it makes Max Payne 3 crap. Well, interestingly, right? I've encountered plenty of people who say, yeah, Resident Evil 4 is good, but it's not a good Resident Evil game. Oh, yeah, right. yeah I don't listen to those people. Well, to me, I'm just like... It, it reminds me of a, a different conversation we've had before, where, um... So, Resident Evil 4 is not a good Resident Evil game because it doesn't match the previous style that the Resident Evils have sort of established themselves, but then you have enough games in a row that have copied or, or built upon the style of Resident Evil 4, and you're like, so now what does it mean to be a Resident Evil game? And as soon as it becomes that, does Resident Evil 4 now become a good Resident Evil game? At which case, like, why are we even talking about this? It seems weird. We should probably just talk about how good of a game it is. That's my hot take. Uh, that's not too hot. No, I don't think so. Either. It's, it's what they call lukewarm. Luke just to, just to give you a warning, uh, I'll, I'll probably be heading off in about 15 minutes or so. That is all right. Oh, really? I understand. The eyes are getting heavy. I understand. Sleep is a thing. I don't blame you. I've experienced it. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> yeah. I can't. Sometime I can't. Like, Forty hours. Play too much on. Uh, on it being <laughs> with another brick. <laughs> um, but yeah. Fuck Mary Kill, Kate Kane, Tassie Trianon, and Abby Anderson. Just kill Ooh. them. Who's Abby Anderson? Abby Anderson? <laughs> oh, is she the last of us one? Oh, is she? I, I, fuck, I didn't even realize what her second name was. Yeah, anyway, I kill no her. Idea. Um, so, I want to yeah, fuck her. Tassie, um, and Marry I guess that woman? Mary. Well, she's got all that money. And True. she's got that that step power. You could just kill her. <laughs> and then when the second on season of the marriage guy. rolls around, she'll disappear, and you'll get it all anyway. All right. Yeah, there's the answer. 
There you go. Yeah. I mean, Tazzy's pregnant, so you know she's down to fuck. She's, she, you know, she, but the thing is, she might eat you or whatever. Who's no, Tazzy? This Tazzy? Is, no. It's the amnesia rebirth person. Oh, okay. She's, she's got a propensity to become a ghoul and, and eat and kill people, so I'd just be concerned. Oh. Okay. Rags, look out, okay? Just be careful. I'll, oh, I'll look out. It's a slow process, so I'll, I'll, I'll be able to know beforehand. And All right. You know? Yeah, yeah. Bring a gun. <laughs> Bring a gun. Rags has got a gun. Just a prediction, but mm. I bet the real purpose of this video is to defend the ST by saying the OT has the same issues too. Yeah, that was the main theme, I think. You know what? I think you're correct. It's the thing we've seen before, and it's the thing that we have observed. Well, as we... Uh, uh, that's why... I, you know, showed you the tweets before he'd released the video. He was like, you think you can't do this to the OT as well? You think you can't because it started it all? Well, I'm gonna prove that that's not the case. It's like, who are you talking to? Yeah, they're like, actually who? <laughs> like, I have no idea who says these. It's annoying. To those people. Those people out there who are like, the OT is perfect. Those Said people. nobody. Flawless on all levels. I know, Empire's pretty flawless. Pretty close. It's a pretty neat movie. Um, I just watched Empire Strikes Back the other night, and Han call Leia your highnessness. Watching that movie over 30 years, I never caught that guf and guffawed. Oh, there you go. That's the thing with great stuff. You can always find new things to appreciate. Yep. Yeah. Well, he, yeah, he was, he was totally... Yeah, the, the flirtation between them was great. Yeah. It was as if they were going to get together eventually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it was leading towards something. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Uh, fuck, Mary kill, Nina Hartley, Riley Reed, and Sin Sage. I don't know who any of these people are. No, no, no oh. idea. Okay, um... Since, uh... Ooh, I don't want to kill any of them. Um, because I don't know who the third one is. So, Kill her, uh, then. Yeah, kill her. Nina, okay, <laughs> Nina Hartley, can I choose her young? Sure. Like, a little younger? I, I think so. I think you're allowed. Yeah, when everyone yeah, says, I want to fuck Audrey Hepburn, they're not like, I want to fuck old, frail, cripply Audrey <laughs> Hepburn. You Audrey know? Hepburn's oh. bones in a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> I want to fuck her what, dusty what, bones. What are, what are the, th what's the third name again? So there's Sin Sage, uh, Nina Hartley. Riley Reed. Oh, oh Riley okay. Reed and uh, Paul Star. I would, I would, uh, no. Oh, these porn stars. I'm sorry, I'd have to oh, kill no Sin Sage. And, uh. I God, I, I wouldn't want to marry any of them, but uh, yeah. So I'd fuck uh, Nina Hartley, young, and I guess marry Riley Reed, and uh, look forward to a quick divorce. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Um, I defer to Nidrothic. I trust his judgment. Those are all porn stars. So. Oh, there see, I had no idea who they are. You degenerate. <laughs> I only know well, Fury. I know who. I've heard, uh, I've heard um, Riley Reed totally before as a porn star. That's the only yeah, one that sounds Riley vaguely Reed. familiar out of the three names, yeah. You know, Hartley's in Boogie Google? Nights. Um, she's like, uh, old right, someone said, like, Rex doesn't know who Riley Reed is. Like, no, I have no idea who Riley Reed is. Uh, it's let me look it up. Riley Reed. And what was the Ro first one? Who what was the first name? Nina Hartley. Riley Reed. She's Nina in Hartley. Boogie Nights. No, sorry, okay, the second one then. What was the second one? Riley Reed. Uh, no, okay, Sin what was the third one? Sin Sage. <laughs> Sin, Sin, Sin Sage. Sin Sage. Sin Sage. Sin, sorry, Sin Sage. A G E. A G E. Sin Sage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess she's a model, porn star, or something. Yeah, I have no idea who Riley Reed is. I. I so I was a sure you don't. Sure you don't. I'm like, no, I really have no idea. I could not name a porn star. I, I mean, I guess ooh, uh, Ron Jeremy. Right? He's a, he's okay. a porn star. That's the only porn star I know. Currently in, currently in jail for. Uh... Graping. Oh, he's Jerry's in jail. Damn. Boy. What? He that that creepy old sex guy is a rapist? <laughs> what am I? Oh my goodness. What a surprise. You, that's weird because I look at I look at a Ron Jeremy. I'm like, wow, people would fuck him voluntarily. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. oh. Standing so life is what's strange. The, what's the one she's called? What's she called? She's called Paris somebody. Paris Hilton. No. Um. She's a porno one. Paris Speed. No, no. Okay. Paris, France. The, look, Paris, the chat, Texas. The, chat, the chat's gonna be dirty as fuck. Hell no. This is Paris, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Who, what's the what's the the Paris porn? Paris, one California. Called? Paris, what's she? <laughs> one night in Paris. Paris, Mars. <laughs> the, come on, the, the perfect. Eiffel, my tower. 
The boobs will be on it, this in a sec. The twin always... baguettes and the man who loved them. <laughs> fromage. <laughs> fromage. Le fromage. Fromage. <laughs> fromage. Le boy. Ah, Paris. Uh, I loved you in the fromage. The grass that you brought to the silver screen. Oh, it's it. Toilette. Un peccable. I think we're beating the chat. Wow, chat. You're supposed to answer all the questions. You're supposed to know all of our porn-related questions. Yeah, come on, chat. This is... No, not Paris. Ugh. I don't know. Wombo? Oh, There's gotta be a pornpedia where you can <laughs> go in. <with>. There probably <laughs> is. That sounds your... like it's, it's not called the wiki, it's called the wanky. Victoria <laughs> Paris? <laughs> like Victoria <laughs> Paris? <laughs> no? Wonderful. Uh, Wacky, Wackypedia. <laughs> Wackypedia. <laughs> Winkypedia. <laughs> Not Perez, help me. www.cock.winkypedia. I like a bit of Paris Kennedy. Paris Kennedy. Well, I don't think they're on the list, I'm sorry. Someone has someone probably has the porn collection that rivals the Library of Congress. No, because all the porn is easily accessible at whim from the internet, so I don't have to store it. Exactly. Who stores porn these days? Rags know? probably doesn't even know Mia Khalifa. Oh, I, I Correct. know. I don't know who Mia Khalifa is. I know the is. name. I don't know who that is, though. Is that like Wiz Khalifa's wife? I know. Yes. There's like a, isn't he like a rapper man? Maybe. It, it was poor name is Jizz Khalifa. Jizz Khalifa. Someone's telling me to look up Piper. Oh, that's the meme. <laughs> Piper Perry's the um, the lady sat on the sofa <laughs> with the people behind her. Oh, I Titanic. Gotcha. Oh. Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never knew who was the um, I never knew who was the the originator of that meme. <laughs> this is such a bizarre conversation to have Luigi's Mansion in the background of. Looks like Rags is trolling. I'm not trolling. I'm making funny jokes because that's what I do to cope with you people. But I'm not lying or anything like that. <laughs> I, I, I really don't watch. Uh, I Well, I watch human porn, right? Of course. You know, we need a dog on everything. You enjoy human but, uh, intercourse. <laughs> I enjoy human intercourse. Yeah. But, uh. Wait, I'm picking the uh, leg. I, I don't take. Like, I don't remember the names of the people involved. In fact, I'd rather not. I don't want to humanize them. Mm -hmm. I just want them to, you know, Somebody do their thing. And... Mia Khalifa. Oh, is she Italian? Mia Khalifa. Mia. Oh, Mamma Mia. Well, if she got pregnant, she'd be Mamma Mia Khalifa. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. Um, oh, all bangers today. Oh Speaking of porn stars. Be made. Mm -hmm. All bangers, no mash. <laughs> all <laughs> bangers, no mash. It's like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. Wait. Do, wait, so was the question answered? Did somebody, did we do it? Yeah, did yeah. you get your money's worth? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, we chat. just, that was probably it, right? We did it. Oh, yeah. I have a bit of Mia Khalifa. There you go. You can fucking yeah. kill all of the choices of Mia Khalifa. Uh, I, well, I mean, uh, I don't think Mary, she looks like a fucking train wreck in real life, but um, yeah, a night. There you go, Why? Knight. Why? Because she's yeah. fucking a lot of dudes. I think she's uh, Yeah. Probably. That's the um, job. Uh, watched Bong Joon Ho's Memories of Murder at AMC, then watched Moneyball, Time for Trial of Chicago 7. Good week of uh, watching good movies. Hmm. Good stuff. Glad you keep us updated about those sorts of things. Watching good movies is good shit. Uh, yes, a good movie's great. Well, oh, rags. Any plans for the oh. future Lord of the Rings series minis slash reviews? Me? Uh, probably Ooh. not. I mean, if we hear that it's really bad, maybe we'll EFAP series them. Mm. I'm not sure, but I don't want to promise anything. But if we get nothing but reports on how terrible and disgusting it is, we might watch it to mock it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can guarantee fucking T will be watching the new Batwoman series. Absolutely. The problem even... is that I adore the Lord of the Rings a lot, so yeah. I don't want to make that trade-off of, yeah, we'd have material, but at the cost of the Lord of the Rings, so... What cost? 
But at that's, what cost? That's the question, yeah. man. Uh, I, 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 I can only promise the. I can only promise the first episode of season two of Batwoman. I don't. I can't promise anything more. Just, oh, you lie! Yeah, you'll Ruby watch Rose, all of you it. Think, yeah. You'll watch all of it and you'll love it, and then you'll be like, "Though seriously, this is shit." Well, That's... the good news is, I think uh, the only uh, every series uh, this uh, season is only getting a thirteen episode pickup. Oh. Oh. Yeah, because of the uh, coof. I uh, want them to have a hundred episodes. I think it's probably because they're probably not making money. Big. What? That too. It's weird how they spam episodes. Makes them so much worse, which is good. <laughs> <laughs> My God, look at look at look at Chad Mc McLift's things in this in this this ghost. He's just spooking up the place. Oof. Beat you up. I think people people are just putting porn star names in chat for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hilarious. we're getting demonetized. What do you think about this? <laughs> they want our opinion. They want us to review all of the porn stars. It's only fair. Like I don't know. Like uh, like what's what do they get? like Dixie Normus and stuff like that. <laughs> Dixie Normus. <laughs> Dixie Dixie Normus. <laughs> 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 oh, what hath got right? Porn star name ever. What's you your name? On... Normus. Dixie Normus. Dixie Normus. <laughs> Don't make fun of me. I've heard of all, so just shut up. <laughs> um. Uh. <laughs> Tom Wanks? <laughs> <laughs> Cocky Balboa? <laughs> Cocky Balboa. I get it. Um, oh my god. What? Somebody said Mia Khalifa. I shouldn't read this too shot, but Mia Khalifa was the most notorious porn star, even though she was only active as a porn star for six months. Her family and ISIS wanted to kill her. What? <laughs> no wonder she looked a bit stressed in half those pictures. Yeah. <clears throat> and we, and we <laughs> thought criticizing the sequel trilogy was bad. <laughs> you guys know, know Disney actually has a porn star of their own. Um, uh, it's Jerry Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Poppins. <laughs> Oh, that is now. You shouldn't say Sweet girl. Mia Khalifa is now known, according to Wikipedia, as a media personality, oh. not a porn star anymore. My bad. Sorry. Webcam model and former pornographic actress. Born Indeed. in Beirut, she moved to Maryland in 2001. Could be media porn personality. Media personality. Hmm. Eve up on my birthday. How nice! Let the tism begin. Oh, we we've had so many different tisms tonight. Man, yeah, yeah, I'll, get, I'll get you on the show. Oh. Uh, hi, Wags. Hi. I was hi. brought up about Star Wars when my mum sat me down and made me watch Empire. I fell in love with it, and we happened to have A New Hope and Return of the Jedi too. You can watch any in the original in any order, unlike the sequels. I mean, I suppose you can watch good films in any order. Yeah, yeah the sequels, however, yeah, not being uh, what we would call uh, bad films. I just like the idea that you're like, you know, the sequels, they don't work. And they really don't work when they're out of order. You're like, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's just no hope for them. I agree. Very true. Uh, Red Pill. I don't love The Shining. I think some of the plot elements are underdeveloped, like Jack wishing his wife were dead, or have no payoff, like Danny having The Shine. Hmm. Oh, The Shine, like a name for a horrible STD? Well, it's the, the power, right? The Shinin, as, as Willy calls it. Um, I'd have to rewatch the movie to, to movie. comment. Oh. Well, I haven't seen it in ages, that's my problem. Shining is great. Love the shining. Yeah, I've always. Yeah, I've always uh, it's liked good. It. I just never seen it. That makes you a bad person. Categorically, according to the government. Oh yeah, well, I've seen Extraterrestrial. Oh, that film is fantastic. Everyone should go watch Extraterrestrial. That is a a Goodman, very good film. I, I saw it at the cinema. Oh my god, you did. Oh, yeah. I you did. did? <laughs> 
No, they didn't. <laughs> they wouldn't allow that on theaters. Yes, uh, I watched Extraterrestrial. Yeah. What did you think, As? Give us oh your my review. Goodness. Uh, I cried when he died. <laughs> and what? then uh, wait, what was did you a... say? He. Well, eight, whatever. We don't know the gender, I suppose. Wait, what? No, what are we talking about here? Because there's. What I are thought we you talking were... about? Yeah. You said extraterrestrial, so I thought you were talking about ET. No, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, you. You sweet oh, summer child. Yeah. You had us worried there for a moment. <laughs> no. You had us so no. concerned. <laughs> There's a We're different talking movie. about like the 2014 movie called Extraterrestrial. Starring Michael Ironside. No, I've not. Oh, but hey, what? No. Uh, <laughs> don't get your Sam Fisher. Sam Fisher himself. Well, we watched it. It's going to be coming out possibly on Halloween. EFAP movies. Uh, das Bullshit oh. is currently giving it the look over. We watched it with YMS. It was pretty funny. You're in for a ride if, if I manage to, to, to pop it out around about then. It's a movie. <laughs> Um, it's well, a slasher you... movie, but the Badman is an alien. Oh my god! Oh my god, indeed. Oh man. Will you I... survive watching it? Who knows? I'm just somebody's just in the game. Spoilers as for ET. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined ET. Fucking ET. <laughs> I love I the come... idea that you thought we were talking about that because <laughs> extraterrestrial. <laughs> Who calls that film casually extraterrestrial? You were being silly. Oh right. Well, we were he sort of. Yes, we were, we were. We were being silly in a different way. Yes. Oh my god. Oh my. There's a fire ghost trying to kill me. Rags, help. Uh, here. Let me draw water bucket man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm already looking forward to the next time we play both of those games. That's good They're shit. so good. I, we didn't tell the um, we didn't tell these two, but there there was a third game in that party pack that was so <laughs> shit we didn't even like give it a chance. Oh, Basically, these two it, were gold. It was introducing itself like it was like here are the rules of the game, and by the time it finished, we were like, yeah, so we're not playing this one. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing: you spent a lot of money to have us not play your game. <laughs> yeah, it felt bad because was... like they'd have full on animations for all of it, but once they'd explained the the point of the game, we were like, oof, no, thank you. Mm. Uh, but the other two, fantabulous. And by the way, when I buy a party pack, I just want one of the games to be good because I know that it's hard to make great games on uh, such a limited sort of basis. But yeah, man, they had two bangers, and we haven't even played one of them yet. Still on that pack. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. It's Son of Pian. Oh, that's uh, there's a YouTube channel when who who says. Today's video is a banger. Ah. Huh? So when he I says see. the thing, it's the thing. Um, hello everyone. Midichlorians are basically space atoms. Goodbye everyone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> space atoms what? Space space atoms say what? What? Ah, you're a space atom. Uh, no. uh, hey, Mola, you should check out a video called Halo Ruined First Person Shooters. Thought it might be EFAP worthy. So, yeah, that's wrong. I'm sure someone has sent this in before. My response was like, the only argument I expect them to make that's reasonable is the same one people make for Resident Evil 4 and for Half-Life and for Doom and for a couple of others where they say like, this game made it so loads of other people tried to make the same thing, and it saturated oh, the market. And thank bullshit. fucking god they did. Ugh. Well, this is the oh. thing. It's like you can't. That's a good problem to have for a game, okay? That people are so desperate to copy you because of how good you were. Yeah. God, Halo was. God, I remember playing Halo on the X and just thinking, this is insanely good. Oh. A lot of fond fun. memories of Halo, a lot. Yeah. Halo was, uh, split nominal, screen. you that could argue. Oh, it's got, it's in that title. That split-screen co-op play was so good. This old lady's beating me up, Rags. Do something. Ruin her. Oh, uh, is she my grandma? Or... <laughs> I can't kill her until I have it confirmed that she has kids who have kids. Uh. Oh. I think she does. She's in a house filled with people. Some of them are young. 
<laughs> it could be a nursing home. Stands to reason. Uh, I live in Minnesota, and it snowed 10 inches this week. Santa Trump stole my Halloween. Oh. Oh. Do you guys know about that? Movie Bob said that Trump stole his Halloween. Yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> to, to have you... To have that stolen by Trump, oh. Yeah, I, I didn't would think be, he had the power, but... Oh. I'd be incredibly bitter, too, if I thought something like that. Yeah, I responded, told him he had to be a grown man for uh, this year. Yeah. He had, to, he had to dress up as a grown man? <laughs> as a grown-ass yeah. man, yeah. Ah, I see. He might be tough. Yeah, maybe. I don't know if he can pull it off, but I guess we'll find out. My god, Rex, she's firing knitting needles at me. Stop her. Oh, that sounds painful. Yeah. Yet thematically appropriate. Yeah, I'd say it matches. Uh, uh, speaking of The Empire Strikes Back, I might go watch it at AMC. Yeet. Go for it. Yeah, absolutely go for it. It's good. It holds up really well. It's not a regretful thing to watch. I can say that much. Uh, EFAP coverage idea. CinemaSins videos on Lord of the Rings. Three of them are only ten minutes long and Return of the King was deleted but re-uploaded. Let's say he says things about Boromir and Faramir. Oh, oh he better not say anything about my boys. Oh, dangerous territory, that one. Boromir never, and Faramir are fucking heroes. I've never thought to check out CinemaSins on Lord of the Rings. They're probably so cringe. <laughs> They're probably like... Oh my god. It can't be worse than Cinema Venom. What is his name? Cinematic, Cinematic Venom? Venom. That's the one, yeah. That is a... You know, we say that a lot. It can't be worse than X. Well, that one is currently one is sitting special, as, though. like, possibly worst video. He argued that Gimli oh. wanted Frodo and Sam dead, Rags. Come on. That's ins that is insane. <laughs> That's some next level shit. Uh, Frick, Marry, Kill, Princess Jasmine, Princess Kida, and Princess Belle. Who's Princess um, Kida? So Kida's from Atlantis. Ah. Uh, I'm I'm fucking Jasmine. We're fucking Jasmine, and that that's just obvious. Um, gonna marry Kida because that makes me royalty, and mm. Bell can die. <laughs> <laughs> Rip Bell. <laughs> so sorry, Bell, but you don't bring that much to the table. Jasmine also royalty insanely oh wait 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 yeah so hmm all right let's okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some flipping we're going to so the, the thing with bell is that she marries into royalty which isn't that impressive mm. um she's fine though uh she's i'm sure she's very smart um so I think I might swap Kida and Jasmine. Jasmine is definitely the most fuckable. Um, however, her kingdom is like above ground for starters. Uh, so let's marry Jasmine. I'll fuck Kida and uh, kill Bell. Someone said Jasmine's fourteen. That's fucking bullshit. Have you seen her cans? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. This is all under the assumption that you transmit cartoon characters into the real world, and they actually are of correct ages for. The purpose of the question. <laughs> it would be pointless asking 14, that otherwise. That's bullshit. Um, hi, Rags. I just hi. Over my Seven Up Mojito. <laughs> you laughing at? And it, was, and it was an unopened can. I have no idea how, but when it fell over, it fucking burst. It burst. You sound yeah. quiet. Yeah. Why are, you, why are you far away from Mike? What are you doing? <laughs> because I've been mopping up 7-Up oh. Mojito all over the desk. 7-Up Mojito? Yeah. Damn. That sounds horrendous. <laughs> well, I, I, I thought it sounded interesting, so I bought one. And then I had to suck some of it because oh, it was no. going everywhere. And then I was like, hmm, it's just minty 7-Up. That's not very nice. So it was so bad you'd rather clean up the mess than drink it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. That's, that's pretty, that sounds pretty bad. That is the opposite of an endorsement, everyone. Yeah. Don't get 7-Up Mojito. Not good. Hi, Mola. Hello. Hi, Rags, you handsome doggo. Oh, thank you, and hello. Mola and Co. I enjoy all your content. Keep it up. Have any of you guys played Squadrons yet? Opinions? No. Uh, I have not. Star Wars game, not. right? Yeah. I have not played it. Haven't played it yet, no. 
ever since fucking dickwad Mitch was just like just as since we're talking about this character they go by the pronouns they them so fuck off dickhead what is this in oh that's like the ad for squadrons is it well no he's the guy that the guy that wrote it put out on twitter is just like since we're all talking on the day of release by the way he didn't say it before release no 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 on the day of release, when people had actually bought it, it was just like, this character, by the way, can we, <laughs> her pronouns, their pronouns are they, them. Like, fuck off. Well, you gotta make sure you get it right. That character might get upset. No, he can get upset. I'll call him what I fucking want. Right now, it's a bitch. Oh my god. Oh, shit. Oh, that toxic masculine. Uh, also, ESP is best Star Wars. Sorry, naysayers. Well, well, well. That's a ESP? toxic perspective. Empire Strikes Back? Yeah? What, what did you think? I thought was? you said ESP for a second, and I was like, wait, what? Empire Strikes Penis. <laughs> oh, no. Empire Strikes Penis. It is the best, though. I thought that was... I, like, I figure that's almost unanimous. I, Most people seem to agree with that, but, you know, there are always some, some people out there who are like, nah, sequel people, trilogy, man. man. Sequel trilogy is where it's at. It's a wrong thing. Hey, look, some people really like... That that last of the Jedi is all right. Oh, no, my key blocks. <laughs> I'm helping Trump from Russia by donating to EFAP. Well, we we are actually here to uh, support Trump through Star Wars analysis. That is true. That's right. We're here to install the rise of fascism in some systems through talking about Star Wars. That's right. That's Trump's evil plan. Well, a lot of people don't catch that in between sentences when I'm criticizing Star Wars, I'll just go like, vote Trump. Anyway, so yeah, yeah, it's really weird that the cartoon is like, <laughs> like wait a Very minute. subtle. Oh my God. Uh, aftershave or cologne? Also, high rags. Hello. I don't really use either, honestly. Yeah, I haven't found um, much of a need to use them. Yeah, don't really. Hmm. Antiperspirant deodorant. <laughs> what are you, Gary? Yeah, I... I have a pleasant natural aroma. Mm. Oh, um, I I don't use antiperspirant or deodorant. I don't. Uh, I I don't know if I have a condition. It's a good one. I don't have body odor. <laughs> yeah, you're happy with whatever so, the condition is. Yeah, yeah. I also, can, uh, high ranks. Hello. Marry, fuck, kill, little sister, big sister, twin brother. What the fuck? What? <laughs> what? What? Twin brother. Uh, like, now, this is this a Bioshock thing? Well, it seems like a Bioshock thing up until they said twin brother. Little sister, big sister, twin brother. Like the the, the, the Latouse twins? Latouse? I, I don't know if that's what they're referring to. That seems weird. Lutess? Robert Lutess. Um, I don't know. I Well, I ain't fucking the little sister. No. I don't really want to marry her either. I guess you gotta. Do we kill? This question's I, not fair. Yeah, I guess. Um, I can't marry her either, so I guess the kid's dying. Good job. I guess well, you I don't could know. marry them and take care of them. Save her life, even though it's you know it's it's a moral quandary that we find ourselves in. We'll just marry her, right? Yeah, I suppose so. Look after her. She'll be all right. And when people are like you can't marry them that young, but like I was given a horrible choice by a crazy wizard. Yeah, do you, you want me to fuck her to save her <laughs> life? Like, what do you want me to do here? The wizard so, made and, us. And also, we know from Bioshock 1 that if you get the good ending, uh, they'll take care of you. So. Exactly, they don't They don't mm -hmm. want to kill you. They just want to stab Atlas over and over again. Ow. Oh, spoilers for, uh, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. Yeah, I think you're okay. <laughs> um... <laughs> Mola, I'm dressing you up for Halloween. I hope I do you justice. Also, hey, Rex. Hello. Also, they said dressing up as you, not dressing me up. <laughs> That's a different oh, thing. I'm gonna dress you up. I was you gonna add questions party, to that, man. but all right. You gonna look party. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson's tweet on Halloween was absolutely correct. Adults need to stop participating in children's activities. That being Halloween. Apparently that is childish to engage in. What? Yeah, I mean, Paul Joseph Watson says a lot of stupid shit, so it doesn't really surprise me. It's just like, right, Halloween... He he, he phrased the tweet as, like, seriously, like, it's for children. Stop. And I, I just, I'd be curious, like, is watching horror movies, like, for Halloween as a fun little thing you do with your family, is that going too far, I wonder? 
Are adults just not supposed to have fun? No. In, no. Jo in, in, in Watson world? <laughs> I guess so. Like, no fun allowed. That's the that's the tweet where I quoted said, eat a spooky dick. That's, I'm proud of that. Oh, <laughs> clever. Spooky dicks is scary. <laughs> oh, spooky dicks. <laughs> I won't stick around. Spooky. I'm at least 50 EFAPs behind, but I got called a sleep sheep and a filthy casual for critiquing Destiny 1 and 2. Your thoughts? Uh, I know when I played Destiny 2, I didn't like it, so... I remember I thinking know, I I hate everything's thinking. videos on them were pretty good, so... I've not played yeah. them, but I am I am of the camp that they weren't very good from what I'd seen. Uh, Destiny 2 released terribly, uh, but it's really good now. Mm. Hmm. But it, yeah, it was, it was horrendous. It was a, you know, it's fucked up by Activision. Uh, and then when the... Um, uh, the rights went back to Bungie, and Activision's no longer involved. Bungie have worked their fucking ass off, and it is a really, really good game now. Are you still mopping up the thing, by the way? Because you're, you're very quiet. Oh, uh, How much is that really can? far away? Uh, sorry, I'm sticking things in places to try and get it out. Oh my god. Okay. I, oh I, my. I, I, Too I much information. not working as a keyboard should <laughs> Get my ass. <laughs> Look, I gotta uh, put I've... things in certain places. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta put these. It's things. really awkward right now. <laughs> uh, thankfully, I do have um, a spare keyboard, a brand new untouched keyboard in case this one is nice. attacked by seven up mint all over it. Yeah. 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 It is a contingency we all need to prepare for. Yes. Uh, be prepared, as the Boy Scout say. Be prepared. Is that, I'm, I'm that's, like back to normal volume bound. Yeah. That's also a song in Hoodwinked. Hey chat. Any of you know that shit? The I goat, know Hoodwinked. The goat that sings the the Be Prepared song. And it's funny because you just made me think about like, oh yeah, that's Scar's song too. Damn. They really <laughs> trying to take that crown. It's okay. That's also the Boy Scout motto. It's be prepared. Oh. Press, press, yeah. press X to baby. So true. Uh, writes nerd rotic on parchment. Postmarked Krampus. Oh no. Krampus. That's a bad thing, right? Yeah. Uh, hello from Brazil. A nice job on that Fallout 76 video, Mola. Have some money for it. No, oh, well, yeah, I think I worked really hard on that. Fallout 76 is a bad man. Uh, Rags, you probably agree with that, right? Fall 76 not very good. I'm fucking getting flashbacks already. <laughs> uh, also, I'm watching all EFAPs, and I just finished EFAP Gaming 2. Oh, that puts you like two years ago, then. Getting there. Nice. Yeah, we, we You we might catch out, up like, to us. A whole bunch of EFAP. We even had an EFAP Gaming cameo in this podcast. How about that? Uh, Bly Manor Episode 8. What an episode, man. 10 out of 10. Is that the black and white one? Yeah, and and you know what? That was my favorite. It's a really cool. It is a story that acts as the support for a larger story. It's really cool. Very nice. Um, want to see some good rat? Then watch Vinland Saga. You massives. Hi Ragda and hi Molur. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Vinland Saga has been recommended before. I remember that one. That name. Who knows what will happen in the future? Uh, uh, Kanye on Joe Rogan said prequels are better than Disney sequels. Really? Well, there you go. <laughs> Man like, is enlightened. Uh, yeah, like of all the things they could talk about. <laughs> like, hey, you know the sequels? They're so shit. Uh, Bly Manor is a masterpiece and Amnesia is bad. I'm lost in the woods with these opinions. Yeah, I don't believe you. I mean... Amnesia Rebirth is bad, and Bly Manor is a masterpiece. I don't know what to tell you, I'm sorry. Uh, this one has a little cake, thank you very much. Whoa, yummy. Looks like EFAP's back on the menu, boys. That's true. We, we, we didn't go anywhere, though. We were here last week. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, I Rags and Longman. Hello. Hello. Thoughts on Clone Wars 03? I'm, I'm guessing the, series? the third the episode or series? season three. I don't know. I don't like what I've seen, but that was a long time ago. So who knows if it's actually good? Yeah. Seems to be, uh, you know, well-respected. 
I would say it's both well respected and well hated on. It seems that it depends really who you ask. Uh, when I showed a friend the PT, we saw it between episodes two and three, and I thought it helped connect them somewhat. It was cool. Oh, there you go. I would hope there was fun to be had. Mauler, Rags, and remaining guests, in your best black accent, please say, I don't want to be 20 cent. Um... I don't want to... I don't... I don't, mm. <laughs> don't want to be 20 cent. What is that a reference to? Like, I know 50 cent, but like, is, what is about that specifically? Oh, he, uh, he saw the taxes in New York, and he's like, I don't want to be 20 cent. I want to ah. be 50 cent. And so he endorsed uh, Trump. I don't want to be and then, uh, 20 cent. Oh, Hooked up. Chelsea Manning told him she had to remind him that he was black or something. Damn. A white girl. Yeah. That's mm. always good. I'm pretty sure that's against the rules. Yeah, you I'm ain't. I'm pretty black. sure it is. Oh, there's a lot of them doing it. Real black people want to lose money. Exactly. Uh, the Wombat Mobile is great. Your critiques are poor. <laughs> Look, I am excited to see it in action, okay? Can't wait. Instead of, like, uh, the engine at the back, it's just gonna have, like, a tampon string. Wow. You must hate women so much. I do. I'm a misogynist. That's why you started the channel, admit it. Yeah, I, I do. I confess it all. There you go. Exclusive on EFAP, everyone. <laughs> You've um, heard rumors. It's confirmed. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag cancel uh, as because banning you from Twitter was just step one. Oh my god. <laughs> that was just to get you to loosen up. We shall destroy you. Oh my god, my 12 hours is, is up soon, I think. Oh. That was very short lived, wasn't it? I was like, oh, I'll get back on Twitter. I just got to go on EFAP and once. I'll be uh, back once we're finished. Okay, I've um, forgotten how to activate these ghosts. Still locked out. Oh, there we go. Um, money for the good boy, lengthy chat for the long man, and something for the other guys, I guess. Whatever. Hi, Wags, Rags, Raj, Rags, Raggles, and Rag. Oh, hello! Mm. This one just says Wombo Noises. I don't know where they've gotten that from. Crazy. Well, uh, oh, that would be- oh, no, I thought we do. We do hide. <laughs> we do hide. Uh, it's a nice little Shiba Inu Im uh, sticker, I think they're called, yeah. Oh, hooray, hey. Um, at least Starlight's actress is a total babe. I, I mean, take whatever victories you can get, I suppose. Yeah. Starlight. Holy Shiba, Chris is massive. His arms are bigger than Abby. His Superman punches zombies across the room. How many steroids does he take? All of them. Yeah. You think there's a limit? There isn't. He just takes them all. So your dick shrinks into a into a muscle that he can punch vagina. people with. Yeah, it just turns into another fist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a, called a womb raider. Uh, Yo, Mola, I recommend checking out Gura Gore's playthrough of Amnesia Rebirth. She was a big fan of the first and was confused at the end due to its badness. Oh, it wouldn't surprise me if I start hearing more and more about people's takes on Rebirth after liking Amnesia. I know that PewDiePie's been playing through it, right? I don't know if anyone has been watching it. I don't know if he ended up thinking it was kind of shit. I'd be interested to know. Because I do wonder if, like, it's more beneficial to just try and enjoy it when you've got an audience of that size, where you're just like, let's just have some fun. Or is he... I can't imagine anyone not being critical of the stupid jump scares. I just don't see how anyone couldn't be, like, annoyed by them. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll find you. Uh, also, watch Primal. Awesome show. Anyone here seen Primal? I have not. Neither have I. Primal was the dinosaur BBC show. Oh, it. is it that one? I thought that's it was the Jenny oh, No, no, no. That, that's the Tortikoski. Yeah, yeah. That is good. That is really good. I uh, I watched uh, the first season of that. That was. Somebody recommended it on Friday Night Tights. That was really good. I was thinking, God, what the hell was I thinking of? That stupid time travel dinosaur show from 2012. 
Oh, the, 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 what? Were they, uh, oh, where uh, they're going to the portals. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. I, I was gutted it got cancelled. Does it uh, start yeah. one of the S Club 7 people? Yeah, Hannah. Hannah. Yep, yep, yep. That's the only thing I know about that show. <laughs> also, it stars Boff from Johnny English in it. <laughs> they, they, they are the two fun facts I have. I never watched it, though. I think I saw, like, one episode on TV once. No, but Primal's good. Mm. Get a moment. Take oh, a yeah, look. Had, was it one season and that was it? One season and out? Yep. Really? So, I like it, it was on, on yeah, BBC yeah. America only for one season that I remember. Damn. Dinosaurs and time travel. What more can you want? A little better special effects. Okay. Probably. <laughs> yeah, they were kind of... <laughs> The dinosaurs are just eating everyone. Yep, as they Checking do. Checking into the portals and eating people. That's the that's, that's what they should be doing. Let's be fair. Yes. Uh. Do, 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 do. Bonjour, Mola. Comment ça va? Noël est milieu que le Halloween. Qu'est-ce que vous pensez de Limitless? Limitless, that's a film with Bradley Cooper. It was okay. I didn't like it hugely, but then I saw the inferior Scarlett Johansson one. What was it called? The stupid f movie where they're like, you only use 10% of your braid. What if you use 100? Then she becomes like a superhuman. Lucy. Sorry? Lucy. Lucy. Ah, that's the one. Yep. Yep. Uh, Limitless was the better version of that, but I still remember Limitless being kind of to me as well. Um, C'est un de mes films préférés. Mais seulement pour des raisons subjectives. Et bonjour, Ragu, mon massif. Ah, bonjour. Again, I don't know what that bon other ami. thing said. I'm going to Google it. Why don't we have a French person on our podcast, Rags? Why do you hate French we people? We hate the French. Oh. Translate. <laughs> Gotta be typing <laughs> French and shit. Ranch. This is one of my favorite films, but only for subjective reasons. Oh, that's probably in relation to Limitless. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I remember enjoying Limitless. I haven't seen it in ages, though. Um, I've had a lot of issues with the boys, but here's my EFAP critique. If Starlight gets power from electricity, wouldn't Stormfront supercharge here? Yoda? Uh, yeah, that's I, a good question. I thought we brought that up. Didn't we bring that up? I think we, we did. did. Yeah. But yeah, agreed. Um, Starlight Good should... observation. And it would have been cool, I think, as a big finale payoff that Stormfront is like, lol, I can beat all of you, and then she fires it at St Starlight, and Starlight's like, yo, I'm about to turn this shit back on you, skadoosh, and like, burns her face off or some shit. But I think they forgot, and yeah. R remember the Iron Fleet and how that got forgotten? That was a good time. Great. Everyone really liked that. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, no, my keyboard's not working. <laughs> my Saturday just got better. Have a good stream, you massives. Yeah, we're at uh, eight and a half hours. Yeah. Going, going steady. <laughs> well, I'm I'm going to bed. <laughs> I said I was going to bed in about 15 minutes, and that was nearly an hour ago. So. Uh, that's, just, the, that's the EFAP curse, man. Just let us yeah, know I, when I, you want to escape into the sleeplands. I'm going to escape into the sleeplands and Very give well. my keyboard chance to um try off because it's not working and i have to switch it out with the other one tomorrow don't worry i completely understand but before you go do you want to tell yeah, everyone no. why they should be subscribed to you and also maybe move closer to your microphone when you do it <laughs> i i i am i am literally lip lip against mike <laughs> right huh. here. something weird he's going giving on, his mic head well i think pouring i think the mojito has caused some issues with the sound on the keyboard oh no the, curse oh, you mountain dew if, 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 if that do anything anything at all maybe literally look you can, you can uh, i got you right on it <laughs> well, <laughs> i think they can hear you so it's all good uh if you want to subscribe to my channel that's cool if you don't don't worry mate um and uh just thank you for having us on it's really cool uh and i was, I was so uh chuffed and honored to be part of the uh the latest epap meme lord of the rings meme uh with jeremy it was uh it was fantastic and to be part of the um little uh print out cardboard figures uh, oh of course yeah yeah that's all from uh ifab.me kibikins yeah, is killing it, it. Just, just, Absolutely wonderful. A true, true honor.
Uh, true honor. It's always nice to be here. It's lovely to be on this channel. So, well, thank, thank you so you. much for uh, joining us for it. eight and a half hours, you legend. Mm. Giving us some good company. Always nice to hear from you. And uh, yeah, enjoy being back on Twitter, I suppose. <laughs> I, I, well, I'm gonna go to bed now. So fuck it. <laughs> I like that you wake up on Twitter like, you're allowed back on now, and you're like, hey, fuck, <laughs> whatever. They want me to give them their, they want them, they want me to give them my phone number. And I'm just like, no. Look, they just want to chat with you. They like you. Yeah. I'm not going to give you my phone number. Fuck up. Wow. You can't come back onto Twitter if you don't. Okay, bye. <laughs> That's what it'll be. Absolutely. But yeah, uh, sleep well, sir. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you. You take care, everyone. Thank you for watching indeed, chat. You've been awesome. And yeah. see you later, Gary, as well. Bye, bye. Later, Raz. Goodbye. Bye. And then there were three. And there were three. Jeez, Gary. Eight and a half hours. What are you doing? You nuts? Uh, I'm going to hang for like 15 more minutes. I just wanted to hang longer than him. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> nah. well, uh... I'm having fun. It's been a, it's been a strange one, but I hopefully would assume a fun one for for chatterinos over there. Um, I'm probably gonna complete Luigi's Mansion before we end this stream. I do that a lot. Luigi's Mansion is just a short game, you know, for pros, for MLG gamers. Um, yeah, I can't stay. Got D and D, but I can't wait to see the tism you go through today. Oh. Well, you'll love it. It's it was, great. Yeah, it was a tism for sure. High quality tism. 75% uh, of the Batwoman fan club back together again. Let the mental times begin. Like I said, uh, we'll be checking out the uh, the Dorman, hopefully with Jay Longbone and uh, Az. That's going to be some... That'll be the true reunion. And catch up on our, on our Lady of the Ruby. The Rose herself. Uh, you guys heard of the Invincible? Sci-fi game being made by ex-CDPR dev... Based on a book by Polish author Stanislav Stanislaw Leon Lem, I'm not sure. No, I I haven't heard of that. No. You might like it. Stream on. Yeah, I've not heard anything about that. Hmm, maybe. Hmm. Wow, it's a murders murders row lineup of amazing YouTube talent. Yeah, I mean we you know very lucky to have everybody uh, turning up today. Thank you all so much. It's been good. Sh I feel like we all have some good chemistry when discussing how things are going in the old media lens these days. Yep. Um, Bat Boys Season 2. I mean, <laughs> combo them up, why not? Maybe, maybe Batwoman would be improved if everything got really violent. Um, I mean, it is nah, really I'm violent, isn't it? I was, I was about to say, like, they already do it. It's weird in Batwoman. Like, do you yeah. There was like no violence for ages, and then they they like rip people's faces boom, off. skin. Yeah, it yeah. was weird. Damn. It was that we had two kind of brutal ones back to back. It's like a new show director took you know, you know took the helm of things. Yeah, it's like he was like, wait, we have like a fifteen rating. Like, damn, can we just can we just blow up some heads? I don't know. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh. The strange thing about American TV is something changed. I don't know when it changed, but uh, exactly. But you still can't show. You can show a little more sex or a lot more sex than you used to be able to. But like the violence has been, you know, far surpassed that. And I think it was probably because of, uh, a lot of those, uh, like bones. You know, like where I don't know if you ever uh, David Boreanaz's show Bones. Yeah, yeah, I watched he did that for years and years. Yeah. I liked it, but it was like, it would always come on at dinner time. My wife was watching it and I'm like, you know, carving into a steak and there's like this, you know, melted dead <laughs> body that they're like peeling the skin off you of wanna, and stuff like that. So yeah. You want to know the one I remember weirdly? Cause I watched like a good five seasons of that show or something. But the one I remember is that there's an opening line, a storyline where this, they're unveiling a big chocolate bar and there's a dead person inside of it. Yes. <laughs> I remember, like, that stuck with me. I was just like, what the fuck? Why is there a giant chocolate bar with a skeleton inside it? Like, how did this happen? <laughs> and she's always got to figure out, like, where the bones came from. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called Bones. Yeah. Yeah. Very aptly and named. They, and as far, yeah, and the longer, you know, the longer the show went on, the more ridiculous it got yeah. as far as where bodies were. Had to keep trying, sort of outdoing themselves. 
Turns out there's a dead body in my pocket. Oh, there he is. Oh, <laughs> what if there. they found bones inside someone's bones? Mm. Like a mini skeleton inside yeah. of your skeleton. The biggest mystery ever. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I haven't watched The Boys. I was really confused last episode. It sounds like a weird show. It's always fun watching you guys, though. Well... Oh, yeah, it's a weird one. When we do season breakdowns, um, hopefully it can be consumed by people who haven't even seen what the show is. And I saw a couple of um, sort of responses from people who had not watched The Boys saying, like, oh, yeah, I could follow along. I was like, oh, good. Um, it is weird. We, we, we spend ten hours talking about an entire season, so I hope that, uh, you know... It, it, People who have no idea what it is were able to follow along, I guess. California utility PG&E plans to cut electricity to one million residents tomorrow due to fire risk. Just let people remove underbrush. Yeah, we didn't do that. We haven't done it in the last couple of years uh, to save a squirrel. And hmm. that's why half the state burned. Damn. There's a lot of kindling. Going on there. So. Now all the squirrel, now the squirrel doesn't have a home. So yeah, it, it, di it died screaming. It died <laughs> no, screaming. Burning alive. Yeah. <laughs> little, like, just a good job. Got little squirrel kebabs. Okay. There's like actual video yeah. of it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at what you've done. Uh, if the boys season two cut every scene without Homelander, almost nothing of value would have been lost. He's a different caliber of character altogether. Cut every scene without Homelander, nothing of value will be lost. Um, I mean, I didn't really like any of the scenes with or without him, so... <laughs> I don't know, I guess I'm, I'm more on the hot take team than that. Comet so, even is. Yeah, like... I mean, as briefly as you can, like, uh... What was your main beef with the show? Mm, I don't want to say power inconsistencies because I feel like I'm not as much annoyed by that as I am <sighs> losing <sighs> all my investment in the sort of the overall idea that a group of people who know that superheroes are fucking with the world because they're so powerful and they're going to stop them. I lost investment in that when Butcher blew up a baby, Starlight killed someone and didn't give a shit, and uh, sort of like... Uh, Frenchie shot a security guard. I, I started to think, like, why are you guys any better than the soups at this point? I don't know. And so it's like, w w do you care if they succeed? I'm like, not really. Um, that would be, like, my sort of personal issue with it all. As for, like, you know, in terms of a continuity thing, like, all the problems. I think the, the power inconsistencies are actually, like, some of the craziest shit I've seen. Like, nobody is able to do what they're supposed to do, depending on what the plot wants. Yeah, there's a lot of convenient stuff. Did you like uh, the first season, Rags? Um, I liked it. I don't think it was that good, but I um, I liked it. We were definitely interested for season two. We were still yeah. definitely with the characters for the most part. Yeah, I liked Homelander. Uh, curious and I curious what they Butcher. were going to do. I was invested in the yeah. boys succeeding. Yeah. Yeah, the boys. Oh. That's the that my biggest beef was the, just the characters. You're, what you just said. I I don't care about anybody. Uh, like Huey is supposed to be your surrogate, and I don't know if it's the actor. I just don't give a crap about that guy at all. And and he's different in the book, obviously. Mm -hmm. And and the book like goes crazier, and it's more focused on the superhero stuff, uh, and and not as much of the drama. And I know you got to change that for TV and for the normies out there. Um, but yeah, it, it it's uh it's it's. When the boys can't do anything, when they're sitting back and watching, and then when they do stuff, it's terrible. But they're supposed to actually fight them, you know, and instead of having the soups come in and fight for them or having the female do everything. And, uh, yeah, it was just kind of a bummer to see the butcher neutered. And then, uh, uh, yeah, the, he, the biggest difference was, the you know, Becky was dead the whole time in the books. So that was kind of done with. And it almost feels like at the end of season two, we're now at the point where the boy starts in the comic. Way out of order, though. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but yeah, it's still this season. I just didn't care about anybody. I was just, you know, let's watch Homelander do some horrific things and then nothing. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably watch season three as long as I'm watching it with people because 
Yeah. I won't be able to stand that shit otherwise. <laughs> I need to be able to laugh at it. And, uh, I'll be, I am curious where they're going to go, but I feel like we're in for disappointment. Yeah. I just, I just hope no more characters are radicalized by memes in that world, you know? It'll end yeah. badly. Um... I can't st oh wait I read that 75% of the Batwoman fan club back together oh wait I read that one sorry um doo -doo. throwing stars are not usually lethal unless they are poisoned that's why the guy would be fine after getting hit by one it's realistic uh Metatron made a video about the effectiveness of ninja stars I can believe that have we I can't think of what we've covered in today's EFAB that has anything to do with ninja stars do you guys remember anything no I know that um, in the boys' stream, which we're going to get to the Super Chats of that for, but uh, I complained that MM gets hit by a ninja star and it knocks him out of the fight, but it doesn't do any permanent damage. And so I was like, you can't have both, you have to have one or the other. Either the ninja star did fuck all to him and he gets back up, which is probably what it should have done. Or it hurt him so much that he's going to need medical attention, you know? But, uh, yeah, you know, it doesn't matter what the injury is, the show will just be like, ah, oh, fuck it, they're, they're feeling this now. You're like, okay. Um, it's that time of year, now I can finally ask you all, have you seen Over the Garden Wall, the miniseries on Cartoon Network? And if so, thoughts? I have got no idea what that is. Nope. Say that one more time? Uh, Over the Garden Wall. Miniseries on Cartoon Network. I have heard of it, but I have not seen it. Well, there you go. Oh, I've got all the Mario parts. Fuck. I gotta go see me a crazy psychic person. Um. Empire Strikes Back is bad. I find your lack of faith disturbing, whoever you are. Also, hi, Rags. Hey. Cheers, drinker. And Wumbo Wumbo. Wumbo, indeed. Um. Not sure why you guys liked Bly Manor. There was some big plot stuff. Why is the Lady of the Lake apparently dormant during the time the parents were alive? Why were the children never taken? So she's not dormant. She just comes in very non-often. But that is one of the, the issues. Um, we've never claimed Bly Manor's perfect. Just that it's uh, very, very tight for the most part. And as for why were the children never taken? Because they were never in her way. They knew to stay out of her way. Yep. Uh, what do you think about another God of War coming out so soon after the fourth game? Possibly lower quality and poorer writing worries me. Yeah, th those would be the reasonable fears to have. Um, gotta, gotta hope against fear, I suppose. Uh, I guess they're working from an engine that's already established, so it makes sense that it wouldn't take them as long to make it, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll see. Um, hi. Any VPN recommendations for sailing the seven seas? Probably the, I... the ones people always talk about, I guess? Like, yeah, I, I don't really have much of a preference of one over the other. I, I forget is, which is one it, I use. Is it honestly. NordVPN is the super cool kid one? That's what a lot of people do. They use NordVPN. Um, I imagine that one works sure pretty well. probably plenty that work just totally fine. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you said TLJ doesn't break time and space. Finn and Rose teleport between the fleet and Canto Bight. How close is that planet supposed to be? Uh, well, you say teleport. They use hyperspace. So... In, in Star Wars, that essentially acts as a way to be able to get to uh, anywhere you need to go. I feel like that's fair. We can allow them to get to Canto Bight and back through uh, hyperspace. Bum, 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 bum. Glad to message Nerdrotic away from his channel. They are censoring your super chats, Gary. Is that true? They, I, yeah, I don't know. I hope not. But I've heard that. Yeah, I got a couple of emails. So I couldn't use the words primate or monkey during a Planet of the Apes discussion without YouTube flagging. The f <laughs> wow! <laughs> wow! Can't you be talking about monkeys and primates. Effing kidding me! Wow. Uh, you know what? Uh, um, I'm, I'm. There's weird stuff going on. I, I'm not like one of those YouTube conspiracy theorists. That, like they have to update the platform. Sometimes the algorithm gets screwed up. 
Um, and then like sometimes your channel can get caught in it. Sometimes it won't. I don't know if it's like uh, or after you or anything. But that being said, there was this big thing that came, we went over at Friday night called a trans transparent tube or transparency tube. And I'm on a list. I checked for you guys. You're not on it, so you'd be happy. Wait, um, what was this list? Sorry, uh, this I list heard that is. I was. Uh, is did, here, Someone I can check linked pictures of all of us. Oh no! And some you... of the people we hang out with. Hang on, because I can actually <laughs> uh, search you on this, and uh, I was on it. Like I'm, I'm right anti anti SJW, so I'm like firmly in the right thing. Oh, it's like I've I, definitely got anti SJW on mine as well. Yeah. And um, we've got. It said Fringy was right. It said Tim Pool was right. Yes. Yeah. So well, like, um, okay. I, I said this in the Discord, but I was like, so the idea, I think, is you don't listen to anybody who's right wing. So if someone says to you something you don't like, call them right wing, like uh, uh, from their perspective when they made it. So say, for example, a channel says TLJ is shit and they don't do anything else for your team. It's like, nah, fuck it, they're right wing. And you're like, OK, because uh, a lot of these are automatic. I wonder how many people are going to assume now that like EFAP is some kind of the hardcore right-wing podcast because of this weird program. I kind of hope it's not that influential, but it's weird how many people have shared it already. It is. Here it is. There's transparency tube, and I can search. Let's see. Because I'm closer right. to the middle than I am the far right. So oh, there you are. The no, rags, you're you right. Anti-SJW. What does okay. it mean to be right versus partisan right? Is like partisan right when you're like super right? All right. Like you treat yeah, everything uh, as yeah, partisan. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a nice way of saying. Far How right. am I partisan right? What the fuck? <laughs> You're partisan right? Yeah. How the fuck are you further right than me? Well, that's the funny thing is that not only that, but Mueller is right while I am partisan right. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> You never Sometimes talk I'll about search politics you. on your channel. Well, as you and you're not there. My my live self is more right than my re-uploaded self. You see. Well, ah. after the filter, you know, after you got some time to calm down, <laughs> I guess. Yep. I mean, there's any funny results, but everyone's like, "Oh, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good site." It's like, no, it's not. Just it's yeah, we'll just name our channel Efar. It's an Efar right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure this guy did it on his free time. He was it wasn't paid for, wasn't biased at all. Nah. nah. Well, it's just gonna be really helpful for all those people who consider watching my videos but won't watch anybody from the right and just sees that. I guess that's just gonna be fun. I feel like it's almost made to make people, uh, like as, as claim what their politics are rather than just getting on with shit. It's like, haha, you will be labeled as this unless you correct us. Yeah. They're dying to <laughs> label is more moderate. So. Moolah's just a calm dude, you know? Yeah. Uh, Ray teleports uh, in the most unfindable place in the galaxy. I don't understand time and space at all in TLJ. Again, well, it's just hyperspace. We don't really make uh, sort of high claims about this ever in Star Wars. They don't take the time to explain exactly how hyperspace works, and I honestly think that's to their benefit. At least in the movies, yeah. I mean. Uh, Mola, how is the Last of Us 2 vid coming? Or oh, you dropped it. I'm working on the boys' uh, season 2 video first, and then I'll go back to the Last of Us 2 that is in a sort of state that I, I'm able to pick back up. Funnily enough, I'm actually paused on the boys' video while I'm sorting out Hill House and Bly Manor. But those aren't going to be as long in terms of production. They're uh, the EFAP miniseries. I'll probably talk a bit more about that when we uh, close out the stream. Uh, Muller, I watched you die to the same enemy the same way a dozen times in a row. Do you know the definition of insanity? I think you might be bad at Sonic games. Listen, as I've said before, I am okay with being bad at Sonic games. That is fine with me. I have come to peace with that. I will be able to move on with my life. And, uh, and this says, Hail Zack Snyder. I mean, some people will agree with that, I'm sure. Uh, hey Az, get Rakita and Drex on the EFAP? Perhaps one day. Hmm. 
Have you guys ever talked about Utopia on Amazon? Probably the wokest show ever made, worth dissecting and discussing. I have no idea what that is. It's Amazon Utopia? Yeah. I'm not sure was emailing it is. me about that last night. Uh... What is, uh, do you know anything about it? Let's see, let me check the Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, it looks like it's... Um... Average tomato meter is 52%, so yep. I guess... Uh, it's the, it. it says, Utopia's cast and mystery at times transcend its overtly cynical and overly violent tendencies. But even those willing to look past the torture may find the whole thing too timely in a bad way. Oh, it's Rain Wilson, not Seth Rogen. What the hell was I thinking? Rain Wilson and John Cusack are in it. Yeah, I can see it being well, completely <laughs> woke. Uh, I, I like dreads. I like Bly Manor, but episode nine had too much gay. Hmm, that would be the finale. So, without saying anything spoiler related, um, I have a feeling I know what they're referring to, and surely. The argument in re in response to it would be, uh, it's to show what was lost as a result of everything that happens. That is the least spoilery way that I could say that. Also, oh, I got a key for a... Alright, I know where I'm going. Uh, Snyder Cut will be amazing. Alright. I hope it is. Uh, oh yeah, this was the back-to-back. -back. People need to stop simping from the Snyder Cut. <laughs> uh, why are we still talking about Star Wars? Elite is coming out on October 29th in the US. Yes, really, this is so strange. Huh? Elite is coming out on October 29th? I mm -hmm. guess Battle Angel on like DVD or something? Surely that's out by now, isn't it? Or... Yeah, you'd think. Hmm. Um, any chance we'll ever get a live-action EFAP? Would love to see you chaps sitting in a circle with drinks and tearing into a video. Hi, Mola. Hello! And, uh, well, I mean, the prospects weren't hugely high before lockdowns started happening everywhere. Wales is currently under quite a significant one. Uh, so, maybe once this all calms down, uh, Rags and I could figure something out. Who knows? I could see that being some fun. Maybe, maybe not. Either way, EFAP will continue in Avengers Infinity War. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. Oh, shit. Oh, I need ice for this guy. All right. Uh, we want EFAP movies on DCEU movies until Snyder Cut. Also, Batman died in Final Crisis comic book by Darkseid's Omega Beams. Uh, oh, damn, his Omega Beams? Oh, shit. I don't know what that means, but, uh, yeah, well... well so Mega Beam's got him. Oh. I guess so. Um, Jeez. Well, either way, uh, we actually do want to do that at some point. Uh, uh, DCEU fans out there, you're not going to be happy with EFAP's coverage of the DCEU, just warning you ahead of time. <laughs> you already know that I, contrary to a lot of positions, think that Shazam is shit. I'm usually the first to poo-poo on Wonder Woman when everyone is like, hey, Wonder Woman's pretty cool. And then you got Aquaman, which, uh, I mean... Fucking, if, if Wolf's video was anything to go by, uh, Aquaman is a fucking joke. Um, what else we got? Man of Steel? I would have to rewatch that, because I don't remember how good or bad it was. Batman vs Superman and Justice League were both hilarious. And <laughs> I feel like that's it? Is that all of them? <laughs> so, yeah, um, our coverage of it is probably not going to be that positive, but... It will be good to get some context before we check out the Snyder Cut, which is possible. Is that coming out next year? Do you know the date on that? Uh, I think uh, early part of next year, maybe. Well, March. I could be wrong, though. Um, hmm, I wouldn't sure. guarantee that Rags and I can get through all of the DCU by then, but, you know, we'll try. We'll see what happens. We will, at the very least, watch... Um, and stupid-ass ghost. We will watch the, uh, the, the Justice League before we watch... Zack Snyder's Justice League. We will at least do that. <laughs> Good luck. I know, Good right? Good luck with that. Dude, I, I remember when I first watched it, I couldn't believe what I was watching. I was like, how, how could it be this bad? I know why people are upset. It's okay. Uh, Nerd Rotic, Batman won't die in Snyder Cut. I hope not. 
I, I know they they want to. The, well, there's rumors that they might do a series with Af Affleck. Hmm. Affleck. Affleck. Come yum. I had a I had a they, friend who would always call him Affleck. Hey, Mid. someone reminded you, birds of prey. Oh shit, that's another one that I've only heard is bad. So. <laughs> like, oh, it's bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I had a friend who was convinced his name was Affleck, and they were annoyed when people were like, it's Affleck. They're like, no, it's not. It's Affleck. That was weird. They eventually Googled it. To their dismay. I'm gonna jump out now. If that it's is... okay, gentlemen. Well, you... I guess. <laughs> uh, well. I suppose you have our permission. Don't mind. I guess we could just sort of. When EFAP is ashes, you have our permission to leave. So that sounds a bit dreary, doesn't it? <laughs> wow. Maybe maybe uh, not going that far, but uh, yeah, before you go, why don't you tell people why, how, when, where, and who your channel be? Are those pronouns? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful these days. Oh, yeah, jeez. Uh, th thanks for having me on, guys. It's always an honor, and I had a lot of fun. Thanks to the chat. Uh, yeah, you can find me at Nerdrotic and Nerdrotic Live. If you like what I do, subscribe. If you don't, it's okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'll get over it. I'll move on with my life. But probably, I appreciate you guys. They probably know you pretty well at this point. You've stacked up a lot of EFAP hours, you know? And uh, we always like popping on to see you as well. We, we and, You know, we would come and see you on Halloween too. It's just that we are just stacked this month. Streams yeah. everywhere. Busy, busy. All kinds of stuff, but uh, yeah, I really appreciate um, you, you staying on for nine hours. Seriously, not many Very people impressive. can survive for such long lengths of time, and we got to play video games with you too. What are the odds of that? that crazy. Yeah, and you got to see how bad I am, like utterly <laughs> bad. So thank you, and I, that was fun. I, I would definitely do that again. Yeah, that, like I said, I had a blast I, honestly, that. you should uh, maybe adopt it for a fun little segment in uh, Friday Night Tights sometime. Because like I said, only one person has to own the game, and the rest can just jump in. It's, uh, it's fun shit. I will. I will get it. Um, Rags, take care. Thank you. You too. We will catch you later. Yeah, thanks All so much. Right. We will catch you around, mm -hmm, sir. Mm -hmm. Take care, sir. Bye bye. Bye bye, bye everyone. Bye. And there he goes. Rags is just it's just you and me. The fuck. Once again. Yep. Down to us. A similar wrapping, feeling. Wrapping this up. Uh, <sighs> where are we? Do 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 do. A uh, sitch called Joker, baby's first taxi driver fight. He's wrong. Yeah, he is wrong. Joker's better than taxi driver. Sitch taxi couldn't... driver isn't even really all that good, and Joker's definitely better written. Listen, I love Sitch, but he couldn't even figure out what the Trade Federation's motivation was, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't figure out what the greedy Trade Federation wanted, so... Yeah. Sitch, Sitch don't good, kill me, good, okay? I love good you. Guy, but, mm. Sitch, we'll have you back on EFAP whenever you want, okay? Don't kill me. But people of shadow can get very angry, all right? They'll they'll come for us in the darkest times. Him, ER, literature devil. I believe Smiler is a person of shadow as well, and that's that's the full roster. One of them is Satan, so you gotta be careful. Um, all are in rags and chat. Yeah. Like a, yeah, a classic combination. The golden triangle. Potential hot take. The worst of Hill House is still better than the best of the boys. Mm, not, you'd think we'd agree with that, but I'm not actually sure about that. The worst uh, of the Hill House is episode 10. The best of the boys from season 1 is probably something I would consider to be kind of strong. Possibly. Yeah. Mm. Even, even the scene where Homelander talks to his kid in the cabin... That's pretty good. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, that part, that one, like, isolated part is pretty good. Um, I, I mean, I'd say that part is certainly better than the worst of Hill House. It's a complicated one. Like, I think season two of The Boys has way more lows. But does it have the single most low? Lowest low? Mm, I don't know. But it's, I think it's consistently way worse, undoubtedly. Because mm -hmm. we're what we're basically doing is we're comparing episode 10 of Hill House to just the whole season of The Boys. Yeah. 
because episode 10 is a cliff drop, it's just like suddenly boom. Meanwhile, the boys, like season 2, pretty consistently shit, though I would say special mention to episodes 3, 7, and 8, were those the worst ones? I'd probably say so. The one where they were in the facility was really bad. Ooh, yeah. Was that six? That it's... was really bad, too. Yeah. Hmm. Or kind of a blur. So weird for us, because we were just like, oh, cool, let's watch a show that we like. Suddenly, Tism. We didn't ask for it. We didn't choose it. And there it is. Wow, wow, wow. Um, I have faith in Snyder. Never seen one of his films I didn't enjoy. Even BVS minus The Last 20 Minutes and Watchmen is one of my favorite films of all time. Yeah, I mean, I hope he provides whatever you look for in his work. That would be the main thing he needs to do. Uh, will it be ethical to have children born and raised on the moon knowing low gravity will mess up their bodies so they probably can't come to Earth or Mars? I imagine we're smart enough to compensate for that. Yeah, I would imagine so. Like, humans being born on the moon, that's going to be one of the first things scientists and biologists or whatever will think of, and they'll be like, we can compensate for this by giving them blah 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 blah. Or they have to exercise all the time. Or maybe like wear suits that are weighted or some shit, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, Slam, what'd you bring me? We brought you... Two videos from 8080 Amazing Chan. videos. They two video so games good. that we played for a while. And then a discussion on Amnesia Rebirth. And a whole bunch of other things. And then Super Chat Catch-Up. That is what was brung today. What be brung? Congratulations on Arnold's new heart valve. I saw a, a Reddit thing about that. I hope he's doing alright. He's a, he's a nice man, that Arnie. We wish you would yeah, stop like really starring cool in Terminator boot movies. <laughs> stop it. Uh, Mola, will you endorse a Batwoman ethnostate? If we could all become Batwoman, I feel like we could then generate some really funny TV, so there are pros to it. There are also cons, I will say that. Being Batwoman is a con. So, yeah. I'll have to think about it, not sure. Yeah, we can't I, let all the silly, weird characters in the Batness, Batness state. Mm -hmm. I'm finally caught up with all the base EFAPs. I'll be sharing a meme in honor of catching up, and now I'll finally see the Batwoman episodes. Thank y'all for being ah. comfort spot in everyday life. Rye hags. Oh, hello! And I'm um, glad to hear that. Glad yeah. we can help you out. Oh, it's, oh, it's always good to hear. I think, if I'm not mistaken from how they categorize things, The Boys is not a plot episode of EFAP, but this one was. Um, when they're like hyper focused on a specific subject, I think they get counted as non plot episodes. I, I, I'd have to speak to the, the manager and the organizer of episode systems, you know? So, um, I hope they're all enjoyable. Whatever they may be categorized as. Mola, why not have a Star Trek trilogy movie night? Star Trek 2, 3, and 4. Easily on par with the original Star Wars trilogy. Drinker has amazing discussions about them. Uh, I've just been never been into Star Trek. I don't know if um, it might not quite work yeah, out. Yeah, I've watched some of the shows a bit, but I was never huge into Star Trek. I feel like I might watch it one day. You never know. Watch all of the Star Trek. Every one of the Star Trek. Yeah, that could be something that we do to fill time sometimes. Even the bad Star Trek. Like Discovery, Picard, uh, Lower Decks, I think it's called, right? The animated one? I've heard that's pretty bad. Yeah. It seems like everyone's not enjoying all of the Star Trek right now. Uh, big fan, you guys should do an EFAP movies watching Hero starring Jet Li. I believe I saw that once and I liked it. So that's Hero? All I, yeah. Is that the one where he like battles a bunch of people in a row like like good fighters or is it something else? That might have been Ip Man you're talking about. No, it was definitely Jet Li. It wasn't... Um, I forget the name of that the guy. Heroes where he's like, like a like an assassin trying to, and he gets closer and closer to the emperor. What am I thinking of, chat? It's the one where Jet Li gets poisoned at the end, but he's like fighting people one by one. He fights like a like a boxer at one point. He fights all kinds of people. What what movie am I thinking of? It's pretty neat that chat is like your subconscious. They will discover the answer for you eventually. 
Here it comes. Any second now. Yep. Working away, checking all the libraries. Major hot take, Wrath of Khan is not very good, I'm sorry. Oh my god. Take. Oh, they've just gone to Donnie Yen. They're nearly there. Legend. Or Fearless? Ooh, it could have been either of those. Fearless feels more familiar, I think. Was it Fighters? I don't think it was that. Fearless? Fearless? Yeah, there you go. I think it was Fearless. Dishonored 2? Like, what? <laughs> Dishonored 2? Hey, Nidrotic? Oh, I read that out to him while he was here. Lucky we did that. What do you guys think about JJ working on Lord of the Rings? Horrifying. Terrified. <laughs> I'm terrified. There's nothing, I, I, nothing good I about just, that. I, I can't believe what he's going to try. How is he going to try to upscale something, you know? Disaster waiting to happen. This one says yum yum. Nice. Did you guys see the Biden campaign did a Game of Thrones slash Mulan wing spread shot? Needs to be taught in every film class, every goddamn one. I nearly tweeted about it, but then I was like, oh great. If I tweet about this, everyone's going to be like, wow, you're saying vote for Trump on your non-political Twitter, huh? I just thought it was funny that an eagle... Do you have a picture of it? I'd love to see it. It's... I don't, but it's literally an eagle is flying behind him and it makes the wings behind his back like it does in Mulan. <laughs> it's cringe-worthy. Oh, boomer. Yeah, and it's like funny, the, the responses are like, that's my president. It's like, shut up. <laughs> this so looks so gay. lame. I'm pooping with the door closed. Very good, very good. Uh, thoughts on the movie It Follows. You haven't seen that, correct? I have not seen that, no. That is one of the movies I wouldn't mind watching with you. It's, uh, I quite like it. It's one of my favorite horrors. Not necessarily one of the best horrors, but one that I quite like, just in terms of premise. I shan't say any more than that. Um, but I quite liked it, yeah. Um... Nerdrotic, why do you dislike the new Batman teaser footage? That makes me sad face. Takes your cool sticker away. Did you have any hope for it? Gonna have to save that one for potentially having him answer someday. Who knows? Mm. Hey guys, what did y'all have for breakfast today? Also, thoughts on Alien Isolation? So, um... so uh, for breakfast, I actually ate my breakfast at late night yesterday before I went to bed, but it's sort of breakfasty. I had um eggs and bacon and uh milk it's just simple i'll just I had, um i had wheat a bix you had what wheat a bix what's that um <laughs> chat what's wheat a bix <laughs> <laughs> is it wheat a bix yes it's like a brown oh here it yeah. is wheat a bix um Uh, hmm. I mean, it looks fine. It looks like a... Like a little... Are they like granola bar things? Kinda. I, I, I don't know how to explain it if you haven't had it. It's like weird. Uh, chat, help me out. I'm, I've it's, had it's stuff like to a... drink and I'm very tired. <laughs> like, made up. It's not made up. People are horrified by Weedabix's latest serving suggestion? What does oh, this no. mean? Um, uh, okay. So, if you're like us... Wait, how is that strange? <laughs> okay, so maybe this is... Now, I've never had Weedabix. All right. But this is the serving suggestion, I guess, on the back of the box. Basically, Eggs Benedict over Weetabix. I've never seen anyone do that. I've never seen anyone do that either, but it doesn't seem bad. I'm not sure how it would work out. I'm not going to condemn it straight away, but uh, yeah, all right. It's, I mean, it looks good, honestly. Could work out. You never know. Don't knock it till you try it, right? That's what they say. They don't say that about murder, though. Or the other bad yeah, things. Yeah, it seems like it's fine. 
So someone asked, how many do you eat, Mahler? How many of these weed we to buy do you have? Well, I have the um the minis. They're like small versions, but lots of them. And then I just I just you know I fill a bowl, sort of, very non-specific amount. So boo is. Oh no, did. I, I, this was on Bloomberg Opinion on Twitter as oh, I clicked no. it. Women are being forced to give up their careers. While the pandemic has forced all parents to take on more housework and childcare, studies show mothers taking on the vast majority of it. Oh no! What does this have to do with Weedabase? I don't know, it just popped up on the side. I I was more so very invested in how Weetabix has done this. I need to know. Do I continue to support Weetabix? I don't know. On Eggs Benedict? It seems fine. But what if it costs women their jobs, Rags? The Weetabix? Yes. Oh, those are like, I don't know. You, you joke as if it's not an incredibly serious issue that Weetabix is causing this. Weetabix hates women. You know how much Hashtag we've tried to Weetabix fight hates women. big Weetabix. Weetabix patriarchy. Yes. You joke now, but it'll destroy us one day. It'll come for EFAP. Um, if you want a good Star Wars fight where one side is outnumbered, General Grievous versus Seven Jedi in the 2D Clone Wars micro series is the one to watch. I have heard people recommend that one before. But, um, that's the thing about me, though. I was, I, I've never really, like, been like, oh my god, I love watching lightsaber fights. Like, that's not something that, like, I like them, but I don't actively search them out. Because there's got to be a lot of them on YouTube, right? Like, a lot of fan-made ones and stuff. Mm, yeah, probably. I would imagine. Come here, annoying ghosts. Ow. Do you think it's fucked up that Luigi gets bullied by ghosts? Man, everyone's just... Everybody wants a piece of Luigi, man. Mm-hmm. Guy can't get a break. He just... He won... He wins a mansion. And, and it's haunted. What are the odds? What? And, and, and Mario gets to go to Super Sunshine Land with his cool-ass fucking jetpack. Yep. Hang out in the sun and the fun. Like, oh no, I have to go on this tropical island and spray water wherever I want and fly with it? What a chore. I tell you. Poor Luigi. How to Document Your Crimes 101. I, I think that was in relation to things that Az was saying. I can't remember. Oh Someone's man. Someone's letting me... Someone's what? letting me know that uh, Weedabix is a very healthy cereal for your colon. Hey. That looks like it. Yeah, it looks really like it's got a lot of fire in there. That that Weedabix looks like it'll clean you out. I there you go. You know what they know what they say about long people, strong colons. That's just how it works. Because they can stretch, which is somehow a plus. I'm not entirely sure. Well, I had a um, I actually had an English teacher. He he specialized in grammar, uh, back in high school, and he had to get surgery, and now he has a semicolon. <laughs> we need more people here to not understand your joke and then me understand it, so then you can be happy. I'm 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 satisfied with that, honestly. It I'm happens smiling. so often I'm though that so time. many people are like, right. Yeah, what's what up are you with saying? that? What are you suggesting? I am I am a I am a highbrow doggo. Yeah, that's that that has to be the answer. I'm a low blow highbrow. They don't like a movie I like, Total Grifters. Yeah, that's honestly how it seems to work right now like god forbid we look at someone like patrick willems spouting up utter fucking nonsense and we say oh you know what he's a grifter it's just like can you resist that for five seconds and just assume that we actually didn't like tlj is that possible yeah and then it's like yeah but you're still trying to make money from covering things about it it's like a lot of people also don't like tlj Weird, I know, because it's a miracle of a movie, right? Gotta be grifters. So great, yeah. It's just, it's just like a... um, I guess we, it's been a while. Maybe here, let me, let me go ahead, because it's just you and I in chat, mm -hmm. so I can bust out another joke from my, um, or not a joke, a, a fun fact from my book by David Hoffman, mm -hmm. my grandfather gave me. All right. Um, let's see. Three of the first five U.S. presidents died on July 4th. 
Really? Yeah. Do you think that's tied to like some kind of pressure? Like, oh my god, July 4th, I gotta... No. Yeah, I gotta at least make it to the country's birthday before I die. Yeah, but then they'd make it and they're like, that's it, boom. Yeah. Uh, hi, Rags. Hi. Happy birthday, Mola. Thank you very much. Sorry about Kali Nerdrotic. As the WoW shop transmog isn't a big deal, calm down. I've got no clue what that's referencing. Uh, I saw the title of the stream and I had to find the object of ridicule. Yeah, it's a AT and T chat, <laughs> as 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 would say. Uh, I've, uh, been catching up with Mootle's recent gaming streams. Here is a nugget from the Cum stream. Uh, real commun <laughs> real communism has never been tried. J content oh, creator. Oh, cum yum, cum yumism. That's true. Uh, Manlet hello Greedo. Hey man, Hello Greedo is is well beyond people like us. You can yeah, literally so, so. like enjoy things that are shit. That's how cool he is. That's not fun. I love that picture of rags. I don't know if they're referring to pumpkin rags or werewolf rags. Well, I think they're both great, and I'll alternate yes. the pumpkin rags and were rags. You know, next year I'm probably gonna go werewolf mola. Where like parts of my mask are ripped, and you can just see fur coming out of it. What color is your fur gonna be? Probably like a dark brown. Gray I guess. or blackish? Or dark brown? Yeah, I don't see why not. These are the important questions. What color? And then the year after, I'll be, be Frankenmola. And then the year after, I'll be Ghostly Mola, I guess. Ooh, maybe I'll do Ghostly Mola next year. I feel like that could be pretty cool. I'm like a spirity, semi transparent spook. I'm already thinking about next year's October. I love October. I don't know if I mentioned this. <laughs> it's cool. I've heard. Uh, Empire was re-released recently, and it was top of the box office for weeks. You know, I think I know why. It's Cause it's good. No, when it, if it would have came out came out today, people would have hated it. Oh, of course. We covered AT80's TLJ fight video on Ecom. Very bad. We covered it too. Um. Yeah, he didn't make very convincing arguments. He kind of just said, like, look at the shot type. It's long, it's wide, it's close-up. It follows the object. Man, you, you just, you nailed it. Oi, Mool wanted to plug me and my buddy's new album called Black Fin by Piccolo Black and Fintastic, me. Uh, it's a collection of Vaporwave-style beats. Might be perfect for some upcoming cyberpunktisms. There you go. Uh, fin so Black Fin by Piccolo Black and Fintastic. Fair enough. Mola, will you cover Cosmonaut Variety Hour's sequel trilogy video? Plenty of straw mans in that video. Maybe one day? Um, my god, have we covered a lot of Cosmo? And I say that when we've covered, I think him, I think we've covered him three times? He's really I bad. Think so. Like, yeah, his videos are really trash. So, not hugely invested in covering him when we've got the strong pattern done, but I mean, in future, you know, there's no reason why we might not cover something new from him, and if we get an itch to be like, hey, how's, uh, how's Cosmo not doing? It's like, why don't we check out his sequel reviews? We still not covered, uh, Sean's TLJ videos, which has been requested since, like, day one. Maybe one day. You know how Maybe. it'd be. By the way, the greatest subversion of expectations ever is I'm Father Yusuke? I mean, who could have thought of this? Plus, it doesn't go against logic. I'm Father Yusuke. I don't know I don't, what that means. I don't know what that... I don't know. I'm sorry. What a guest list. Hail Gary. Hail as. Hi, I'm Jublenheimer. Hello. If Drinker shows, let him know I like his books. And hi, Rags. Hello. Uh, actual Cosmo Variety Hour quote. Solo is the Iron Man 3 of Star Wars films. Films that are secretly good, but everyone hates because they're fun. Why would people hate them when they're well, because they're fun? That doesn't even make sense. Why would you hate fun? Also, it never makes sense when he says stuff like this because he he thinks that all films are like on an equal playing field. What do you mean, Cosmo? Tell me your secrets. Um, Han, I have no people. That should have been his surname. Should've and Leia, it. I have no peepee. -pee. Mm-hmm. 
Have you played Disco Elysium? If yes, opinions please. I'm afraid not. I have no, not I haven't that. played it. It hurts good, but I haven't played it. I've been playing it for months, bits at a time. It's hard. I haven't had this much fun. F how much have uh, uh, this much first-hand cringe since replaying my own memories in my head? Oh my. That was from Mihai Chick sent me high. <gasps> oh, Mihai Chick sent me high. It's so weird. I can't wait till he gets to the middle. Like we're watched by a philosopher. How cool is that? That's good to know. That you can find our our discussion stimulating enough. Yeah. It was all loud soup. It's true. A Witcher spin-off with Geralt as the main character would be much appreciated. <laughs> a Witcher spin-off where he's the main character. That's where we're at, folks. People, these, these, these fans just so demanding. I like gimme, how... gimme, gimme, that's what it's all about. Like, we don't like uh, Mandalorian as it stands, but if they end up making him like a side character or some shit, we should be like, what the hell? You know, same for The Witcher, which I've heard is a possibility. But who knows? Let's see how it plays out. Vader made everyone his famous loud soup on Bespin. His galaxy famous loud soup. Yeah, man. Vader knows how to cook. I know a lot of people don't assume that about him. I guess he may think that it shows some kind of weakness. I think it makes him look very strong. I that am pot a... of his is a... It's actually a kitchen. He's got a whole kitchen in there. Mm-hmm. And he should be proud. I don't think you should hide it. Enough of the shame, Vader. You know, Mustafa was ages ago. Move on. Uh, oh, blah, blah, blah. We at Smudcast don't appreciate 8080's diatribe of Tism. Oh, we got we got people from Ecom and Smudcast commenting on this. I think I think we were late to the party with covering uh, 8080. He's he's pure cringe. He's made it around all the podcasts, you know. Yeah, he is. He's pure <laughs> cringe. <laughs> He can happily know that he has now been covered. I had a dream last night where I went to hell and it was just me watching Mola die on that Sonic Heroes level over and over. Also, hi Rex. <laughs> hi. Yeah, I would happily describe that as hell. So I'm going the wrong way in my big spooky mansion. I don't get it. Is this serious or satire? So it was satire, but the problem was every time he tries to make a point by ripping into the, uh, the OT, it would only be poignant if you ignore references, and simultaneously I don't see how that's what a video by me would look like if I made one for Empire. But the point is you can't really make one for Empire because of how real well written Empire is. But hey, give it a shot anyway because TLJ needs to be defended. It is the holy film. Uh, his title is Bridled Rage, so it is a controlled rage? I mean, I assume it was just to poke fun at my title, but I mean, did you be bridled yeah, race? It's kind of weird. Kind of, kind of like what the fuck? Oh my god, Uncle Grimly, what are you doing? Uh, yo, Mola, here to recommend giving the Clone Wars TV show a watch. Even if you were to just watch only the essential episodes, it's still some of the best Star Wars content of recent memory. If ever I do. It's gonna be for an EFAP miniseries, and I'm gonna make Rags do it as well. I'm not doing right, that alone. let's do it. Let's watch the Clone hey, we got, Wars. There's no way I'm doing it before Buffy, okay? I'm making you watch that shit first. Even if you hate it. Every bit of it. It's happening. Alright. Clone Wars is a long I've watched run. things I hate. Why not? Yeah. Oh God. Bullying ghosts. Stop. Mm. Uh, why did you make that argument, Mola? But it makes sense this since there was a small guerrilla faction at that point, if I remember correctly. Oh wait, you did make that argument, Mola. Which argument? <laughs> I don't know which one you're talking about. It makes sense there since there were a small guerrilla faction at that point, if I remember correctly. I, I, I'm i sorry, I don't... It must be something in the title crawl. I'm not 100% sure. Talking about... Star Wars, I'm guessing? I'm assuming it was something we talked about in terms of what he might be referencing and I might have missed that I made a similar point. I'm afraid I don't know which one you're referring to. Oh, look at chat. Clone Wars sucks. Clone Wars isn't good. Oh. I can't believe you guys still haven't watched Clone Wars at all. After you just saw several people say the Clone Wars sucks. Really? After, after Theo gave his nuclear take. 
Oh, there's someone else saying... Oh, wait, that's the same person. Cornwall stinks out loud. You can wipe my bottom if you disagree. I don't think that's a fair deal. Well, in that case, I love it. Hey, Az, if you're still here, can you tell these Dumbos to play Doki Doki Literature Club? Uh, you've done it once before. Now is the time you do it again. Well, um, if he was only going to say we should play it, then uh, con consider that a, a noted thing. Um, they saved that day. There's still the day after that, and the next day, and the next day. Phone call for you, and the next day, and the next day. Um, that could be in reference to the people of the Otelans saving hmm. Ziverd. I'm not entirely sure. He's not criticizing the movie in Mauler's style. He's taking Mauler's points from his video and using those points on ESB and going, see, the critique method doesn't work. Yeah, meanwhile, again, just the different references, so of course they don't work when you do it with that. It's, uh, it's a weird one, but I guess he thought it was going to work, and if someone was to point out it doesn't work, he'd be like, Mahahaha, you took the bait. Imagine trying to parody Mauler in only 10 minutes. It takes Mauler longer than that to simply draw breath. True. Every breath is a laborious, long, never-ending, I do it before we stream. I'm <laughs> like, better take several breaths in prep. Alright, let's get this breaker open up. Oh, yeah. Meow, 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 meow. Rags, can you talk with German accent for a bit? You know what? I can. There you go. But I'll maybe I'll save it till maybe I'll save it till later, or maybe we can wait and we'll because we're we're nearing the end of this EFAP. So if you can remind me uh, to do it in the next one, I suppose I could for a while. Why not? While we're playing Why Resident not? Evil. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, when we play Resident Evil. You can be German Sheva. <laughs> Please. With <laughs> the Christopher. Please, maybe we gas the zombies. I don't think we gas the zombies. Shava, you're disturbing me. Would Lord, you guys I want, want you to be disturbed? Would you guys want to be a vampire? Also, high rags. Um, it depends um, on the mechanics. Yeah, it depends on the mechanics, but tentatively, yes. Yeah, honestly, Depends on the mechanics, though. if the standard ones are requires blood to be sustained, cannot go into daylight, is immortal, um, at a certain point, kinda, feel like, feel like there's some, some really strong benefits there and you just gotta take care of yourself, but ultimately if you really can't handle being a vampire after so many years, you can always just walk into the sunlight. And you know what? You don't even leave that much mess, you just turn into a pile of dust. What if we end up sparkling? Oh no. You're gonna have to get the wooden stake out, I guess. Nine. Oh, nine. Um, this guy doesn't seem smart enough to make clever satirical attacks, for lack of a better word. There's no incisiveness to these statements. I mean, all he has to do is be angry and wrong, and then he's Mauler. That's how it works. That's all it is. That's oh, simple. So I'm surprised there's not more Maulers running around. It's so easy. Do you reckon the whole angry thing comes from the fact that I named one of my series as Unbridled Rage? Is that it? Is that all it comes from? Maybe. I just looked at that and they're like, wow, so angry. I can't believe he's angry. You're not supposed to be angry. You're supposed to love things. You know, respectful people like Patrick Willems, Movie Bob, and Roger Ebert, they don't get angry when reviewing films, and you should be like that. You're only supposed to be angry at Trump. Exactly. Welcome to Planet Hoth. Hmm. So the trash compactor scene in TFA, isn't that a little effed up? Good guy. What do we do with the prisoner? Good guy too. Slowly crush him to death. Um, I don't think... I don't know that that's what was happening there. They had tried to escape and then it was like automatic. The uh, As soon as a certain amount of like, you know, trash is in there, it'll start to just compact it and move it along. Um... I don't know that the Empire deliberately tried to crush them in there. That seems to be antithetical to what the Empire wants in that particular instance. Um, yeah. Oh, wait, sorry. We're talking about TFA. Begins. Oh, we're talking about TFA? Oh, how the good guys are um, going to crush her? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know. Well. 
mean, I don't disagree with that, actually. It's like, oh, it'll be funny if she gets crushed to death. It's like, hmm, can we just, I don't know, execute her Cheater? if we're planning on giving her a horrible, painful death? I don't know. Good point. Are we... It's like, Finn, are we the baddies? <laughs> Finn, are, are we the deadbeat daddies? <laughs> I guess Finn isn't yet. He's got a long way to go. They'll ruin him in another set of films. Give it time. <clears throat> Just popping in to say hello to Mauler and Rag. Found you guys recently through Mauler's TFA vids. Currently catching up at EFAP39. Oh well. Oh. You have quite the journey to go on, sir. But it would be a wonderful journey. Imagine having that many hours of EFAP to come. Oof. Oh. To, I'd be excited. Yeah, go have a sit down. So many events, so many wondrous occasions. Uh, the trooper's name was John. I have no people. Oh, that was the the one that helped uh, Vader. John, I have no people. Yeah. Yeah. I hope he made it. F for Herbert. Down with the rebel Han Solo for killing such a sweet soul. Exactly, man. I I don't think we'll ever recover from that. Like, oh, Han Solo's so cool. It's like, yeah, really cool when he killed Herbert, but okay. What did Herbert ever do to you? I guess some people just don't really understand Herbert's plight, which you know, just makes me sad. Uh, in the old EU, Herbert's name is actually Mola Mithil. Really? What a coincidence, if true. Uh, that TIE Fighter pilot was named Mola Mithril, if I remember Legends material. Seriously? Wow. <laughs> really? I mean, like, wow. two separate people are saying it, I feel like there's some credence there. That's interesting, I ain't gonna lie. Uh, Rags, so have you heard of Deep Rock Galactic? It's a four-person co-op that combines cave exploration of Minecraft and the wave-based combat of Left 4 Dead. Everyone is also space dwarves. I have heard of it, and I have heard that it's good. Mm. So, hmm. Uh, Herbert saved Tontons while off duty. I'm just hmm. yeah, I'm saying he's a good man, but... I suppose that doesn't matter with today's narratives. Ice 2, Chili Boogaloo. Yeah. You guys better get ready for ice too. It's coming. Az just ruined EFAP like Rags ruined grandma. Oh no. When did Az ruin EFAP? Was yeah. I present for this? I don't remember, I don't remember such remember an event. Uh, I'm not exaggerating when I say that the TIE fighter pilot in the decanonized EU that saved Vader is codenamed Mola. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> I guess it's true at this point. It would be unusual for that many people to guess that. Uh, Decino did a video on Doom sounds recently. Many of the imp and zombie sounds are actually modified camel noises. Cacodemon death is a rollerblade. He told you guys. When you strangle Ooh. a camel, you can get all kinds of noises. I know this for unrelated reasons than strangling camels, okay? Who are you? We're the Camel Stranglers. Yeah, it's a band. <coughs> Bless you. Um, an actual critique of the opening. Why is Luke, one of the Rebellion's best pilots, on a patrol in the freezing wilderness when they have plenty of common soldiers? I don't see why How? Luke wouldn't a volunteer for stuff like that. Yeah, I assume he'd be... Because he's still really new to the Rebellion, too. I could see him being like, I should be on patrol, I should have a unit, I should have, you know, XYZ. He's, he wants to help. What would they have him do? Yeah, I mean, you say best pilots, like, do they save him until piloting things happen? It's like, I don't know, he, he's on a patrol. Han Solo's one of the best pilots too, and he's doing it. I think it's fine. Yeah. Um, who's to say that Obi-Wan didn't teach Luke some ways of the Force, but send him to Yoda to learn from a master and in person? Uh, is there anything that suggests that Luke hasn't had contact with Obi-Wan in any way before he sees his ghost in uh, Empire uh, since the end of A New Hope? I don't know that there is. I'd have to check. 
Because if there isn't, then yeah, you can easily, reasonably infer that he could have taught him all kinds of things. By the way, I was actually fine with the new Force Hologram power Luke used in TLJ, but why did it kill him? Also, hi, uh, Rye Hags. Oh, Rye. Rye uh, it killed him because apparently it's a super duper 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 hard thing to do. Only Snoke can start it up for two other people, and Luke can only do it if he kills himself. That's the logic, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Oh, this ain't gonna end well. This video should be called an unbridled tism. Oh, scathing. How will we ever recover? How will everybody recover? Oh, I couldn't get all three of them. Freaking video games. Always messing with me. Video games suck. Uh, Chad Snow Monkey vs. Virgin Cliff Tits Milk Alien. <laughs> True. The yeah, Chad Monkey from the Snowlands beats out. Pretty boss. The, the Tit Milker. The Tilker. It's now my headcanon that Herbert is one of the clones that finds Vader on Mustafar. He saves Vader's life, helps him through the physical therapy of his new limbs and suit, and forge an unbreakable <laughs> friendship. Man, I love the lore he just, <laughs> that's going on dude, here. Dude, he is so ready and willing to take that shot for Vader, and Vader knows that he's gonna have to avenge the Shadow. Why do you think Vader tortures Han Solo? Han Solo fucked up his friend. There's a lot going on behind the scenes that you guys just didn't pick up. Uh, Ghost Obi should have used Force Healing to save Luke. Plot hole. Fuck you out of ten, owned. <laughs> well, you see, Force Ghosts can use all of the Force Powers except healing, okay? They can't use healing. What sense would it make for them to be able to Force Heal? Nonsense. Uh, are you guys on the Forbidden app? They hate Avatar also. The Forbidden app? Uh, I don't know. About Twitter what... or <laughs> the Forbidden app? I have no idea what you're talking about. This is are you guys on the Forbidden app? They hate Avatar also. Not not entirely sure what's being said there. I guess on whatever this Forbidden app is, they hate. <laughs> it's an app where people go to hate what? Avatar. Could be James Cameron's, you never know. Jamza Kamaruni. Are you excited for all the Avatar sequels, Rex? Uh, kind of? I mean, I, I, I'm on, I want to see how bad they are. I mean, it is James Cameron. He's probably not going to make them, like, absolute dog shit. It's probably going to be something worthwhile in there. Maybe. Um... Oh, TikTok could be the forbidden app, that's true. Oh, I see. Antarctica is a desert. Anakin, I don't like snow. It's rough and coarse and irritating. It gets everywhere. Not like here. Here everything is soft and massive. Oh. Yay. Rags, you're flagged as right wing on transparency tube. As I'm am way I? closer to the center than right wing, but I, it's, it can't be fucked to be right, I suppose. I mean, I mean Mahler, is, Mahler is further right than me, apparently. <laughs> um, so go figure. I guess... I wonder if, like, the way it automates is like, so... Let's say it determines, um, you know, X person is right wing. And then if you subscribe to that person, you're more than likely going to be right wing. And then if you're f subscribed to the person who subscribed to that person... Like, maybe that's how it calculates all of it. And it just, that's the automation. It's just like, ah, oh, fuck it, I don't know, you're right wing. Um, until it manually reviews it, I guess I will be partisan right. I mean, oh, if you could have guessed anything to. from my, my videos, it was that I'm partisan right. It's very right wing to like systems of measurement. Mm -hmm. Those pesky rulers. Ever since the Quentin EFAP, whenever anyone says he is the thing, my brain instantly jumps to I fucking hate Trump. Thanks for that. Hey, not our fault, okay? <laughs> we didn't do it. 
Moeller is a Mary Sue. How is he so good at movie criticism without any training from film school? He just figured it out, I guess. Bah. Hey, maybe I didn't I figure told out you, anything. Apparently, it's not all that hard. What? What if? What if I haven't figured it out? What if I'm wrong and all of you have been listening to the false prophet that's eventually going to lead you down a black hole of hey? What if TLJ is actually good and we were wrong the whole time, and then I generate a no, super passionate possible. audience that is not specifically possible. designed to spread the love for TLJ? Lies. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. It's gonna happen. Give it time. But then again, that would kind of backfire, wouldn't it? Just be like, oh, someone with no film experience likes TLJ too. It's like, oh no. Who are we to believe? I always thought that winter uniforms for the rebels were very cool. Nope, they have goggles. You can't have goggles, apparently. Yep, that's a big no-no. Makes you super lame. Uh, so, here's the thing. Oh no, someone said the thing. <gasps> Ray! Today is my efap anniversary. Just wrapped up 97, seen bits of the newer ones. Is just writes Joel basically the anti-dawn? Yes, those two will I'm probably be so. battling... Till the ends of time, Joel versus the dawn. One brings light, one brings darkness. Drinker recommended me some good horror films. Yeah, he's been doing his spooky tisms month. Hey guys, you want to watch a movie on the Blu-ray? Um, I guess so. It's yeah. so awkward for Ray to watch Blu-rays with Finn. <laughs> uh... Hey, Woodwags, you fluffy boyo. Oh, hi. Enjoy some head pats and belly rubs with scritches. Oh, my god. Oh, thank you. Oh, Wonderful. perfect. Drinker, I'm easy to please. and yeah. Nidrotic? What an amazing trio of guests. Also, hi, Molar and Rags. Yeah, we had a, it was a good one tonight. It was uh, all kinds of shenanigans going on. Molly, you sound like Drinker's main character. Drinker's main character? In one of his books? Or in his, his YouTube channel? Do I sound drunk? I had something to drink, for sure, but... I shouldn't... I shouldn't want to sound as though I'm so drunk that I resemble Critical Drinker! It's quite the achievement. That would be the big bad. Hmm. 95% of over 70s infected with COVID survive, and over 99.9% .9 of under 70s survive. Don't believe yeah. the fear propaganda? It is a power grab by governments. Dun, I agree, dun, dun. it is a power grab by government. That doesn't mean it's like a lie or anything. I think that governments are absolutely using COVID as an excuse to try and get as much power over you as they possibly can. Do not let them do it and do not let COVID rule over your mind. Don't let it drive you to fear and terror. Don't let it dock dissent don't, you. Don't let it control you. You can't let it do that. But remember, if you do get super scared, check your belly. We'll give you an out. Ooh, funny good. Uh, Krika, do you make a distinction between different horror subgenres? What are your top five horrors? P.S. Hello, Wagsies. Scritchies for the oh. good boy. Oh my god. Oh, thank you. Man, we have some audience, good ones sorry. coming in. Um, yeah, I guess I'll try and grab that one up for... Possibly asking him in the future. So if I don't change it to Critical Drinker, I might forget who Cricker is. Or is it Krinker? No, it's not even Krinker. Can you believe it? Krinker. How am I supposed to know? Drinker. There we go. My plane is currently landing. Hopefully streaming EFAP won't mess with communications and cause the plane to crash, but this flaming dookie trebuchet of an opinion might just knock us out of the sky. Oh no. That would be horrifying. That'd be nasty. Are any right, of you gonna nasty. Any of you gonna review Lovecraft Country? I don't think so. We heard from uh, Blame that it's really bad. And that it's using yeah, Lovecraft's name. Yeah, he had name. nothing but bad things to say about it. Like, the th I was tempted to look at it even if it was bad, but when he said, like, oh, they're just using Lovecraft to get people to check it out, it's like, eh... Mm. That sounds like something that they do nowadays. Mm -hmm. How can we use the name of something that's been established before us to just, yes, just ruin for our profit? Mm. No respect for art. 
Oh, Shiba, I almost forgot to say. Yeah. Also, hi, Rex. Yes. Oh, hello. And Drinker is here now, too. Hello, Drinker. Great to see you on EFAP mm. again. He was. It was nice to see him. He, 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 um, he enjoyed the video. He said as much, right? He, he had fun with the video. Yep. It was, yep. Uh, he definitely said that he loves every time he comes on and we cover this uh, garbage. Says yes. it gives him strength and life force. He loves it. That's why he keeps coming back. Why he uh, definitely we're, we're we're definitely not empowering his alcoholism. No, never would we do with that. -eth. Also, in terms of spookled ween, Bly Manor is a masterpiece. Agreed. And I heavily recommend the new Zombie Royale mode in Card Warzone. Very spookytism. Very well balanced zombie gameplay and very fun. Wow. Apex has a pretty interesting um, mode going on right now as well. So yeah, there's some good Halloween stuff out there. Sweet. Some good teasers. Yeah, everyone watch Blind Matter. Do it. Fucking do it. I love it when Mola has to stretch like Mr. Fantastic to find some shard of logic in this ordeal. That's the thing. It was complicated because you had to simultaneously refute the crazy and then figure out where the crazy was supposed to be going. It was a, a weird one. Oh my god, so many evil ghosts. Gentlemen, why waste time with this failed rebuke of the fandom menace? Take on a real challenge from the force behind Star Wars. Revel in your beloved modern mythology revealed. YouTube, Star Wars The Skywalker Apocalypse. I have no idea what that is, but uh, perhaps someday we shall have a look-see. Skywalker Apocalypse. Sounds terrifying. This nonsense so far hasn't given me cancer, it's given me everything. And we're not even done yet. Oh, I'm so sorry. Maybe all those things will cancel out. Yeah. Hi, Rags. Hello. The TIE Fighters are patrolling around the Imperial fleet for security. Navies do this in real life, you twit. Um, again. It sounds as though he wanted to say it as though it was a criticism, but he knows it's not at the same time as trying to imply the ones said about TLJ aren't criticisms either. Uh, which is the, this is what I mean, it fails in both regards. And so trying to respond to him like he's making an actual point, possibly a waste of time, you can never really tell. So it's worthwhile just refuting it anyway. In case someone out there was like, yeah, it is dumb that the Star Destroyers aren't all facing the same way. You wouldn't want that to happen. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. How did the Empire get to Bespin first? Because, as far as I know, uh, Boba Fett would be able to tell where they're going and then um, tell the Empire, and the Empire would have called ahead or contacted ahead. Um, and for all we know, actually gotten there ahead uh, because the. If they're uh, spread out around the galaxy, surely they have people closer. Yeah, it's just. Um, matter of communication, I suppose. Um, and yeah, I think uh, they, they implied like he was the only prospect for Han Solo, uh, Lando at that point, so it's possibly simple to narrow down where he was heading for Boba. Maybe. New, 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 new. Sequel defenders have no concept of context. Vader killed his men, Kylo killed his men. They are the same. It has nothing to do with Kylo killing someone to keep him from pointing out a plot hole. It's not a plot hole. It, wasn't, it was just a question. <laughs> it was just a question of, so this guy just gave you an army of super destructive ships, the likes of which we could have only dreamed of? That's a bit what weird, What did they want? I feel, like, I feel like he's doing this for a reason, don't you? And it's like, wow, what an idiot. I'll kill you now. Uh, Misa gonna finish what you started, Annie. <laughs> Is this what passes as critical thinking by the newly minted adults? Oh my god. Yeah, that's a bit of a weird one. The ATTE from the Clone Wars was probably a better design. Yeah, they had um, a gunner on the back, I believe. Imagine if this guy watched your video on video essays and art analysis. Your reasoning there is effectively bulletproof and it's short enough for his attention span. It's like, it's like an hour. That's way too long for him. 
Yeah, we can barely get him to watch a film. It's gonna be tough for him to watch a YouTube video. Nothing but truth. Shazam. Bumble's established that only slow-moving objects can squeeze through shields, so slow-moving walkers would work. Fast-flying ties would not. What about slow-flying ties? Yeah, I assume a tie can just go slowly. Because that's what they do in stuff like Mass Effect as well, where the shields aren't constantly on. They detect something moving toward... And Halo works like this as well. Um, it, 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 it explains simultaneously why... Um, Someone who's wearing shields can reach out and like grab things without the shields pushing them away. But the sensors on the suit detect something coming in at a very high velocity and it projects the shield at that moment to stop it. Um, it's not constantly on. And besides, if, if you want to get to that point, it's like, okay, so park a bunch of TIE fighters on a platform and then move the platform slowly past the shield and then raise the TIE fighters up and fly again. Like, it's just interesting to me to think about what their limits were and what they could have done. That's all. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna need fire. Uh, the at, at doesn't explode until they shoot at the base of the neck where it opened up. Yeah, you wouldn't need to uh, down them to do that, though. Yeah. And I, I just, I would want to caution that we don't invent too much from what we see, rather we just admit that it's a bit weird and they probably could have used a bit more explanation for what the fuck's going on. That's all. And it's okay. I don't think that works when the OT established the trend of selling movie toys. Uh, oh, do you mean because he criticized something for possibly only being there to sell a toy? I mean... The, something being sold as a toy really isn't the point. It's why is it there? And if you can't come up with any reason other than I guess it sells a toy, that reveals the, the hollow nature. That's really all you're gunning mm. for. They can yeah. sell toys. That's okay. It doesn't make a film. Yeah, but selling of the toys is fine. Sell the toys if you want. That's totally fine. It's like, as Quentin Reviews said all those, those years ago, the rag said the film sells toys is subjectively bad. Not a thing we actually think. Never have I said that. A weird argument that he would never make. Uh, yes. Hello, boys. Especially you, Ragalicious. Oh, hi. And speaking of the boys, what a stupid show slash comic. It sounds as though it was created by some edgelord who hates Justice League from DC Comics who also thinks he can be on Alan Moore's level. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm all on board with the idea of making some asshole superheroes, but... That show was not doing what I thought it was going to do. It just kind of gave up. Mario. You piece of shit ghost. Fucking die. Fuck you, ghost. I never liked how the AT-ATs only had four guns on the front. They would be better as a mobile heavy weapons platform with guns covering every flank. Agreed. I agree, absolutely. Uh, at, at is a result of Tarkin Doctrine. Similar to Death Star, their main strength is the fear of an unstoppable machine that is hard slash impossible to fight as a militia. Okay, so here's the thing. I'd be like, hey Tarkin, let's do that, but also put a gun on the back of it. How about that? Yeah, what if it gets... Now, what if these you know, these these rebels who use guerrilla tactics attack it from the not front? Damn. What, what, you know, what, what, uh, let's go ahead and let's put, let's put some guns on it. Because if the guns are on top and they could spin in all directions, you could have all the firepower forward if you want, but they can also spin around. Mm-hmm. Hey, Mola, do you like Black Midi, the UK band? I'm unfamiliar with them, I'm afraid. Mm, Black Midi. Bam, ba -lam. Just pointed out the AT-ATs are staggered a bit to compensate for the lack of rear weaponry. They are staggered to compensate for the lack of rear weaponry. And you have to be staggered a whole lot if you could only... Like, you have to really stagger them, though. And that seems like a, a compensation effort to make up for bad design. Yeah. It's okay, guys. It's okay. If PC gaming is better than console gaming in every way, do consoles have a reason to even exist? Do they have any value at all? Yes, consoles do have a place in the market. For people who want something that's shockingly simple, 
Um, you just want to plug in and play, essentially. Because PCs are not really complicated, but a console is more simple. Yeah. Um, for people who just want to give something to someone that plays games, uh, it works as a multimedia system for DVDs and Blu-rays, etc. You know, some apps and stuff for the for the family TV. It's it just like, sort of like a simple most in one. There was a tweet the other day. I was getting like ratioed right where a guy was like, "Fucking PCs! Every other day, I have to." find some mods or FAQs or updates to be able to play a video game. They, they, that's like the, the thing that they suck at compared to consoles. Just, just amusing. Curious what his issues would be, honestly. Yeah, other than anomalies, I'd be like, that's some you, PC's always going to be providing you uh, pretty epic fucking options for whatever you're playing. Um... Like, the, when, we, when we played RE5 that first time, like, that was the first thing that I had to figure out with PC gaming in, like, ages. Mm -hmm. And it was because we were playing an old game from back when Windows, uh, or Games for Windows Live was a thing, which they shut down. So, I, like, it's rare that you have to run into stuff like that. The only reason AT-ATs are on legs is to allow the scene of tripping one up to take the place. The set piece idea came first and the logic came second. I can believe that. I can believe it, yep. Um, if on Hoth the Empire used the speeders, like on Endor, do you think that it would have been more effective? Was at, -AT the best choice of vehicle? Without knowing what all their options are, I can't really say. Um, but I'm still curious about TIE Fighters and TIE Bombers. Like, the force field stops them, it's like, eh, if an at, -AT can get through it wherever it's getting through, then surely the ships should have some chance. And I'd be curious if you just fucking fly one in. Hit that shield generator, and boom. You're in luck. Uh, also, did you say that the bargain bin Aquaman's gills talk to him? Excuse me, but what? Also, also, what that Batman knockoff weakness is his chocolate bar? Yes to both of those. Yeah, so... <laughs> I they did some weird say. stuff with the Deep. Most of it's useless, but they have... They have the Deep take drugs, and so he hallucinates that his gills voiced by Patton Oswalt, um, talk to him. Mm -hmm. And it's not funny, it's weird, and it goes on for way too long. Yep. And there's more than one it's scene It's like all of, it, of the stuff with the deep. It's too long, it's not funny, and it doesn't go anywhere. And like I said, it's awkward because I don't think they realize that there are people out there who like the deep. He's probably lost more fans at this point now that they know what the point of him is. <clears throat> I mean, I was see. looking forward to his, you know, redemption arc potential after the first season, but, cool. well, I mean, I guess I was just curious what they were going to do with him. Like, the mm -hmm. idea that he did bad things and that he's going to atone for it somehow, and maybe him and Starlight would become good friends after he sincerely shows that what he did was bad, and, like, I was interested in that kind of a concept. But... There was a part of me that was like, oh, they're not going to allow this guy to be redeemed because that's like the big Hollywood no-no. And... Mm -hmm. so saying... He's got to be a laughing stock forever. Uh, what did you dress up for Halloween as kids? All, all kinds sorts of, of stuff. things, yeah. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Generally just scully things and ninjas and grim reapers and stuff like that. Um... Twice, relatively recently, I've gone to friends' costume party Halloween deals, and I have a bunch of, like, military surplus stuff and gas masks and things, so yeah. I dress up as dressed me? up as a soldier man. Oh. So, look pretty good. Looking pretty good, not gonna lie. I remember I went as, uh, uh the Ani from T2 a couple times. Oh. Just an old black leather outfit, a little fake shotgun and shades. Hmm. And then it would be like, more friends need to see this movie. I don't care if it's too old for you. You have to watch it. It's too good. Watch the robot kicking ass. Do it. For all the good tisms and gloms, Mubla, thanks. No problemo. I just finished watching Hill House. I'm confused. Please, Longman, tell me what my feelings are. Am I allowed to like it? Also, is Bly Manor worth it? So you're allowed to like anything. <laughs> yep. All right. All good. No worries. Say okay to like it. Um, as for 
you're confused on your feelings. Um, mm -hmm. I don't so know if you your should feelings. Either. You know them to be true. Maybe you just want to talk through it with a friend, have them watch it, etc. Or mm -hmm. give me like a week, and I shall have EFAP mini series, The Haunting of Hill House, where you get to watch a six. Of your favorite EFAP characters, including Mubshli and Raggleton, watch through The Haunting of Hill House and discuss it episode by episode. Ooh. For those who have seen it, and for those who have yet to see it, it works as a companion piece. For those who hated the show, it might help with understanding why someone might like it. You know, that could happen. Um, but other than that... Uh, Bly Manor, you should definitely go see just on the potential that it ends up being one of your favorite things ever. It's worth it for the gamble. Mm. Oh, Chihuahua. Oh, these ghosts are grabby, dude. I feel like uh, I'm going to be reporting someone, let's just say that. Time to play Guess Where As Put His Pumpkin. Oh yeah, he said I'm gonna put a pumpkin. He never put a pumpkin. Do you remember him putting a pumpkin? I don't know. He, oh, on his icon. I think he is like, he'll put it on his icon. Uh, well, his, he had his a big spooky smile. There was no pumpkin. But then he got a, but then he, that was when he was sort of brainstorming. Uh, Uh, they should have put Holdo in the electric chair with a wet sponge. Or without a wet sponge. Damn. We've all seen Green Mile. We know how that shit goes. Oh. Stupid ghost. I want to get my heart. Yeah, there we go. If you have another EFAP on the boys, will you have Satan on? He hated the show, even from the first season, because of the wokeness and adaption reasons. So don't know if he thinks the comics are good or not. Well, we don't care much about the adaption reasons, but mm. the first season didn't come across as that woke. Yeah, I mean, I'd be curious on what the references would be for that, but uh, I was mainly just concerned about the, the some Tismy writing in there. Unfortunately. Go on, spooky ghosts, where are you? Um, how do we have the good guys survive this chase? ESB, so they use common stellar geography to evade. TLJ, straight line, they just can, shut up. Hmm. <laughs> you know what, they're both just as bad, right? Now it works. I'm going through all the EFAPs, currently at episode 50, part 1. Can't wait to see your response in a year. May the N-words be with you. And may the inwards be with you, too! It's like a serious thing, dude. If people are like, oh, I'm on episode one, it's like, you will not catch up with us for a while. Do you and remember you how do, long ago that was? Fucking props to you, man. Talking about fucking... What even was episode one about? It was PS... The, the PS4's not-so-obvious problem or something? It was from Tonal, right? And then a yeah, bit of Jared. Like Good times. Oop. To quote Contact, first rule in government spending. Why build one when you can have two for the twice the price? Oh. Hmm. I haven't seen Contact in a while. It was, it was good though. I remember liking it. I'm behind, but the plot line with the snow monster was added to explain scars on Mark Hamill's face from a car crash. That's why no action for 25 minutes. Um, yeah, he, uh... Needed a narrative reason for him to get swiped. So that he, he, it makes sense why he looks so flumple dumpled. Notice how they created an in universe narrative reason for why the actor had something out of universe happen. Yes. Hmm. Uh, so much of his script ends with to me, for me, etc. There's no more than a needlessly drawn out, yeah, well, that's just like your opinion, man. Yup. Always got to carefully slot them in, in case for a moment there you actually stood for something. <laughs> like, oh no. It's an escape hatch, like I said. Gets you right out of the problem. If anyone says like, like hey, what, satire. You just, what you just said isn't right. It's like, what do you mean it's not right? I said it was for me. For me and me alone. Yeah, and why'd yeah. you make a YouTube video about it for us? No, no. I was expressing myself, Rags. How could you? Yeah. 
saying it as though I, I must... Oh wait, I need to get ice tisms first. Whoa, what the fuck? Hey, he sent me back here, what a rude ghost. Uh, that video was 18 minutes long, some felt longer than any of your videos. Yeah. That's a thing that can happen. Uh, some call it pacing, some call it just dying from lack of ability to care. You should get YouTuber Just Some Guy to guest on EFAP. He's a lot like Wolf, but black, so he can give you tons of N-words. Oh my god. Oh, wow. I can always use more passes. I, I just burn through them so quick. Yeah, same. Every day. At the supermarket, boom, boom, boom. Ten times in a row. Just running through them. You can't criticize the boys. It's a satire about super wizards intended for spacious man-children. Also, Rye Hags. Oh, Rye! Oh, and uh, about the just some guy thing, it's like, yeah, it's uh, another YouTuber that's potentially gonna jump on into an EFAP, no reason why not to. Um, also, I gotta blast him seven times, I remember this. Well, Why was Quentin sp oh, oh, why was Quint spooking Danny and people at first? Um, so, Quint, if you remember his, um speech about this is kind of blind manner spoilers so don't listen to me while yeah, i talk this about is this blind, blind manner spoilers do not listen do we even want to discuss it on stream well i mean just come back in one minute i will be done by then okay guys mute right, for a minute come back one minute go starting from now okay so peter quince i uh, basically like characterized by being manipulative he likes to uh Figure out how to control people and then do it to get what he wants. And he's considered himself like to be okay in that regard because he's he's a lower class born and he's never going to be able to rise up. So may as well steal. Um, add that to his speech when he's uh, inhabiting Miles, being the the puppets and their strings and how he would pull everyone's strings, i.e., finding their keys and manipulating them just fine. But when he died, most people have already willingly forgot about him, and he's pissed off about that. And he says, "I'm gonna. Uh, the, the strings are gonna start getting pulled again. And it's gonna hurt." He's angry, and uh, combine it with what he did to Hannah, and you've got um, Peter Quint, the man with a sliver of a good heart somewhere in there, uh, just just swamped with rage, jealousy, and uh, let's say a lack of self-control. And so yeah, he spooks Danny, and he enjoys it when she first gets there. I feel like that's sufficient, and hopefully people are already back now. I can't pause the game while I'm doing this. Whoa. The most best. Please gedelb that. Did did he say the most best at some point? I don't know. I wouldn't put it past him. He probably said it in a, as a joke. Like, the most best thing. I doubt he said it earnestly, you know? Because uh, besides, it's all parody anyway, guys. You're falling for it. Yeah. Idiot. He, he, he has no errors. You only have misunderstandings. Um, oh, wait. There was more to that question. Whoops. And thoughts on the flashback episode being too long and narration being unnecessary. I heard it so many times it hurts me. Snyder Cut is gay. <laughs> okay. The... F so the flashback episode is amazingly well done. Uh, I think the narration helps it a whole lot because it's literally a story being told. Uh, the only thing I would say is that there may have been some lines that weren't necessarily necessary because you could infer or see what it was describing at the same time. I don't mind that that's a thing. Yeah. Um, the example I would give is if I was starting a story about a girl who worked in a toy store and I said, here is Marie John and... Uh, uh, it was just a normal day until something happened and she has like a little name tag that says Marie John on it And someone's like, why did you say her name if I can see it on her name tag? I'd be like, wow, chill out Okay, it's okay You knowing her Probably name Probably because the people that like, she's telling the story to can't see the actual imagery Well, I would just argue that whether or not that's the case Did you, did you like, did someone slap you in the face as a result of you knowing someone's name more than once? I don't know, it's like, are you okay? You'll be fine. It helps me to know, yeah, it certainly helps me to get names more than once, because sometimes I could just have difficulty remembering names. So yeah, I would be like, if, if I was to agree that some of the lines are unnecessary or whatever, I'd be like, it's barely something that's gonna obstruct anything in the episode. That is my humble opinion. Uh, do, do.
Woohoo hide. Wo Woodoo hide is an actual thing in the Clone Wars. Oh yeah, I I know it's yeah. a thing. So I remember yeah, I read Letter Media reading it out of the fucking Darth Vader book. <laughs> Facts he didn't know, yeah. I want to say that's probably where Az was getting it from, too. I think Az watches Red Light Meteor almost as much as we do. <laughs> I'm willing to bet. He seemed to get the references. Oh my god, two boos in the room at once. <gasps> Terrifying. Wait for me, Mr. Boo. Oh, wait, really? God damn it. Uh, random writing peeve of the day. Praetorian Guard is the most overused designation for an elite unit besides Imperial Guard. Uh, I would probably agree. I, I almost said it, but I was wondering, like, why do they call him the Praetorian Guard? Is it because it just sounds cool? That's probably it, right? I guess. How disappointing. Uh... OT, pre-90s, is the Lucasfilm trilogy, the only Star Wars films. Then, special edition OT, post-90s, are Lucas edition trilogy. Okay, prequels are George fanfic trilogy, and sequel trilogy is the Disney Star Wars cash grab trilogy. Objectively, Mola for Star Wars president. God, can you imagine? It'd be a nightmare. Mm. Trying to, like, organize all of that shit. Imagine being, like, you approve of Mandalorian Season 2, you'd be like, oh, God. I'm, Are we gonna did, do this? All right. Did you guys like? Can I see the script? And they're like, you won't want to. And you're like, eh. and it's not approved. <laughs> you guys know how this works. You've been here before. Um, someone stop him! He's killing Art again. Sorry. Just keeps happening. Those knives just keep slipping in. What can you do? What can you say? The beams facing toward Obi under the balcony stop it from crushing Obi-Wan so he just gets pushed around his hip leg area instead of crushed. Mm. It's, it just looks really weird. I don't know how, I'd have to slow it down and repeat it to be able to explain myself better. It looks odd as hell. And it, it honestly, the way it runs, it just seems like it should be crushing his legs, but it just doesn't. It's a weird one. Yeah, and they don't even have to have it happen. Yeah, they didn't need it at all. You didn't need to crush him at all. <laughs> you just left him. Uh, please skip this etarded video. Ah, etarded works, I guess. But, Man uh, of culture, I see. Hey, we have to get through him. We ought to see his opinion, you know? Get out there. Mullet, why do we only get this retarded garbage to watch? What? <laughs> How long have you been watching hey, your <laughs> you get us too. Yeah. And you get you get the the cast. You get to talk about all kinds of things, like who's the best porno star. I think it was 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 a, a heated debate for a moment there. You know, you all kinds of stuff. You get our our weird ass kill Mary fuck questions that people mm -hmm. send us. We got like three of those in a row, and then no more. <laughs> like, that was odd. Okay. In relation to my hot take on the Civil War comic, I got a few more for you. Are you ready, gents? Um, Sue, so, Alien, Jaws, Jurassic Park, The Godfather Part One and Two, and Angel Season Three and Five. How do you f how do you feel about them objectively? Because well, wow, that's a that's a lot of content to be able to go through. That's a lot of things. Um, Angel Season Five, I adore. Alien, I adore. Jurassic Park, I adore. Yep. But all of them, I would probably say with confidence, are pretty strong. Just all of them in general. But I'd have to rewatch some of them to be able to defend them efficiently. If uh, I needed to. But I'm assuming you're suggesting that you think all of them are bad? Which, my goodness, yeah. That's mm, yeah. a position. That is a position. They are Jedi. They can see things before it happens. So of course they react to things early in a fight. Uh, I'm not going to use that guards. defense. I don't want to use that defense anyway, I was just going to raise more questions. And you're right, yeah, the guards were reacting early. Maybe they're Sith gods, you never know. Maybe they're, they're, they're just a bunch of Knights of Ren wannabes. Mm -hmm. Like, if you can't be a Knights of Ren, you just have to guard Snoke. Uh, boring. Oof. Maybe it's, well, yeah, you don't even get dental, like you said. Damn. That's why they wear those masks, because their teeth are all fucked up. I want people to see them. Mola, one day I will call on Rags, the mightiest of the booty warriors, to join me in my war against the Kingdom of the Bags. Replace the B with F. Who will you pick to be your new host partner? 
I mean, you don't understand how efficient Rags is like, in the battle of that stuff. He's going to be able to run. When it comes to the battle of booty, I'm... He's going to get it done. Oh, He's going to come home, quick. and you'll be like, right, time for an EFAP episode. And I'll be like, how was the battle? And you'll be able to tell everybody. Vanquish a lot of booty. Mm-hmm. EFAP movie suggestion. Kill a clowns from outer space. It is so great. That's a possibility. No reason why we couldn't do that someday. I've... I, I think I've seen someone covering that, like, years ago, but I've forgotten most of it. Um, yeah, that sounds fine to me. Oh, oh, oh. I never wear pants while listening to EFAP, smiley face. Oh, me neither. Yeah, that's the way to go. A lot of people recommend it, and a lot of people haven't tried it, and still recommend it, so that tells you something. Yorkshire is God's own country. Reform Jorvik, please. I mean, I don't think we have the power to do that on EFAP, but you know, we'll try. We'll look into it. Heel vs. Babyface is all talk and no speak. I, I honestly don't know how you categorize those differently, honestly. To talk versus to speak. They must share something of a commonality. All cack and no balls. Noise. Either a lot of people didn't care about the scene, or there were a very small number of people in charge who didn't let anyone tell them they were wrong. I can believe all kinds of things could happen. You can have everybody simultaneously feeling a sense of, man, can we be done with this now? And that can lead to someone being like, hey, I think we've got it. I think we can take care of it in editing. And then they spot it. The knife in Daisy's back. And they're like, fuck. Can we get this reshot? And they're like, no. And so we have to live with a disappearing knife forever and have to listen perpetually to videos horribly try to explain how it's totally cool to have weapons randomly disappear. Do you know what my theory is, Rex? What's your theory? Sometimes these people, like, when they're writing these things, have a moment of, why the fuck did this problem have to be in the film? Like, I have to defend this Yeah, how come shit. I have to defend this? Yeah, yeah. They couldn't have made this scene without literally teleporting a weapon out. Like, damn it. And I gotta be the one to say, hey, you know what? That's fine. <laughs> hey, more of this, actually. Personally, I love the spearing knives, so yeah. Yeah, that's a good shit. Uh, doo -doo -doo. His advice just preemptively ruined many careers. Oh, we, uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and, and this is where the problem with taking advice that comes from the people who say this stuff. It's like most of the time, it's, hey, just you know, value this weird gelatinous thing over logic. Every time they suggest it, it's always like, um feels weird that you're saying this. It's like, value the performance. Value the heart. The emotion. Well, you see, it is much more important to feel than it is to be correct under some kind of robotic standard. Like, it sounds good on paper. And then it leads you to stuff like TLJ, and you're like, oh. Weird. There are so many cuts in that fight scene, you'd think it was depressed. <laughs> oh, I see. Very good. Yeah, um, to be honest with you, there was more cuts than I remembered in it, which is not something I would put on the impressive scale, because I thought the whole point was that there was so many choreography mistakes, because it was such a long shot. I didn't realize there was 39 cuts. But apparently all of those cuts were super impressive, so it's fine. Oh wow, yeah, it's amazing. It really is, it's just amazing. No. No one talks about the guy who took the shot for Vader, saved his life, what a legend. That pilot was DS612, aka Mola Mithel. No joke. I am cool with That's that crazy. guy's name being Mola. That's crazy. How come you guys never told me about this before? That there was a there was a guy in the Empire team called Mola. That seems like the kind of thing you'd tell me about, chat. I am disappointed. All force and no lightsaber. Ooh. I want that one. Ray, Ouroboros will be released into the atmosphere, ensuring complete global saturation. Right, it won't be long until we hear that directly from the source. So ready. I'm already mm -hmm. excited. 
Uh, hey, Mobley. Hello. Hi, Rags. Hey! Wanted to know if you guys could bring on Nick Rikita in the near future. Also wanted to thank Rags for introducing me to the awesome music of Pogo and Brock Berrigan. Oh, yeah, those some good, uh, some good stuff from those guys. Um, yeah, we've had Glad a you like it. couple of, uh, requests for Nick Rikita. Not against it whatsoever. We'll try and sort it out in the future. As you do. Um... I had a super large message in mind to show my love of this channel, but I'm super broke and YouTube hates long men. So just take my money and don't stop being objective. Love you guys. Aww. Oh, thank you. That was very nice. Thank you very much. Uh, play this game with Anna. That's very likely going to happen someday because, like I said, I am totally cool with the idea of, like, if we have enough people at the end of coverage of something, I'll be like, hey, hey, Rags, want to play a game of that, uh, of that tism? And then we'll have EFAB Gamings where we play them several times with like a cast of all kinds of characters. What crazy things we'll get up to. Speaking of strong female characters and subverting expectations, how about having a Darksider Sith who is not the villain, just evil? Like how Legends has Vistara, Kai, Mara Jade, or Lana Benico. I mean, sure. There's loads of ways you can do anything in the Star Wars universe. For some reason, Disney didn't know this. They were just like, I don't know, fucking... Let's just try and do the same stuff that they did before. See if that works. It was kind of weird. But, uh, yeah, I'd be on board. Hey, this is Spooder Wars guy here. Hello. I have a question Hi. on Death of the Author. Can you explain more, Longman? I would highly recommend nitpicking nerd for a Star Trek EFAP. Hi, Rags. Hey there. So Death of the Author is just the concept that when you're analyzing a piece of work, the author is fucking irrelevant. As in, hey, um, are the jump scares in Amnesia Rebirth jump scares? And then Thomas Grip is like, they're not. Rags and I will be like, oh, it's nice that you said that, but they are. And you'd be like, well, I'm the author, bitch. I'd be like, well, Death of the yeah, Author, well, bitch. Yeah, well, that's the problem, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, um, but I would want to asterisk that with I'm always interested in the author's comments. I like to find out what they think the thing is and what they tried to do. Um, it's always a neat little input in the same way that I'm interested in other people's perspectives, opinions, and things I may have missed. But ultimately, it's like an appeal to authority, I guess. Like, you can't. You, just because you made it doesn't mean you know exactly what it is. And I think a lot of people have trouble with that. Um, especially, like, you know, they do the whole thing in the videos where they're like, oh, some fans think they know Star Wars better than George Lucas. And we, as we've said before, we're like, there will be those fans. Yeah. That's very possible. I would even have to come to terms with that myself. There are people who know EFAP's history better than Rags and I do put together. Yeah, we have historians, librarians, archivists. You know, we accidentally, I mean, I, I guess I accidentally covered a video we'd covered before. And fucking everyone picked up on that shit before I did. I was like, oh. <laughs> it was gonna happen eventually. Um, mm -mm -mm. Hey, Moobles and gang. Before Halloween arrives, I have to know, what do you think about the Monster Mash, and is it superior to all the Christmas songs? I do think so. Also, ahoy hoy, Raggleton. Oh, hello. I like the Monster Mash. Um, the Monster Mash. I don't know, because though. I don't know how it ranks on when it comes to music. Yeah, it's kind of a hard one. If we took all of the best Halloween-y songs versus all the best Christmas-y songs, I feel like I'd pick a whole bunch from both and be like, I like these. New, new, new. Alright, booze. I'm back. You know, something that's really, really the big gay about this game, right? Is there's a room filled with, with... What do you call them when there's like big dust hills? Dust somethings? Dust... Storms? Dust. Like, like... Dust in a devils? Um... Like a like a molehill but dust. <laughs> a molehill but dust. Um, dust might and something mites is it? Do they have a name? Uh, Maybe I'm making this up. Dust, dust gloops. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Dust well, bunnies. Oh, that could be it. That sounds familiar. Um, either way, those are in this room, and whenever you leave it and come back, they fucking respawn. It takes ages to get rid of them. Boo. If I am a cleaner of this place, I demand the dust only reform after a certain amount of time. Otherwise, I will cold Do you have a capacity for that vacuum pack? Nope, just keeps on going. 
Dang, it's like a One black hole. Magical vacuums. It's a fusion reactor, you see. Luigi doesn't even know what he's getting himself into. Though it was made by, um, what's his name, the old man who made Flood as well. He made Flood and the vacuum. Imagine having both of them. The power. Rags, you have the best drawings. They are really good. Oh, thank you. Well, that's very kind. I do like your drawings. They're always they're all also very um how do I put this? Like like user friendly, like wholesome. They they rarely ever just penises. Oh yeah, I I <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I figure everyone else had those covered, so mm -hmm. I usually yeah. just try and draw, you know, people and just call them John. I, I just find it amusing. <laughs> Good old John. And they usually score pretty well. People like John. And Wombo, of course. He's a he's a fan favorite. Nobody wants to see Wombo hurt, I think. Which is nice. Nice Wombo, to know. Wombo, yeah. I want, him, I want Wombo to have a good ending, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, I hope we don't kill both of those games. I hope they last a while. You know how it I works like them a lot. I think they owe themselves a lot to replaying. Mm -hmm. It's like TKO, you know? Especially with different people all the time shifting around. And it's funny, that Talking Points game, I always feel like people are a little anxious to do it for the first time, and as soon as they're done with their first one, they're like, I kind of want to do that again now that I understand it fully. So, uh, I think both games lend themselves to being, like, two rounds. So yeah, more to expect in the future. Oh, look at this boo. We just stripped 100 health away from him. Jesus. I'm very surprised this has worked. Oh, fuck off. Well, I mean, that worked pretty well. Um, I would also recommend Star Fox Adventures and Star Fox Assault for Dolphins since they're GameCube games. Go for it, long man. Hail Ragazzes. Hello! And I remember Assault being fun when I was a kid. I sort of so, heard. I yeah. never played it, and that's the thing. I'm trying to only play games I'm familiar with, otherwise we may end up with a Sonic Heroes type situation, which was a game <laughs> Where you I loved it and it was great. That's the thing. I completed it when I was younger. I just apparently got really shit at Sonic as I got older, which, again, not too worried about myself, your, but the last thing we need is more games I get stuck on. couldn't process it. Guys, don't you love seeing me be pro MLG Luigi's Mansion player? I think you do. Got to get you out of your comfort zone. That's true. But yeah, maybe. It was completely within Butcher's character to willingly let Stillwell's baby go kaboom. Long live long man, high rags, and thoughts on Cod Warzone. Uh, uh, so he didn't let the baby go kaboom? He killed it. <laughs> he caused the kaboom? I'm just, uh, like, yeah, I, I, I don't know why we have to keep saying this. It's getting weird. Um, there was nothing in the show to support the idea that Billy Butcher is cool with arbitrarily murdering babies. There isn't. You can keep saying there is, there isn't. Oh, but he killed Mesma. Yeah, Mesma sold them out and nearly got them all yeah, killed. Yeah, the guy who fucked them over and could have gotten them killed. Yeah. Don't mistake me for saying that Billy Butcher would never kill a person. There is a huge difference between killing a, a person who's betraying you, or someone who's in your way even, versus killing a baby. But he picked up a soup baby and lasered a bunch of people with them when they could have shot it. It's like, he's clearly doing that in the hopes that he'll fucking kill them well before they have a chance and that they wouldn't shoot the baby. That's his idea with that one. Like, and even still, that, that that's like, it wouldn't... You don't, like, it just baffles me that we wouldn't, you wouldn't want the show to address this. You just want to accept that it's just like, yeah, you'll just kill anything. Arbitrarily. If it, I saw someone argue that if it's going to annoy Homelander, he will do it, no matter the cost. Because we, we're under no illusions that blowing up C4 next to Homelander will do fuck all, and he knows that. It's a really weird hill to die on, and I see a lot of people advocating for the, the butcher from the comics, too. They're like, he's a psycho. It's like, okay, they didn't do that in the show. Like, he's also, an asshole, but... I'm sick of psychos. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Fucking Iceman. Hallway. Uh, also, what was the second part of that? Thoughts on Cod Warzone. I believe you and I have not played it, right? Yeah, I've, I have not played it. 
I'm afraid we cannot comment, but uh, Drinker and Az seem to have played it, and they, they had some fun. I've heard good things, that's what I will say. Uh, Mutually, have you ever considered doing an audiobook, my velvety-voiced longman? If ever there was consideration, it's not anymore, because I'm busy with all the other tisms I'd be doing, but uh, you can find the Ant game out there if you wanted to listen to some stuff. And then, I guess when I play video games, you can listen to me read some stuff, but yeah, no real intentions to do any audiobooks, but who knows what the future may hold? Um, hey Muesli, have you considered doing an EFAB about Buffy with Aiden and Passion of the Nerd? I think Nerdrotic wants to set one up eventually, um, though we will delay that until the very end of time, until possibly Rags has seen it, and then all of us can do it, and it'll be really fun. We'll talk about what's cool about it. Yeah. Rags, you realize when we go on Drinker's stream on the 29th, I think it is, we're going to have to fucking defend Bly Manor. It's going to happen. Can't yeah. believe it. You have to talk about why it's not boring. Like Blind Manor is such <laughs> a masterpiece. Um. Oh, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mean to imply defend from him. I just mean defend in general, probably. Same with you know Buffy. One day I'll have to do that on stream as well. Though that seems to be liked more than Blind Manor somehow. So, <laughs> like, it's a weird world that we're in. Was Metal's talk written by Hunter Biden? What was Metal's about? Like... Fuck, I can't remember it. It was probably something really awkward and weird. Neo, Neo. Um... Had a wedding. Didn't watch this yet, but I'm drunk and I love you guys. This episode better be good, JK lol. I think it was quite alright. Don't you, Regs? I like it. I thought it was pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, where is the 1.5 times speed for the live broadcast? Thank you. Uh, I, I, you can't do that in real time. Me and Rags can't just operate so? in 1.25 times speed. It's not possible. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. But if you pause it for like an hour and then come back to it, you probably would be able to do that. Solution. Stay right there, boo. Holy crap, you guys are still at it? Here's some payola straight from hell. Oh my god. Dude, we've been paid from hell. Uh, third game in Penumbra series has a f fucking Donkey Kong level. I'm not joking, you have to avoid exploding barrels on ramps. Also, high rags. Hi, hey. I don't quite remember that. I feel like you might be exaggerating, but you're also probably right. It's a weird world we live in. Uh, if they wanted the notebook, look, they should have had her lighter match to use that so you could use see the notebook instead of bright screen here. That's something I guess we should probably save for thingy, but... She was fucking drawing pictures in that notebook in like the weirdest of times in the game. Yeah, like instantly scribble, scribble, scribble on if she'd see something. I'm like, eh. Yeah, it, well, when it was in like normal time, I was like, okay, bit strange, but all right. It was the part where you're chasing, you're trying to get to the doctor because you're about to give birth and you fucking draw a picture. I was like, the hell? <laughs> Woman, please, we've got better, more That's important things coaxed. to do. Uh, Self aware cringe. Maybe they're referring to Amnesia Rebirth. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say it was self-aware, I'm afraid. Play Generation Zero, an open-world FPS about Sweden being overrun with armed robots. Good sandbox, strategic gameplay. They will kick your ass if you're not careful. No characters and mere story. That's a turn-off. Um, it's fine with no characters as long as the gameplay is fine. Yeah, I mean, games can survive certainly on... Strong mechanics, so maybe. Uh, since Az just did a video on Blizzard, Blizz just posted a six hundred dollar statue for sale. I had a good laugh. I mean, some customers are just super interested. That sort of thing. I don't know. Uh, what are y'all's thoughts on Alien Isolation? I think we had that question earlier. I have not played it. I only ever played it twice and both times I got stopped the stupid android section because it annoyed the hell out of me. Um, I guess I shouldn't have played it on the hardest difficulty because they can kill you really fast. However, if you jump into the nearest like vent, they can't get to you. So it's just this awkward cat and mouse thing and it got really boring. But um, you know how it is. Has the disappointment of Amnesia of Stillbirth damaged Halloween standing in the Halloween versus Christmas debate for 2020? 
Oh, definitely. I mean, we've got Bly Manor. I think it cancels it out pretty well. I don't think Christmas is going to muster up anything close to Bly Manor. What do you think, Bly Manor doesn't have anything to do with Halloween. Totally does. Spooky Ween. It's released on Halloween. If it doesn't, then fucking what does Amnesia have to do with it? Oh, it's, uh, takes place on Spookytisms. My god. Spooky. Um... Mola, this is what lots of film critic millennials say about The Exorcist, saying it's funny, not scary, not enough jump scares, not enough exorcism. Well, I don't think anyone's describing Bly Manor as funny. Um, as for... Soma? People weren't really going with funny for that either. Um... But The Exorcist, like, there are some things in that that I understand why millennials would find it funny. I don't know. You know, like the some of the things the girl says. Your mother sucks cucks and sucks cucks in hell. Yeah, I feel like that one is one that I could see people being like, hey. Also, I'll be right back. Yes, sir. <laughs> what are your, all your thoughts on Dead by Daylight? So, Rags has not played it, which means this is the perfect thing for me to answer while he's not here. Um, it was incredibly buggy and tismy. However, fun with friends, especially when you're victorious and it's the, the leveling system and the unlocks and the different characters and interactions with the enemies. And even playing as killer, we're fun. What can I say? I had a lot of fun on it, but the phase of me playing it ended pretty quick. Um, and I think it's still going and it's still pretty popular. Like, I'm actually kind of impressed that the game is still going strong. I didn't think it would be. Um... And they got loads of IPs connected to it. I don't know if they're planning on doing like a Dead by Daylight 2 or if they're just going to perpetually update Dead by Daylight 1. But uh, I played that on release and it's fucking old as shit now. That was back when I was streaming on Twitch. Where the hell were you guys, huh? You fab chat? Where were you when I was streaming Dead by Daylight and having fun? Hmm? Disgusting. Also, I think we have the key for the upstairs now, right? We do. Listen guys, I'm probably not going to be able to get to the end boss by the time the stream ends. And I'm not going to just stream killing the boss on the next time we do Super Jack Hatch-Up just to switch to another game, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry your catharsis will be lost. I will go as fast as I can. Uh, This cracked me up. The crashing TIE pilot in A New Hope you joked about being Vader's BFF is actually called Mola. Look up Mola, Vader's wingman. Yeah, so at this point, it's simply canon. That guy was called Mola. How fucking crazy is that? Haven't listened in full, uh, but will. Thanks for the great coverage. No problem. Hope you guys had fun with it. I put out a poll on the Mola subreddit about whether Rebirth or Machine for Pigs was better, and the vote was about even. Guys, Rebirth was terrible. Come on. Um, I'd be willing to possibly admit that the, the Machine for Pigs is stronger. I'd have to replay it, but I mean, there's so many things working against Rebirth, it's kind of in crazy and In crazy -nun. That's, yeah, that's how you know I'm serious. Meow, 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 meow. Um, one day my son will hear this, but now he's almost six months old and ten kilograms. Hefty boy. Anyways, I used to play with Metroid Prime controls on all shooters. Used to. Yeah, they're weird, um, and it was a potential at one point, and then it got kind of like squashed out, you know, by advancements. I'm only got one hour to finish, I believe in you. Yeah, we're going to try and get to the end of these super chats and then uh, end. I should be able to make it uh, relatively swiftly. Um, again, no dino fun facts for you until you read the first on the catch-up. However, did you know that they found colored footage of David Attenborough's old black-and-white TV show called The Zoo? And colored footage is considered even better than the high-definition color we have nowadays. Well, well. That is a fun fact. Considered even better than high-definition color we have nowadays. And uh, as for catching up on the other stuff, we shall be trying to jump into EFAP 103 and 5s on the Resident Evil 5 stream. We should be able to, um, you know, get get that sorted. No. Um, 
Boop, boop, boop. A suggestion for EFAB Gaming, Lord of the Rings Online, mm -hmm. MMORPG that is lore-friendly okay. to the books and quite fun. It's a possibility. Rags and I are very stocked up right now for EFAB Gaming. We still got uh, Jeez, the, yeah. the Halloween ones on the way as well. Who knows what craziness is to come? I've been to Clue. Hello, missives. Just want to say Final Fantasy VII Remake is an incredible remake of the original. Anyone who says it's objectively bad is wrong. Oh my god. Mm. Well, I wouldn't know. Um, I hope it's good. Yeah, I don't really know. So, with as is Resident Evil analogy, will frictional games give us the equivalent to RE5's Uroboros and Seven Minutes is All I Can Spare memes? Um, I mean, I guess I'll take that over another Amnesia Rebirth. Go nuts, frictional, why not? May as well. Ooh. Such angry ghosts. Japan's age of consent is 16, from singing the UNESCO Kids Right Rights Act, there's a persistent myth, even in Japan, that they have a low age of consent because they did prior to signing the act in 93. Oh, fair enough. I do not know the specifics on that. Solo is not better than At World's End. Hmm. That's a tough one to answer. I, I, I'd have to rewatch them both. But I know they're both pretty bad. And uh, they both have a giant squid monster, so... You know, you, you, those sort of cancel each other out. Bill Nye the hentai guy. <laughs> um, Hello all, started a new job after being unemployed for six months. Feels great, but it cuts into my EFAB viewing. Sad face. I'll catch up with the tisms on Moolah. Love for chat and ear scratches for rags. A little heart. Oh, So very nice. Sweet. It's a nice chat tonight. So chill. Um, give us Pirate 6 with Depp, Bloom, and Knightley. I don't think they're gonna do it. They're going a weird direction with the Pirates franchise, I'm afraid, folks. Getting real weird. Um, just because they have his heart and he follows their orders doesn't mean that it's objectively bad. You're being subjective. Um, did I say that it was objectively bad for him to be a cuck? I don't think I did. Said I didn't like it. Um, but there are objectively bad parts to it. He has several opportunities to take his control back and he doesn't because he's a fucking idiot. Don't test me on the third Pirates of the Caribbean. It pissed me right the fuck off when I watched it. I will watch it again with rags, and I will teach you all how bad it is, and how much better it could have been had they given a shit. That's not even a hot take. Everyone agrees the third part of the Caribbean sucks. The second one's neat, honestly. Could have been good. Could have been good. The problem with watching two without three is it's a half a story. Davy Jones deserved better. He was like Bane in uh, Dark Knight Rises. He just got fucked over. He had a really cool uh, kill. Do you remember it, Rags, when he puts all of his tentacles into a guy's face? Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. I remember it got shit on Reddit like a year ago, and it was like, this fucking happened in this film. Do you guys remember this? And people were like, Jesus. <laughs> it's a kid's movie. But um, it's a really cool, creepy death. And it's literally when Davy Jones is like, oh, everyone's dead. No one controls my heart anymore. I guess I can just kill people now. Um sucks. Doo, doo, doo. More, have you seen Watch Mojo's top 20 scariest games vids? They rank Soma 19 and all the FNAF games in Outlast higher than it, lol. I mean Okay. Like, yeah. Do you just do you just want to be surprised? Is that all you <laughs> want? Do you, do you just want to be startled by a sudden loud image on your screen? Seems to be. That's it. what you want. You don't need a game for that. Because, like, you know, it's probably true, like, compared to the amount people got spooked. Like, yeah, that probably is the correct way to rate them, because Soma was boring or not scary to loads of people. It's like, alright then. At least they're being honest. Breaking news, Conway, Kanye West has confirmed on Joe Rogan that he hated Disney Star Wars. He's part of the fandom menace, ladies and gentlemen. I, I just, I, I, I want to know the context of why that came up. Man's got some ideas. Like, fuck Disney Star Wars, am I right? And Joe Rogan's like, yeah, man. 
Fuck man, that shit. That shit. Mola. Amnesia Rebirth is getting updated. The fear jump scares are being toned down and the flashbacks are now skippable. At least frictional cares. I... And they cares to release a like a day three update? Okay. I, I don't understand. Like, how did this happen? If they care so much? Did nobody at the fucking company play the game? Like, how does this happen? Also, that's a really good sign. Like, hey, this mechanic that's pissing everyone off, we're gonna make it happen less now. It's like, uh, oh, thanks. Good? Like, okay. Doesn't really solve right. the problem. You need to get it out of the game, I'm sorry. It has to go. There's actually no benefit to it being there. It literally just annoys me. Oh, but it's so worth it for the- I can't believe they had the balls to say it wasn't a jump scare. Are you kidding me? Yeah, fear flashes. They're not jump scares, they're fear what flashes. Is a fear flash? What the hell does that mean? It's like a meme. No, you see, it's- I'm not killing you, I'm simply draining you of all your blood. <laughs> like, oh. You're being exsanguinated, not killed. It's completely different. Rags has amnesia. He mentioned Riley Reed in a fuck, marry, kill question before. Oh. And I, I, li I have forgotten then. If I've mentioned her before, then I have forgotten. It could happen. I could believe it. Uh, we'll probably forget the next time she's mentioned, too. She sounds like, um, like a girlfriend in a superhero story. Yeah, she does sound like a Pepper Potts, or, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mia Khalifa in. was like the most notorious porn star, even though she was only active as a porn star for six months. Her family and ISIS also want to kill her. I remember us talking about that, yeah. That was a weird one. Hmm. Uh, Gear, and then like a rat emoji? Em emoji? You got red on you. My goodness. Uh, do you think Biden will steal Bob's Christmas? Well, it's going to be awkward for Bob if if Biden were to win, he would have to stop blaming him for everything, I guess. I don't know how Bob works. Uh -oh. Maybe Bob can't blame himself for any of his failures or oh, shortcomings. Gosh, no. That would be that would be horrible. Uh, question that really needs answered: Are pop tarts ravioli or dumplings? Also, high ranks. Hi. Are pop tarts ravioli or donuts? They would be closer to donuts, surely. Because uh, ravioli is like being inside pasta, isn't it? But the crust of a pop tart is more like it's bready, it's doughy. I really, I, I like mean, a dough nut. Well, they Engage said they said ravioli. Very deep question. They said ravioli or dumplings. It's a big think that question, you know. Um, is it possible to produce a good brain dead video game movie? The trailer for the new Monster Hunter movie has me doubting. A good, oh, good branded video game movie. Yeah, I don't see. Theoretically, there's no reason no, why, why you can't. Yeah, no reason why you can't. I think it's just a matter of does it get the budget it needs and do people care? Like, also, there's no reason Doom wouldn't be a kick ass movie. Yeah. It just has to be Doom, not not fuck around on Mars all shitty-like. In fairness, Doom Annihilation was very good. Almost as good as Doom with the Rock, you know? But both excellent films. Oh, oh. Uh, have you seen the movie Peanut Butter Falcon about a guy with Down Syndrome and has Shia LaBeouf, weird ending but good rat, uwu rags? Peanut Butter, hello, first off, uwu to you. Uh, but Peanut Butter Falcon sounds like a very autistic uh, pairing of words. So I, I, I have not seen that. it, nor have I heard of it. Monster Hunter doesn't look bad? Are you fucking kidding me? Trailer looks... Alright. <laughs> I, I haven't seen it yet, but I've heard it. And... It's, you know what, everyone's entitled to their perspective. I'm glad that you think it looks neat. I, I hope it is. That's all I have to say. Force Awakens Part 4 possible release date? No promises, not even gonna... I feel like it's just better to not say anything until I have a better idea of when things happen. Muller is a fake gamer girl. Can't even give ghosts the big suck. Shake my head. Hi, Rags. Hi. I have collected 46 boos. Don't you think that's a lot of boos for someone who can't suck? Hmm. That's a lot of boos. Muller and Rags. 
What kind of headphones would you recommend? Mine are tisming right now. Also, sorry for my desktop computer, and the last couple of EFABs might have been a bit broad of a question to ask you. Hmm. A little bit. It's kind of the same with uh, headsets to a degree, because it depends again on how much money you got to spend and what kind you prefer. There's a couple of different sort of setups you can grab. Um, uh, what headphones do so you use? So I. I use the ATH AG1X closed back um, gaming headsets. I really like them. Um, the The mic that they come with is pretty good for a for a mic that's attached to a headset. I think the sound quality is really excellent, and they're only one hundred fifty dollars now. So uh, I bought mine a little over three years ago, and it's been working really well for me. I've had absolutely no issues with it technically. But it's an Audio Technica, and their products have been really good for me. Um, works with like PS4s, PCs. I think it's um, you could use it with F Xboxes if you have if you use those. But man, I um, very much do like it. I would highly recommend. And that's already more detailed of an answer that I can even give about headsets. Yeah, it, it's super comfortable. It's just, which is another plus for it. You can wear that, and I have worn this thing all damn day, and it feels very, very comfy. Would highly recommend the ATH AG1X. You should invite Procrastitara on EFAP. She's covered Batwoman and is hilarious. Probably best with just you two because she's shy. I have heard her recommended for EFAP before. I don't know much more than. Well, th that and, uh, yeah, possible in the future? I'll keep that in mind. Uh, plus, check out Turbo Kid, a movie on Amazon Prime. It's super awesome. Interesting. Uh, finish Sober. So, bleh, sober, I think I just said. <laughs> finish Soma. Absolute masterclass. Watched your versus Amnesia vids. Was great. And Joseph Anderson is even more incompetent than I thought. Also play Outer Wilds. Again, another Outer Wilds recommendation. Um, and yeah, glad you enjoyed the game and the videos. Uh, you probably know all my perspective on Soma at that point. So, Yes, Joseph Anderson was pretty incompetent when it came to that one. Fuck, Mary Kill, PSA Sitch, Literature Devil, and ER. Hmm. Hmm. How do I decide this? Yeah, I don't know enough about him. I feel like it's impossible to kill any of them. Like, they wouldn't... You wouldn't be able to kill them. They wouldn't die. Why won't you die? And then the idea that you have to choose just one to fuck? It's like, damn. Seems messed up. Mary? It's like, hmm... I know, I, I've got no way to answer that in an interesting way. I am lost. Feels bad, man. Chat, help me out. Fuck, marry, kill, sitch, devil, literature devil, and ER. What, what's, 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 how we doing this? How are we gonna pass it out? Err. Kill sitch because he can't find the motivation of the Trade Federation? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to see some more results as we go along. I'll read some out. Internet Historian said depressing movies don't equal good movies. Thoughts? That's stupid. Yeah, that's dumb. <laughs> I like Internet Historian, but I would have to ask him to be more specific about that. I'd have to ask him what is he smoking. And does good movie just mean movie you enjoy? And if you don't enjoy depressing movies, then that's just categorical for you, I guess. Marry Devil because of the laugh? That's, yeah, that's fair, that's fair. Um, save them all. Marry ER. Kill Sitch for his PT versus ST take. Oof, Sitch might be going down for these. These. You're these too quiet things. for me to like be with. Maybe that's what you look for in a partner. <laughs> Why me? Oh fuck Satan! See, these are all the, all these answers. You know, there's fuck just Satan! Eh. Don't kill me. Meh, Satan. I will fuck you, you he man. Who's your daddy? It's me, Satan. I feel like Satan would just be a cool dude. There I said it. Yeah, he'd probably be really cool. You, you want to go out and do stuff? 
That'd be super neat. Luigi's turned into Doom Guy. Very true. Someone's already asked another fuck Mary kill. We haven't even, we haven't even been defeated by this one. Obligatory super chat because you help my sanity. Aw. Glad to hear it. Hope you're doing all right. I love your content. I know you're skeptical of TV shows, but I would love to recommend Black Sails as one of them to watch. It is very well written. May the long man continue. I mean, I haven't heard many bad things at all about it. I just don't know many people who've watched it, so... Um, you know, I hope it's good. Where are you, Bowser? Oh, you bastard. God, better. Oh, so, um, anime news. I, on a whim, I watched the first two episodes of Berserk. The 90s one, the 97 one. Uh -huh. Couldn't get past two episodes, gonna be honest. So Couldn't get past two episodes. Maybe the new one's better, I don't know. I'm pretty sure everyone hates the new one. Oh, well. I, I got it because Guts theme popped up in recommended for like a meme with a monkey and I was like oh wow this is a really cool theme song and I was like I guess I'll 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 watch Berserk so I watched the 97 one and the first two episodes were really just ugh. they were very anime-ish and I was just like I'm done wow, I'm nice. out I'm out I'm finished we're done um, Ola made a video about getting rid of his scoring system and I feel like he made some great points about why all it does is cause problems with a look all it does is cause problems to have a scoring system. In what? Like our 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 out of ten? Uh, well, this this suggests that I, that's what Arlo said in relation to his own. I mean, under specific context, it could cause problems. But I mean, you know, as long as you understand why the person is giving the score and what the score is, I don't I don't know that it can't help you understand where they place it. I don't know. I just it's not like we've ever. It's used just like a. Yeah, it's just a quick little um, way to just sort of let you know what we think of a film without going into great detail and having a deep discussion on it. Something yeah. very general. Oh, Luigi. Why you gotta be such a bitch? God damn it. Before the ST, hyperspace has always taken time. They never hyperspace across galaxies during a space chase before. The ST made the galaxy smaller. Well, I'll agree with that. The Shua. Um, I was watching Return of the King with my girlfriend and I cried when Sam talked about how he would have liked to marry Rosie. The thought of Sam spending what he thought to be his last moments thinking of her tore me up. Aww. I mean, yeah, Lord of the Rings is really good shit. And um, I think Sam is commonly picked as a favorite character because he's a good man. And he, he works real hard to get get that shit done. Carrying Mr. Frodo. Um, Kanye West prefers the prequels. Thoughts? I I like <laughs> uh, to the sequels. I don't know why anybody wouldn't. So good for him, I guess. I I just want to point this out. This is great in the chat, right? Dang rags, I'd say it gets better, but knowing you, it's a mute point. A mute point? M-U-T-E, it's a mute point. <laughs> well, I think that's how you know it's over, Rags. Yeah. They have the high ground. Bobby Bowser, don't you do it? Ooh, there we go. Do you feel dead? Oh, hi, Mark. That didn't happen in Pirates of the Caribbean's. Uh, are you guys fans of good, bad flicks? Also, welcome to the best holiday month. Also, hi, Rags. Oh, hi. Uh, good, bad flicks. I don't know what that is. Maybe a YouTube channel? Not sure. Uh, Plantation Sensation has no money, but they want you to watch Venture Bros. Venture Bros is the YouTube one, right? YouTube show? Venture Bros is the Adult Swim show. Oh. Is it hotel what I've seen has been pretty YouTube good. One? Um, yeah, I, I, I've not seen any of it, but I've heard good things. What is your favorite Mario game? Is it Sunshine? You played a lot. My favorite is Yoshi's Island. Uh, probably Sunshine, and it's entirely because I played it so much when I was a kid, and I like the vibe in the game. But I like a lot of Mario games. A lot of good ones. Uh, EFAP metal band name? Every... Hmm. <laughs> What's a hardcore metal? Every variant? frame of bass. Every every. Uh, I guess if we're a hardcore metal band, it could be like, um, 
Hmm. Every... Every fret... Or every... Uh, I'm trying to think... In, um, every fret a base or... I don't know. I'd have to think of it a, a bit. I'm not sure. Muzak. Keep an eye on chat, see if they come up with a clever one. Yeah, maybe. You should check out the Chinese movie An Elephant Standing Still, one of the greatest modern films and extremely underrated. Oh. As you can so see, keep in point. mind, chat. Rags is not a fan of anime, but Barbie movies high tier. No offense, Rago. So <laughs> I, I was pretty specific that most of them. So a lot of them are really bad, but there's a couple that I thought were OK and one that I thought was legit good. But I'd have to rewatch it again to make sure. Because it, it's been ages since I've uh, seen it. Thanks. Anime cool, Bobby not cool. Learn it, okay? How it works. I just, the wheel the just sort of trash. It's, you know, just fucking get over it. Racist. At me. I don't fucking care. You will get at it, Rex. Look out. Run away. Yeah, uh, let him. I just went and watched the first Pirates movie for the first time when you brought it up. Davy Jones. Oh, when you brought up Davy Jones. I come back and you're still going. I love you, Fab. Uh, yeah, we're at 11 hours and 6 minutes. How do you feel, Davy? Thoughts on Halloween franchise? I watched the new one, thought it was shit, and then saw the OG and thought it was shit. <laughs> is the doggo in the thing... Is the doggo in the thing a GB? A good boy? Well, he's uh, he's infected by the thing from the get-go, right? So, can what a doggo... Thing? The thing. The thing? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, can a doggo be a good boy while being infected by the thing? I don't know. I don't know, I think the thing accounts. sort of disqualifies it. It's gonna be a bad boy. Um, and as for the Halloween franchise, the new one is absolute hot garbage. The original, I remember just being like, that was fine. Um, but I haven't seen it in a while. We will probably cover the new one on EFAP movies at some point. It's gonna happen. I decided my stance on Halloween and Christmas. On Halloween I have more fun, but on Christmas I feel more happiness. Interesting. Dichotomy there. You probably feel happier on Christmas because it's the best holiday. With the most cheer. With the most cheer? I could agree with that. Most it has cheer. more cheer than Halloween, but that's not really what Halloween's gunning for. Uh, Rags, say something controversial for once in your life. Ha, Rags beat you to it. With the, the guts thing. Well, the, the bazooka. Well, thing. I mean, I like I really like the theme song, like, a whole lot. I, I can super appreciate the theme song, and I'm glad that they went with something so uh, unorthodox for, you know, a fellow like that, I suppose, but... Man, the first two episodes were just fucking rough. I could not get through the tropey animeness of it. It was just so... It was a fucking slog. I don't know how people do it. I don't know how people watch this genre. You know you're gonna have to deal with like a whole season of that when you finally watch Buffy, right? It's gonna be, it's gonna be anal. That's so bad. That doesn't really make sense, but I'm very tired. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting to that point too. Uh, Rags, curious about your surplus military uniforms. I'm getting out of the army and can send you my old ACUs if you have a P.O. box, if you airsoft. Um, I don't airsoft. I just sort of have a lot of stuff I've c accumulated over time for all sort of, like, search and rescue and hiking and stuff like that. And I just sort of compile it. Some of it's cool to have, but I I'm not actually looking to get anything more honestly i don't want to i I'm, I'm gonna try not to get more stuff if i can help it i'm gonna try to cut down on, on the amount of things that i have but um i appreciate the effort though but i don't think i'd get much use out of it probably none uh i don't know much about whales but i don't think it's possible to stab a whale with just your boat what do you think <sighs> hmm so many other problems with that moment that I kind of didn't, I... I didn't really address that part. Like, can a boat plow through a whale that way? I don't know. I would say probably. I guess because a, a boat is pointy at the front, and if it's moving fast enough and it hits the underside of a whale, I I would probably say it could, but I'm pure speculation. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I I just I just don't know. Will you guys review Enola Holmes at some point? I found it entertaining, yet a dumpster fire at the same time, and would love EFAP movies takedown. 
It's possible. It's just, uh, we got a lot of other things we're going on for, and I feel like it's the kind of thing that would get pushed aside for so long that we'd forget about it, but... Possible, to say the least. Razorfist has agreed to be on EFAP. Please do it. I- he's- I've got no way to contact him. If he's interested, do any of the ways that you can contact me, because I've got Twitter, all the options. Twitter, email, like, Discord... I can't, uh, private message on- on Twitter. I can't find any email to- to talk to him through, and I don't have his Discord, so I just, I just like, this. I don't know how to find him. <laughs> but, like, if he wants to come on, he's totally welcome to. Yeah. Uh, was watching your Amnesia vs. Soma videos, and now I'm like, short man bad, where's my long man? Lol. That's true, those videos are like between 20 and 40 minutes each. There's some short- shortisms right there. Um, Muller, in your best creepypasta narrator voice, please say, And then the cat ate my last sandwich. I don't know what that's for, but we'll find out in future, maybe. A question for you both. In your opinions, what four shows, movies, or video game series do you believe should be remade and what shouldn't have been remade? Oh man, that's a big question. Should be remade and what shouldn't be? That might be one we have to tackle. Um, I'm gonna save, save it for when we're playing Resident Evil 5, okay? That's yeah, I, yeah do save that one, yeah, because I'm about... I'm, I'm running on fumes here. And that one does require... That's an interesting question that probably would, would benefit from some thinking time. Yeah. Uh, will you play Resident Evil 4 on EFAP? Hi, Rex. I don't see why not. It could happen at some point. It's on GameCube, so I could. To play, play Resident Evil? One. Yeah. 4? Yeah. Honestly, just play the Steam version. Yeah, I mean, if I was going to do one version, it's probably going to be the Steam version. Um, but yeah, possible in future. There is a combined total of around seven mistakes, give or take, in Duel of the Fates. It's insane. They practice for months and it looks fantastic. Anakin and Obi-Wan also have the same quality. Uh, cool. I believe it. Versus what they shambled around with in the throne room. Yeah, what they crapped out in TLJ, yeah. I think at some point along the way, Disney just realized that people will clap at anything. So why do the effort? Why work? Bone it in, as they say, with some stuff. This is the way, yeah, baby Yoda. Yeah. So, yeah. Don't worry about uh, doo -doo -doo. All right. After listening to you two's various tastes in anime, I'm fairly confident in recommending Monster. <laughs> uh -huh. We've had so many recommendations this stream. Like <laughs> it's <laughs> inhuman. <laughs> so many. Uh, hey guys, swap any two characters from the MCU in Star Wars universe and why? Any two characters from the Star Wars and MCU? Like, which one One goes to one and one goes to the other? Um, yeah, I guess so. I would want... I would want... I think it'd be pretty cool to see Vader in the MCU. I, I think so too. Uh, let's put Vader in the MCU, and if I'm going to put someone from the MCU in... Star Wars, it would probably be Doctor Strange, hmm. because I'm interested what he would do with the Force. And I'm interested to see if Vader would, like, try and achieve some level of power, or how he'd go about trying to remain under wraps to a degree with knowing he's in this alien world. Or what he'd even do. Like, what would his yeah. mission be? What would his objective be? Um, or just Drax, just because I'm f curious what funny things he has to say about yep. Star Wars. Especially and in then, the sequels. He'd be then, calling everybody just stupid, and it'd be great. For the final of our four choices, we're moving Jabba into the MCU. I want to see... Jabba. <laughs> He's just like, what the fuck is this place? <laughs> Have Iron Man interact with it, would be funny. Uh, it has none of the annoying tropes usually found in Animu, just a straightforward thriller that happens to be animated. And that's about Monster, by the way. Hmm. Longman, if Drinker does a stream on Hot Fuzz, would you be down for it? Uh, At Will's End was a weird one. Yeah, uh, that's the weird Pirates movie, right? And um, I wouldn't be against that. Uh, I don't know when he would do it. Hot Fuzz wouldn't just be like a seasonal thing. It'd just be something he tries out at some point, I imagine. So, possible. Yeah, it's possible. And Rags, have you played Baldur's Gate 3? I gave you a quick nod in my Geeks and Gamers video on it because it was your Divinity video which got me interested in Larian. I liked it, but recommended oh. others wait for 1.0. Um, yeah, I am definitely going to play it. I haven't yet. I'm definitely going to play it though, and I'm gonna wait for the full release. Um 
because I'm, I'm I, I love Divinity Original Sin One and Original Sin Two, and I'm very very curious to see what Larian does. And I could use could use a good RPG. Could use myself a good yo sit down thinky thinky kind of game. Mm. Sorry if you've already answered this, but any plans to cover Cosmot's video on The Boy Season 2? Also, hello, Raggleton. Hi. No. <laughs> it's, uh, just not really, no. I feel like we've uh, already exhausted coverage of The Boys by just going through every single episode with the. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of done with it. Don't, I, I don't feel forward. the need to cover a video on it, but if there's one that's particularly, I don't know, interesting or. Um, Make some points that we haven't considered or whatever, you know, possible in future, but I I doubt we'll be... I'd like, you know, a little break from Cosmonauts Tisms. It'd be nice. He's really bad at what he does, and he's bad in the same way. Makes shit up, or he gets shit wrong constantly. And you have to listen to the voice. It's not the greatest thing. Rags. Rags, have you heard of GURPS? Opinions? Also, hi, Rags. Hi, um, I've not heard of GURPS. Well, I have no idea what that. <laughs> there we are. To. Neither have I. Uh, send invite to Razorfist for EFAP. I, <laughs> I've, I've okay, tried to look so for Okay, so again, method. as we've said, we don't have a way to contact him. He needs to have, he needs to contact us through. Yeah, send me a message on anything. Email. I will try and catch anything with a with a Razorfist. Yeah, fist. email, Discord, Twitter, fucking parlor, something. He needs to contact us somehow. Do it. Fuck, Mary, kill, butcher, homelander, Huey. Kill, homelander. Um, yep. Um, Mary, Huey, kill, butcher. Kill, I Huey, guess. Mary, butcher. Oh wait, we killed two people, right? Fuck, butcher, kill, homelander, Mary, Huey. Um. That seems to be the Mar safest choice. Uh, Mary, butcher, fuck, Huey. I, I don't guess. know about marrying butcher. He's kind of crazy. I don't. Yeah. But if you're like married to him, he would become like extremely protective. He'd be of you, all about you. Yeah. That's yeah. True. Okay. Yeah, he would just be boring. That, yeah. yeah, he would just be fucking boring. I agree with that for sure. Um. Human intercourse, marry, kill, rags, rags, mum, rags, grandma, pre-ruined. <laughs> pre-ruined. Um. I guess I'd kill my grandma. Um. You know, I think mostly pragmatic reasons, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I would fuck myself and marry my mom. And then just divorce her afterward, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awkward, but I had to do it because of the spooky wizard. Yeah, also sorry about grandma and mm -hmm. me masturbating, but, you know, it's just, you know, it's... Life. Hours beyond my control, I'm afraid. I watched your Amnesia Rebirth stream, then got recommended your Amnesia vs. Soma series. It's really good, made me want to play Soma despite never having any interest in it. Also, hi, Rags. Yeah, I mean... Hi, hi. A big deal with that series was like, hey guys, Soma's actually pretty, really good. <laughs> Don't listen to all the crazy people saying it's not, I swear. So, uh, yeah, glad you had fun with them. Moops, just to clarify, not saying those films and shows are objectively bad, just have some serious tisms uh, you and everyone just seem to overlook, especially Alien, Jaws, and Jurassic Park, and the Angel Seasons. Just disappointing, not bad. Uh, we've pointed some out in Jurassic Park before. I'd be curious what the Alien one is, uh, or, or ones are. And then, yeah, there's going to be ones I could probably point out throughout Angel as a TV show. There are a couple. TV shows have it a lot harder than movies do. With the amount of continuity, but um, yeah, it's fair enough. Can we get a Golden Girls EFAP mini in December in honor of Rags ruining his grandmother for Christmas? Uh, Is that something you want to honor? Why? Why would you want to watch us reacting to Golden Girls? <laughs> Golden Girls is funny though. Well, even if that were the case, you're just laughing at it. I guess. I mean, maybe. Could we? Kudos. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, get Razor Fist, go to Facebook to con- I don't have Facebook, I hate Facebook. Yeah, Is fuck Facebook. Surely he has- if he has Parler, just boop rags on there, and if he has Twitter, boop me on there, and if he has emails, might just email me. Uh, he, he has, has an Discord, email, he can email one of us. Yeah, I can't find his email. Um, I did try, so. Literally, the next one says you can contact him on Facebook. Why is he using Facebook for main contacts? Facebook sucks. Not to say that Twitter's any better, don't worry. I'm not suggesting that. 
We will sort it out eventually, if, especially if he's interested, which it seems to be the case. Then we'll probably cover a movie Bob video, because I'm I'm aware that he's uh, a big fan. Yeah. And with that, I reached the end of the Super Chats oh for this God. episode, which means wow. we didn't fall behind them. However, um, I know that people have sent in Streamlabs. I'm going to collect them all up, and Rags and I will tackle them, as well as the question we skipped over today first when we do Resident Evil 5. Assuming we still do, I will be honest with you. Like, I'm, I, I need to have food, and then I need to go to sleep, and by the time I wake up, I might just jump right into Resident Evil 5, and I don't know if I'll be 100% able to in terms of just coherency, but we'll see. I hope to. Yeah, I'm going to grab a snack, and I'm going to head to bed myself. Um... So, Hill House, like as as a series thing on uh, on EFAP, it will be coming soon. It should be pretty cool. You guys are gonna have to let me know what you think of it. It's very different, and we might do it with more stuff in the future. Um, and then Bly Manor is gonna be after that. And in the meantime, I'm working on The Boys season two being shit, while Rags is working on The Mandalorian being shit. Mm -hmm. TV shows, everything shit. We hate everything. And then, of course, before we'll probably be done with either of those, we're gonna have to be dealing with fucking Mandalorian season two, which will be coming out the night before we do Halloweenisms. God, there's so much shit going on. Ugh. Um. So yeah, upcoming streams. We're gonna be on Drinkers on the 29th. We're gonna be doing EFAB gaming on the 30th with a bunch of people. Then we're doing two streams on Halloween. One for EFAB, one for playing that video game with five people. That should be a lot of fun. And we're recording the meme fap in two days. Seriously, like... <laughs> I don't, it's weird. It's been a weird month. It's just non-stop stuff. But, uh... Hope you guys have been having fun with it. And thank you all so much for the incredibly kind donations. The wonderful, uh, artistic contributions. Which we shall be showing off a lot more so in, uh, in the coming meme fap. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and for the guests. This was, a, this was a fun one. It's good shit. Went through a lot of different things. I'm glad the games worked out too. I'm glad people have fun on those. They are, they are neat. Uh, so here's the thing. I fucking hate true. You know, I reckon that's supposed to be Trump. Um, and yeah, that about closes us out. Is there anything else you wanted to mention, Rags? No, I am all. Um, I'm all set. I'm done. I'm. Uh, I'm all finished. Uh, rags in That's your best got. skeleton voice and say it like you're bragging. I'm not allowed within 200 yards of an elementary school, He-Man. I'm not allowed within 200 yards of an elementary school, He-Man. <laughs> yeah, I, still, I remember that episode. <laughs> um, thank you all for watching, and good night. <laughs>